party. <laughs> yeah, big watch party. That'll be great. We'll all get butt I mean, It does sound like a good time, to be honest. Doesn't it? I, I gotta say, like r- shooting watch parties has probably been the most fun thing that I've done in terms of internet stuff and mm-hmm. getting together a bunch of friends and just laughing at something. Like we did Lord of the Rings, the, the Lord of the Rings show. Fuck, it was bad, but it was fun watching it with people. Party. Well, you know what else is yes. fun? Big watch party. <laughs> Hey now, it's oh. your boy PSA Sitch here with another Tuesday stream with everyone's favorite debt aficionado, Adam Trenzer. Trigger of the Sitch. Yes. Yes. So what's up? They were they were joined by our good friends, Short Fat Taco. Short? Yeah, why am I Short Fat Taco? <laughs> Look, I can't spell who taco. Some of us can't <laughs> spell here. Why can't and, you have an uh, easy to spell uh, name? But you use a chat GPT like everyone else. Oh, yeah, that's a good Google idea. It. You don't even need to go oh, to chat there you GPT. Go. I think I had actually our group chat open in another <laughs> tab yeah, too. Isn't it on the Discord? I could have just yeah. copy pasted, but I was like, I'm just gonna go with the taco. Okay, and we're also joined by Carl Benjamin. Hello. What's up, everybody? So, so uh, I the plan that I have is to watch a video that's going to trigger Sitch. And I ultimately hope that this is going to become like a three-on-one uh, <laughs> where we all just laugh. I thought Adam point. was supposed to be my friend. He's like, I'm like, what are we talking about today? And he's like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. And then Dev was all yesterday. What are we going to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. What, we'll figure it out. And Dev's going on about some fucking dumb book he read. That sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. Hey, hey, hey. With the Discord. And then Adam's like, oh, I have this secret video to trigger Sitch. I'm not going to tell him what it is. I hope everyone beats up on him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so so chat, just, just so that the chat is aware, yeah. we were originally considering doing chapters 7 through 10 of the open letter to open-minded progressives. I don't because think I, 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 I had yes we, yes, we did. No. But but then you guys were like, oh, we should do something else. And I was like, well, okay, sure. I, I'll, I'll do it every When time. college fine, students but... join. Shit, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. okay. We got a lot but yeah, that, that's that, that, that was the original plan, um, mm-hmm. because I mean, my, I, first of all, I enjoy reading it with you guys because it's it's always fun to hear other people's opinions on this nonsense. Um, however, I plan to do a, like eventually a full video of the book once we're done with it. But yeah. we can do it next time. It's okay. not a big deal. I know you wanted to like put up a poll to see if people actually want to. Want yeah, us I don't to know. If, listen, series. I don't know how many people in our audience care about us shitting on Marvin Yarvin for you know ten hours <laughs> on a Sunday on a Tuesday. So. Audience, what do you think? I met Francis Yelton. He seemed like a really nice chap, actually. There you go. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, we have you here, Carl. What is your take on Marvin Yarvin? Um, well, I mean, I think being a monarchist in America is a pretty long shot. So, (laughs) uh, (laughs) you know, good good luck. Um, but Curtis Yarvin's a really nice guy. Um, and he, Mm -hmm. you know, very friendly, very easy to talk to when I met him at a conference. So, you know, I I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to disparage him. Sure, but it's we so can t- say his ideas suck, right? Um, he's, he's got some really good observations, right? That one of the things I, I think that the... Um... I mean, Karl Marx had good observations. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, but, the they, but that's the thing. The, they occupy a space where they um, these observations come well to them, and they articulate them quite well. So mm-hmm. I do think they're worth hearing out. Okay. Yeah, that's people how I don't, about it, too. People don't know this about you, Carl. You are always very magnanimous with other content creators. People, people that is true. you have a reputation as being like the devil. <laughs> well, wait a minute. That, that's wait sort of minute. true. That's, I, I've heard Carl uh, call lots of people really stupid. I mean, you did have a show called This Week in Stupid for many, sure, many but, years. But mostly that was for the news. You know? True. True. You don't you don't agree with that assessment, Sitch? I mean, I, well, I, look, I, we have certain enemies of the show. We are not how, kind to David Pakman at all. I think Carl is probably, I think Carl is probably kinder to David Pakman than we are. I certainly was, yeah. David Pakman hasn't exactly been covering himself in glory recently, though. No. Of course not. But have you literally called him an imbecile, stupid, moron? Not recently. (laughs) Retard. (laughs) Listen, if you want to say Carl is definitely a lot more magnanimous than we are, so. Well, well, there was that event a few a few years ago, Sargon, where I think it was it was Big Joel and then uh, who who was it? Big Joel and somebody else, some other leftist, and they and these two guys came out and they said it was really weird how you know we don't agree with Sargon, but he was still polite trying to set up debates with us, and it's like, well, yeah, why wouldn't you be? You know, but they, they <laughs> right. just it was completely outside of their realm of understanding that someone could disagree with you and also be polite. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's wrong with them. I assume it's you know some sort of mind virus that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like I, I look at it, you know, kind of uh, kind of like a parasite in a host these days. <laughs> You know, because you you basically know every single thing a progressive is going to say to you, right? Right. The, the yeah. second they open their mouth and go, "Oh, homophobia," okay, I know every position on every subject that's going to come up in this conversation mm. already, and so it's it's literally like you know, like a worm is taking control of their brains. So I'm not really angry at them anymore. I've I've kind of reached a plane of enlightenment when it comes to this. <laughs> you know, I've been doing it for so long. I'm just like, no, no, I I genuinely understand literally mm-hmm. everything before they even understand it. So. You're saying you're like Neo, and when they start talking, yeah. you just see the code of the Matrix. Yeah, and you see yeah that no, that's exactly thing. what I'm saying, actually. <laughs> like, None I, of them I, have got an original take on anything. You have to be that's unplugged. The there's, there's something to that, because as soon as you understand that they're ideologically captured, all you have to do is run the ideology in your own head like it's a computer program. Give yeah. it any kind of input. It'll give you the proper output, and then yeah. it'll be the same thing. Like, I, I did... Um, a quick and dirty video a couple months ago about Mr. Beast and the whole like curing blind people controversy yes, that he found himself in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I went over to, I went around to like five different bread. To, okay. I recorded the script before getting the video clips to even see if I was right. And I went around to five <laughs> different bread tubers and found that they all said what I thought they would say. And it let was all guess, the, right? it was all the same critique. Let, let me guess. It was something okay. to do with making a value judgment that suggested that being blind wasn't as good as being sighted. No, actually, no. Oh, it that was be that, an advanced critique. Then. <laughs> it, it was it was that Mr. Beast's entire business model relies on oh. people being blind, and so he he doesn't he doesn't cure people <laughs> out of the goodness of his heart. He cures people because he supports capitalism. And that they all sound like that. Mr. Beast is wandering around poking people's eyes out just so he can <laughs> fix it. He's, pulling, yeah, but, uh, he's yeah. putting lead in he's putting lead in the water just to like mm-hmm. he, like he was. I mean, like a, a properly advanced like scholarly critique would go, you know, full postmodern go, yeah, well, you just say it's a value judgment. So it's not as good to be blind and <laughs> right. therefore you're some sort of hierarchical bigger. And I'd be like, yeah, that's true. Uh, but th- this <laughs> is a really basic bitch like bread tube take that you're giving mm-hmm. there. But uh, Vosh, Hassan, Xanderhal, Lance, and actual Jake all gave the same take. <laughs> and I wrote and recorded the script before even checking what take they gave and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> just Hasn't come everyone on, switched lads. though on Mr. Beast because of uh, did they? Oh, because the trans friend. thing. Yeah, he had like yes. a trans friend come out, and now they're yes. all like pro Mr. Beast. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, flip flopped on him. So you know, yep. dude's only yep. curing blind kids, but but he's also tra- listen. He he'll say I'll cure your blindness kid, but you have to get transed first. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you have to choose. Do you want your eyes or your genitals? <laughs> <laughs> anything so done within much. a capitalist framework is obviously evil for them so but that's the, the, big, the yeah. thing is though the thing is you know that if a kid was like okay well given that choice i choose uh i'll take my genitals they'd be like the fucking bigot <laughs> fucking transphobe <laughs> what one thing that i like about about the modern era is that jokes that are only kind of edgy are now way more edgy than they have any right to be and so they're oh, yeah. funnier true yeah. you know man point. i saw I saw a clip and it was a clip from the Lord of the Rings movies. And the clip was something about, um, you know, when when you discover the WNBA players and it's Aragorn sitting in the, in the tavern and you hear the scream in the background. And he's, he just says ominously, they were men once. (laughs) And it's like, (laughs) (laughs) I I saw that and I fucking busted out laughing. It's the dumbest joke, but the fact that you can't say it today, is yeah. what makes it so much more fun to say. Oh, we got to talk about Black Aragon, Aragorn at some point, mm. I guess. We do. Uh, thanks so much, our surrogate yeah. father, J-Mac, for the 50 gifted memberships. Thank you. Welcome, new members. Right. Don't uh, forget Jacob to update Whiteford. that membership. Don't spit in the face of our father, J-Mac. Okay? That's true. Do not. Uh, Jacob Lloyd for $20 says, what are y- your all's opinions on Oswald Spangler's downfall of Western civilization, some of his predictions of the urban culture separating into a new nomadic worldview opposed to the old seems pretty spot on. I haven't read it yet, but it is on the on the list. Tried reading it and it was really long. And uh, he spends, <laughs> he's uh, literally like, I, I think I got like three or four chapters in and he's going on about mathematics for a long, long time. Oh, wow. <laughs> and 
and it's not even like he, he's not going through sums or anything. He's going through uh, like the the cultural um, genealogy of mathematics, mm-hmm. and holy fuck, it's boring. And like I had a bunch of people <laughs> going, no, 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 just just power through it. It gets better, I promise. And I'm sure it does because I'm sure he does make some great critiques. But man, I couldn't get past that. I was just saying, no, I'm just going to read something else. Okay. <laughs> I I do know he's one of those writers that. You know, anybody who is just moderately left wing and who doesn't really, he doesn't engage with politics, he'll just say, oh, you're a Nazi if you read him. It's like, well, yeah, you can yeah. be more sophisticated than that, you know? He, yeah. he's, he's one of those, like, outside of the zeitgeist writers. Yeah. Which, yeah. He's which, a, lot, uh, a lot like Evola, to be honest, you know? Yeah. Like, I read Evola and I actually enjoyed it. Um, oh, like, no! You are a fascist. So. <laughs> no, 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 no he's, fascist. Not, he's not a fascist. It, he's a super fascist. What do you mean? He was being facetious when he said he was a super fascist, but it's a great defense in court. You're was a fascist. He, uh... No, I'm a super fascist. Uh-huh. Fair enough. I like, have to let you go because that literally isn't the charge I was charging you with. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, at, you've got fascist. I've got super fascist. Is that the same? No, it's not. Right. No, no, so, he, he's, not, he's not a fascist. He's, um, he's, uh, what is he? Oh, an ancient Roman aristocrat. Uh, all right. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, well, he, he, here's, here's what it means. Here's what it means. If Evolo was playing Fallout New Vegas, he'd side with the Legion. Yeah, that makes you a fascist or some kind of horrible person. I don't. I mean, you can put whatever label you want on it. <laughs> I'm not. That... I'm not saying he's not not a horrible philosophy because, like, it's right. literally like the ancient Roman philosophy, right? Yeah. Like uh, a fascist philosophy is the total incorporation of the nation. Whereas mm-hmm. the Roman aristocracy ideology would be um, that it's warranted for the aristocracy to have a servant class, right? So it's not the same. Um, the, there is a lot more socialism in fascism, basically. Um, this is kind of like a Nietzschean will to power view of the world. Um, I see, I see. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying it's you know good and progressive, obviously. Right, right. Um, but it's it's not fascism. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, th- I so, think that the fact, I mean, you know, and, and I'm sure I make this mistake too, you know, people call anything that's a sort of a far right ideology fascism nowadays, especially if it has yeah. any racial component to it, which obviously there's a strong racial and gender component to a lot of, of all those works. So. Well, actually, it's interesting that there, it, it, there is there is a racial component, but not as we would understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's actually got quite a cutting uh, takedown of the concept of like racial purity. He's like, well, look, even an animal can have racial purity. You know, it's like, what what good is that? You know, for him, he conceived of something he called the race of the spirit. Um, and so basically, if you think of like um, a, a great lineage is born out of a great victory. Right. So like Alexander the Great and his generals or his, you know, like the, the sons of kings and stuff like this. They, they The sons of William the Conqueror get their legitimacy through their lineage to William the Conqueror. And so Evola's point is that, look, you can have the purest blood in the world, but if you don't have this race of the spirit, this this unbroken, maintained lineage of uh, transcendental inheritance, then it means nothing, and you're upholding nothing, and you're a nothing, and that's why he wasn't allowed to join the Nazi party. That's like a cultural aspect? No, no, no. He means it. He believes in magic. He means it literally, like spirit. (laughs) And he even says, and he's like, well, not magic in the way that you're going to dismissively use it. Yeah, he means it's No, he means, no. what do you mean? He literally believes in a, from a spiritual component that there is a, a spiritual, yeah, but, but he, you know, he non-corporeal essence that is passed down from generation yes. to generation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We call it tradition. No, he, so, he's, so okay, you're... but he, wait, wait, wait. He does mean it in a magical sense. He doesn't mean it in this, yeah, but like, I think he might be right about sense. that, to be honest. Huh? No, the, 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 the concept of a tradition, I think, is a kind of magic. Okay, okay, but. I you know right. when I when I say the word magic, you know what I mean. Well, that's the thing. You you mean in a kind of um, dismissive way, right? I don't mean but, this, okay. In a not what do you, what do you want? What phrase should we use? Esoteric? What what do you want to call it? Oh, it's a yeah, psychic, it's superficial. Okay, like it, it's it's whatever whatever moves the minds of men, right? It's mo- moves no it moves okay. People's but wait, you okay? There's a difference between a cultural idea. A cultural idea moves the minds of men, right? Obviously, uh, sometimes, yeah. Right. And then believing <laughs> that there's a magical spirit Sometimes. that has like <laughs> does something that possesses people and takes over them. These are two Why? different concepts. They can have I the same outcome. Wait, they can have the same outcome, but they come from a different place and they mean a different thing, right? I tell you what, man, b- before the Queen's funeral, I probably would have agreed with you, but after seeing it, man, I'm telling you, I think the magic's real. Like, you, okay, I, I can't tell if you're trolling. Magic's real, well, that's fine. I, 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 but I, you I understand that there's a difference between the two check. things. I can bridge this if you want. Yeah. So th- there is two ways of of using the word magic, right? I mean, Sargon, you're you're not talking about 
uh, the kind of magic that you see when you play a Final Fantasy game or an RPG oh, no, and a character like chants and then fire bursts out of his hand. Like it's not that kind of magic. Disappointingly, no. <laughs> it's it, it's more of like how how you feel when I don't know your what, what's the word I'm looking for. There, there is a kind of spirituality. If, if you yeah, if you felt passionate about something and you're in the moment, it's something like it's, that. Yeah, but it it is deeper than that and. Like, it's not wrong to say, like, you, you may as well call it magic because it's irrational and it, it can't really be dealt with in a logical way necessarily, but it's got a logic of its own, right? And so you may as well call it magic and that essentially sums up what you're talking about. But magic well, breaks a supernatural framework, though. That's what oh, people mean when they say okay, magic. That's, okay, maybe that's a better word, supernatural. He believes there's mm -hmm. a supernatural spiritual element that is passed down through the generations. Yeah, yes. I mean, we yes. he, he would he would use the term uh, metaphysical, right? Right. Yes, right. beyond um, the physical. I, yeah, yeah, and I think that's true. I think that's exactly what we saw in the Queen's funeral. Right. So, well, but so the you said, and what kind of started off on this tangent was about the race thing, and to me, that's an even worse take on race. If that you believe there's a supernatural racial element that is passed down through no, no, some racial it, lineage. No, no, it, you, you're using the word race wrong. That's the thing, right? The or race ethnic this, lineage. No, no, it's not about ethnic either. It's just about lineage, right? Like, it's about the... You are bearing the spiritual weight of being the descendant of William the Conqueror, for example. And so mm -hmm. this places upon you a kind of magical burden that means you are the center point of... I mean, for, literally... You're this the is protagonist the, of the world. No, 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 not necessarily the protagonist. There's the wrong way to frame it. Like, li literally, though, the king of England is uh -huh. literally the bearer of the inheritance of William the Conqueror, right? Mm -hmm. And after a thousand years of lit lineal, literal descent, um, that's the race of the spirit, you know? So it's not race as we would talk about it in a material sense. Um, and it's not, you can't enter into it, right? It's yeah, but what's not, the difference? But, it, okay, first of all, you but can't But you can enter. leave it. You okay. can leave it. You sure. Can, you can abandon it, right? But right, you can't but, abandon your physical race. Right, so... Right. So this is essentially, he's essentially laying out the same viewpoint as CRT, where it's like, well, if you don't have the right opinions, you're not really black, even if you're black. It's not about opinions in Avila's view. It's about actions. Um, well, okay. But it's this, yeah, but obviously with CRT, yeah. it's the same thing, right? Your opinions are supposed to lead to some kind of revolutionary. No, action. no, not necessarily. Like you could be totally inert and say, I like Hitler. And then mm -hmm. suddenly you're totally unprogressive or mm -hmm. you can be totally inert and say, I support trans rights. And suddenly you're a progressive hero, but you've done nothing. Right. But for Evola, it's, it's very much action based. So it, what you believe is fucking irrelevant, but you have to perform the certain rituals. You have to, you know, like engage in the performance of the thing. You have to be the bearer of the tradition right. and pass it down. So it's very much what you do that matters. Right. So, yeah. so Avola is preaching action-based CRT instead of belief-based CRT. No, it's it's not it's not CRT. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, not CRT. It's not CRT. No, but is yeah. that con Hold that on. concept? Wait, the concept no. of this idea that you know, it he's 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 tying some sort of lineage, some sort of opinion, yeah. not opinion, some sort of action-based lineage, some sort of responsibility on someone based on their genetic heritage that goes back it's for, not necessarily for... genetic that's the thing it can be this is why i say it begins with great victories right mm -hmm. the 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 it, it it's about like it's it's genetic because it's lineal but it's not yes. because it's genetic right i understand it, that but it's just a spiritual based lineage as opposed to a genetic one which is the same well, outcome, yeah though, yeah it's right? a spiritual lineage if it's right. the same outcome what's the difference well the difference is that there's different measurements of um, success in that. Mm -hmm. Like, like he says, like being racially pure actually isn't really terribly relevant. Making sure you are the bearer of aristocratic traditions is what is relevant. Right. But yeah, but okay. So does he say <laughs> you, that you any... could be a pure blooded peasant, but you'd have no aristocratic lineage. You know, you would have mm -hmm. no tradition. Mm -hmm. You would, you wouldn't have access to any of the uh, religious rites you wouldn't be bearer of an ancient and sacred name. You would just be a well-bred animal. Sure, but you also, from, I've read some of Ola. I don't know if I've read as much as you've read. I don't remember him talking about the the idea that, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember him talking about specifically about the idea that other 
ethnic groups could buy into a spiritual component of a previous and other different ethnic no, group? It, well, but no they ethnic seem groups to be definitely into tying any... it to to ethnicity from the things that I've read specifically. Well, no, it's not about ethnic groups. That's the thing. It's about specific aristocratic lineages. So in, within an ethnic group, you have a lineage of aristocrats, right? And they establish themselves in the beginning through a great victory. And then they are expected to uphold a certain set of traditions and standards and practices throughout their lives. So the, it's not the entire ethnic group or anything like that. Yeah, it's, you know? it's even more selective than being yeah, yeah, absolutely. racist. It's, 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 well, it's, it's whatever not, it's, it is. It's not, <laughs> it's not that it's racist. That's not the key. No, I know. I said it's a more selective version of it. It's even it's smalling the selection group even shorter than a racial or ethnic group. Oh, yeah. yeah saying wait, the wait. aristocrats of a specific group that did something. Sure, but it, like every group has this, right? What do you so, mean? Well, you know, there's there's an aristocratic Indian race of the spirit. There's an aristocratic French race of the spirit. You know, the, like everyone has these. I. What is the American one? Because I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I agree. Well, you probably would the wasps probably in mm -hmm. previous eras. I mean, now who knows, right? Yeah, fuck. Probably them. the, the aristocracy of America. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, basically. Hmm. What is the but, spirit um, spirit lineage of the aristocracy? Well, I mean, you'd probably point to the the Clintons, the Gores, the Bushes. Well, what what happened to Washington and like Thomas Jefferson and? Well, great question. What happened to him? Yeah. Well, that's. Well, what I don't think they should be aspiring for having you know spirit based aristocracy lines. Yeah. What what happened to their descendants? They Why don't ass. we see you know Washingtons know. and Jeffersons and the, the as presidents now? Well, supposedly, this is why Clinton always, isn't his middle name like Jefferson no or something? It's Jeff, isn't it Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey. Like I, I Jeffrey do recall, um, so the, there the was... Is, it's not liberal, obviously. No, no. I, I recall reading um, an account of one of the first ambassadors of Japan to America, and he, when he was there, he, he, he was in San Francisco, and he asked, hey, where's... Um, where's the descendants of Washington and no one knew. And one person yeah. said, I think, I think he has like a granddaughter who lives like somewhere and like no one really cared. And right. this blew their minds because Japan was still a feudalistic society and they still had, yeah. you know, uh, an aristocracy. And they're like, you guys don't care about, you know, the, the founder of your nation and his descendants. And no. everyone's like, Nope. Based America. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> well, that's the thing though. Like there are, there are upsides and downsides to that. Right. Mm -hmm. because no nobody in america thinks honestly of the honor of america to uphold uh whereas the yeah they the do yeah i don't think yeah, that's true at all what do you mean you're you honestly you're a disgraceful nation no one thinks that's um, <laughs> not true at all what are you talking about you, you no no you are oh, come on what like, do you mean who, who's, who's the most famous pop star in america at the moment i don't know what does that who have to cares do with yeah everyone knows it's lizzo it's who, who cares lizzo everyone knows you know oh yeah it's who? Carl, how do you know like that? A That's awful. Exactly. How Carl, do I, know? I, can, because... I can't believe you know that. That's awful. That's because everyone knows. Because <laughs> we don't know. America is not a country that sends a lot of um, self-respect vibes out into the world. Am I wrong, Dev? No, you're self -respect. Self -respect. wrong. What are you talking about? This is like it's America's Turning... the most like America's the greatest country well, on, in the world. On. Like this was like yeah, the meme forever. It's not the greatest country in the world. Okay. No, America, that, that, no, Americans Sitch. go to other countries and they're like, we are the greatest country ever. You must all yeah. you know, bow down yeah. to our Sitch, greatness. Sitch, what, what it is, is that you you are proud of... The Americans tend to be proud of their own plebeianness, in a sense. No, yeah. that's you, not you, true. No, that that's very true. You, you guys, you, totally no, no, you, true. No. you guys are very happy. And, and there's some merit to this. It's not, it's not all bad. You guys are very happy that plebs can come to America and make it. Well, there, course, there's, a lot of good, yes. there's a lot of good in that, of course. It's called but the American it, dream, for a reason. Sure. But there's where's the Canadian about. dream? What's the Canadian there's, dream it, to live through the, the same, night without the being assaulted dream. by a moose? What is the Canadian <laughs> dream? To get assisted suicide. <laughs> it's just, it's, is that the Canadian, the, the, Canadian the, the, dream? The Canadian dream is unironically just the American dream. We're just America and people in Canada need to fucking deal with that. America but, light. but do you know what that point, American though, dream is? Hold on. Hold on. The point, though, is that there's nothing aristocratic about America. Right. That's a good thing. 
Right, but that's, well, mer- that's meritocracy. That's your point that's of view, thing. right? That's, that's the that, thing. When it's Carl both good says, and bad. It's both good and bad. <laughs> when Carl says that America doesn't have self-respect, this is like, you know, he yeah. he. this is the snooty, the snooty royal who's like mad that his, you know, <laughs> child many years ago went off and became much more better than he did. And he's like, oh, well, they don't have the real blood of the royals flowing through them like we do. Sure, but do you? No. Hey. <laughs> Well, then Carl, we're Carl, it. we're better than you. Why would we want to Carl, Carl, which is better, aristocracy we're better or than you? Okay, aristocracy well, then, uh, or let's meritocracy? Let's go to a concert, shall we? <laughs> how, how long okay. into that concert will you Hold start on. feeling ashamed of your country? Uh-huh. Aristocracy or meritocracy? It's, it's pretty, it's pretty which quick. is better? Pretty quick. Um, I'm not sure there's a difference, to be honest. Well, wait, 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 wait. Regarding, wait, responding to the Lizzo thing, it's like, let's go see how the Mizzy situation ends up. <laughs> Mizzy could not oh. exist in the United States without getting shot by someone. Well, so. that's true, but you've got uh, lots of other problems with urban ethnic types, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, but... Me, me, like, like, okay, no, if, we're gonna do, it, no, no, mm-hmm. if we're going to do a comparison, right? <laughs> Mizzy no. is annoying, but not dangerous. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just point you to your videos on he, the rape. Hold on. He, he could he could he could <laughs> so be dangerous. Many, yeah. He could be dangerous. <laughs> I yeah, saw I mean, that video of him not, invading a train. Like that could be dangerous. That's true. Well, I mean, accidentally dangerous then. But <laughs> uh, man, so many videos of like, I mean, the Little Mermaid being the most recent example of um, communities fighting. Man, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. In it wasn't there a fight in the theater in one of those? Yeah, there I was saw that video. Multiple, I saw a couple. You know, you know, Lizzo's real name is Melissa Jefferson. Jefferson. Really? Yes. She's <laughs> really. Damn. She carries this, the race of the spirit. Wait, is that why she got she got a hold of the flute back in the day? Oh, I didn't I'm not know. sure. I didn't even make that. Right. Okay. That could be it. I don't even get what, you, what that means. She, Lizzo uh, desecrated was it Thomas Jefferson's crystal flute? Yes. What? I think it was it. was it was it Biden's inauguration? Uh, I can't remember. She was definitely on a stage somewhere. She yeah, was it was some kind of event. Yeah, with this historic crystal flute that was given by like the president mm-hmm. of France or something. Did she just and when you say desecrate? Did she play it? Or you mean she like shoved she it? She was her playing ass? it, and twerking <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh, okay, she, yeah, she like... was twerking while playing it. Yeah, she didn't yeah. twerk on the flute. Was she born to <laughs> aristocrats? No, is that really the? <laughs> Is that really the distinction? I mean, if she's, I, yeah, I don't think she'd be twerking with a, some famous flute from America's so history. Like, she's twerking with a historical artifact that's uh, closely connected to the very founding of your country. I mean, you know, like, it's gross. Was she actually twerking with it? Yes. Yeah, she, she was, was twerking videos, with it. Yeah. I just hear playing it. It's, it's, it's really No, there's, there's some twerking. There's some twerking okay. in there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bef- before okay. we move on, tell us how meritocracy and aristocracy are the same, Carl. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because... Um, I, I came to this conclusion a little while ago um, that actually, if you look at the aristocrats these days, and in my country, I don't know about in your country, and you were to actually um, say, look up like the degrees that they hold and the number of degrees, um, they are the best educated people in the country. Right. Isn't that interesting? Not like, really. I mean, it's. I think that is because we've we've got a plague at the moment in this country of mm-hmm. uh, single degree holding university midwits. Uh, people who've got like, oh, I got an English literature degree and then I joined the Liberal Democrats and now I'm an MP <laughs> for somewhere that's 99% white English. And hey, I'm pro-refugee, <laughs> right? And it's just like, you fucking retards have no idea what you're asking for. You know, you you literally know literally nothing about the subject mm-hmm. and you are a moron. And then I've actually met a bunch of people who are aristocrats and I, yeah, I'm hanging out with this one guy, he's a really nice guy. He's like, man, I've got four degrees, you know, I don't know what the hell, I don't get hired for this thing. And it's like, hmm, don't know why. It's probably because he's a conservative, right? But like, the the point is, if you look at their educational levels, these guys are actually really well educated because, of course, they can afford it. Right. right? Isn't that just aristocracy supplanting meritocracy, though? Well, again, if you just go, who's, who's the best? Well, I mean, these guys seem to actually have a legit claim there, right? Whereas I've met too is many it? of these, oh yeah, I've met too many of the single degree holding middle class midwits to know these people are certainly not the best. Right? Wait, they have it, to be it, more the, intelligent people. The degrees and the kids. aristocracy degrees are just lineage, basically, right? They're not your necessarily. pedigree. I mean, no, no, not necessarily. Like they've got, they've gone to a, a high class university like Oxford or Cambridge, right? No, I, I understand that, but I'm just saying, in, in the times of aristocracy, it was just. You know, basically, their pedigree was their, their. What gave them aris, er, uh, 
aristocratic privileges, correct? Yeah, that's, that's you're what you're saying now. Yeah. Degrees give them aristocratic uh, privileges, but if those degrees aren't based on merit, no, then it's no, no longer a meritocracy. It's an aristocracy. I don't like. Yeah, I, but that's not what I'm aristocracy saying. and that's meritocracy I'm are like night that's and day from saying. one another. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the actually the people who would like to be in a meritocracy are actually mm -hmm. largely fucking thick, right? They're, they're literally like 105 IQ midwit liberal Democrat votes. You know, I agree. Labour Party MPs, right? Well, that's the average but, uh, person, right? Sure, midwit. right? But then if you're like, <laughs> okay, but I want meritocracy. It's like, okay, but if you look at the IQ of the aristocracy, and let's, let's be fair, a thousand years of having the best thing means you're probably going to have some natural advantages. And mm -hmm. so they can go to Oxford or Cambridge because their parents can afford it. So you've got the best tutors, you've got the best learning environment, you've got the best of everything. Doesn't mean they you're the best, They come out with though. better degrees. No, but they, on average, absolutely will. They, of course, will. It would be crazy for it to not be well, that but way. Well, wait, wait, wait. But, well, okay, wait. There's a couple of things. No, First look, of all, I'm not saying, I'm not uh -huh. saying I'm in favor of locking out lower classes from anything. I'm lower class, obviously. I don't want to be locked right. out from things. What I'm saying is if you take a more clear-eyed and non-liberal assessment of this, you realize that these people are actually, on average, better than the average middle-class midwit. So, Spoke yeah, but I like okay, I'm confused. Monarch. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, hold on. it's just I, 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 I can explain wait, this wait, easily. Wait, I can explain wait, this very no, easily. Stop. I thought the first thing you said regarding this stop. subject was that <laughs> was that the aristocracy was better educated on average. And yeah, the, I that's the first thing, thing you said, right? And they probably were historically too. Right, but so, but then I don't understand because then you said, well, nowadays the people that have the same level, same level of education are stupid. not educated. Well, that's why I don't understand. But, but the same level saying. doesn't mean the same quality, right? For, well, if they you go, go they, to, they can go to, go to Hale, a, uh, or Harvard or Yale or any of these fucking colleges, and they can come out being, you know, woke stupider. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, in, in, yeah. In your country, that's definitely an issue. They can't. Um, well, you don't think that happens but that's, in your country? Hold on. This is the pro well, this is a major problem because we're subverting meritocracy. I would argue that that is the advantage America has had. We yeah, have a meritocracy. I, I view the Ivy League universities as being rather an aristocratic institution. I right? agree, mm -hmm. and that's sure, the problem. Right. That right. is the and they, problem. And, and, and they were also the best, were they not? It used to be that they were mm -hmm. right. a meritocracy. So, right, because is, people is, were is aristocracy not merging them. now with meritocracy? Well, no, because well, they, again, they're antithetical back in those to days, one another. Wait, 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 wait. And back in those days, people were literally <laughs> prevented right, yeah. from getting educated unless they had, you know, already shit tons of money or the right lineage. So I don't know if that's really an accurate thing to, to lay. Yeah, but if you if you look, the IQ correlates with wealth, right? To some extent, yeah. Yeah, because so, of a meritocracy, mm -hmm. rich people are going to be more intelligent. Right. The further you get away from a meritocracy, the less they're going to correlate. <laughs> well, no, no, but this again, this, this, these are just liberal myths, right? Because if you actually crunch the numbers, liberal myths. It, yeah, totally, Adam. Totally. I, do, are we, when are we going to go through my five, <laughs> full, uh, ten? In fact, false yeah, there's ten now. There's ten. Oh yeah. my God, they're yeah. multiplying! Oh, Holy more. shit! Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> seriously, I'm, I'm literally you're, happy. Your knocks on liberalism <laughs> multiply more than rabbits. Can, can I build the bridge here? Because I, I know no, what Sargon is saying. We don't need a bridge. Right on all of this. <laughs> and like, Look, this was supposed you're, to be you're beating up on Sitch, not like, beating up not, on Adam. Not, What's going on so here? Unbelievably not right. right. No, you're not. Well, first of all, I don't even understand That's this so argument so. because all the aristoc, you know, all the the elites right now are all the most woke midwits of all. So of I don't course, know what happened. I don't yes. know what happened there. Well, I I actually do know what happened there. It was called uh -huh. diversity and inclusivity, right? Like in so they all uh, fell that it? subverts all smart people meritocracy. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I totally okay. agree. It does subvert meritocracy, right? I yes. mean, in in the UK, our problem was Tony Blair getting everyone to go to university when so many of these people shouldn't have gone to university, right? So I you agree. don't because the the argument is well, look, if we take if everyone goes to university and then they'll all be smarter and they'll all be better educated, but all it actually did is reduce the prestige of the institutions by making them less capable. That's wait no the the reason everyone the reason there was a big push to get everyone to go to university was because more and more jobs require university education going forward. Well, do they though? Yes. What do you mean, do they? Well, I mean, there are lots of jobs in the UK, such as being a policeman, that yeah, now like, require I'm every job. I said more jobs, more and more yeah, jobs. Okay, but again, do they? Right? Because yes, I mean, there are there are, oh no, no, listen, there are lots of jobs that actually do not require a university education, but on paper do require a university education. And um, James Burnham would have called this a consequence of the managerial revolution. And I think he's probably right on that. Like the the kind of person the university produces 
is desirable for the kind of people who are running the institutions. And so you get the same sort of kind of people who are all like their minds are formatted in the same way and they look for the same things. They value the same things in people that they want to recruit. Right. But that doesn't mean these people are actually good at their jobs. And so uh, like, uh, you know, Adam, you keep going on with meritocracy and I agree. A meritocracy is a good and desirable thing. But I mean, I don't think we can say that we have that. Right. Well, well, here's the disagreement that I see. I, I'm arguing over. You know, the aspirational idea of meritocracy versus the aspirational idea of of aristocracy. And you keep saying that the facts on the ground don't match the aspiration. But I just I like no, we can actually, have a I'm not conversation the, the, about the, the, the philosophies, the different philosophies. The, the, sure. But the fact the facts on the ground don't match that. But also I agree. Yeah. Right. Listen, but that's listen. the problem. Yeah, but 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 again, this comes from the false assumption of liberalism. We st we all start. Oh as no, like, no, Adam! I'm not joking, right? You. This you, was supposed to be here. us beating up on Sid. Your, your assumption here is that there is some. <laughs> We're kind beating of up on you, Adam. <laughs> that, no, no, you're assuming there is some kind of equality and parity between mm. these groups of people, and there simply isn't. Well, no, I no, I'm not. Look, you can have a of conversation course, about the philosophy of meritocracy. That the most competent person for any position any vocation is going to be put in that position regardless of where they came from what race they sure. are what religion they are what's you know their station in life sure and and before when you had the aristocracy and the answer to that will be someone who went to uh cambridge or oxford and not someone who went to like luton university well theoretically but these days no, no, are the universities it's every time. look are the universities based on meritocracy anymore because that's an know. open question. I don't think so. I mean, I, like, it, again, you get what you pay for, right? And no, so no, I, have... I agree. I agree. Look, when it was an aristocracy, only the rich and powerful were competing to fill certain positions. And you'd argue that a little bit of meritocracy was forming up there, right? Well, but you it, had no, all no, no, of no. these people that were locked out of competing because they weren't part of the aristocracy. What America did was they said, anyone can compete. And that, right. as a human resource problem, just opened us up to just anyone being able to do anything. And that's why we're anything. the strongest, And that's why country. America rules. Yes. Look, Adam, this... Adam, there's an issue here, though, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's, I'm not going to beat the communist charge, I guess, but there was, there is <laughs> one area in which the socialist critique of liberalism is correct, all right? Mm -hmm. Marx and a bunch of other people have said, and they're right, that meritocracy. This is why you're called a socialist. Fine, fine. Yeah, 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 but no, 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 he, no, no, he no, owns no, it. No, it's fine. <laughs> I don't, but I'm just going to lean into it. Uh, listen, listen. They all said, and they were correct, that merit that meritocracy necessarily creates aristocracy anyway. Yeah, I agree. Like if, if, if if you have then a society, they where harmonize where again, out, don't they, Adam? But yes, Phyllis, so, so it, look, you can have well, a conversation well, I, 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 about I, I, the facts on the ground or the the. What you're shooting for, the aspiration. They, Go yeah, ahead. They, they both well, end well, up the the same. aspiration can never be reached because of meritocracy of always leads to an aristocracy. Because as you know, let's say, let's say you what you have, you completely equalize your society, you wipe out the ruling class, everyone starts in the same position. You will have, due to natural differences, some people win and some people lose. That will snowball. That will snowball across generations, and you will have recreated okay, an aristocracy. That's not an aristocracy. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, it is. Know. Wait, no, stop. no, that, that is an stop. I don't know how you're defining this, because if you just do a normal definition of aristocracy, it means that the highest classes are only available to people based on their hereditary, you know, bloodline. OK, yeah, but they so wait, so wait, wait, what, wait, 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 exactly. wait, wait, what you're talking about is that if everyone can compete on, a, on an equal uh, playing field so that everyone can kind of, you know, advance according to, you know, their intelligence or their drive or whatever. Yes. You're going to get to a point where certain families, whether they have good genetics or whatever, are going to continually win out over time. However, that doesn't mean that that everyone else is locked out the way they are in an arist in an, arist an aristocratic true. system. Okay, so get you can't fish. say it's going to lead to that. That's not true. Right, look, but you it, still have an aristocratic class. No, you I mean, have a class of people that are just fish. at the top, but they're not locking everyone else out through fish. bloodline. Ar arist aristocracies are not as closed as you think they are. There, there right? are ways that they can lock people out, though, especially in our okay, capitalist system. So what do you system. guys mean when you right. say but, aristocracies? But ar aristocracies are not as closed as you think they are. I mean, for example, there's always been the phrase new man, 
right? And that is someone who has recently entered into the aristocracy through either wealth or promotion, military victories, whatever it is, right? New men obviously don't carry the sort of lineage that Evola talks about. And so they're always talked about in a condescending way, but it's been a it's been a phrase that's been used for literally thousands of years in aristocratic circles to describe this phenomenon. They're not as locked out as you think, right? But it in the modern era, we're just not seeing meritocracy. We're just not seeing it. So, right, but okay, wait, first of all, I, I thought, don't we always talk about the statistic where it's like, you know, some person reaches a bunch of money and then essentially it's like the second or third generation, you know, goes back it's to the all mean gone, yeah. spending all their money. I Revert have yeah, to the right mean. here, Sitch. I'll put right. it in the in the chat of the, of the Zoom chat. You can pull this up, Adam, if you want. It's right. the money.com article, the, the statistics. So that kind of destroys of this rich whole notion of the aristocracy. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, it actually proves it. Because so, so this what? says 70% of rich families lose their wealth by the second generation. So mm -hmm. the 30% that don't, and then it's something like 10% uh, continue on after the third generation to, to, to keep being rich. What is that class? They are an yeah. aristocracy. And it's because they not only have no, the wait, money. Okay, but you need also, to define aristocracy, also... Dan. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean when you say this word? Okay, let's see. Um, aristocracy from aristos meaning best. And Kratos meaning power and strength. But what do you mean? Don't, don't, what do you mean? What do you mean? That's, that's what he means by it. That's, that's what, what I mean. Yeah. Say yeah. it again. I was talking. The, the, the term derives from the Greek aristokratia, meaning rule of the best. Yes. I mean, okay. they, but that's rule of the richest. The well. So what? Yeah. That, wait. That doesn't. That's literally the same. You're just using it as a synonym for meritocracy. Though. Yes, totally. It is. Oh my God, we finally arrived back to the beginning of the conversation. Yes, it is. That's the point. That's wait, wait, no, that, <laughs> fuck, no, wait. You can't just say I'm using this word to mean the same thing, even though this word has a bunch of language yeah, front loaded into it that do I'm leaving mean out. The same thing. Okay, oh, no, oh. they. Okay, God. So okay. wait. No, in this entire Sitch, conversation. I, 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 I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess I, here. So, Sitch, what you're talking about is like the Great Gatsby: old money versus new money. That's that, not that's, what I'm talking about. No, no, that's the conversation here. Is that like you guys are talking about? Well, America allows for uh, new families with new ideas to to go from rags to riches. They can go from the bottom to the top. Right. That's new money, and that's great. Right. You, every functioning society needs that. But every society without meritocracy, though, you don't have that. True. Yeah. True. But also every society also ha has old money. And the reason it's old money is not because they've been using their power to keep people down, though sometimes that happens. But sometimes it's because they're actually good and they've been good for generations and they've earned that place at the top. So they're simultaneously meritocratic and aristocratic. Yes, yeah, sometimes. But as we know, historically, in most societies, it was that was it was literally using power to keep people down. Well, give, you couldn't progress through society. Give me an example. Oh, um, I, 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 can, I can actually give need an example. Um, well, no, 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 you, no, 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 I, I, I can give you one. I, I mean, give, give me um, an example. I, I, I feel like I'm talking well, to President Sunday. This I is feel like, like there's a little debate brain going well, on here. Let me just. No, wait, wait, wait. So, no, because you guys, wait. I, you guys I can't fucking tell me. The historical trend you, is not unreasonable. You can't tell me, first of all, going back to your definition of aristocracy, you cannot tell me that all you mean is ruling of the best. Okay. Because you know that's not what the fucking word means in common usage. Okay, so so there are here, let, let, let's define something for this. So you can have like open aristocracies where you have clearly an aristocratic uh, an aristocratic class that has earned their way there and they've held their their position there for centuries due to continually re-earning it every generation. And then right. you have and, and one, one example of this, right, would be European knights, right? Okay. This yeah. th this is a good example of a merit-based aristocratic class. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And then, and then you have a closed aristocratic system where the people who are there they use their power to prevent new people from joining the class. Here, let me let me simplify it though. And, well, well, and, and if, if you want an example of that, that would be uh, Venice. On uh, Venice during its fall, Ooh, because yeah, the yeah. merchant class of Venice uh, used their power to prevent creative destruction, and the and the city basically collapsed. So you you have examples of both of these types of of aristocrats around. Why? Why? I mean, just this seems like needless complication here for a very, very yeah. simple idea. <laughs> yeah. The it's problem, not, the problem yes. that you're trying to avoid is you're trying to avoid getting some dumbass 80 IQ imbecile into the uh, the treasure of the nation because okay, he's look, somebody's we'll use, nephew. Right. That's what you're trying to avoid. Names, right. You're trying to avoid the case where Joe Biden is in charge of the United States. Oh, but that's fair. Look, no. 
Like, we're Carl. literally there. <laughs> we're this literally is my, no, in this wait, position. This is my problem. And if you don't like Joe Biden, let's say Donald Trump. Then. <laughs> right. This is, the, this is my problem with the conversation. Because the conversation yes. started with, you know, we're like, oh, you know, we don't, you know, you in America, you don't have an aristocracy. It's anymore. not about Okay. You wait, no, this is about, about, wait, this is about that. Okay. It's not and, then about we're, and then Adam says, well, we have a meritocracy. And then we're talking about the differences between the two systems. And now, Dev, and I guess you are telling me that there is no difference and that you just mean the same fucking thing. So do. I don't know what the like I don't know what's what we're talking about anymore. I'm completely okay. lost okay. here. So le, le, the, the, basically, right? The, the term meritocracy is kind of like a fig leaf. It's a, it's a wish. It's a wish that's never going to be fulfilled, right? Oh so my God. It's, it's, okay. I don't so agree you're with defining that meritocracy not, and aristocracy in weird no, no, ways so. that don't conform with like why why of, why okay, is okay. America a superpower and and wait no no wait no I, well, how I are you even that. defining meritocracy? I don't even know. Well, I mean, you're, you would surely define meritocracy as uh, to take an equal playing field and then have people tested no, on no. various metrics. No, and no, then those no, people no, who no, are good no. at those metrics rise to the top, right? Well, how, how well, first of all, there's no such my... thing as a, a completely equal playing field. Right? Well, yes. Yeah. Well, no, how, how you filling, people... It's filling positions based on merit. Yes. Okay. Based but on not, ability, not not but bloodline the content or of the word merit is definitely subjective. I said this like totally, twenty minutes okay, ago. Obviously, yeah, but the, the, yes. yeah, yeah. But the problem with that then is that I mean, Lizzo is the most meritorious uh, singer in the United States right? because mm -hmm. people buy her records, because people listen to her, because people want to consume. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, just because not, you it's, don't, it's not like, like it's not it like doesn't Lizzo was standing on a street corner. And then a massive crowd just gathered. Institutions look, I ju I just chose looked up, her. Look, to I be just looked up. Base. I don't know what her brain. I don't know what her uh, rise to fame. Look, was, how she, she became she's famous. like a middle class upbringing in Detroit. I looked it up mm -hmm. just because I was yeah. curious because we were talking about it. Okay, she doesn't. She's not from. Her parents weren't music producers. Okay, I, I get right. the difference. So I just no, like, but what I'm saying I, is I get, the merit of Lizzo. She's not the world's greatest singer. She's not the world's greatest. According to player. you, it, you just said it was subjective. So there's a no, bunch no, of different no, subjects no, out yeah, there. Yeah, no, no. But I think I think the the you know if you were gonna argue from a music theory perspective or something like that, right? You, the the greatest I'm arguing singer from a capitalist lived, perspective. It's gonna, it's gonna be someone like Whitney Houston or something, right? It's not Lizzo, and yet Maybe? Lizzo is the big export, right? Because she fits. Know. She checks a bunch of boxes and. This is what is meritorious in the people who are controlling these institutions. Right. Well, also, well not just the people controlling institutions. People apparently like to consume this product. For yeah, I, I think the average normie isn't really very um, aware of what they do on a daily basis. Well, the average basis. normie doesn't, doesn't, uh, isn't what moves the music industry anyway. It's kids. So. Well, yeah, right. well, they're even less aware of what they do on a daily basis. I understand. <laughs> well, no, I'm sure every, I'm sure if you go to every kid, they know who Lizzo is. Most kids know who Lizzo. Sure, is. but they don't know why they know who Lizzo is. <laughs> well, wait a minute. They, I'm sure they've heard her songs. Yeah, I, no, I know, but they don't know why they know who Lizzo is. They don't know Here, why Lizzo. Let me put it this way. But that's did not Lizzo, select, well, not the question. Did, did Lizzo go organically viral on YouTube and build like a, a career off of that, or was she chosen? None by of this. A producer? All you're doing is challenging know. the idea that a meritocracy. Exists. You're not challenging the fundamental concept well, wait, of I, a meritocracy. Well, yeah. Where well, I, I don't intend to. I like meritocracy. Yes. I, I like meritocracy. Okay. Yeah, I like the idea, but yeah. but the thing is, there's also a way of looking at this, Adam, which is meritocracy is absolutely inevitable in every walk of life, everywhere, ever. I don't think so. Um, Look, I've, so. I've been in plenty of places so, yeah. where meritocracy if, doesn't exist. In a long enough time scale, to some extent, yes. But obviously, exactly. we want to shrink that. We want to shrink that time scale to people's lifetimes, right? Sure. Look, but like, merit, meritocracy the, the doesn't is, really exist in China, and it doesn't exist in Russia, and that's why I they have well, such hundred years if they collapse. You know, I don't know. I, shitty I think militaries. That, again, yeah. The the question of what is meritorious is the thing that's really in debate when you say things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, like. For example, Putin and Xi Jinping, right? Evil men, obviously evil men, but obviously Machiavellian geniuses, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So it's mm. not that they are not meritorious. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Well, at least at some point to get to their position. Right? Yeah, they they wouldn't position, be there otherwise if they didn't yeah. have something that got them there. I mean, they're okay. not just figureheads. They're well, the, king, the kings of Putin, the trash heap. Putin is an evil <laughs> Russian dictator who murders right. journalists, murders opposition, yeah, you know, sure. has all sorts of like persecutory laws, yeah. all sorts of things I wouldn't agree with, right? But when mm -hmm. you listen to him speak, you can tell he's obviously very intelligent. Yes. 
right? And so mm -hmm. he's got merit, right? It's, he's evil, but mm -hmm. he's a diabolical villain, basically. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah, but but okay. that's but that but that's the problem, isn't it? Like, okay, he's meritorious. P people people rise <laughs> up through the ranks in Russia yeah. based on one metric: loyalty to Putin. So Nowadays. if he could then, pick somebody who was actually good at managing the military or someone he knew would not stab him in the back, who is he going to choose? Sure. But he's going to choose reason... a guy that's shitty at managing the military that's not going to stab Putin in the back. That is the problem. Sure, but the reason the system is as it is is because of merit demonstrated by Putin, right? Yeah, but yeah, but that's not a meritocracy. Okay, wait, it, it sounds like wait, wait. It sounds like your argument, Carl, is that essentially you think that we need to have some elite aristocracy that's guarding the highest levels of society because they'll have it's better morals need, or culture. That's what or we have, and we're going to have that either way. Yeah, it's inevitable. Yes, because even in a meritocratic system, you will have people who continuously win, and they will. They will form into. A, wait, 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 wait! I can't believe a we're great going into an hour. We have, we have a bunch of about bunch of modern people that live under a queen telling us about you know how the no, no, world this, works. This, this I is know. Way more interesting than reacting to a video, though, right? Uh -huh. So, a, a really great example of this. <laughs> a really great example of this is the Hillary Clinton campaign. Do you remember when the emails were leaked, and you could see the campaign, uh, the 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 DNC was rigging it for Hillary, right? Like mm -hmm. th this is this is the aristocracy at work in that particular institution and it's like for, again you, it's not an aristocracy because it, they're not it, it they didn't choose hillary clinton because they said listen the clinton bloodline must be preserved okay that was a know, decision man. i think that, that i i think it's again. exactly because she was a clinton that she was chosen no well wait 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 wait. in 2016 be, yeah that was obvious. it was wait no it was because hillary which obviously was through bill used those connections in those times to build all these coalitions of power. Yeah, but that's what you know, aristocracy the is. Eight, ten... No, it's not because <laughs> the aristocracy would then say, well, once Hillary Clinton is tapped, you know, then her daughter is tapped and then her daughter's daughter yeah, Chelsea, is tapped. And Chelsea it goes probably on forever is forever and ever and ever. And we're always stuck here. But as we know in America, that didn't happen. Because what happened? Hillary Clinton lost to a man named Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, aristocracies are not monolithic entities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, no, so, so if you have wait, if you have a society that's based around an aristocracy and law, then it is. No. 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 How? No. There are always like, like I said, there are open aristocracies within, the, within an aristocracy. There are all, yeah. What's the in law any, in any around way, your mind? Wait, wait, wait. There's competing groups of elites competing with each other. Yes. Yeah. Factions. Yeah. Right. But that's not what I said. I said in an aristocracy, if it's enshrined in law, no one who's not part of this elite group can rise to that level. Right. By but law, the point is, you're down. wrong about that. Right, as I said, I'm not what, am I wrong no, about? No, but that's what new men are. Right, people do rise to become aristocrats. Okay, so so the one, yeah, right. so one out of a and, million men, with all the right circumstances align, sure. they can. Yeah, but that's how it is now. Yeah, that's, that's how, not that's how. how it, what the fuck no, are you it, talking no, no, about? No, Sitch, it is. It is. Okay, how many people actually go from the lowest rung of American society and then become billionaires? That doesn't that matter. That is not the no, 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 that's no. completely it, irrelevant. It is the no, it is the question. Because you just said no. This is fucking wait. No, stop. This is wild. No, goal post moving. Insane to me. <laughs> you're comparing a system where literally <laughs> people. You're comparing a system where literally people were were capped at being fucking peasants to a system nowadays where someone can go out and get a fucking education and get a job and make a better life for themselves. Well, They're not going to be a fucking millionaire, but guess what? They can they can move up the middle class or upper yeah. middle class, and then their kid can get a better education and they can stay in upper middle class or move up to be fucking rich. Yeah, you can't happens, compare this to this fucking class, fucking aristocracy society. system <laughs> that we used to have. This is insane. No, no. But, okay. Sitch, that's it, not really a very different different account of like medieval Europe. Yeah, what? Like, oh, what, 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 what do you what do you think a villain is? Where do you think the word villain comes okay. from? Don't. Yeah, so pe peasants could just listen. You you're, you're born a peasant. And you're like, hey, let me just go to my local fucking school and learn how to be, you know, a, what a, a, a trade. Out of here, so you're not royalty. Like you don't guild. belong in this school. There is what a guild classes. was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is so the, this is the, this is so ridiculous. Sitch, 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 you're correct in that there is more class mobility now than there was. Just like, that's, but it's like astronomical amounts. What you're acting it like it's it the is. same I, fucking yeah. thing in medieval no, 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 Europe. I'm not, I'm bullshit. Not, I am not. Hold on. I'm not. No, I'm Carl not is that. acting like it's the same fucking <laughs> he, thing. He, like, here's not terribly terribly fucking it's not terribly he, he, here's different. It's not terribly different. Here's what I'm saying, Sitch. Here's what I'm saying. Oh my god. That in the past, it was possible for a, a poor person who just, through luck, happened to be exceptional at something, to become, as as Sargon said, of a course. new man. Of that course. happens more often now than then. That's true. But it's still the same process. No, it's not. But it's not just through luck. 
And also, wait, and even if you just say that, it is definitely through luck. Wait, wait, it's it's definitely luck. It's it's definitely luck. There's a difference between you live in some peasant village and one out of every million people through luck can, you know, ascend the ranks to some higher station versus one out of every, you know, 20 people can ascend the station, right? I don't think one out of 20 people in America become like billionaires or millionaires. Okay, I want you to, to compare the economic mobility and the share of wealth that people in America have to medieval England in you know, whatever time period you want. It's definitely worse in America now. Yeah, no, obviously. Significant. Well, well oh, you think it's worse in, in, America in medieval now, England? Medieval Europe was not as bad as it is in America. That is now. just okay. Well, I'm gonna have to. I, I'm not sure. Some, I agree you with have you some on numbers that. on that. <laughs> have you? Have you? Okay, yeah, I'll get the numbers. Okay, bring me some numbers here. That sure. shows me that it's, it's yeah. possible that, but I, I don't know that that that. It's, it's, there was more wrong, upward not, mobility uh, in medieval but England here, than there is in America now. Not about mobility, right? It's just about share of the wealth. I said mobility and share of the wealth. Yeah. The the point that I'm saying, Sitch, is is that. I think the American view of what an uh, of what an aristocratic class is is that it's entirely closed, and some of them were entirely closed. It is by definition. No, 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 no. A lot of them. For no, a lot of them weren't. A lot of them weren't. Okay. Well, a then... lot of them weren't just closed, and you had to marry in or whatever, and or you were fucked. You'd, you'd be born in. No, that that's like okay. You know, that's you, fine. You, you, get, you, know, you, you have a soldier who you know he he pulls something off in the middle of a battlefield, and he becomes he, he gets promoted, and now he's like, oh, suddenly I'm. I'm landed. What the fuck happened? But like, okay, you, so through, here, through here's, merit, here's that just, happens. Here's just the first couple of things I pull, pulled off of uh, Google, right? But they they really make the point that things are worse now, and you just don't realize it, right? So, oh no, in, this He's is reading this pink is, news. No, 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 that's the Guardian. <laughs> Um, but oh, this, the this, the second Gray. one right, is a study of Sweden, right? And as they say, in 1750, right, the average noble was 60 times richer than the average person, and they held 29% of all private wealth, mm-hmm. right? If you go to the Guardian article now, it's by Bernie Sanders. I hate to do it, right? But <laughs> he, as he says in 2022, three multi billionaires own more wealth than half of American society, right? Right? He is not wrong that income, they are the numbers. Income inequality it, is worse, yes. It's way, way worse. But you know yeah. that's wait. You know that's bullshit, though, right? You know it's, it's like not a bullshit. bullshit. No, 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 no. You know that the concept that you're trying to, right. to bring you, forward here is no, but, not okay. A real but concept, now you're right? moving the goalposts because that's I know, what wait, you asked. Whoa, for. whoa, whoa! I'm not no, moving you, shit. You, what you, are you talking you about? Said, <laughs> that's not true, right? You said that's not true, and I've just shown you that right. is true. Right, wealth inequality is way worse now than it was 500 years ago. Oh my That's god! Just, now I, I, my... I agree with you. That <laughs> that is not the end so of hang this. in there. We have a video. <laughs> you, wait, I'm not saying you... that that's the end of the story. No, because yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, right? yeah, obviously. Wait, wait, wait. Obviously, can we just we can go... we just do wait, one at a time here, I just for a second? This, Adam, I know, I know, but just don't interrupt, Sitch. Let him respond. Sitch has okay. just had his case devastated. He has to. No, I have it, and you know that this is a BS. No interrupting, Sitch. Let him respond. There is a very good reply to this. Yeah. No, because you because obviously when we live in today's economy where the economy has exploded astronomically from what it compared to be obviously the very you know wealthy are going to be many many more times wealthy than anyone could have existed back then but that doesn't mean that you can say oh well a person who was in the lower class you know as a fucking peasant on a mud farm somewhere is comparable to to you know the average person that's going on in america right now that's yeah, this the ludicrous is, this is just sheer prejudice right you say peasant like like it's a term of disdain but that's what i am like that's okay. what my ancestors are, and they have been since all time. What's well, what you're making proper- these low class no, no, arguments? No, no. You have low class. No, no. Blood. But listen, listen. <laughs> what property do you own? I own I'm a, I'm property. a property owner. What are you talking about? Right. Yeah. yeah because you, you you're, you're middle class in America, right? Yeah. But okay. Now let's take the average millennial, the average Zoomer. What property do they own? I don't know. What do they own? Well, wait. And that's when I was that problem, age, right? I didn't know so, shit either. But, but, they're, no, they're no. But listen. But my ancestors, they owned their property. Right. So you can sit there and go peasant, peasant, all you like, but they actually had a good quality of life for the standard of the time in which they lived. They owned their own things. They were free. Right. The average millennial, Steve Bannon is not wrong about this. They are like Russian serfs these days. And that's why they're going to own nothing and be happy that things were better for the regular person proportionally than than they are now. I'm telling you, man. So wait, when you say peasant, I don't know what you mean either. I mean free man. Okay, well, okay. Obviously, when I say we're peasant, peasant, I don't is. mean a free man. I mean a peasant 
who doesn't own land who works on it for someone else, like a lawyer. I think that's a serf. A serf. A serf. Yeah. No, no, okay. a, a serf is someone. No, no, peasants could not. You know, you didn't necessarily have to own land to be a peasant. Serfs went with the land. Did yeah. So serfs were tied to the land, right? Yeah. But serfdom is something that hasn't existed in Western Europe for hundreds and hundreds of years since before the existence of the United States. So. It, even even the founders of the United States wouldn't have been talking about serfs, right? So a peasant so, is a pre-industrial agricultural laborer or farmer with limited yeah. land ownership, especially one living in the Middle Ages under feudalism. Uh, in Europe, there are three classes of peasants. There are non-free slaves, there are semi-free serfs, and there are free tenants. So I assume you're talking specifically about free tenants. Yes, but that's the overwhelming majority of the population. I mean, in uh, England, serfdom had... Basically, worn out since about 14th century, I think, the, the end of serfdom. So, like saying peasant, it's like you may as well say working class. The right? Yeah, but the majority of, of even free tenant peasants didn't own the land they worked on. Yeah, they did. So, Carl, like, how do we fix own, this problem? Not according to this article, but you would own a small right. house or you'd own a small plot of land. I mean, don't worry, you'd sell it or you'd rent it or whatever. You know, like it's a market, right? You can do what you want with the land. You can buy land, you can sell land, right? But the point is, you're acting as if these people literally had no fucking rights or had no access to prosperity. And that's just not true. Okay, I didn't say that. I said compared to today's standard. Yeah, but com compared to we're today. De we're better off now than we were back then. I don't know if that's true. I okay, don't know well, if that's true. Have to, you have to present something to me other so, than the so fact to that be the fair, rich people well, okay, own more money now than back then. What do you want? What, uh, you I'll, have to I'll compare the purchasing thing. power, I guess, would be the best sure. comparison. The purchasing okay. power of the peasant back then to today. And the, yeah, I guess, okay. actually, no, I, what would be standard of living? Wouldn't that be the best thing? Well, I mean, proportionally, this if you want to do it that way. But, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, a medieval peasant doesn't have access to antiseptic. So, sure. You know, what can you do? But... Um, let me let me look it up. All right, see if you can. Yeah, see if you can find that in I mean, mobility yeah. rates because that's what if, we're if, talking about. If we're talking about just quality of life, clearly it's better now just because of advanced technology. technology. I understand. Yeah. yeah, but that's kind if, of unfair but, standard to sure. judge by. Yeah, sure, I understand. yeah. If we're comparing like per the standards of the time, are is the lower class better off now than then? Okay. Yeah, I'm not I sure. Don't know. We're all going to go back to. Uh, to be fair, though, I mean. The good old I, days of... I don't I don't I don't necessarily care about per the standards of the time because I like these standards. I like having video games. Thanks very much. Sure. But the, 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 these things are not going to go away. Right. And the, the point it, that really is the important point to make from all of this is that essentially what and this is a very American thing to do. Right. Stigmatizing Europe is easy for based and, right? e and based. But it's also <laughs> not true. I mean, right? it kind of it's is. also not true. And you, are, kind of you are arriving in a position that is worse than it would have been for these people back then. Then why so, are you guys going to outcompete us? How come we've taken over the world? Well, okay, because you were on a very remote continent with weak neighbors, massive mm. amounts of resources, and an English heritage. That's why. Yeah. And there'd been no, a massive culture, war in Europe our culture that you benefited directly from. That That's why. Okay. Well, I guess it's better to be lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, well, you got it, sis. Yeah. You, fi you finally that's learned. What I said. <laughs> that's what I said, though. <laughs> So suddenly like, the aristocracy is justified, wrecked. right? We we inherited no, no. a meritocracy. That's right. The American aristocracy is justified. Yeah. No, no, you, 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 you inherited it. Yes, yes. You didn't earn it. You inherited it. Yeah, ah. Exactly. No, it's it's completely <laughs> true. <laughs> so 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 Sitch, like when, when it comes to like okay, uh someone who's born with 150 IQ, yeah. right? This guy, he got it by luck. He didn't earn that. Of you know, th there there is there's a huge amount of luck when it comes into come to the stuff. What does okay, that have to do with anything? I don't know what that has to do with anything that we're talking oh, about. Well, no, right? because, because in a meritocratic system, yeah. that guy would get ahead. But also, that guy's kids would probably also have 150 No IQs. fucking duh. I'm, who's yes. I'm not arguing no, against this. Who's but but then this? If, you go, if you go ahead 10 generations, you have an aristocratic class. Okay. You're we're literally using arguing over a very specific yeah. version of aristocracy that we're not talking about. No, no, no. no. They will You're just saying that a group of people who, are, who have a lot of power – will end up con you know congregating that power which we all yeah, agree with consolidating all that power <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not just that they have power it's that they are the best in society they're more capable okay so well okay over a long that's not first of all it's not necessarily even true i think again is. we can bring no because again we'll bring up the even dev, if it's you know. not necessarily true but it's contingently true well no because we'll right? you just it's bring up the dev. a series of factors that generally hold you just bring up the dev whole, you know, oh, most gener most families lose their wealth, 
right? Over... Yeah, but thirty percent don't. Yeah, but is it the same? The is it the same thirty percent? It's ten percent that don't. Oh, sorry, still, 10%. Okay, so it's even less. So is it the same? Well, that's the point. Aristocracies it... are always a tiny. Po- like the aristocracy yeah, they're minority. in medieval France was like one percent of the population. Of course, right. Well, don't say of course when you've literally just had the opposite <laughs> position. That's not wait. No, what the fuck? Because under on, those, on. wait, under that, wait. There's a difference between saying that in a free society, okay, that you have all these rich people who amass all these wealth, and you're saying, oh, well, you know, they're just gonna, you know, all the people that amass their wealth, they're just gonna create a new aristocracy at the top, and they're just gonna retain all their power, and they're not just doing it because they're keeping other people out. It's because they're the best, and it's like, well, no, because we know that when the families that have the best people that make the best money statistically on average the fucking family loses all that money in a couple of generations so obviously that's not the case that, that, no that's, that's the true argument. that's true but then the ones that don't they're the actual aristocracy yeah but it's not the is it the, what i asked you is is it the same is it the same 10 percent that never loses it okay is it there some magic 10 percent never lose it or is it just 10 percent retains it beyond the two generational period and that 10 I mean, keeps it's, changing are you I guys, take one fucking idiot to lose the family's money very true well, i mean we all we all know about paris hilton right like yes, yes mm-hmm. obviously but but the, the point is is that, here here let, let me ask you this Sitch. let me ask you this how did the aristocracies how did the aristocracies of the world become aristocracies okay. if not through the merit of an ancestor so wait wait Obviously, yeah, obviously someone was very good at congealing power at some point in the, in the yeah. past. Yes, obviously. And then, how, and then how did their children hold on to it? Well, because there was usually some sort of <laughs> blood-based they were also good at it? Rule. No, <laughs> that's, also not, good at that's, it? that's not no, necessarily no, no, true. They, they are literally raised true. to maintain the family fortune. That, that is not necessarily true. There would be some sort of blood I, I didn't say it was necessarily true. I said okay. it's contingently true, right? The, these children are raised with that in mind. Now, some of them rebel. Some of them deliberately drop out, like, you know, become druggies and end up like a sound piker or whatever like what well, like, like, that, like the oh, no no what was the guy um the communist guy with the beard and the glasses uh was was it vox all of them <laughs> no yeah well yeah apart from all of them there's a specific one whose name escapes me Vosh? oh this is really annoying no not what's Vosh. uh who cares you know about the guy who it? Vox. it doesn't matter he, it's not a big he deal. did the fucking he's the annoying wafy Ian, communist Ian, uh, oh, Carlos oh, Ian, Carlos Maza. Maza. Carlos Maza. He's, he's a great example. He's literally the son of an aristocrat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's going to okay. lose all that money in his yeah, lifetime. Yeah, he, okay. yeah, he of course. is. Yes. But yes. He, he's doing it deliberately because otherwise he, he knows what he's supposed to do. He's deliberately rejecting it. Right. Uh, he, yeah, but this, or, like, or like Alex, Alex Lifshitz is another guy like that. Yeah. If you remember okay. what he was okay. like. Yeah. What is the? I don't understand what the point of this. The point is we've established there's an yeah. aristocracy. What no, is wait, uh, what is the point of the conversation? What is the what is the point of this conversation? Yeah. Okay. Here, the I, point- I, I, I can tell you my point at least. I mean, okay, I'm not pro. I'm, I'm not like I'm not sitting here simping for an aristocracy. I'm not saying that's that what, I like well, it. That's what it sounds like you're no, doing. No, no. Doing. I, I'm saying that it is. It's inevitable. It's just how it will be. Yeah. Okay. So you're no amount of social engineers. When you say aristocracy, you just mean there's going to be a, you know. Power is going to congeal the top, right? That's all what you is, when you say that. Carl, what and, is well, your the, argument? The, the, there's going to be like, like, like a, a circular feedback loop of power congeals at the top because the people who have the power are good at something, and then they pass that down. So the, the, there's going to be like the people, and, who, stay at the, the, the people and, who stay at the top long term are there simultaneously because they have power and because they're good at what they do. It's right, and, right. And so as we know. From Jordan Peterson. Okay, the more resources you have, the easier it is to acquire and accumulate more resources. Yeah, yes. the so there's effect. going to be so a two. Fa- so we're going to say at least two factors, probably a lot more. Of yes, there's going to be people at the top. They're going to keep being at the top because because they have so many resources and all this stuff. Yes. And maybe they have good genes or whatever. They're going to pass it down to their kids, but they're also going to pass down to their kids a culture that might be based around you know retaining yeah. wealth, being educated, blah blah blah, and it's going to create a yeah. positive feedback loop. Okay, I yeah. don't think. Me nor Adam have ever said anything contrary to this in our entire history of streaming. Or okay, in this conversation. But, but or that conversation. is an aristocratic class, what you've just described. Okay. Well, when we say aristocrat, what we mean is that there's a system where it's literally preventing people from entering the upper echelons <laughs> of society through blood lineage. That's what we mean. Yes. Okay, but that's, that's because you're American. Very specific, an American definition of hey, aristocrat. Well, no, that was yeah. literally the definition on Google when I first Google at the term. <laughs> that, that, that's an American okay. view of it. I can, yeah. definitely well, that's American Carl, view of it. Let's, this all America fun. rules the world. I already talked about this. That means our hey, definition is <laughs> the correct one. Hey, Carl, how do you argue against affirmative action? Um, well, personally, um, because I'm still liberal in my sensibilities, uh, I say, well, it's not fair, is it? Okay. But you don't ever argue on the 
that it's it deteriorates a meritocracy? Well, I don't think the people who are forming affirmative action believe in meritocracy. So it seems like so. A so weak... it's so if we want to lower standards to let people in based on race, that's just fine with you. No, that's not what I said. Okay, okay. I, I, the, the, the reason I wouldn't argue on the grounds of meritocracy is just because I don't think it'd be effective, really. I mean, I would like a meritocracy. Like, I would like, as you say, all of these things, but they just don't happen, right? They, it's just not real, and they don't come into being. And the people we would be appealing to um, are totally implacable when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They, I mean, you, you literally, you're watching race-based hiring, right? Should. So, no, well, this, no, this, on, this, no, no, hang on, hang on, let me finish, right? Because it, it, like, it's, it's like saying, well, look, isn't it the morally right thing to do to argue this? And it's like, okay, but if it doesn't have any effect, then what difference does it make if you did or didn't? Well, I mean, obviously, I said before, the meritocracy is some somewhat aspirational. I mean, obviously, we make sure. murder illegal but, because no, no, it but, doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be no murder but it's something that yeah, we but strive the, 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 lawmakers, that, though, the lawmakers are sympathetic to the concept of making murder illegal they're mm. not sympathetic let's, let's to not the change the subject of to meritocracy. Murder. look you're you're basically making the I'm argument not changing because the subject to murder. I, I'm we can't you an, an analogy but you, but you are definitely saying that if we can't achieve some standard then the standard is pointless that's exactly well, yeah. what you're saying if yeah absolutely if you can't achieve a standard then why what's the point in talking about it you really believe that? Well, yeah, okay. Let, let's say I think that we need to instantiate a standard in which all of our lawmakers are 25 feet tall. That's the standard. But well, we can never I, arrive at that because literally okay. humans don't grow that tall. So what was the point in adopting that standard? Well, there is there is a tangible point in adopting a standard of certain metrics. I mean, I literally want metrics. to be ruled by the Nephilim, right? But it can't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, but now, now you're introducing standards that are not remotely adoptable because nobody uh, achieves that standard. But and, obviously and there are... Where they're racially hiring. Look, we hold on. <laughs> we we have like SAT scores. We have all sorts of these uh, intelligence yeah. metrics that we can evaluate people by. Oof. People are meeting those standards to some extent. Uh, I've heard stories, throw, man. Throwing those standards out the window, I just I don't think is a good thing. So oh, no, I don't agree anyway. with the abolition of standards. Well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's you, no point You are literally, you just said that. Not, no, you I'm literally not, just said <laughs> that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying there are different ways to approach subjects, right? I don't see the point of appealing to people who do not believe in meritocracy on the grounds of meritocracy, right? This just oh, seems to me to be good argumentative practice, right? There's no point. Um, you to are one of those people. Yeah, but I'm not in charge. You don't believe in meritocracy. No, I, I would definitely, I personally... Wait, we can't have this conversation that, right? for an hour and you tell me that you believe in meritocracy. <laughs> no, like, I, Do you mean believe in as in you think yeah. it's a good thing or that it exists? Look, I you you are basically saying because a meritocracy is imperfect, then we should throw away the concept. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is it's not what we're seeing in reality around us, right? I'm still, when I hire someone at work, right, I'm not saying, I, I don't hire them because of their looks. You should, you need to hire them at random, Carl. I think that's what <laughs> exactly. you need to that's, do. <laughs> no, obviously, you know, I look at the qualities they have, and if they're good qualities, I hire them, right? Oh, look, so you basically run your business like it's a meritocracy. Yeah. But well, yeah, but, and that's why we're succeeding. And I'm not saying it doesn't work. What I'm saying oh is why the question of what meritorious means is different in each context. And of the course. people to whom we're appealing don't believe that what we think it means is what they think it means. I'm appealing right? to you. Not okay. these people, not some strangers. <laughs> like you and I are the ones having this conversation. But I'm not the this one whole in charge conversation of the system. Well, Adam, you did just ask, you know, how, how would you talk to a lefty and convince them of meritocracy. You ask something like that. And it's like, well, lefties don't care about meritocracy. You can't yeah, appeal to those it. standards. That is true. But but yeah. I'm just, I guess we're confused because it sounds like you don't either. Yes. It sounds like you do. and you and the left are in the same boat. Exactly. That's why I brought it up. I'm like, uh, so I guess Listen, you really don't have any argument against, well, you would say the fairness argument, you say it's unfair, but you would have to say it's unfair based on a metric of what? On a metric. Meritocracy. Of, was, no, not right? necessarily. No, you could, you know. What you're going to say, it's unfair of, that no, you were born white. Is that what you're going to say? No. Yeah. You can, uh, you, it would be a stronger argument to make the case on the merit of non-discrimination. 
Mm -hmm. Because at least they care about non-discrimination. Yeah, but what would you be uh, discriminating based on? Well, race on this case. No, you'd be discriminating based on merit. Because you would uh, be saying that just because, you know, if a white person works harder and gets higher SAT scores and they're kicked and they're not able to get into Stanford because those slots were given to minorities, you'd be arguing based on merit. No, because they would argue that well, the minorities are just as meritorious. And Their scores like, no, are lower. Because you're a racist. I don't think if, they would actually sorry, I don't think so. I think they would say that merit shouldn't even be part of the conversation. Then you have to convince them that, well, that it should be. I think it could be. It could go either way on that, to be honest, I think. But um, the but the point is, like, it, that, that's not really something they care about. Like, they don't care. Well, I just, the white, I, the, they, they think it's a good thing that the white guy is deliberately kept out because look, even, whether he's meritorious or not. They don't, they don't believe, look, I'm just astounded because I thought we would be on the same page about meritocracy being a good thing, but it just seems well, I, like we aren't on the same page about that. So well, no, I, I think we are. I think it's just, I, I, I believe, I, I believe meritocracy <laughs> is the foundation of Western civilization. I, I'm willing to say that. So I would I just, say Christianity like, is probably the foundation of Western civilization. Okay, so we just have are, have very different positions here. Well, well I think I mean, it's so, like an argument that Christianity historically can very easily speaking. go hand in hand with meritocracy. Not necessarily. Well, if you want to talk about the Protestant Reformation, the Protestant Reformation was basically this guy Martin Luther came out with the idea yeah. that you could understand God on your based on your own merit <laughs> you could read the bible and interpret well, it just as well as anybody else could that's not, you didn't that's not need really some arist- ar- uh, aristocratic class telling you what the bible no was. His, his argument was the catholic church had a bunch mm. of things that simply weren't biblical i mm. i do think that the protestant reformation ushered in this I mean, kind of meritocratic mindset mm-hmm. yeah but the meritocratic mindset is have more, you heard of uh, the protestant sort of, work ethic Yes, um, but mm-hmm. where does it exist? Yeah, but what is the purpose of the Protestant work? Get it. Okay, well, look, look at look at a map of Protestantism. Get it up mm-hmm. now, seriously. Get up a map of Protestantism. No, no. In the what States? you'll notice, what you'll notice, is that it's Northwestern Germanic Europeans. Let's move on. Let's just move on. <laughs> it's like I, I feel like okay. we're just in total debate brain. I would I never no, no, but, in my no, wildest no. dreams what? thought Carl Benjamin would be against. Meritocracy. But what I don't guess think he is. Adam. Here we he are. Is. He didn't say okay. that. <laughs> so just let me. This is what it sounds like. Your position. You tell me if this is wrong. Okay. I will. Um, it sounds like your position is the current elites suck, and the reason the current elites suck is because we lost the idea of elite aristocrats guarding the institutions, and we've allowed the plebes to come in and give a you know corrupt them with their shitty plebe idea. And that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, there are people who say that. I know, but okay, so that's not your position. I mean, I think it's a it's a confluence of many different factors, right? There's, uh-huh. there's no one thing that has brought us to the position that we're in now, in my okay. view. Um, but you don't I think agree though, with there, what I there just is said. there is definitely a kind of coalition of midwits who are busy um, equalizing things uh, because they can't stand the fact that some people are actually better than them at some things, just naturally sure. or whatever okay. reason, right? right. And, th- and this is a genuinely hated thing. And this is why all of the racial affirmative action comes into play, because they look around and go, well, I just hate these white people. Why? I hate these Asians. Why? And it's like because they work hard and they succeed, right? And then there are other groups who don't work very hard and don't succeed. And they go, well, this is a racism problem. And right. it's not. It's a culture problem, right? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a problem within these cultures. But they can't handle that, because then you would have to discriminate on the basis of the content of people's character, and that's not going to get you to perfect equality. That's okay. one reason that things are going shit. But there are other reasons as well. But that's one factor. Sure, I don't. I agree with all that. Yeah, I know. Um, but like, it, it's not just as simple as just saying meritocracy, meritocracy. That doesn't answer any of the questions. That well, I don't even know your problems. position on meritocracy. Look, I can lay out my position in two sentences. What is your position? I I agree that if someone is good at the job, right? If you've got if you've got a job that is making bricks or something then you want the best brick maker you can get right 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 and if okay. You, okay. and if the boss steps in and says hey you have to hire my son he's a moron and makes shitty fucking bricks and yeah he's going to cost the business thousands yeah, I'd, of I'd dollars be yeah. i'd be annoyed right. at that yeah 
You'd be very annoyed at that, right? Yeah. But yeah. Well, but that's how aristocracy thing. works. And do you do you mm. agree that not necessarily? Should, right? Do you agree that we should at least as a goal should be trying to structure our society around the idea of meritocracy? Sure, but like okay. that happens all through history, right? Like the, trying to choose people who are good for jobs is a difficult thing. And a lot of the time, right? Like one one of the things that I think we in the modern day, especially in English speaking countries, forget is that we're actually the inheritors of a tradition of high trust, right? Most places in the world don't have high trust. And so to be able to trust someone, you have to have some kind of bond that connects you with that person. And so in a lot of places, you get aristocrats who are shit at what they're doing. But the only reason they they are the best person for the job because they are the most trustworthy. This right? is the Putin problem that I laid out yes, forty five yeah, minutes th ago. This, this this is exactly the Putin problem. Right? Yes, That's most of the world. But most of the world isn't the English speaking world. Right? It Look, took a long I, I time. I think the I think the lowering England of the trust value. One. I think the lowering of the trust in our society deteriorates meritocracy. That's a I huge totally problem. I totally agree. I totally yes. agree. But what deteriorates the trust? All, all sorts of cultural dishonesty things. yeah dishonesty right. corruption yes yeah but also um unfamiliarity Sim simpering I don't, for look, family members unfamiliarity i think the, that probably lowers trust is that not fair don't make this an yeah. immigration issue the, ch the <laughs> it's obviously an immigration issue <laughs> america do you think do you think do, th do you not think so do you think all of the so. all of the uh, communities in new york that are like ethnically segregated off. Do you think there's high trust between them? No, I think obviously there's, lo each there's lower trust in, in any cities. place where you have yeah. incredibly high get. population density is going to be a lower trust. Not Do you, necessarily. Has nothing, not necessarily. Wait, yes, necessarily. That's literally, no. that is true. Well, that no, is a fact. You know, Japan, Tokyo. It's not exactly. True, right? Do you like, have so a... It, it, it no, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, wait, 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 wait. Don't, Dev. Don't yes. pull a leftist on me, okay? When I say like, I'm not. hey, <laughs> you just did. You just did. Because when I, this is Ow. like when I say, oh, you know, obviously there's behavioral differences in sex that are biological because there seems to be sex-based no, roles. No that one's exist saying it's about almost, biology. Hold on. Hold on. In, in every society, <laughs> right? And then some, and then I'm pr talking to some lefty and they say, well, that's not true, Sitch, because here's the, you know, one or two counter examples. Here are the exceptions, Okay. So obviously, you know, that just because when you look at like Japan, which has a very specific, very unique culture, that doesn't mean that doesn't get rid of the concept that, as we all know, that in almost every society, the higher the population density there is, the, the less trust everyone has in everyone else. OK, we need that's 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 one of the most commonly you know, known studies is, psychological phenomenon. There probably is a correlation, because if you live in a higher density area, there's more people around you. And, and you don't was, know it, those is, people. Is, they become exactly, strangers. It's, they become it's, dehumanized uh, to you. Yeah, it's it's Dunbar's number. right? You can only know what the hundred people like. Yes. It's something okay, like that. So you right? agree so with it, me. So don't bring up yes. Japan as like at the wow, same that's time. But at the same time, we also know that having a bunch of different ethnicities all living in the same place also lowers trust. We sure. know that too. I can't yeah. because six, because six, they don't six, have six. the same culture, the same views on, on religion, the I same views on, on what's considered proper in the public sphere. I like, you, does you that also make a problems. difference though? Because China yes, is that makes yes. a difference. Hold hold on a second. China is super low trust. They have a meme. If you yeah, can China's cheat, a communist cheat. country. They're, well, no, they're, it, they're, they're it, communist countries, right. but they have the same culture. They have the same real. All the things that you're pointing no, out are the same in China. Is literally, to break down the culture. That's what the Cultural Revolution was. It was literally to throw out the old culture and instantiate the atomized communist culture. The same yeah. thing happened in Russia and Eastern Europe. And look at them, like they're insanely right. so, low trust societies because yeah, of it. E Eastern Europe was a high trust society. Now it's a low trust society, and it's mainly because of communism. Communism and, also creates low trust societies. And right. a lot of so, these countries are insanely ethnically homogenous as well. Right. So yeah. Not yeah. So, so the, the, the point, I guess, would be no, no. that, yeah, I, I think that obviously, and we know this statistically, that the more diverse an area is, that does have an influence and do, is a factor in terms of trust for everyone else the around them. culture is stronger. Yeah. Yes. That does, that is definitely something that's measured, but it's not the single factor and it doesn't necessarily We're mean We're not saying it's a single factor. I, under, I understand that. I understand that. Um, but, and there's other factors, obviously, as you brought up with, you know, the communist countries. Um, but I just, I don't think that's a good reason to bring up in terms of you know limiting immigration or something else to that effect well i didn't say limit but i mean like what i'm saying is there's a price to pay for everything right of course there's positive and so and everything yeah. you you can't have the high trust civilization that you want when you have literally doors open to any to strangers to come in 
Well, come I, up. yeah, obviously. Because some of these strangers borders, just won't be trustworthy. Yes. Sure. Right? Yeah. I Depends. So, on what? Well, if they're wearing an American flag T-shirt, obviously. <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Well, like, I mean, you can have an immigration program. Very optimistic. That is, you, you have an immigration program that is, let's say, more selective, and you can probably get some of the better immigrants, and you can still maintain a high trust sure. society, right? And you, but America is yeah. not doing that right now. I yeah. agree. Right. I agree. The, the border is too porous, sure. and we, if, don't if do you're good, gonna... we don't do any job at trying to force assimilation for people no. coming into here, which we should be doing. Yes. I mean, if you, had, yeah, if you were literally like, you know, importing Scandinavians, okay, you'd probably be fine, you know, <laughs> but like they come from very homogenous and settled countries. They make us woker, though. I don't know. That's a good idea. Well, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying you should yeah. have I'm, not, I'm just saying, you know, they're not going to commit crimes. Be commies in 20 years. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm not saying you should do it. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm talking li crime statistics, right? Okay. But, um, but, the, but this is the point, right? Like the, the F, the difference, and it's, it's really, it's really about strangeness, right? It's like people who are strangers to one another. That's the issue, I think. And so if you're bringing in people who have got no familiarity, they, they don't really have a choice, but to put up defenses and so they end up kind of self-segregating and there's no getting around it. And then you've lost your high trust society. And so well, anything that was based on that falls apart instantly. Well, except it's, it's somewhat contradictory statistically because while it's true that in these higher population dense, more ethnically diverse areas, there is less overall trust towards everyone else, but there's higher trust and higher, you know, acceptance of people of different race, races, ethnicities, and cultures because they interact with those people. Sure, I'm sure they accept these people. That's well, fine. but as I'm saying, like, there's even a higher trust on but, an individual level towards someone of that race or ethnicity. I don't know if that's like what, I don't know if that equates to trust, right? I, like, I'm not saying it doesn't equate to tolerance or something, but I don't know if I'd call that trust. Well, I would think accept. Mm. I would. I don't know if this exact thing has been studied. I'd assume acceptance and trust kind of has a high, you know, correlative uh, comparison. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I accept, you know, all sorts of people, but that doesn't. <laughs> <mean> trust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, well, seriously. Yeah, no, no, I'm not even joking. This, right? Let, let like, me give you an example. Let me give you an example, yeah. right? So we're in Swindon at the moment. We've got a couple of hundred Somalians who have just come across mm -hmm. the channel in boats, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm not driving them out of the city with a gang with sticks, right? Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't trust them. Sure. Only because you wouldn't get arrested. Um, <laughs> well, no, like, well, you know, but I'm joking, the point I'm joking, is I'm, joking. I, I'm tolerating them, but I'm never going to trust them. Right, right. Because they're said, not they've already shown themselves not to be trustworthy people. Mm -hmm. right? right. They broke but, uh, into our yeah. country. So, okay. so like right, you know, but, but, I, I accept that they're there. I'm not doing anything about it, but mm -hmm. they're not trustworthy. Right. So we but for us to not get kind of bogged down in the, the, the word I don't remember the exact word they use in study. I thought I'm trying to remember. I think usually they use, you know, that they the racial bias, the racial racial prejudice or ethnic prejudice against people directly goes down the more people interact with people of that culture of that ethnicity which is in obviously higher population dense areas yeah okay. that, 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 that part is I, true, that yeah. includes you know not you know whether you trust those people or not but that but that doesn't mean you have a high trust society no no but my only point was just as i said it's like the reality is reality itself is somewhat contradictory because as i said higher population areas have less trust overall but have greater trust towards the people they interact with that are various different ethnic groups so sure but i mean trust like trust being... like tolerance there's probably some yeah. correlation i don't know what it is though Th this might be masking the problem in fact right okay oh they're tolerant of these things therefore everything must be fine well, well i don't think they use the word tolerant because tolerant well, is very different than not being racially biased against or accept or trust well, what does it mean so. I assume that tolerant, well, the tolerant means you put up with, right? I put up with somebody <laughs> like that's very yeah. different than like, well, I'm not racist against someone. Well, what isn't that what tolerance is? Well, the, how are you, what do you mean when you say tolerance? I guess I don't hate them because of their race. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, usually I mean, when someone says, me, right? usually when someone says they tolerate someone, that means like, I don't like this person, but you know, it's, I'll put up with it. That's, that's how I interpret well, I it. I guess. Tolerance. I mean, yeah. Um, but okay either way the point is i think i think this might be masking the issue right mm -hmm. because like the the point is um really we should be liking the people around us that that's the ideal sure. situation well and that doesn't seem to be happening so I don't like anyone so i mean ideally yeah <laughs> well then that's bad isn't it yeah. I, I i guess i guess what you're appealing to sargon is if you, you know the stereotype of the 1950s is that you live in a suburb you know all your neighbors and then nowadays, does, does anyone really know their neighbor? The answer is usually no. Yeah. Well, I'll I tell you, you know, I saw the other day, which was really interesting. 
um, was a picture of uh, the streets of London in the 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a bunch of ladies who were obviously, you know, the wives of the house. And they were scrubbing their steps outside. And, you know, they were standing around chatting. One of them was scrubbing their steps. And I'm just like, that is just a world that could not exist now. You know, these, the, like you, you go through London now and you see nothing like this. Right. But that's because these people were settled, right? They've been in this area for a long, long time. They'd grown up with all of these people around them. So the trust was implicit, right? They knew each other. And the reason they scrubbed their steps is to maintain like a level of standards in the eyes of their neighbors. Right. And mm -hmm. my grands both used to do this with me when I was a kid. You know, don't slouch, don't have your hands in the pockets, what the neighbors think. Right. And so they care about this sort of thing. Sure. And that that was all about maintaining a standard of trust and expectation in the community you don't get that in multicultural communities because the standards are all different well i don't think it's necessarily the level like the thing that you're talking about with the scrubbing steps and the slouching which is definitely true i i think that was more to do with sort of the fetishization the fetish is the fetishization of or the obsession of kind of this you need to be the hyper uh, individual that tells society to fuck off and don't let anyone, you know, judge you, you judge your, you know, you are worth yourself to yourself. You know, I think that's kind of the idea that, that kind of blew up because of Vietnam War, at least in America in the sixties and seventies. I think that's kind of what led to, you know, that going away more than like the lack of trust in the neighbor and all that stuff. All right, let's move on to our next topic. <laughs> okay. We have to talk. Well, uh, it's a, well, it's in the title, so we have to talk about the sensible centrism well, thing. Well, hold hold on for a second because I thought the idea is that, like like this all started because we talked about what Sargon was reading a little bit, and Sargon this turned into like a two hour discussion. We haven't you haven't gotten to the part where we talk about what, what I've been reading recently. Wait, let me read let me read some super chats. Then. Yeah, because there's a lot of people it. that want to get in on the conversation. Okay, I'm so sorry, yeah. Yeah, but let me read some super chats. Listen, we're a good capitalist here. Okay, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, J Mac for twenty dollars. Our surrogate father says, "Grab your EDH decks. I'll kick all your asses in magic blue control supremacy." True. Wow. Oh, man. Did blue you get Jacob? Gay. Did we read Jacob Lloyd's already? Because it kind of seems on top. We did not. No. Oh, Is that we did, what started yeah, this That's conversation? What started the conversation. Yeah. Okay. You got <laughs> you got two hours out of that super chat. Jeez. Good job, Jacob. Uh, Christian Baller, thanks so much for fourteen months outside the simulation. Wow. Hey, can you guys please explain the debt ceiling, why it's an issue, and why you think it's ridiculous? Also, has either of you seen the film Whiplash? Probably my favorite film. Uh, E-E-A-A-O is not mine, by the way, Adam. What is E-E-A-A-O? I don't know. Um, but um, Whiplash, I have not I was, seen, but... Oh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Okay. Um, but yeah, great. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Loved it. Great movie. I haven't seen Whiplash, even though I used it in a meme. Um... Yeah, we'll talk about the that's death a music later, one. That'll yeah, the whole thing. But I'll, I should do. We should do some video on it at some point. Angry Man for twenty dollars says, "Hey Carl, I recommend Starship Troopers to Adam a few weeks ago due to its concept on rights and value of property aligning with its beliefs. Certainly, you could better explain it to him than I could in a mere super chat." Well, you did a video on it, which I've watched, Carl. Right, it's the mm -hmm. politics of Starship Troopers, which I yep. do. I mean, that's kind of your personal genre, which is really. You know, kind of amazing content. Uh, Carl will <laughs> take you. movies and break down the politics of those movies. Have you done uh, Clockwork Orange yet? That could be an interesting one. You definitely. know, I haven't, but it, it wouldn't be a bad shout. Yeah, totally. That's mm -hmm. some crazy shit, right? The yeah, politics of um, Clockwork Orange. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's been a few years since I've seen it, but like, uh, it's a. a, a, a there are these like um, grossly prophetic movies. Totally. That, and Clockwork the, Orange man, you is see, one of those. You see Clockwork Orange on the America streets every day, right? Well, cl Clockwork Orange, because the ending, I mean, it really does embody that, you know, a conservative is just a liberal that hasn't been mugged yet. Because a guy in the movie <laughs> totally gets mugged. No, and by the end, is a conservative that hasn't been mugged. Oh, okay. I got it back. How about the English but, ending, Adam, yeah. or the British ending? Because they're different. Well, the well, one of the, oh, I don't think the difference is important to. Okay. The storyline, though, because the guy, well, it's like a bleeding original, heart. He, doesn't he, at the, in the original, the main guy, he becomes a, a normie a, at the end. A good person. Well, not a good person. Well, he just becomes a, a, a normal person. I don't know if he's a good person. But he well, the guy, the guy <laughs> that he terrorizes, he, the guy that he terrorizes is a bleeding heart liberal. 
Right. And he goes to his house and he like rapes his wife and beats him up and like it's but as soon as that happens, he's no longer like a bleeding heart liberal anymore. Right. He's like, All right, we got to do something about this crime going on here. Yeah, sure, exactly. of course. Yeah, so it completely changes his politics. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the Very ending Martha's of the movie vineyard, is... Martha's Vineyard, isn't it? Yeah, Refugees totally. Welcome until they arrive on our fucking doorstep. Totally. No, totally. the same day. Totally. Yeah. Right. Or, the, or there was that guy uh, who was tweeting about the George Floyd riots and he was all for them until they came to his gated community yes. and started hopping yes. the fence. Yes, exactly. He and, he was, and he was like freaking out. Oh my God, yeah. get these animals out of here. Exactly. Like, okay. exactly. Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> so, but I, I will say, in terms, of, uh, in, in terms of the whole, uh, the politics of whatever Sargon, I'm going to always say it. You have to do the politics of Attack on Titan. You got to watch it. It's the best show. Oh, okay. I'm sure it is. It just bored me. It's really good. Seriously. You gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tough it out. What? I hate anime. Listen, yeah, this okay, this is the one that you specifically should watch. Okay. It is it is tailor made for, for a Sargonian view. Okay. Well, I did okay. I've seen your video on Starship Troopers and I have read Starship Troopers now. So we can talk about it in the future. It's probably too much to get into right now, but yeah. Uh, God's true seeker for twenty dollars says Carlo Dev. Will either of you talk to Shoes Shoe on Head's boyfriend? He's a base trad Catholic, and I see you two replying him often on Twitter. Also, let Carl cook. Magic is real. <laughs> so is me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that second bit? He said, uh, "Magic is real." So is me. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's true. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, what I'll about talking to Shoe on Head's boyfriend? Yeah, uh, so I have. I have talked to him privately. It, really? It's weird that like. On, I got back on Twitter, and I guess, you know, I'm occupying like, the same sort of space as him or something. Because I started, like, interacting with him, and we followed each other. And I had no idea who he was. And mm -hmm. it was really weird. He's, like, posting pictures of him and she. I'm like, okay, that's small world, you know. Like, <laughs> what were the odds of that, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but no, he I seems like a cool guy. Yep. They, they tried to keep it a, a quiet relationship for a while. Right. Just because of what happened last time with Shu's relationships, right? But I think mm -hmm. I think Vosh's community sniffed it out, and they got all all mad because he's like a he, he's a, he's a conservative. Because right. he doesn't hate Tucker Carlson, so he doesn't <laughs> cut the he doesn't he doesn't cut make the cut for them. Basically, yeah, that's too. But no, he he just put out a video that's actually very good, and I think yeah. people should watch it. It's a very good video. He's a content creator too. Um, is that the thing? He is. He okay. is. He has wow. a couple thousand subs. YouTube channel. Um, let me try to find it. Wow. She on Head's boyfriend. That's the name of the channel. She on Head's boyfriend. Did you guys, you guys have oh, a little it is tip called, going on? Um, Did you Udamonia. Is it, is it Uda, U, 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 is it Udamonia? How do you pronounce this word? Udamonia. Udamonia Esquire is the name of the channel. That's a terrible channel name. Yeah, and he did a video. He did a video uh, four days ago called Liberal Limit Phobia. Okay. It's a very good video. Check mm -hmm. it out. Cool. What one one striking part is near the end when he says that liberals at some point in the future will become so adverse to li to limits and so interested in um in being efficient that they'll 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 abolish forks and eat with their hands because it's faster. Mm. And it's like yeah, that kind of makes sense <laughs> because right. there is there is this there is this streak within liberalism of you know abandon things that make us more civilized and we become more animalistic as a result, but it is yeah. easier. You know, yeah, but it's gross to get all that shit on your hands. Who wants that? That's why you're a conservative at heart, Sitch. Will you drop the a... link in the chat so I can look <laughs> at it later, Dove? Mechanism. Oh, sure. Sitch sure. totally outed. True. Yeah. Very My disgust yeah. mechanism, though. Yeah. I'll put it in the uh, perfect thing. The Zoom chat. There's this channel. Uh, Willem Rex for twenty dollars says quite literally, "My favorite four uh, political tubers. I've been watching Sitch and Carl since around Are 2014. You? Jesus, Ooh. God. Oh my God, it's been so long." I don't, actually, I don't think I had a channel 2014, but thank you. <laughs> you should have Deb and Carl on more as well as finish Yarvin, the Marvin Berry S-Class. Speaking of that, Sitch, if you look at the poll. I know you're crushing it in the poll, Deb. Yeah. So, it is know, two thirds. Good. Yes, we should continue yeah. with the open lettered, open minded progressives. See that, Adam? You're doomed. But we, uh, <laughs> lovers of democracy here, we need three quarters, though, in order to actually... <laughs> <laughs> in order to actually make it happen so okay. keep pushing Matt, guys I, I was i was talking with taftage about him because taftage is a neo-reactionary and she really likes 
Marvin Yarkin. I feel like we asked her this and she was kind of like waffling about it. She likes to hide her power level. You know oh, how, it is how dare oh, she no. come on this show and hide her power level. <laughs> but uh, I asked her about it and she said something like, um, when you're reading Marvin Yarvin, you have to remember that he is extremely risk adverse and he's willing to put up with a lot of authoritarianism in his government if it means that things are predictable. Because, so like, like if you, well, here's the thing. Like if you live in a very strict Islamic state, let's say, um, it sucks, yes, but you know what the rules are. They're not going to be random rules. You know, you, you follow the religion, you do certain things, you'll be left alone. He's high and in orderliness is what you're saying. It, yeah, it's easy to navigate a system like that, even though it is authoritarian, than it is to deal with, let's say, a failing liberal democracy where rule of law is selectively implemented and there's criminals everywhere. Right. He's very yeah. sensitive to chaos and disorder and unknown. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And so okay. if you if you look at a lot of his writing through that lens and also through the lens of the fact that his his grandparents were, in fact, unironic communist cells, right. you can kind of see where he's coming from with a lot of this stuff. Sure. And, okay. and even though like he, he ends up being wrong about a lot of things, a lot of his prescriptions, he does have a lot of good critiques of liberalism that you can't just throw away because somebody who's outside of the zeitgeist has written them. Sure. Of course. Uh, mad matter rhetoric for 20 euros. Thank you. Says Adam and Sitch. Please stop mistaking our propositional nature for the foreign homelands of the old world. We should maintain the land of opportunity, and that's where we are currently failing. I agree. Look, this is why it's a little demoralizing to hear Carl's stance on meritocracy somewhat waning here, because I thought fighting for meritocracy was something we were all doing together. I do, I do feel like that's part of the problem here. Uh, we've just established that fighting for meritocracy is fighting for aristocracy. Okay. Well, you, by, your, that, by, by your definition. <laughs> Let's but. do it again. The <laughs> next two hours. Uh, Sitch's law going on here. Yeah, totally. Uh, lives in Dev's wall specifically for $20 says, America doesn't lack an aristocracy. The strength of America's aristocracy is that it can rise or fall over time in relation to the merits of the lineage. It isn't static and inbred. This is why we rule the waves now. Yeah. Yes, actually. A, and Adam, this is something that I, want, that I wanted to say to you earlier. You're a very I mean, smart person living in your walls there. Does he help you on live streams? Yeah. <laughs> I have to leave him a bowl of food and water out sometimes <laughs> since he wants to live in my attic. I think he but wants I'm... a cat too. He's, he's asked me <laughs> to make sure that you get a cat soon. <laughs> so, so Adam, you've mentioned creative destruction before many times yes, on, of course. on many streams. Right. So creative destruction is the mechanism by which an open aristocracy maintains itself and maintains its openness because that would allow for failing aristocratic just, families that, we're just that, 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 that have done shitty to, 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 to fall out of the out of the class and then new money to come in we're just arguing over definitions here if you want to I mean, call maybe, a meritocracy yeah. an aristocracy you go knock yourself out okay <laughs> you just it's, go it's, you it's do because you, there's a difference between open you. and closed ones it's yeah. just, an open yeah. and closed aristocracy. Yeah, no, yeah, I, no I, I can there's, see there's that. There's an open aristocracy and a closed aristocracy. Those are two I different things. He's totally right about all this, and I, I loathe to give him credit because he's a communist, but like <laughs> he's totally right about all of this. All right, you guys heard it here first. Carl and Dev in favor of open relationships. Honestly. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? Jeez, terrible. Okay, uh, right, Sammy G. Sitch. Jesus. I know. Sammy, Sammy G for fifty dollars. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sammy. Says there are three types of rich people: the rich, the wealthy, and the elite. The elite are the scum, using money illegally, keeping power by any means. The rich lose it after the third generation and are annoying, flexing wealth with, with objects. The wealthy want to uplift people and use money right. Well, I like right. that. That's a great explanation. There you go. Maybe. Uh, Jay for $20 says, I'm pretty sure Robert Putnam addressed most of these trust and diversity issues in Bowling Alone. Yes, great book. I'm I'm sure you've read that, Carl, right? And I haven't read it, but I did um, read a bunch of stuff that Putnam had like, yeah. put out, like articles and stuff. But the thing is, he recanted most of that, which is yeah. really annoying, because I think that he was right about the collapse of society. Yeah, what was Putnam? Putnam's got several books that I've read. I, I, haven't, I haven't read the books. I've read like about the books and articles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I agree with the thesis. I think that civil society is basically in the process of collapse. But he, he has recanted that, apparently. I read somewhere or other. And so it's like, hmm, that's interesting because I look around and I don't think that civil society is recovering. Hmm. Like, it seems to me more dead than ever. Yeah. 
Uh, not Alfarius for twenty dollars says Sargon should be on more often. Always leads to entertaining tangents. That is yeah. true. <laughs> Sargon doesn't uh, Jake... understand the yes and sitch. <laughs> That's what makes the tangents happen. That I know makes. it's so true. Uh, J Mac for twenty dollars. This regular father, thank you. Says Sargon, don't watch Attack on Titan. That shit is cringe. Do a oh, cultural breakdown on Fooly Cooly. That shit will. Oh my god, eye. that would be oh, amazing. What? Oh, Fooly God. Fooly. If Sargon watched Fooly Cooly, he'd probably shoot himself. That you would be watch. amazing. Listen, Listen it's, it's, all, it's only six oh, episodes. God. It's all about a boy becoming a man. Yeah. Okay. Listen, In it's a very good anime show. Anime way possible. It's a very it's good show. It, Dev? It, it's a very good show, but it's a very left leaning show. It's it's a, it's about child sexuality and like. Oh, there's a not left leaning. Wait, wait. What? what? It's, it's absolutely. At all. At, Hold on. Have you not seen the sequels? I mean, the second I season haven't is, seen the sequels. Is, is, is literally the second called, season is called Progressive, yeah. Yeah, the second season is called Progressive. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah that's, that's, in, that's the reason. Is that, be, is that because of the politics of it, the situation? But I heard the just, second like, season literally fell off. Literally, something's progressing. So. Yeah, it's, it definitely fell off. No, no, it, here's the thing. It's, it's a very good show. I really like it. But... You're not going to find a single drop of conservatism in that show whatsoever. Wait, wait. I don't, I don't know how you can say that. The whole show is about a boy becoming a man and learning to deal with a predatory woman <laughs> trying to <laughs> use her sexuality to take advantage of him. How is that a left? That's not like a left wing idea. I feel like that's a right wing well, idea. What it is, is I watched Very it when I though, was right? around 14. Yeah. I, 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 how, how old was that? No, I would have been like 17 when I watched it first. And it was really good because I was, I was of the age. Yeah. I've gone back and watched it a few years ago, and it's, I just feel like I'm I'm past that point in my life where I think it's good. It is definitely a story about young men for young men. Of course, but okay. I mean, I saw it when like you know back in the day, and I thought, oh, this yeah. is. I mean, I was still I probably still past the age. I wasn't you know 13 or however old. Uh, now have have you show, have you seen it recently? I haven't seen it recently. Go back and watch it recently. Well, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, well, I'll watch it with you if you want. Okay. It's. Well, it, it has a lot of the random shit, which was very popular in the 2000s, which is obviously yeah. not so popular now. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I don't think, I just don't see how you could call it left wing. I mean, it's got, it's got, you know, sexy women in sexy outfits. Okay. You know, and, and basically um, it's like very much like all the women in the show suck. So I just, I just see <laughs> left wing to me. No, They're all trying like, to take advantage of talk. It's, it's not economically yes. left wing at all. It's, it's, well, hold on. Actually, it is because there's like a lot of anti corporation stuff in there that feels kind of, of, course. Kind of lefty. Medical well, mechanical. if you're a right wing populist now, you know. Yeah, there's, there's like, the, you know, the, the, the giant factory in the hand, like, the, yeah, you have the corporations there's, there's, are trying to flatten all of our minds and make us think yeah. woke think. Okay. It's all it's anti communism. <laughs> I, don't it's, I, don't, I don't think it's anti communism. I don't think that I think that show is actually not anti communism at all. <laughs> listen, really get listen, into it, but listen, um yeah. it's still a good show though. It's still okay. worth watching. But it's 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 that kind of artsy fartsy stuff that I'm not sure that would be your taste, Sargon. That's oh, kind, I, I wouldn't know. No, I, I kinda that's why I want Carl to watch it, because I know he'll not like it. <laughs> Okay, listen, listen. I, I'm going to reiterate, though, Attack on Titan, right up Sargon's alley. You got to watch it, all right? Okay, the, all right, the, right. the political conceit of the show basically is what if the fascists were right? <laughs> it's a, it's okay. a good show. <laughs> well, it's, it's, like, it's like, okay, so the big lie. That's why you'll like it, Carl, because you're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but this, this is just Dev's communist to fascist arc now, isn't it? Oh, oh like, is it? Is it? Is it? So, communist so, so, for long enough, arc. you're like, yeah, but... but. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, the idea basically is um, the, the big lie was that the Jews actually weren't subverting the Germans from the inside or something like that. This the, the, this it, the attack on Titan is what if the fascists the Jews were, actually, were subverting? <laughs> yeah, yeah it, well, basically, yes. The, <laughs> the, 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 the center point of attack on Titan is what if the fascists are correct when they say the entire world is coming to exterminate our, our ethnicity? What, what do you do then in that situation? What becomes morally permissible? That's but, the entire but, moral arc of the show. Sure, but is that really like necessarily fascism? You know, like I, I, I can't help but feel that in that, I mean, literally, if you've got like, you know, a massive Mongol horde bearing down on you and they're going to murder everyone in your, in your country, which has happened, then mm -hmm. that makes those people reacting in defense fascists, right? I mean, true enough, but the the show really makes it clear that they are fascists. You know, they they use like the same kind of German guns, and they have the same like outfits. Okay. Like they, well, they, they, also, they they're they're really saying yes, this is what fascism is. Right. But the fascists were right this time. Right, but also right, okay. there's another element which is I have never seen it, but I read all the spoilers for it. 
Mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that you can't explain without spoiling it, which yeah, goes more into the, the fascist yeah. elements of, you know, maybe maybe people are justified in killing them. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it, it's the the author basically sets up uh, two extremely powerful states who both want to genocide each other and they both have a solid moral reason for doing so. Right. And they just there let them go. fight. And it's like, well, who do you side with? And I'm just like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Uh, it's a good show. It's a, it's a very good show. I'll take your word for it. Blaine's Escape Quarter for twenty dollars says your Tuesday anime recommendations. My home hero. How far will a Japanese father go to protect his daughter using ideas he's read in mystery books? One of the best anime thrillers. Excellent tension and release cycle. There you go. I don't, Carl doesn't like anime. He's a, no. He likes his little Warhammer figurine. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm painting them now. There you go. That's awesome. So let's talk about the sensible centrism stuff. Carl, oh, wait, I, I feel like yeah, no, I, I, I want to talk something else first. Let, let I feel like the further then, the further we'll right you drink. look, oh, <laughs> let, me, let Carl... me go get a drink. Then we'll talk. Okay, go ahead. Let's do okay. that then. Well, yeah, because I thought we were going to talk about something else first. Well, no, I just I, I want I want oh, to talk right. about it. Dev want to talk about his book. Yeah, because I'm what also do doing reading too. Okay, yeah. I'll be going to get back to you. I'm going to go to the washroom. I'll be back in a second. Oh, oh, great! Everyone's going. <laughs> just us here it's so much better it's just us just us let's chat now that they're this. gone let's talk about a little bit about that meritocracy conversation <laughs> okay fucking a I bunch just, of a bunch of non-americans and they're fucking i, I honestly i feel like and quids. look let's i don't want to talk about the psychology of people in front of them but let's talk a little bit about <laughs> the psychology of people while they're gone just i feel <laughs> i feel Monaco. like no i feel like yeah they're really upset about air like they want to say aristocracy is not that bad sure so nobody so they don't like they don't like the comparison because it's, it forces you to say oh meritocracy is better than aristocracy but yet i'm in favor of an aristocracy they're just jealous that they're not american look i just <laughs> there's there are major differences between aristocracy <laughs> and a meritocracy that I don't think you can just <laughs> casually paper over. True. The whole idea behind what's going on in affirmative action now is that they're saying, look, meritocracy has to take a hit because the aristocracy wants the world to fall in a certain color spectrum. You, you know, <laughs> I have wireless headphones. I just heard the whole thing, right? <laughs> oh, damn. Listen, you, you Canuck. Okay. Stop eavesdropping. <laughs> I guess the rule you can go back before meritocracy if you want. When Sargon was talking about um, Julius Evola, I, we don't know. We don't want to go back. But well, I, I can I can TLDR for you real quick. The, no. the best way to so hold on. You guys watch The Lion King, right? The cartoon, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I have. I don't know if Adam has. Yeah, I don't. Lion King. Was, what? It, the Lion King. Yeah, it was a good movie, right? Well, cool. so I mean, okay. So Sitch, Sitch, why was it proper that Simba had to go away and come back and reclaim the throne? What do you mean, like from a story perspective? I don't know what you're asking. Look, you well, can yeah. you can yeah. argue till you're blue in the face about how an aristocracy is well, a meritocracy. <laughs> it doesn't change the yeah. argument we are making. I know, I know, it's fine. But what, what, I don't. What you mean from a plot perspective or from like a metaphorical? Like I don't, I don't know what you were asking. Both, exactly. really, both. Sure. Well, okay. So like from a meta, like from a like a like a grander story, you know, perspective. Generally, there's the story. You know, the hero has to go on some kind of journey in order to gain something that they did not have before they can you know, come back or merit in right which is merit there's kind of a combination of merit, it, it is merit. and yes, it's a merit. combination of simba's refusal of the call i guess is kind of right, combined right. Into but why couldn't element. some other lion come and then kill scar and take his place and that would be just as legitimate why did it have to be simba well because they're lions and lion you know it's supposed <laughs> to be based on a bloodline lineage based off of hamlet <laughs> So steel man steel right, man our on, argument dev on, just it, it, let, let me it know is, that you is, understand well, our on. argument well, let, let dev I, I do understand dev finish. so so it, it is because simba is the inheritor he's the proper inheritor yes of the legacy because it's a blood yes. yeah right yeah and here's the thing what i think i think what evola is trying to say is it doesn't have to be blood so for example you could have like a teacher of of a great martial art pass it on to his students and you don't just learn the martial art you also learn the way of life and it has nothing to do with being the same race or the same family it's it's Unless passing down 
It really doesn't want the Jews. <laughs> it's it's passing down a way of being that he's talking about. I I, and, I don't listen. I'm and, just saying when I read his and, on the Jewish question, he was definitely embedding wait, the that, Jewish wait, spirit. That, that was into Marx. The Jewish people. That was Marx. Or what? What? No. What was his? He wrote some on the Jewish question. Fucking did he? Pamphlet. No, he probably did. To be honest, it was like the three questions for the oh three questions on the Jewish problem or something. Yeah, so, the three aspects of the Jewish problem. Yeah, yes. thank you. You're right. So, so here's the you thing. Know. Like, Evola considered him more right-wing than the fascists because he, he wrote a book called Fascism Viewed from the Right. And yeah. the, 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 the one-sentence argument is that fascism wasn't right-wing enough. It was too plebeian. It was too concerned with the masses. And it was not concerned enough with the top of society. Right. But which I think, question... which to be fair, I think is true because I mean, the fascists right. they were concerned with the race or none the of this people. has to do with the well, just, okay, <laughs> what we're talking answer, about. But to, to, to answer <laughs> your, your question about the Lion King, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. in stories throughout in history, we have the Lion King, we have Hamlet, which is based off of. You have Lord of the Rings. You know, it's all about you know the rightful blood heir. You know, to return to the throne, and hopefully, there'll be you know. A better righteous king and you know that's yes, fine yes. i guess it's I usually mean, but, blood but it doesn't have to be blood though i okay i well, i just okay you know, the, well, the, the point you're, though you're, is you're that saying it, you're it saying is, look you're saying that the aristocracy <laughs> is a meritocracy okay well no he's talking he's, he's talking well, about, again and about again and again and again no, 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 adam, adam adam what i'm saying is that open aristocracies are meritocratic no i get and, that and i totally get that and what i am saying is aristocracies are, are oligarchic and i'm asking you to define why that's important what do you mean why is that important like, yeah, why, why is, is that it difference well, why is that why, difference why is it important that you're bringing that an open up important? aristocracy is the same thing as a meritocracy yes y yes um i think it's because it gives you a way to actually identify the ruling class rather than simply saying oh they got there by merit because even though they did mm -hmm. get there by merit it is useful to identify them as their own unit that is completely incorrect but thank you thank you for <laughs> sure letting us know how you feel <laughs> it oh. absolutely is correct what do you mean <laughs> it's just no this is your communist not. upbringing your your <laughs> what the sitch now. what what is what does that even mean what is he even talking about okay hold on hold on hold on do you think that an open aristocracy and a meritocracy are two different things depends well, i don't know an depends open how you're defining these terms if, which i don't know if, if we agree on a definition it, it depends upon why the aristocracy is open if it's open just to let hot blondes in so people can fuck them <laughs> i don't i don't think you would call it a meritocracy okay okay, okay hold on hold on an aristocracy that is open to creative destruction. That would be a meritocracy, yes. Yes, so we agree. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. then I guess. So, well, no, the, the example, I, I gave the example, it kind of fell apart because we were all yelling over each other. The example that I used was the fall of Venice. Because for a long time, look, let's Venice... not go into the fall of Venice, okay? I just well, like it's very I, I, easy I, I can, to explain. I can give it to you in thirty seconds. I can give it to you in thirty seconds. Look, I right? don't want there a, a historical of... example. I want the actual okay. tangible reason. Why reason? the difference is important. I guess what was it? I just I don't need me. a historical example. Okay, okay. <laughs> it just it seems like the differences between what? Why is a meritocracy more important than an aristocracy? Why is it better? I don't, I don't think it is. Why does why is it better if Simba goes off and learns something important that will be useful in governing the kingdom and not just being anointed without that without that uh education? I think it's both. I think you need both of those things. You you need both the legitimacy to rule and also the ability to do it. Yeah, Adam. Okay, let's move on. Let's move <laughs> on to the centuries. Want to talk about? Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I've also been on a huge reading arc right now for the past two years, actually. Yeah, I, I'm pretty I made sure. You do it. No, I made you do it. No, I made you do it, Dev. No, no, no. I, okay. Uh, Dev, I when very you... vividly remember the conversation where mm -hmm. I'm like, Dev, you're a smart guy. You should read some more books. Okay, and you were like, that's yeah, true. That's, that's a good idea. And then I sat down with you and I bugged you about, I don't know, about 10 times to read Zeev Sternhell. And you finally did. Yeah, but that's one book. And that's because but, it's a good idea. You know, that, that began the whole, that, that was the snowball that started everything. No, it was <laughs> you I'll never like, read a book before that I'll, moment. I'll, I'll explain later why that's not true. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I, I was definitely partially influenced by you to start reading, for sure. I um, you into it. And then you became a communist. It's like, fuck. 
Total bad. Oh, wait, well, no. does that mean it's your fault? Carl, you made Dev a comment. It's all, it's all yeah. his fault. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what I actually realized during the reading arc is that people who have books that have lasted for hundreds of years and people still talk about them today, even if you disagree with them, they've said something important that you can't just throw away. You know, like Marx bullshit. was wrong. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. let's throw out comma. No, no. M Marx was wrong about <laughs> many things, but he, he's still around yeah. for a reason. You know, like people still talk about him. Like there was something there. You know, you know, H Hitler wouldn't have become leader of Germany if there wasn't something there that was important to know. <laughs> okay. You know? Oh my yes. God. <laughs> every <laughs> single old road here, Dem. Yes. Yeah. Every single terrible person in history okay, is worth Kanye. Me. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, was that not the greatest fucking show with Alex? <laughs> Amazing. Really funny, Honestly, yeah. it's such good content. You know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Sargon, even your guys have said this. Like, I, I watched, um, uh, who was it? It was Harry and somebody else talk mm -hmm. about Carl Schmidt. And they said at the start of that podcast that it's important to read people who are outside of the paradigm. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just teasing yeah. you. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I'm, what I'm currently, uh, I've just cracked open a book called The Therapeutic State by a Dr. Thomas, uh, is it Saz? It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a Hungarian name. It's is Dr. It Thomas name? Saz. Yeah, Zaz, yeah. Zaz, last night no. you said he sounded like he, he was he's a Batman. Victor guy. Zaz is a Batman serial killer. Have any of you guys heard of this guy? Nope. Okay. So he was a um a psychiatrist. Uh, he grew up already. He <laughs> he grew up in um in Hungary. I think he was there during part of its socialist period. He moved to the United States. And it was his belief that the entire field of of psych was fake. Oh, thanks. It was all nonsense. Hey, and it was and it was basically just uh, a tool that the modern state could use to to suppress its political opponents oh, by that's... pathologizing and medicalizing alternative ways of viewing politics. That's totally based. Okay, I agree. Well, it's also very <laughs> so there you go. Like he was libertarian. He, he he was like he 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 would have been part of the dissident right if he was still alive. It's very he's cultural very, relativist. He he's he's very <laughs> much He's he's very much like in in the Rothbardian you know right, ANCAP right, area right, right. of things right, but Thank yeah you. he he has a he basically he, he just believes that psychology is all of it's just fake, and hmm. yeah. the 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 modern total state the managerial state as you might say Sargon has loves psychology because it is a way to uh, oppress political opponents and political dissidents that doesn't involve the use of overt state force and and the law and the courts. I mean, this is what the Soviet Union did. Yes, mm -hmm. and he actually sure. uses that as, as an example. Yeah, there was like there was various uh, disorders in the Soviet Union that were considered to be anti-social behavior, and if you were yeah. found to be some sort of uh, counter-revolutionary, you were declared anti-social, and then you would be sent off to a yeah. home for sick people. You know, right. obvious bullshit. So it's a way of literally defining your opponents out of existence. Yeah, as as being inherently mentally ill by the basis of the politics that they believe. Yeah. yeah. He, he has another example that he talks about. I said you were looking at this last night. Um, he talks about a uh, drapetomania, and drapetomania was basically uh, a mental disorder that slavers in the southern United States invented to describe the desire of slaves to be free. And so, <laughs> if you had a slave who like was these working, crazy and, slaves, <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah you had a slave who wasn't doing his work and he was like he he you know he didn't he didn't like the master and he wanted he, he like he he, he, he didn't like, accept he the be, uh, natural yeah. order was what they said yes he, he didn't accept the natural order he might want to like try to you know jump the fence and run away he was he wasn't uh, evil or he wasn't you know a rebel against he he, he just had a mental disease called drapetomania um, being normal what the, yeah. the the prescribed cure by the way was lashing. <laughs> because of course I, mean, I don't mean to laugh but of course that's the cure <laughs> and then like he, he talks about like uh like the united states with you know the drug war mk ultra and just a, a, he goes down a bunch of examples of governments using uh, wrapping up political dissidents in the in in the paper of mental disease yeah. to make oppressing them seem like it's it's treating them yeah. And to seem like See? it's 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 actually like uh you know when when you know you have a, you have, a, you have a, I, I gave this example this this happened uh, after his time but he probably agree you know you have oppositional defiant disorder today which is basically just somebody who doesn't like authority <laughs> it's like well yeah. like there are times when probably you you disliking authority authority uh, authority to a point is too much 
but also there are some people who just like especially after 2020 like fuck you know there's some people who just don't trust institutions anymore well and they have decent reasons you know? ODD is not someone who's like authority. It's someone who has impulse control and you know conduct behavior. Yeah, right. So when I mean, I'm, when I'm like characterization, it's you know, not just that. Naked though, it's on the streets of San Francisco, like demanding my Twitter account back, fit high <laughs> off my face on drugs. I've just got that oppositional disorder, man. There you go. <laughs> well, no. So as I told you last They're night, just suppressing me, man. They're keeping me down. <laughs> right. As I as I told you last night, Dev. We were, yes. When we were, well, we weren't really talking about it. You were just talking and I was responding and then you would just keep talking and not respond to what I was. <laughs> to, but, <laughs> <laughs> I said, people use whatever epistemology or science that is currently in vogue to justify whatever political cause or oppression they wish to enforce on others. However, that doesn't mean, or as I said, it's foolish to look at that and to think that that means the entire scientific field is not valid. And that I think therein lies the flaw in this guy's thinking that you're reading. No, I yes, that's obviously. Exactly right. the right thing to take from it. Yeah. I mean, well, you you see, uh, fuck, who who was that guy who got choked out in the subway a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. You know, like he clearly uh, had some Penny? mental problems. Yeah, that was right? the guy who did the choking. Neely yeah. was the guy who got choked out. Neely, Neely. yeah. So yeah, obviously that guy had some mental problems. Yeah. Right. right, right. But yeah, you, I mean, you, see, you know, you see homeless people wandering around the street. They obviously have mental, like real mental illnesses. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's not just that. Like those are actually completely normal people with a completely j- just just a different way of living that is just as valid as the current one. But the state doesn't like it, so they're suppressed. It's like no, yeah. there's also people who are just fucked up. You know, right? Like it's not yeah. all fake, even though you can point to instances where it clearly is, right? Of course, yeah. and cool. and that's probably his problem. Like, I mean. Sitch, you mentioned um, last time I was on that the reason the reason Marvin Yarvin, mm-hmm. he he the way he is the way he is is because his parents were or his grandparents were actually uh, communist cells in the United States. Right. Well, that obviously, probably colored a lot of his his, his yeah, of course, uh, the way, the way he viewed things. Thinking, yeah. yeah. Right. So the fact that this guy was a psychiatrist in in the uh, the Hungarian Socialist Republic <laughs> probably also colored his views of, his, his view of psychiatry. What you, you mean know? because he probably saw it happen firsthand. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, that yeah. would color your view if, if literally that's what they're doing. You'd be mm-hmm. like, well, mm, this seems b- BS. Sure, sure. But he, he kind of went too right. far with it, though, because he's, he's saying that the entire thing is is BS. Yeah. And they're actually th- there is yeah. no alternative. St- there, there is no. Um, hold on. Yeah. One of his books is called The Myth of Mental Illness. He said that mental illness doesn't <laughs> exist. There is no such thing as mental okay. illness. It's all just it's all just different ways of being. And yeah. the ones oh, that, right. the, okay. that the state doesn't like, it pathologizes. Oh, this is getting like, very too... Foucauldian, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit yes. too far in the other direction, I think. That's why I was it's calling it the leftist direction. cultural <laughs> Okay, fair, fair enough, Sitch. I see where you were coming from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's very right-wing, but it is, it's in the same kind of track yeah, of thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, of course you. I, I sent you a picture, yeah, Adam. Yes. I don't know if you can bring it up, the clock picture. Uh, Yeah, what was that all about? Well, so we were, ta- we were talking oh, about yeah, the you know, our, mental, our mental illness is real. The one of the ways that they test for Alzheimer's disease is they ask a person to draw a clock. No way. I, this, I looked yeah, at this, this and I was picture. like, holy shit, what and this is this? This is the pictures that people draw. And this is sort of is can you be used to determine like what stage they're at? So the that's yeah. why I'm saying, like, well, you know, oh, well, it's all made up, right? Well, there was a meme in 2020 <laughs> of people people asking Joe Biden to draw a clock. That's where that came from. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're they were like approaching him at events like draw a clock, Joe Biden. And like he's like, What? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm at the four over one. <laughs> on top top <laughs> just the, the numbers in the middle where, where are these pictures of the clocks oh, oh the i'll discord. put it in uh, the uh yeah. I'll, I'll put it, i'll show you on discord but... Ooh, it's uh yeah no, kind of sad I'm... actually isn't it so oh, it's very sad yes yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> if, if you ask like an old person with alzheimer's draw a clock and they they draw this and it's like well so you can gonna... see you can see the uh the, the progression of the disease as the clocks get more and more deranged. Right. Well, they're all deranged in different ways. I don't think this is like an ordered stage of things. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, so it's just, you know, I think, I think what ha- this is what happens. This is the problem. So almost not every psych, not every mental illness, but loss of mental illnesses are just normal modes of being, but taken to extreme levels. Like, you know, OED mm. is, is a good example of that. You know, obviously you can be a rebellious person without having mental illness. <laughs> And so there's always this kind of classification problem of like, you know, when is someone just have a strong personality and when they're like literally mentally ill? And so that can lead to sort of these categorical problems, right? Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like that guy is kind of doing the same thing that the lefties do with the gender thing where they do the sorties uh, fallacy, whereas he's saying, well, because the categories are kind of like, you know, vague around the edges, therefore the categories don't exist. 
and they're also abused by people in power. So it's not like it's not actually real. Yeah, he does that sort of thing. The, yeah. the issue is, is like like the the obvious progressive reply to this guy's thinking is going to be something like, well, clearly, if you take somebody who who has a compulsion and he spends, you know, six hours of the day every day on his ticks, you know, it's not just that. The society around him demonizes him or, or mm -hmm. thinks the way the way that he lives is bad he also thinks that so the, the progressives would say it's all it's something that is self-judged the, the the unhappiness with your state of being has to come from the inside and there's probably some truth to that but the issue with that point of view is that you now you can get like a drug addict who's clearly fucked up and all he mm -hmm. wants to do is sit around on the street and be high all day and he wants that and yet that's right. also clearly fucked up so it can't just be how you feel about yourself and it can't just be the pathologization of of your state of being by the government there has to be another factor in there sure th th yeah. that makes a mental illness truly a mental illness right i don't know what it is though i have no clue i haven't well, figured there, this out there, yet. there does i mean this is a left wing this is definitely a failing of the left there definitely is validity in having external forces judge other people and judge us for our behavior everything can't just be an internal experience because then you get to the drug problem as you laid out a person on the street just tired yeah, all day. Yeah, totally fair. Totally fair. So. Yeah, but, but then the question is, well, what if the external experience is being curated by people who have it out for you, and well, they course. actually do have it out for you? Like that's the, the eternal, you know, problem. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, he, you know, he he basically, you know, he viewed um, what, what, what was the list that he gave? Let me, let me find it real quick. If you just want to, yeah, he so he said um. Suicide, unconventional religious beliefs, racial bigotry, unhappiness, anxiety, shyness, <laughs> sexual promiscuity, shoplifting, gambling, overeating, smoking, and illegal drug use are all considered symptoms or illnesses that need to be cured. When faced with demands for measures to, to curtail smoking in public, binge drinking, gambling, or obesity, ministers will say that we must charge against we must guard against charges of, of the nanny state. But the nanny state has turned into the therapeutic state where the nanny has been replaced by the counselor. Nannies tell people what to do, but counselors also tell them what to think and what to feel. The nanny state was punitive, austere, and authoritarian, while the therapeutic state is touchy-feely, hyper-supportive, and even more authoritarian. Right, so he's right. He is he's partially right. There's definitely a good critique in there, but I think a lot of it is colored by oh, by his own yeah. history, and it's not yeah, the well, universe. You, you, lit you literally live in a country that suicides people to the tunes of tens of thousands. I'm Based. not disagreeing with you. I'm not like, I, I you. really think that therapeutic state critique has some legs, man. I'm just saying. Was, I do think um, so, too. I do think so, too. What time period was Hungary a communist country? Uh, in the 50s and 60s. So when this a, guy was, was a, a doctor, man. right? Uh, it had two periods of socialist state. Like, one yeah. lasted, like, just from 1919, and it ended in 1919. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, I think, was just the entirety of the of the uh the soviet bloc era right so yeah so i mean it makes sense that this guy is a doctor in the communist regime in hungary and, and then he, he has he these the ideas United States. which probably yeah. yeah but that's that was his problem is that you know he has yeah, the internal flaw of, of not realizing that your experiences or your experiences are not indicative of like a universal idea so well that's the thing though he, he came to the united states in the midst of mk ultra and like and, and like the drug oh, well, that didn't help stuff. you know and he was like well look the americans are doing the same thing <laughs> right 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 <laughs> well as, as my so, response when you when you put on discord my response was when i when i read that state all that stuff you read i said i envisioned heath ledger's joker saying that so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's one of those like he he's so far he seems a lot like marx and he sees a lot and he seems a lot like he seems a lot like mussolini he seems a lot like marvin yarvin where they have very solid critiques of the current order, right. but that their conclusions and then their prescriptions don't really seem to line up. They're not really good prescriptions, but at the very least, it's it's a very interesting read. It's good to read. Sure. sure. Um, let me read. Some. So that's what I've been doing recently. So Sounds I've got about another 20, 20 or so, 30 minutes. Yeah, let's talk so, about the sensible centrism thing just for a second then. What do you say? Yeah. Sorry for taking up some extra time Look, there. you... Uh, we love you, Dad. We, it seems, <laughs> Carl, Yes. like I've been watching your content for quite some time now. It seems like you might be moving a little rightwardly. I think other people have noticed <laughs> this too. Yeah, I would say It seems so. like the more right you move, the more you t claim to be a centrist. Though. What's up with this centrist, this sensible centrism stuff? Um, well, the the first thing is to um, 
show that this isn't an ideology, right? It's not an ism, really. It's not an ist. Uh, it's just to um, take issues in a practical and traditional way. And so okay. that's that because that, the, 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 the center of any society historically has been tradition, right? Sure. What, yeah. What has come before? Where are we now? And how should that be our metric to judge how we go into the future? So that I think is a reasonable est uh, a reasonable description of the center, the sort of political center of a society, right? And if you just make you know uh, reasonable, informed, uh, literally sensible um, uh, judgments from that, as in you use your sense data to make informed judgments. You don't start with an a priori set of rational, calculated standards, but you use what you have inherited and compare where you are to where you or you could be in you know a year's time or whatever you know a reasonable set of standards um then you realize that actually we are living in wildly ideological times uh we are anti-traditional societies at this point and we are going off a cliff and mm -hmm. things are getting really really bad and whenever anyone points this out oh you're a right-wing extremist it's like no we're just all really left wing at this point. Like all of our governments, all of our cultures, they're very, very left wing. And that's not good, I think. It seems it's like a, just, uh, a curi just a curiosity, Sargon. Are, are you doing the, the, the thing where you believe that everything post enlightenment is left wing and like pre enlightenment is, is right wing? I mean, technically, that's how it is, right? Okay, well, fair enough. No. Yeah. But... I mean, that's literally what the terms left and right wing mean. Well, okay, well, I, I just before it, we move, going back to, that's that's going back to the French Revolution, we're going back to the French Revolution. I guess we no, can, we're, we're going we can... back to just what the term means, right? That's what the term means. Well, the terms have obviously evolved over time, right? Well, not really, to be honest, because I mean they still they're still used in exactly the same ways, right? Uh, so, that's, what do you, that, how do you mean? Well, the the, the reason Adam and Sitch yeah. that you are conservatives, right, mm -hmm. in the minds of the left that you believe that there is something existing about your society that is already good. Right. And you don't I, I would say, that, no, I right? would say that they think we're right wing because we don't accept every single left wing position. Yeah. But the that's reason the you don't thing, accept though. that, that's the same thing. The reason that's not, you don't a, accept that's not the, that's not the, okay. You said the left, right. You were using it from the, the origin point. That's not what it meant back then. It didn't yeah, mean but, that there was nothing good or good about the society. No, but that is what the left is. No, no, that's, and that's fine. You can, make that argument i'm just saying dev was saying are you saying that all post enlightenment philosophies are left wing and all pre-enlightenment are right wing and you said yes but then that's not the definition that you're laying out now where you're saying you think something good exists about your society no but that, that actually is because the the point is everything post enlightenment ideologically is rationalistic right and the pre-enlightenment was traditionalistic mm -hmm. okay and so the right the, a true right wing is a traditional right wing which doesn't operate along the same premises and all the same tools as the rationalistic enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the enlightenment itself is a left-wing project and everything that sprung from it is rationalistic on its foundations. And so ends up in whatever left-wing sort of spiral, like a cyclone or something. Uh, and I don't want to be in that cyclone. Right. I don't think that's the right way to do any of this. Right. And actually, I think ideology itself is part of the problem. And so, well, yeah. Okay. I... Right. But I guess what what I'm saying is that, um, you know, tradition and progress are relative terms. Right. And so once, you know, once the Enlightenment goes and we all live in this liberal capital society for 100 years, it can easily become the right wing tradition to protect that liberal capitalism and the left wing tradition to want to dismantle it for something different completely. Well, is uh, you, I mean, you could make that argument, and in fact, the left will make that argument against. Well, I mean, that's you, right? kind of the way that most people use the term. Well, well, right? that, 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 is, that is like Hannah. What's her, Hannah Arendt? How do you pronounce yeah. it? That was her argument: is that every revolutionary becomes a conservative after the revolution. Yeah, yeah, because they, they, they want they to preserve their own revolution, yeah. right? Yeah, but but that's that's why um, you, using the example of America is a really unique case and is not really relevant to the rest of the world because you are the product of a revolution, which was a left-wing revolution that mm -hmm. cemented itself and is not brokering counter-revolutionaries or shouldn't be, right? Uh, the you, un Unfortunately for you, the bastard great-great-great-grandchildren of the French Revolution have learned your system and have learned how to turn it against you. Right. But, um, but the 
point is they can only really do that because of the kind of country that you are, right? Um, if you're not trying to preserve a revolution, which I'm not, then none of this is my problem, right? Okay, so but like, 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 in, in this paradigm of saying, oh, mm -hmm. you're a, you're a left wing, you're a conservative, you're a progressive, you're a conservative. Like in, in the enlightenment paradigm, it's kind of irrelevant, right? Cause you're, you're basically arguing over the same principles for the same goals and just arguing which one has the best method. Um, but I, but you're still arguing in the same frame. You have an ideology, they have an ideology and now the ideologies are having it out. And I'm saying we shouldn't have an ideology. Well, we should be sensible about it. If, if I understand kind of what I think you're saying and what you said in previous conversations, the, the utility or the reason that you like to define uh, left as post-enlightenment and right as pre-enlightenment, as you said, left, uh, you know, post-enlightenment is, ra you know, basing things off of rationality and pre-enlightenment is basing things off tradition. And I, th I thought your position was that you th you believe that this kind of adherence to rationality leads people down a bad path and that they need more of the go back to the pre-rationality traditional way of looking at things. Well, it's, it's not, it's not really that simple, right? But, mm -hmm. um, the, the easiest way to look at it is um, basically how do we know what we know? And the problem. Epistemology. With, yeah, exactly. Right. The, and the problem with uh, anything really that you hear from the current left is that the epistemology of what they come out with is total bollocks. It's obvious bollocks. And moreover, it's untested bollocks. And the more testing it has had, the more bullshit it appears to be. Right. Whereas like the, the, the traditions that we inherited that still persist to this day are older than our civilizations probably in a way and these have gone through iterative generations of testing a trial and error and so it is the product of human wisdom that they have persisted i mean the the best example and this is just the most concrete perfect example that only a radical leftist would disagree with is on the concept of men and women Right. Every traditional society has particular roles for these genders, the two genders, that only the two genders, because that's how societies work. Like every, and it, it, they're always basically the same. Like the aesthetics of them will differ, but the, the core functionality of them will be the same because of what men and women are. And so through this iterative process of trial and error, this is the, the civilizations have got like this is how this works for these people. Right now, we've come to a position where it's like, no, we've abolished this tradition. In fact, the tradition itself is a form of bigotry and a form of hate. And therefore, we are in this just insane, like at the moment, right? In, in this very day, we have party leaders like, of, say, three out of the four major parties in Britain saying that women can have penises. Three of the four <laughs> major parties in Britain, mm -hmm. the leaders, say that women have penises. What's right? the epistemology for that? <laughs> they come to that so it's, it's woke Oppression. social justice. Yeah. That you know what it is, right? Yep. Everyone knows what it is. Everyone listening yep. to this knows exactly where this argument has come from, what the argument's based mm -hmm. on. But the thing is the the politicians themselves are fucking retarded. And so they just melt <laughs> down. No, 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 literally. I, I'm going to do a segment on this on Thursday, right? Because and, and we'll just watch them melting down when asked to define why does a woman have a penis? What does what is a woman if it can have a penis, right? And you just watch them in real time melting down, being like, I, I don't know, I don't know. I've just been told, I don't know. Ninety nine percent of them I don't don't have penises, but one percent do. And it's like, no, zero percent do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, but, and, but and this is the thing: like, when you when you talk to any reasonable trans person, there aren't that many, but there's a few. They always say, yeah, OK, and I, I, you're going to get burned for that. one. I don't give a fuck. They, they always say, yeah, listen, I, I know that I'm a trans woman. I know I'm actually a man, but it's fine. Just leave me alone. Let, let me do this. Yeah, look, like, just, no, there's, just, there's just, nothing... let me let me have my private life and let me do. And it's like and, fair enough. And, right. And Dev, Dev, right. What what you're talking to there, right, mm -hmm. are a margin of society that have always existed. A very, yep. very small margin. I mean, mm -hmm. in in Britain, these people have a, a long tradition in the theater. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's fine society finds an appropriate place for them to be it's not in the mainstream on tv or like in the in political parties leading the discourse about who should go into whose bathrooms and bullshit like this like that's yep. not appropriate you know and so and this this is again through long procession of time we have learned that yeah these people do exist and they should have a place 
but they shouldn't be commanding what the rest of gender relations for the rest of society should be. And yes. like this, yes. this is just what we have learned from experience. You know, we know this because it's been, we've been there and we've iterated this many, many times. And so how, this how is why you, I think. How do sorry, you fight the lived experience epistemology on the left, though? Because obviously, like standpoint epistemology is a problem. We have more of it. You outdo we like have just hundreds beat them of at their own game. Of, yeah, we have literally got more lived experience than they do because we right. are appealing directly to the accumulation of a thousand years of tradition. Well, which but is just that's why they that's why they add the element of oppression. To, it's not just your lived experiences, the, the lived experiences of oppression. Yeah, but they've got to assume I'm against them being oppressed. Right. Well, the irony. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The, the no, irony. I'm, I'm, I'm literally serious. Right? No, I understand. They should be marginalized. They should be on the margin because they are a marginal group. The, the and moreover, irony, right? Moreover, yeah. these people mm -hmm. can't contribute to the continuation of society, right? You like it's wild that we spend any amount of time talking about one percent of the population that won't have children. Like, the, hold on, in, sorry, in, hold on. I don't know if you've seen the recent discourse on the left, but there's a trans woman who has kids, and she's been breastfeeding them, and that's wow, the that's we the found the one unicorn. <laughs> Fuck. No, 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 no. no. It's it's quite disgusting to see, but that that's oh, the current Jesus. leftist discourse is yes. should should children be consuming milk that can be produced by trans women breasts? I mean, that's the, the current no. leftist discourse. Just, just no. But but the, this is the thing, like, <laughs> Dev, with your your trans friends, I'm totally on their side because they are trying to occupy that niche that has always existed. You know, they they you're exactly right. You know, they they're not asking for special privileges. They're not asking to change society. They just want to exist as themselves authentically, and that's totally fine. For me, yeah. In my the, the the direct quote was, "I don't need my uh, my birth certificate to say female. I don't need to play sports against women. I just need to be left alone and have my relationships with my husband and 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 just let, let me let me just take take my pills and have my gay sex and leave me alone." That, that's what and, she basically said. And I, I this this that to me strikes me as the traditional position. Right. That mm -hmm. has always been the case. You can go back to like, you know, Victorian era where you get like, you know, you, you know, you'll f they'll they'll bring up being like, look at this guy who was a confirmed bachelor and used to dress in women's clothes or whatever. Oh, look, he was trans. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the one guy you can find in that entire century or, you know, a couple of them in that entire century because that, you know, they they operate in a very, very small, like secluded community. You know, sometimes they're going to the arts, sometimes they're going to this and the other and whatever. Right. But like they they should exist. They should be left alone. They shouldn't be persecuted or anything, obviously. But they also shouldn't dominate the social discourse like the families are falling apart. We are on the cusp of a total demographic collapse. And we don't seem to understand that there is a kind of labor that can only be performed by heterosexuals. And that is the labor of raising healthy children well-adjusted children who will fit into society. And from that perspective, you realize, well, why would we talk about anything else? Like it's, it's literally the, it, it's literally the worst thing to do to be focused on any of these people. Like, you know, they'd be like, fight for your rights. Well, what rights? We, we want rights. Well, what rights? You've got all of the same rights as everyone else. Right. Then we literally don't need to talk to you anymore. Like that's the end of the conversation. Go and live your lives. That's what we should be saying. Well, it's kind of yep. like, the issue is kind of like this perpetual fear of, you know, from both sides, it's like the fear of if we don't stamp out this opposing ideology, they're going to come and wipe us out. It's not, it's not just like, we can't just everyone just fucking let everyone, well, who, you know, is this, is this alone. insane progs that are saying this, right? Well, no, no, but it was like, so like in the past, it was, you know, when we lived in a much more oppressive society, it would be the right wingers are saying, we need to stamp out homosexuality because number one, it's a sin. And number two, if we don't, they're going to, you know, Room our children Come into for our children, yeah. right, and then um, once, and are they coming for yeah. the children? Yeah. And then right, and then so that once you know we <laughs> live through the time period of like neutrality, it's or we're going towards a time period of neutrality where everyone can kind of like let live and let live, and then the pendulum switches the other way. Now the left's like, we need to destroy the right wing because if we don't, they're going to come for our children or their ideology and try to and try to come and groom our children in the future. So now we need to stamp them out. It's just like this continual, you know, everyone's yeah, just the, afraid the, that the, their children are going to get taken over by the other's ideology. Okay, but the the. The left, um, in the, the, the LGBT groups, don't have children, right? They have to claim other people's children. Well, I mean, the LGBT right. is now so broad that, you know. <laughs> no, they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, right? So well, well, homosexuals all the non-binaries who are like, you know, right? straight people. Yeah, they're, they're not really a thing. 
Um, <laughs> they're, no, they're, they're not. And everyone knows that, there, right? there are like trans women who like freeze their sperm and they try to get don't like, but generally, yeah, no, it's, it's, not, kids, it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. It's, it's obviously less they, than, than like if, if you were to, you know, per head, they're right. essentially zero oh. percent children, right? Through this entire, well, group, let's just say less, right? And so they, they are claiming a constituency of other people's children, right? That should be forbidden. Obviously, you don't own those children, the parents own those children, right? No questions asked. Uh, weird groomers is how they come across. Um, and like, like I said, we don't need to stand there. I think we just need to stop listening to them. Like, no, whatever the demands are, no, you've got everything you need. You've got everything the same as everyone else. You can't have special privileges. And when I say special privileges, I mean the ability, for example, to use the bathroom of the opposite sex. I don't have that privilege. I, you don't have that privilege. You can't go into a woman's bathroom because you're a man. Therefore, they can't go into a woman's bathroom because they're men. So, so here, here's the question then: like, like, would you want to see someone like Blair White in the washroom with you? Well, it doesn't matter what I want, right? Blair okay, White, well, how, what, what, what would you have? Okay, right? fair enough. What, what, what would you have? Yeah. Well, look, well, I that's the thing. Like, men, male, male people shouldn't be in the women's bathrooms. Sure, sure, but so like the way that the way that I view it is that if you pass, it's not going to matter because no one's right. no like no one's no one's scanning your crotch with like an with an X ray gun. If you sure. look and, like and, the gender and that, that you want to there be, there will be cases like that, right? And fine, yeah. I don't really care that much because they're going to be again totally fringe, right? I'm yeah. not like yeah. I'm not overly interested in policing this, to be honest. Right. You know, if we just have it as just a general societal rule, male people go in male bathrooms, female people go in female bathrooms. Then oh, we should watch the video. This is the topic of the video. <laughs> I well, see, the, 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 way, the way that I've, I've always viewed it is that if you pass, you count. If you don't pass, you don't count. That's apparently transphobic, but it's also the truth. You know? Yeah, I think no that's true. Yeah. yeah. No one would right. bat an eye if Blair White walked into the woman's. Right. No one would well, care. Yeah. Right? yeah. P- putting, putting the bathroom shit on the back burner for a second. Um, I agree with a lot of what you're saying regarding the LGBT stuff, um, Carl. But I think you have to acknowledge when you, when you have these conversations that like, like as long as the the rights of people who are you know gay and trans to to some extent are protected in our society, it's like that definitely needs to be enshrined and protected. Because we, I'm sure you saw right now, you know there was the whole controversy where Uganda passed a law where they were uh, out, you know they're making it legal to have gay sex or be gay, and then they also were you know if you if you were gay and rape someone, then they would kill I you. I don't see why I care about what Uganda. Well, does. well, let me let me bring why I'm bringing this forward. So then Ted Cruz, you know, he tweets this out and he, you know, condemns <laughs> Uganda for doing this. Right. Yeah. And there's not like not the majority, but there's a surprising number of right wingers who are like, oh, based Uganda outlawing homosexuality or trying to do this game where they're like, oh, they're only killing the rapists. Why only, you know, they're not killing the normal gay people. Right. It's like, yeah, but you're ignoring the fact that they're outlawing homosexuality, period. Well, I mean, homosexual, or saying homosexuality you know, is illegal in dozens of countries. I understand. I, I understand. But why are they giving Ted Cruz shit? For an American politician, when it's legal to be gay in America, just that that definitely gets people who are not why, you know why? anti not anti gay to be like, well, that's fucking you know scary. Yeah, but why is Ted Cruz picking Uganda? Because it's just the thing people are talking about. What do you mean? Exactly, because because they don't care that it's already illegal in dozens of other countries. No, but that's like okay, that's like saying when the all the problems in South Africa were happening with the you know uh, killing white farmers. I'm sure Ted Cruz and a lot of other people on the right talked about it. And if someone on the left said, well, why do you care what's going on in South Africa? Why are you talking about that? That's not like a, it's not a valid critique of what's happening. Well, I'm not saying it's not a valid critique. I'm saying it's not really something that's very important to these people. Well, that's fine. But that that's what's going on in Uganda is important. That's not what I'm saying. What is important to me is that there are a bunch of right wingers who are American who are saying that they're totally fine with outlawing homosexuality in America or wherever country okay, they Well, live. I mean, I disagree with those people. I don't know. Right, so I'm just saying that you have to make sure I, I that when you have these conversations, like you enshrine those protections in the conversation. Are, are we talking about like um, the sort of uh, Andrew Torba, Nick Fuentes types? Not even, not even. There, no? there was like one of DeSantis's, uh, someone who's working for DeSantis was like making all this weird fucking tweets about this issue. <laughs> really? And getting into fights with uh, Ted Cruz about it. Okay, I didn't see any of that. Yeah. But like... I, um, Okay, well, I mean, you know, that's the that's a question for you guys to have out with them, right? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm sure you've, you know, I'm sure you from the circles, you know, but one of the very common things we hear is that, like, oh, gay marriage is what leads us down the pathway to like everything bad happening with wokeness. Right well, now. okay, let's talk about gay marriage then, right? Because uh, that's an interesting subject. Why don't gays get married? I, I don't know what you're asking me. 
They well, gays, why don't gays get married? There have there are gays that are married. No, no, Lots literally of like ten percent of gays get married. Well, that's, that's a tiny, gays tiny getting tiny married. Percentage. That's gays so getting married. I, uh, no, that's not. Uh, that's most sorry, gays. That's ninety percent. If ninety percent of people don't do something, you don't say those people do something as a general heuristic. So right? you actually, you would actually say those people don't do that thing. I think it's right. like if, no, no, 50% if, if 90%, of people are cohabitating listen, If 90% not married, of the so. rich did not pay their taxes, you would say the rich don't pay their taxes. And you'd be justified <laughs> in saying that because almost all of them didn't pay their taxes, right? So, um, so sorry, we, we had this conversation what, like four months ago or so. And since then, yeah. I've looked into it. I, I, did, I did my video on the topic because I actually mm -hmm. like the What? Like oh, no. You checked it out? Yeah. I did. What are the results? It is, it, well, it's true that after gay marriage, gay people generally didn't get married. Yes, and I know, because I looked at it as well. Yes, yes. So so part of that is because you have like a bunch of old gays who don't really care. They're too old. They're, it's like whatever. Um, some of them have just gotten used to just being in relationships. Some of them got, some of them like being promiscuous. Some of them view it as a um, as a political statement to not, you know, be assimilated into bourgeois culture and join a heterosexual institution like marriage. Sure. Um, however, Heteronormative society. Yes. Yes. However, there is some evidence that among the youngest gays, they do get married at slightly higher rates. Okay. So it okay. might so it, it might be a thing as as like over generations we can expect to see those marriage rates rise up to a point where maybe they do actually get married as a as a general okay. rule. Okay. Now, the second question is why should gays be allowed to get married? Freedom. For the rights and benefits that it infer that it confers to any, but they don't people. perform the service. They don't. They don't reproduce as the service. They right? don't reproduce. We right. Don't, so you're giving them access to something their, without them performing not, the duty not, that is required to get it. Okay, that's not true in America. That's totally true. That is not true in America. You get you get benefits for being married, not for having children. You get yes, different benefits point, for having children. The, but, the reason that you give people benefits for being married is so they can have children. Is to incentivize children. Right. If that That's was the reason only... any society would do it. Right. That, first okay, of all, it's um, not, that is not true. That is completely not true. true. No, it's not. Also, because if that was the if... case, you could just give them. We give. Wait, wait, wait. In America, we give people benefits for having children already. And we give them benefits no. for being. Yes. No, and we, no. give them, we give them benefits for being married. So obviously yeah, they're you, not. You have you can't say that these for being married and you have benefits to make sure that people don't starve. Right. Okay, we give yeah, people that, that, whatever. True, if you want to say like benefits, if you want to give it. No, yes. we give people benefits for being. I mean, married, they're, they're, okay? they're probably. I mean, we have that in this country as well. But the, right. the it, they try to make it into a series of incentives, right? And you have incentives because you want people to marry because everyone knows that married couples produce the healthiest children, the most well-adjusted children, well, not, most not likely just, to proliferate children, and continue right? on society. Right? Married couples are of. Married couples also are more likely to engage in pro-social behavior overall. Yeah. Generally. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, but the point is the that's pretty whole huge, purpose, Sitch. The whole yeah, but that's why. Marriage, so why would you want to deny that from? Yeah, but gays the gay aren't population. exactly a criminal group, right? I don't think anyone's looking at the gays. Yeah, but, and going, what, I don't, <laughs> what is the? What, a gay you're, not, you're not really because no they're getting married. That's why. To lock, what is no, the no, argument no. to locking them out? That's what I don't understand. Right. The the argument is again they're accessing something that a they don't need, b they don't want, and c they can't perform the duty. Some of, them, of them, right? them do want it though. Ten percent of them do want yeah, it. Okay. Okay, but that's great. That's great. There there are men who dress as women who want to go into the women's bathrooms. Should we allow that? No. Right, just because someone yeah, wants but that's harming, that's that's potentially harming someone else. This is yeah, not harming anyone. Else. Sure, but also I do think that the sanctity of the concept of marriage oh, has no. been harmed. This is so bizarre. Right? By gay men. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying <laughs> by gay men. Back marriage. to 2004. I'm saying in many different here. ways, right? In so, many so here, different here's, ways. Here's I, I can I can maybe lay this out. It's like if marriage is for having children then it makes sense to bar gays from marriage. But if yes. marriage isn't for that anymore, then it makes no sense. Ma marriage, exactly. For, well, first of so all, what's the purpose of marriage? Right, And the purpose of marriage is to encourage is heterosexual so people to form a bond, preferably for life, raise healthy children, and retire and die happy. Right, That was the point. And so, this is what it's, again, traditionally, this is what it's always been. Okay, so even if, right? first of all, well, no, traditionally Wait. marriage was Has this always been children. your position? It was to secure Sorry. property rights for your children, Carl. which is a different concept. But, okay, so that's the first thing. But the second thing here is even if what you're saying is true, that wouldn't that wouldn't be a reason to preclude gay people from being able to join in that institution whatsoever with harming no one else at all when we add the additional benefit on top of that 
that being married creates pro-social and attitudes and environments. And especially there's lots of fucking unadopted children running around it here. Look, and if gay people want to adopt ways. those children and have, you know, pro-social, healthy environment, you know, pro-social, pro-social, healthy environments for those children in America, that should be. Look, we've got lots of ways of crafting pro-social environments for adults, right? But we don't have very many ways of creating pro-social environments for children. Right? That's that's the major issue, right? Living, the, the wait, fact, wait, yeah, but no, no, living listen, in a, li living listen, in a married listen, household is one of those. Listen. I, I don't agree that gay households are, the, uh, are an equivalent to straight households either, right? There's, I don't think the data. I'm pretty sure that. all the data does support that. Actually. No, it doesn't support. That. <laughs> it definitely doesn't, and I don't. I do. I mean, Dev, you've looked into this. I have. Has this always been your position, Carl? <laughs> no, no. The, the Dev, do you agree, do you agree with me, Dev? Uh, partially. Mm. You're partially mm. right. Yes. Mm, so, so for I example, know. you you definitely see that you know people who um who are gay or trans now, they have a higher rate of being abused as a child. No one likes to talk mm. about that. It is the truth. Mm. That sucks. Wait, 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 that had nothing to, what the fuck, that had no, nothing to do what we were talking about. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Wait, 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 no, wait. You just said children that are gay or trans had higher uh, rates of being abused as a child, right? Yes. No, no, people, that has nothing to people, fucking do with what we're people, talking about. No, it does, though, Hold right? On. It, it does if you believe that gayness or transness is transmitted primarily through abusing children. No. I don't believe that. But if you believe that, that suddenly... still would have nothing to do with what we're talking about, unless you're saying that gay does. people and trans people are intentionally abusing their children to make them gay or trans. It's, which is a completely so, different fucking Some point. people would definitely say that. Such yeah, but that's, that's not an evidence. <laughs> okay, so, so you're here. Like, the problem so, is so that for example, there's just not, there's no equality between these two kinds of lifestyles, right? Like, what, what's the life expectancy of the average gay person, Dev? Uh, it's generally less. Why are, oh, no, but why are you making it's not, it's not just generally. These are like How the much? worst arguments. So, you're when, not, when you've come, not given a solid argument at all when, other when than it comes to the violation of the sanctity less. of marriage. Okay. Well, when it comes to men, it's significantly less. When it comes to women, not so much. Right. But how much significantly less? Wasn't it like 20 years or something? Was yes. Something like that. Yeah. It's literally 50, right? That is fucking wild because they have dramatically different lifestyles to heterosexual couples, right? And that's just, mm. I'm not judging. I'm just, it's the way it is, right? Things are not the same. And so they shouldn't be treated as the same, especially when marriage as an institution is for a purpose and it's for heterosexual people. Like I'm not but, saying. Out of curiosity, Sargon, if yeah. you actually found a, a gay couple that wasn't abusing their kids, would you be okay with them adopting those kids and being married because they actually are fulfilling that role? The the thing is, this requires knowledge before the fact that I can't have, right? Well, it's hypothetical. I mean, you can just yeah, exactly. But I couldn't know in advance, right? But even then, I'm not saying all gay couples abuse their kids. I'm not okay. saying that, right? I'm not even saying that this is necessarily a component of the conversation, although I do think in a clear eyed view, you would have to admit that that is a component, right? You would, you would have to look at this as an issue, right? But even then, let's just put that aside and pretend that these things are equal when they're not, right? I think that there should be something like the, the concept of marriage that should be kept for heterosexuals exclusively. Right. Okay. Because yeah. they're heterosexuals for the purpose of them getting married and raising children to continue our civilization. Right. Okay. That um, should be pumped so, into the heads of young people. Right? So so if that if that's the case, would you would you be for um barring marriage from heterosexuals who don't or can't have kids? Well, again, that would re require knowledge that I would need before in, in advance. Well, no, we would just say, right? oh, you can't have children or you decide not to have children, you can't get married. This is why this this argument is like a terrible fucking I mean, argument. who's going to do that? Like, I don't know. I don't, who's who going to prevent gay people from getting married? What do you mean? Well, everyone. Like, well, then you have everyone almost does the every same thing. Almost every country in the world prevents Wait, gay marriage, but in... no country in the world checks for sterilizations or they you know, used to in america no, no. you literally had to go and you would get your marriage license and you'd even in some states during the progressive era have to get a license in order to have a children they would check all this shit well how would they that's check true, if yeah. you were fertile or not i don't know i guess that's what you know, i think, I think it's just like, like, a med, like a medical test you know they it's like in the 1920s right, i don't, I don't the think you did. need to do that i think just the rule of thumb because i mean like this this again you're missing but that's the what point, you're laying right? out here no 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 listen listen no the purpose is that, in general, right? If you have a sterile heterosexual person, that doesn't damage the institution, right? I was being but gay if, and married if, doesn't but, damage. No, the no. Institution but listen, either. if if you say right, okay, instead, if 
if you're not even going to, um, because a, st- a person who's quote unquote sterile, they might un- in an unlikely event fall pregnant, right? For for whatever reason it is, right? Um, my, my my wife recently had her tubes tied and she's constantly worried about this because apparently 1% of women who have had their tubes tied still fall pregnant, right? And so it's not that a, it's not that it is simply impossible. It's that it seems to be impossible, right? Whereas with two homosexual people, it is simply impossible. Okay, Absolutely. You could use whatever. Right? Someone's born with a defect and they literally can't have children. Okay, you can use whatever hypothetical you want. But it, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. That's the what point. I'm asking. Why, why are you making a distinction? Because there is a purpose and that purpose informs general behaviors, right? And the general behavior can't be informed with homosexual couples, but also making it something magical like imbuing it with this kind of magic gives people a direction to go in right gives them a reason to remain married it gives them a reason to get married it makes them feel incorporated right. into their own civilization when you flatten it out merely right. to a legal people contract, shouldn't feel incorporated in their civilization they should be excluded right when you when you flatten it out to merely a legal contract then you nullify any of the magic of being married and who's you, saying that that's what they want to do with gay marriage they've they have really the exact done. same that's what's happened no that's they what's have, happened. wait no well okay let me say first of all i just looked up a study it says that the children of uh, same sex couples on average perform much better in uh, school and getting primary and secondary education. Then what percentage of them turn out gay compared to straight couples? Okay. I don't know. It doesn't say that. So <laughs> well, I'm not. Up. So if you want to, so I'm just saying, if you want to bring forth these this claim, I'd have to see some evidence of it. Okay. Yeah, but I don't I've care if they perform well. Right. That's not the issue. Okay. Right? So that's the first the, the, thing. This, when you yeah, say I don't know, you children have to, of gay people, show me, you have to show right? me the there the are no there are no children of gay people. Right. Okay. The gays don't produce, reproduce. Obviously, whatever makes people <laughs> right. gay. So, okay. Wait. Obviously, whatever makes people gay is something that's passed down genetically, regardless. No, that, that's that not it, obvious. Here's a, that, that's wait. absolutely not obvious. That is, there's no fucking way. There, there, there has been evolutionarily no, no gene. that whatever it is that makes people gay would have been passed be down from the, the beginning. Gene. Wait, stop. There's no, first of all, homosexuality is something that was seen in a lot of animal species. And there's no yes, way right? through natural selection that whatever the trait is that makes people gay would be passed down from the beginning of humans to now if well, it was only argument. passed down through gay individuals. Well, that, that's my argument. There's no genetic component to it. No, I'm saying there is. It's just associated with other well, biological components. But how would it? How e- Evolutionarily speaking, how would it be passed down? Because a lot of times, it, because a lot of these things will hook on to other things. And they're not necessarily activated in every single person biologically. Okay. Do you have any evidence of it? Of gay specifically? No, we don't know exactly what no, causes it. exactly. There's no evidence. We've mapped the entire g- human genome. And we've got no evidence of a gay gene. But well, no, 49% no, so of it, gay people it's, say they were molested. It's something children. like... So, it's so you think like, it's like, just? You think on, it's I, just I, I can kind of explain. I can kind of explain oh, this. You think, so, wait, wait. You you believe it's just? Okay. You think sexual orientation is just a is just a choice or just environmental or something? I don't know. I'm There's, saying that we all have the no evidence, evidence points to it being biological. But forty nine percent of homosexuals say they were molested as children. I don't know. I'm saying that's the fact, right? We've agreed yeah. these are the facts, and so okay, what conclusion do you infer from that? Yeah, except that the problem is that a lot of the the kids that will say that they were molested, it would be because it'd be okay. There's been a lot of study on the, you know, the molestation of gays and of gay children. And a lot of it's also because these kids are very easy targets because they feel different from the beginning and they feel ostracized from the beginning. And thus they make themselves unintentionally very easy targets for predation. Just to say, because there's a high, that is true. I don't know if I agree with this. That's literally, wait, that has literally been responsible for this. That is literally the being a predator. Okay, that has literally I, I been studied. You so you can't argument. wait. You can't make this causation <laughs> correlation argument to say, well, because there's a high number of sexual abuse, you know, for for gay children. That's the explanation. Which even if we were to grant, even if we were to grant you that, that wouldn't explain. That would only explain forty percent or a minority. That wouldn't explain hundred percent of them. So, uh, and obviously, there's a biological component to sexual orientation. Otherwise, conversion therapy and all this shit would work. Sure, but I agree with your argument that it there, it doesn't make any evolutionary sense for there to be a persistent gay gene, right? I never that wasn't my argument. My argument well, was there has to be because that's the only way the, it could is, survive. It actually does long. make sense. It, it does, does make, make sense, sense in terms of um, it does make uh, sense limiting population size because they think it has no not, not even not even in terms of that such. There's actually a, a better reason for why there would be it would be an, a, a biological origin for being gay. All right, I, I can explain it to you. It, it, it's so there's something in psychology called I think it's sexual target error. Where the idea is 
you have your sexuality, you have the target of the sexuality and something goes wrong in your brain and you, and you target the wrong thing. So like mm-hmm. people, who, people who suffer from fetishes have a sexual target error, right? Right. Um, like AGB, AGP trans people have a sexual target error. Okay. Sorry, what, what do you mean by sexual target error? Or was it? A sexual target error is like basically you when, yeah, if you have a foot fetish, you right. have a sexual target error. Like, like you should be, you should be attracted right. to the woman's genitals, not her feet. Right. Sure. But there's something psychologically happening there, right? Sure, but the, and, the, we're not saying this is genetic, right? No, no, no. There is, there's a genetic component to sexual target errors. So how, how basically reproduction works is as a, as a species becomes more complicated, they become, in a very general sense, there's obviously exceptions, they become um, less choosy about their mates. So, for example, you have some species where, like, you know, the panda is the obvious example, right? They have to be in a very specific environment with very specific food and a very mm-hmm. specific type of mate. Otherwise, they just won't have sex, right? And, yet, like, let humans are trying... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> humans are trying desperately to get more pandas Oh, in the let world, them go, right? Jesus. But, like, we've discovered that various mating habits and mating practices... As oh, are you going to talk about panda foot fetishes? No, no, no. no he's, he's saying that the broadness of the sexual targeting, which allows I know, I know. Yeah, easily, yeah. The sexual targeting becomes an evolutionary more broad. advantage, but that's going to lead to more advantage. errors in terms of heter- exactly. Right. So, for example, if you know humans only liked girls with certain colors of hair or a certain height or something, yeah. that would radically limit how much sex and how much reproduction right. you're actually going to get done. So, as as a species gets older the the uh, the sexual target scope widens and eventually it starts to include let's say androgynous people so the guy who the guy that would fuck a woman that looks like a man is going to reproduce more than a guy that would not fuck a woman that looks like a man right this sounds and very at, speculative to me and as you broaden it outwards eventually you start getting errors of homosexuality yeah well, and also I'm, I'm not persuaded by this well that's fine but also from a biological perspective and this is something you brought up multiple times one of the most reproduced things is that when they do the brain scans of the gays versus the straights, you know, they find on average that gay people with brain scans more align with the opposite sex. So there's obviously a biological component here that so is at play with sexual orientation. Okay. Oh, by the way, what, what this means is that if you're if you're bisexual, you are the you are the highest evolved of the human race. So. There you go. No. But but so. all of this is a massive. <laughs> so this, none of this is germane tangent. to what I've been saying, though, right? I I know this is all a massive tangent from yeah. why you haven't really explained what is the purpose of excluding gays from being able to. It's get to maintain married. the sanctity of the institution for straight people. It doesn't ruin that at all. I think it does. I think that when you say, "Well, marriage is just for anyone." No, I don't agree. I think it's actually for heterosexual people. Except, okay, but your argument for that is that you think that we, it sounds like your argument is that pe- you want people to have more kids. The people not having more kids and, and, and the yeah. breakdown of people getting married and getting divorced, all that shit was happening way before gay marriage ever fucking entered the equation. The idea not that gay really. marriage has some influence on this has never been shown whatsoever. Not, not really. I mean, like the boomers, it's, it's the boomers just had a massive right number of kids, right? So it's it, like childlessness is a relatively no. The boomers, thing. the boomers had less than their parents. Yeah, the, yeah, but their parents had like six kids. Each. That's why they're the boomers, right? Yeah, but the, <laughs> but the, the boom boomers. Mean. That's the why boomers, I mean boomer. Right. Yeah, but the boomers weren't sub replacement level of children. No, but it right? was. But that's because this they is where were, we get the two point five stereotype of boomer right. But children, that's where right? they were at the begin. Yeah, but they were the beginning of it because once you start having condoms, you know, being widely distributed. Yeah, no, once I you agree. Have there the are being widely distributed. There, once yeah, you have I, other there, aspects so, of modern society. Because yeah. I mean, one one thing that modern society will probably have to come to terms with, and I'm I'm genuinely deadly serious. We're probably going to have to ban birth control at some point. Yep. Yeah, well, maybe at some point. I don't know. So no, I'm not even joking. Like, I'm not saying we we should. I'm not saying I know. What you're, I understand what you're saying. Right. We could it, get to a it, point it, where we have to force people yeah. to have children. It's definitely well, possible. It literally okay. will come to this. Okay. You know, and so any, <laughs> anything that ends up degrading the sanctity of marriage is pretty bad. Like no fault divorce is actually kind of crazy when you think about it. It's like, why the fuck do you get married? You know? Okay. Well, what I the point in that? completely you disagree know? with that, but I completely disagree Really? With you that. think no fault divorce is a totally. Yeah. Perfect... I believe in freedom. Yes. I believe people should be able yeah, to get married yeah, and divorce. There, there we go. So, that, yeah. That's, that's why everything from the enlightenment onwards is left wing, right? There you go. Because this freedom is literally the freedom from society and social bonds. There and go. I actually think that's crazy and is going to destroy society. Yeah. So, the, the, so there is a point where freedom goes too far. Yes. Of course there is. Of course there is. Yeah. When did, so I'm looking at this. I don't think Japan. Uh, Hold on. I, 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 Japan, I, can, I can actually fill in a few gaps here because I watched. Well, let me just amazing... say this before you fill okay. in. Here. Let me just say this one thing. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, cause I'm looking at this cause I don't think Japan 
either has legalized same-sex marriage or legalized it very recently. And they've obviously they have, had no. massive so. birth rate decline issues. So this idea that yeah, like they it's the gay too. marriage that's ruining I didn't say it was the gay marriage, right? Well, you're saying it's well, destroying I, the sanctity, I, I, I which think, is destroying I think, the birth rates. That's not I think saying. gay what? marriage is a, is a symptom of something else. It's not actually yes. causing this problem. It's a symptom and of more, moreover, moreover, it's literally the gays don't want it. The gays don't need it. They don't use it, right? 90% of them don't even bother. Right. And it, so it the ones that want it, they should have it available to them. What? No, because the 10%, no, because the 10 is? of men who dress as women who want to go in the women's bathroom shouldn't have that's that either. The gay, right? this, this is something oh that God. should be for heterosexual people. This is insane. No, it's not. Okay. It's totally insane. reasonable. So, so, no, it's so, not. Sorry, it's sorry, completely it's based on logic. No, it's totally reasonable. <laughs> no, it's not. Any You're saying it's based, based on really some ephemeral <laughs> sanctity argument that what is the sanctity? I'm literally, it's healing sanctity. That's correct. Here, let, let, let me, let me, okay, Sitch, if you had a society that wanted to promote childbirth and child rearing yeah. and healthy children, yeah. you would have to have some legitimizing way to do that, obviously, yes. right? That was marriage. It's not anymore, but it was for a time marriage. Now, and traditionally, th th that that's worked. not true. It yes, is it true. Is. Yes. No, it's you, not. You, you, need, you need some sort of social role wait, for wait, the mother stop, and father to inhabit. Stop, and you stop, also need stop, an institution stop, stop, that stop, makes this possible. Stop. <laughs> You're doing the thing that everyone's fucking doing where you're assuming okay. that the current thing that's happening was the current problem. The idea of we, our society for, and most of human society for all of its existence, didn't have a problem getting people to fuck and have children. That was not an issue until recently. We yes. still don't really have a problem with like having children. There are loads. We of do have a problem. Children. Wait, wait, we do have a problem getting but, people yeah, to have that's kids. Fair. That's so fair. to but say, like... wait, to, wait, to say that marriage was some institution that was, that was created and, and has existed for hundreds of years to get people to have kids is fucking not true. That's completely oh, sorry, not sorry. true. Let me rephrase. Not to have kids because there was always people just fucking and having kids anyway. No, to have legitimate children. To have like yes. well-raised children. To secure property rights and to create pro-social family units and all those things. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but none, yes. of, none but, of those things are really that important. They're all downstream of what Dev's talking about, right? It's it's about having healthy, well-adjusted people who like their own country and who want to be where they are. Okay, right? sure. I don't and, – And like, you know, property rights, inheritance, all that, they, they come from that, obviously. But this is all downstream because the most important thing is having a bunch of healthy, well-adjusted people around you. You know, you so want to be, live in a right. community of healthy, well-adjusted people, right? Right. So and we so, should be promoting gay marriage more so that there's more no, healthy, well-adjusted gays. No, because they're not the same. These things are not equal, right? Let's force gays these people to get married. Children. What do you think, I Sitch? I think, I, think we should, I think we should force gay people to get married. I'm going to exactly I think so, that. too. You know, yeah. you know what? See, right? so here's that, that, that is an alternative. Convert them into married people. Right? There you go. So here's where I split with Sargon. I think that 10% of gay people that want to get married. And if they want to have children, then fine, right? It's, it's obviously better for a gay person to get married and adopt some kids and raise them well and be part of their community than it is for them to go to piss gang bangs every fucking weekend and spread monkey pox around, right? <laughs> obviously. It's obviously better a for a gay idiot. person to do that, that, which is why they should have the option to do it. So I just, I just want to be clear, right? I actually don't care at all about gay marriage. Like this is not, I've never made a video about it. I don't go around talking about it. It's because doubt, it's now. Doubt, press doubt, <laughs> well, you, X well, for on, doubt. Show, show me where I've made a video about it. Well, no, you're show not going to make Show a... me where I've talked about it other than this conversation. This conversation is too much already. I don't like, no, when did not. you adopt it's, this? It's, when did you adopt just, this position? I, I'm, I, 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 I just said. Every, I've I don't always really heard. care about gay marriage, right? Then why are you it's arguing the, against gay marriage? Why are you you're arguing not, that they shouldn't be You're not to? understanding the counter arguments because the counter arguments do have merit. They don't, yeah, right? Okay, none of these, none okay, of these let me, let me try to steal man arguments have argument. any merit. Right? I try to steal I know man. you don't want to. I don't. I know you don't want to accept. Wait, wait, it, but they I, do have wait, merit. stop! I've to literally you, been they trying. Do. I've literally trying to address this your arguments the entire fucking time, which is you can tell me if I'm wrong. The argument was. Gay marriage hurts the sanctity of straight marriage, and that's a problem because we need straight marriage to produce uh, children yeah, and to yeah, create yeah, healthy that, pro-social family units. Okay. And I say, how does gay marriage do that? And, and I then explained. I don't get an answer. No, I explained it express, expressly. Magic, and I, I can repeat it. I <laughs> yeah. said uh, magic underpinned the concept of marriage, right? Magic, as we were talking about earlier, not like stupid concepts. I understand what you're saying. The so, what, what I'm saying is now, now that marriage has been flattened down to merely a legal contract, it doesn't really hold the weight that it used to hold, right? Okay. To say, no, I'm right. married. Oh, this is my husband. This is my wife. Right. The plan is we're going to be together forever. That kind of magic, that you, the romance yes. you put in people's souls, that's important, actually. 
And that's what bonds civilization together, actually. Like the social contract is a total fiction that doesn't exist. Right. So And so we need to get away from that. And so a right. sentimental society that actually is underpinned by this kind of magic, it actually does work. One hundred percent disagree. Wait, wait, let me stop. Okay. Let me reiterate this so I make sure I understand your point. Okay. So you're saying which I think I agree with, is that people definitely used to take marriage a lot more seriously back in the day. They used to take a lot more institutions a lot more seriously back in the day because there was some belief of like, you're using the word magic, there's some belief of culture or importance inherent in like two people Same joining together and maybe? finding romance or love, you know, whatsoever. Yeah, but, and but nowadays I, people kind of have a more flippant meaning. view of, yeah, they find meaning in getting married. And now people have kind of a more flippant view of marriage and yes. all these other institutions. And okay. gay marriage right. is an aspect of this. Okay, well, but wait, that's the leap in logic. Because I agree it's with the first part where people are definitely more flippant about marriage and the loss of magic and all that stuff. There's nothing that I've heard in this argument that explains why gay marriage picks away at that versus Be because, you know, all the other things that are happening in society. Because marriage is not about you. Marriage is about someone else. Yeah, but, but gay I don't are getting married to Gay marriage is merely about the adults who are getting married. This has nothing to do with the birth rates either. Like, the, I, I just I, no, dismiss I the does. argument there. Wait, wait, what, yeah, so you wait, think wait, it does, I mean, but I don't think it does. I, I wait, do, when I do you say marriage is about component is when you say in the birth control. When you, when you say marriage is about other people, what does that mean? Literally, it's about the kids. It's, not, it's, it's about the children. It's about the wider society. It's, you know, and so imbuing it with this kind of noble goal makes it valuable to the people who do it. Okay, so okay, so if we if we say that yes, marriage has some magical effect that you know makes people you know better in society, mm -hmm. the, and the same is true of gay people that get married. It's why not. does that damage straight marriage? But it's it's not the gay people can't get married for future children. They can, but that's how. Okay, the you aren't do you how is society functioning where people are like you know I wouldn't have gotten a, this divorce. But now that the gays are getting married, this is making me think that the institution of marriage I'm, I'm is more saying, about me as opposed to the broader society. Well, I think I think that, that I don't think it's a consequence of gays getting married. I think the gays getting married is a consequence of that. OK, but if that's the case, then you can have gay marriage without having the other thing. No, but when you get the other thing back, gay marriage goes away. No, it doesn't. Just no, because that's true. Sorry, something no, something true. can be. Wait. That that you that's literally a fallacy. Just because something is a result of something else doesn't mean that the result w will then create the thing that created in the first place. That's literally a fallacy. Hang on, hang on. Right. So, so the the only reason that we countenance gay marriage is because we don't value marriage as we used to, right? The degradation well, no, of the institution. No, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Well, I, th I think that is the case. Well, I think you're wrong. Marriage is just a legal fiction now. Well, no, it was. The the no the first of all the whole legal fiction was an argument that a lot of libertarian right wingers were sort of making to try to circumvent the gay marriage conversation in the first place. Well, no, what, what, the original what, argument for gay marriage wait, wait the original argument for gay marriage was not about legal fiction it was about I think gay people should have the same rights and be treated the same as our society as straight people. Yeah, but marriage isn't a right. Okay, well, I guess most people disagree with you in America. They feel like getting well, okay, married so is a unmarried right. Unmarried people have. having their rights violated. No, the right to. But get married if you want to. Well, they can get married to a woman. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! We're literally so. So, okay. so here's the thing. This here's is the, thing. the same argument I, from the 1980s. I, I know. Well, well the maybe thing. it I, wasn't I, wrong. So, so I actually accept Sargon's argument, but I think the premises don't go where he thinks. I think what this leads to, <laughs> it, no, no, seriously, I think what this leads to is that if you have a gay couple that wants to get married and adopt kids, because it's about the kids, that should be permitted. Well, that's a very liberal compromise, you communist. <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't it doesn't matter because this is why I'm saying that you're not giving me every time I try to to hone down on something tangible, some tangible argument I can grab onto, it just it blows away in the wind. Yeah, but the things I feel like there. I'm being tangible and concrete. You're not. I don't think well, so. I, I, I really feel like I am. Okay. I think Dev completely understands where I'm coming from here. Uh, no, yeah, I understand the, where you're coming from. I've so, literally stated your argument back to you like three times, and you yeah, haven't I, disagreed with it. I don't understand why you don't understand the significance of these things, though. Because, well, first of all, again, you made a fallacy in assuming that just because no. the degrad you're first of all, you're assuming that the degrade that the degradation of the magic of marriage and making a legal institution is what allowed gay marriage in the first place. 
which yeah, that is not that's... evidence whatsoever. And that was never the argument for gay marriage at all. Well, no, of course they didn't argue that, but it's a consequence of that. It's like, um, you know, like it, the see, you see the, 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 the stabilizing uh, beams that are holding it up are rotting, right? And so things like, you know, half collapses and you get a different shape to the roof, right? So this like marriage now is not treated with the importance that it was treated with 50 years ago, right? It's just not. Sure. And because it's not an important institution, no one is defending it as a sacred institution, right? It's not religious to people anymore. People still get married in churches, but they do it because traditionally that's what's always been done, right? But it used to be done because it used to be a covenant before God, you know? And I say this as an atheist, it used to be something genuinely important in a religious sense because, like, we don't have any sense of transcendence anymore. Like, it used to be viewed as upholding the order of the universe, right? And And the thing is, they weren't wrong when they viewed it that way. It does uphold the order of the universe, right? And so the best that gay marriage can really be is a kind of parody of that because of course they're not going to produce children they're not going to be raising healthy good people they're not actually going to be contributing to the stability of civilization they are forward. though it's, that's, that's where you're wrong of, no, well, no, actually, actually, that's, actually, that's, that's where you're totally wrong that's where you're totally wrong just hold on hold on Sorry, again, sorry again. so i know that, that they've been researching like womb replacement technology oh, if we goodness. actually get if we actually get to the point where gay people are bearing their own kids would you change your position on this? Maybe, but like I think we're a long way off from that, right? I don't yeah, think gay enough. people are going to be bearing children. I don't think they get, and even if they are, right, even if let's say some do, I don't think it's going to be in significant number to be okay. well, notable, right? You just you keep. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure someone out there knows. You keep making the just same galfing. logical. No, you just keep it's making the same. Enough. You keep making the same logical fallacy. Well, explain to me the logic the, that you see. And let's see where it, you, you think keep, it breaks down. You keep making, again, you keep making the argument that because you think yeah. gay marriage only came into being because the the sanctity of marriage was already weakened, therefore that means that gay marriage weakens the sanctity of marriage. And that's, and, a, no, that's I didn't a say fallacy. That. That's, that's a fallacy. That's literally and your also, argument. They've been and also, you know, that's, that's, that's not my argument. I'm saying that gay marriage is a symptom of it. Right. And also, marriage so stabilizes have, wait, society even without kids. You got to throw that so, in there. So too. we can. So that wait. So then you Sorry, have to. Then you have to explain it. separately why we can't have gay marriage without right. weakening yeah. the. the because marriage is a marriage. special institution for men and women. That's not an answer. Yeah, it, that's exactly the answer. It's a sacred, special institution before God for men and women to uphold the cosmic order of the universe in order for our civilizations to continue. Marriage has existed before our notions of God. So that's not the answer. Not really. Question. Yes, really. What do you no, mean? No, not really. Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. Literally, <laughs> the, the, the relig marriage has always been a religion, had a religious component in every civilization. Uh, well, literally. That would, so yeah, the, the, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The religious component I know. would the religious component would often be used to solidify the property rights, which was the main point of marriage. No, it's not about property rights. That That's was literally the, you're, you're, why marriage exists. Yes, no, it was for property no, rights. Look, it's, no, yes. it's not. No, Sitch, it's really not, right? You you are applying a materialist analysis. I'm not. To that's, things they've that, literally like studied this. That's the, that's the point of marriage, was to secure property rights for the children. That is a consequence. Of what no, that doing, was the intention. Right? It was to prevent people from no. their children from murdering each other over who gets Sitch, inheritance. You are talking about people who believed that the wind was a spirit. Oh my God, this is like painful. Do you understand? Like you are talking, you are in the modern <laughs> era so as a painful. materialist atheist yeah. talking about people who thought the lightning was literally a sign from Thor. Where are the, where are the right? goalposts going next? Give no, us no, a hint, Sargon. No, Ad, Adam, Give us a hint. Adam. Please I just don't look, give me a midwit intervention at the moment, right? Look, you, we're you, talking, are, you are not understanding what I'm saying, right? I do understand. These what you're people saying. Just... could not separate religion from any of their daily activities. Right? Everything they did Why are we was talking imbued about with religion. So, okay, so because right? the, because Mar people... marriage has certain wait, wait, outcomes wait. for modern society. So, Why are we wait, even wait. talking about this? I know, I know. Which is first of all <laughs> is a ludicrous fucking fallacious argument in the first place. And what what, <laughs> what happens because, when you, you know, separate? Cave people Look, we were literally talking about when you separate, marriage from the religious 
Okay. It's not but, important. It, it is isn't important. It's, it's, no, totally it's not. completely ridiculous. It's not. And I'll tell you why it's not. I, I, because I you're saying you'll be wrong. Like, no, I'll be right. Because you're, <laughs> you associating, <laughs> you're associating it to God. And I said, we didn't have the concepts of God we had it doesn't today. Have to be God. When we, you said we were associating it to God. Okay. We in the modern era, or like in the Christian you, era. Yeah, okay. And I said, when marriage, marriage has, when marriage has existed... From the from however fucking long existed, yeah. our conception of God or human conception of God was not the same as it is today. It and so, as you be. brought up, the fucking people believed the wind was a fucking spirit. Okay, yes. so the people that believed the fucking wind was a spirit was imbuing their fucking wind spirit ideas into marriage. That doesn't preclude gay people from being religious nowadays and including whatever fuck religious or whatever spiritual institution they want in their own fucking marriage that's currently happening now. So the again, method, that's not an argument against gay marriage. The method. I, I mean, I really don't know why you care about gay marriage so much, right? I mean, uh, you know, why you is this brought it up? I off on this fucking tangent. I thought you brought it up. <laughs> I don't know if I did bring it up, actually. But anyway, right? The, the point is, the method of imbuing spirituality into the marriage has always been there, right? The 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 form it takes is irrelevant. It could have been the, the, the spirits of the woods. It could have been the Olympian deities. It could be the this Christian god. I keep waiting for you to pull out a magic wand. This doesn't Sargon. preclude gay no, people it, it, from being the... spiritual or religious or any of these things. Sorry, say again. This doesn't preclude gay people from participating in the institution of marriage. But if the purpose is to literally create progenity into the future... You, children. Purpose. What do you mean in by line, progenity? In line with a yeah, divine children. plan, gay people can't do that. That's not the purpose of marriage. That, Again, historically, that's always been the purpose. That is okay. It's not. A marriage it's, is a stabilizing force, all, even I mean, without it's children. Never been the purpose of marriage. People has. fucking had kids all the time. Yes. That you don't. You don't need. You didn't need to incentivize people, especially back in the days, to have kids through the institution of marriage. I didn't say you did. In fact, marriage was often used as the opposite. It was used as a way to limit people from having children because it was like, you can't have children until you're married. It was literally to prevent people from having children. No, no that, that's, not the, that's not what the purpose of marriage was. The pur that was to make sure that the children didn't grow up as fatherless bastards, right? Uh, that yeah, was to for limit the, again, people from having children, to no, but make that's sure not they to only have children with one children. specific that's, person. No, but that's not to limit them for, as in to prevent them having children. That is to make sure the conditions are good for the children. No, it's, no, it's, no it's literally it's, limiting. It's in, as, as I'm sure you've been following all the red pill shit, okay, with, oh, you know, the guys are able to go bang a bunch of women. It was literally no, a mechanism used to restrict nonsense. men from mating around and fucking a bunch of different women. No, that's, that's, that's all such bullshit modern cope. Like, the whole red pill movement is such a fucking cope. Well, I don't disagree with that, but I'm just saying I mean, that, is, just an so element of, that is an element of... An element of marriage is to prevent men from fucking a bunch of the, the, the probably, the okay, probably hold on. is, I'm, in some I'm, sort of tangential way, a kind of game theory-esque spin you could put on it, where, mm -hmm. like, as a consequence of having religiously ordained marriages, yes, it right. probably did prevent Chad from impregnating 100 Stacys, right? The, right. The, but that was never something consciously that they thought. Right, that was never their intent. That was just a beneficial side effect, a beneficial consequence of the thing they did. What they were trying to do is live good and virtuous religious lives. That was what they tried to do. Because, like, honestly, people in the modern era just do not understand that in previous eras, these people literally thought they had immortal souls and would answer to God for their actions on Earth. They literally, in the same way you believe in gravity, right? They believed that God was going to judge them. And so everything they did was infused with religion. Sure. Right? And, yeah, but that was, the, no, no, don't say sure. That was the primary motivation for almost everything. Well, any significant decision. No, I'm not. Marriage in particular, not, right? That's fine. But as again, as I said, that doesn't preclude gay people from participating. No, Unless it, kind hold, of on, does. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Very specifically yeah. with Christianity. So well, any, any decided, Abrahamic religion, which me, is billions any of Any Abrahamic people, religion, right? yes. But, but okay, then why, why is it that other ancient civilizations didn't have gay marriage right uh, that it's not just christianity like the romans didn't have gay marriage because so, they were homophobes so, <laughs> no they weren't homophobes <laughs> okay listen 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 it's let, let me, let me hop in here. specifically for men and women to pro to to reproduce in that's the, the uh -huh. purpose so, so of it. civilizations that allowed uh let's say homosexual relationships generally called them something else in a different institution not marriage they had some other name for it 
Yeah, that's true. Because marriage existed in a completely different context in those societies than it does in our society. Modern times, yes. Okay, so but the, the context we're in is a bad context that's destroying our civilization. <laughs> well, okay, okay I, wait, I this, that's wait, fine. Wait, so, that's fine. But you I, have to make that argument without saying, well, because a thousand years ago someone did X. That's well, not an argument look, I'm, for today. I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that gay people can't have, I don't know, civil partnerships or some special institution that's just for gay people. Right. And I'm not saying that can't have some benefits or something like that. I'm saying they don't need marriage and they shouldn't have marriage okay. is the argument okay. that the right will make. And actually, there is some merit to this. So I have decided to dig up real quick. Yeah, not real quick. It took me a little bit. Um, anthropologist Sir Edmund Ronald Leach. He's British. He went through um, marriages of pretty much every single civilization. He said they have 10 universal qualities. Every type of marriage has had this, all right? Across this is all civilizations. Irrelevant, but okay. nope, it's, it's not, not relevant. It's, it's not relevant. literally okay. completely so, important. I, I, I don't I even will, know what he's going to say. He might BTF on me. I'll, I'll tell you the 10 points real quick, all right? All right. Point one to establish a legal father of a woman's children. Two to mm -hmm. establish a legal yep. mother of a man's children. Yep. Uh, three to give the husband a monopoly in the wife's sexuality. Four, to give the wife a monopoly in the husband's sexuality. Great. Five, to give the husband monopolistic rights to the wife's domestic and other labor services. Uh, nice. Six, to give the wife partial or monopolistic rights to the husband's domestic and other labor services. Great. Seven, to give the husband total control over property belonging or potentially accruing to the wife. Nice. Eight, to give the wife total control over property belonging or potentially accruing to the husband. Nine, to establish a joint fund of property, a partnership, for the benefit of children, specifically. Mm -hmm. Ten, to establish a socially significant relationship between the husband and his wife's brothers. Damn. So every single ETF form of marriage in human history are, is all those, agrees with me. Has no, those ten points. It does, wait, the, no, the majority no. that had nothing to do with kids. No, but what? a lot of it did. A lot yeah, of it, it does. Have to do with kids, though. Wait, no, the majority of that was about securing property rights for the husband and yeah, but, wife but together. that is downstream. Uh, that comes okay. as a consequence. Which, yeah, first of all, was like literally what I said. Wait, it, has, it has to do with children, sexuality, and property. And, right, and which, also, number and one, also which is what I fucking said at the beginning of this but, conversation yeah, but, but, with the point also, of marriage to also, secure property rights. Um, and that was like 90% of all that fucking shit was property no, rights. No, no, it, it wasn't 90%. It wasn't 90%. Okay. It was more like 40%. Okay, sorry, 40%. Secondly, the, the, that, the, that whole thing shows up all the importances of marriage, okay? So if you if you preclude the handful of things that were about children, there's like two or three of them that were specifically what? about children, all those things should be able to be applicable the, to the, gay people. Sitch, the purpose of the property rights is for inheritance rights. No, it's not it's just all for about children. children. It it's wait, all about children. That's not what he wait. He said, no, it's not. That is completely Read him out again, true. Read okay. him out again. <laughs> well, keep in mind, um, three and four are about sexuality, so not about children. Um, ten, 10 is about establishing. Re a read them again. Between, no, read them again. The, okay. Start over. Okay. Read them okay. again. One to establish a legal father of a woman's children. Right. Children. Right. children. That is based right. on children. Okay. Children. Two, one. To establish a legal mother of a man's children. Right. Children. That's um, children. Yeah. Two. Yep. Three, to give a wife, to, to give the husband a monopoly in the wife's sexuality. Not right. about children. So three and four, not about children. Well, they are yeah. about children, actually. Well, they're sort, they, they well, can be, but they can, they can be parents. No, they absolutely yeah. are. So you know that, that your child and that's not someone else's child. No, but, but, but wait, it's well, not she just is also about a problem child. On its you own. want to wait. A, yeah, a I know. Gay, that's why it's stigmatized. All, it's a, both straight and gay couples, presumably, unless they're open relationships, could have the justifiable <laughs> reasons for wanting to monopolize <laughs> to monopolize yeah. on the, yeah. what percentage on the sexuality of, of their partner. Uh, uh, don't cheat. Uh, yeah, they're, they're wait, 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 wait. I'm not cheating. Wait, wait. Yes. I'm not yeah. cheating. That's not cheating. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it, it, when, when, when surveyed, um, monogamy essentially doesn't exist in the gay community. That's not true. I wouldn't go that no, far. It's totally true. Far. It, it's totally true. It's it is it is very much less though. It's a very small percentage of gay people who haven't cheated on that so but wait a minute if three and four okay under that are about sexuality okay and sexuality is partially wait, is partially are, yeah. wait are about protecting the sexual access to your partner yeah. if gay individuals want to be in a monogamous relationship they want to imbue the magic okay not just the legal contract but the magic of sexual access to their partner marriage is a way to do that okay that's three and four i, I do agree with you by the way such on that yeah um okay sure but the, the 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 purpose of this really is to establish parent uh, parental uh, guarantee of the child right 
That can um, be part of it, yes. I, no, no, I, that's I the th- purpose th- of monogamy. Well, it's not for the it's, woman. I think no, it's no. not the only purpose of monogamy. I think I think also just cheating itself, regard like for example, you wouldn't want yeah. to cheat on even if your wife didn't get pregnant, right? Obviously, right. Yeah. So, sure. But the but the point is the possibility of her being pregnant and me raising someone else's child. That's why, right? No, but it's it's as Dev said, it's deep in that because otherwise we live in a society where it'd be totally fine for people to cheat as long as they use birth protection. Obviously, we don't live in that society, so it sure, has to be deeper that's, that's, than just having children. No, but yeah, but the. The reason that we hold these as moral values is because originally there is a functional purpose to it, right? No, that's not why. We have no. Uh, I think so. No, I, think, I don't I think, think it's partially that. So just no, partially no, that. No, it's not all that. No, though. no. The reason that we have these values is because humans evolved to have jealousy for the. Re- and you could say that we've evolved to have jealousy because of mate guarding, but the emotion yeah. and the feeling that we evolved to have is not based on the reproductive action. It's um, uh, it's based on the reproductive action, not based on whether you have children or not. You understand the distinction? Yeah, I'm there? not saying it's be- like I'm not saying it only holds if you have children. What I'm saying is it comes from the primordial impulse to have some form of guarantee that your children are yours. Yeah, that's where jealousy comes from. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 monogamy springs from that as a basic axiom, right? But right, right. but obviously, and the, gay people so this, can this, feel again, jealousy regardless of, yeah, of course, they of can course make they these do. decisions to uh, have monogamous yeah. relationships. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Such, 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 that, that is because when it comes to sexual target error, the rest of the sexuality still functions normally. So they might have they might, they might be attracted to a different target, but every, all the other all the other mechanisms are still working. The way I they understand would. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's number um, five? Okay. Uh, five and six. Well, hang on, before give... we go on, the, all, okay. all of these so far are basically connected to children, right? Well, I In disagree with three and four, but we've well, no, they, they are partially connected to children, not entirely. They're partially part connected, but they're not ex- yeah. they're not excluding gays from this situation. Okay, I mean, to, to be fair, the language is husband and wife, so that kind of excludes gays. But yeah. <laughs> I get your point. I get your point. Yeah. Okay, okay but uh, obviously, five... we're talking about history. So. Yeah, yeah. So five and six um, is establishing monopolistic rights to the other's domestic and labor service. Not about children. Well, so, again, isn't it? No, because there's one specifically I mean, about like children. You, 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 you seem to be speaking as a person who doesn't have children, but I tell you, as a person who does have children, yeah, I, I a lot of domestic labor is child related. Okay, if we're going to use that broad, anything could have to do with children, anything could not have to do with children, depending on no, whether this, children are not in a relationship. A, a woman's, a married woman's domestic chores very often revolve around children. Yeah, but right? if you don't have, if you don't have children, okay. And it wasn't just domestic chores. Okay, because it also said in, the woman said the woman was had access to the man's labor as well. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, and she right. deserves access to her right. husband's you labor. Still have, he's you still have in any relationship, even in like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship, especially, but especially obviously in a married relationship. Even if you don't have children, there's going to be various chores and tasks and things that you have to work together as a sure. team to accomplish. Okay. And I, and I so, agree. So I'm saying right. it's not it's not exclusive but to children. I, I didn't say it was exclusive, but it's primarily about children well, right? i disagree because again no <laughs> we'll, we'll think about it like why, why why does my wife need access to my labor to wash the dishes or you know do the laundry or something if it's just her laundry she can do right it's not when, just when her you have... laundry it's your laundry the kids well, laundry well exactly the kids, kids laundry yeah, exactly it's everyone involved in the family <laughs> no, no, but that's exactly because a man you. and a woman an adult man and a woman they can do their own chores right they can clean up their own mess but when you've got, like I have, four kids running around the house making a fucking mess, not cleaning up after that's, themselves. But that's not, wait, that's not true. What are you talking about? <laughs> Make so them if, clean if it up, you, Sargon. If, well, if you, I mean, one wait, of them's on two, single, one of them's three months okay. old. If you're on a like, single... They, you know, wait, they don't have the option, right? Okay, mm. if you're on a single family uh, income, okay, the guy's working eight hours all day, and the woman's not working, the guy doesn't want to come home and do his fucking own laundry and do his own dishes and, like, do all the chores of the house. That'd be crazy. Yeah, but that's, that, that's true. That's but why, why you're supposed to do the teamwork, or vice why versa. It could be the woman having the job, the man could do the domestic. Well, well here, here, here's the thing, though, Sitch. If you have, a, if you're living in a single parent uh, household, when the husband brings home the money, the wife still has access to that. Like that's the point. I know. I yeah. I don't disagree with that. But why why would the wife be at home rather than working if she doesn't have kids? Well, it depends if she doesn't trophy doesn't wife need to work if she doesn't want She's to a trophy right, exactly. Wife, so we're, we're talking about a very, very marginal constituency. Well, no, we're not. In real life, actually, most of we're talking about housewives, right? Well, no, we're not because even yeah, we are. Well, no, because if you've ever been in, a, I'm sure, if, I don't know if people have been in these situations where you have both parents working, even without kids, it's very, it can be very difficult to get you know any sort of domestic problems uh, solved because everyone's busy. Does it? So no, uh... I disagree. Ruben, Dave, Ruben have like two biological kids or something. I feel like well, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> you okay, Adam? 
they're having. No, they're having I just children. I feel like he's gay, married, and has two kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two biological kids. Yeah, it wasn't like his his sperm and his partner's sperm, and they like got some surrogates. Yeah, something they like are that. His children, right? Okay. So um, mm, good for them. Yeah. Should we tell them to get unmarried? I think they should have. Well, like you know, they should have a special institution. Okay. So See, the, the kids. This, so this the is kids. Why back in the day, so I, the kids really can grow up knowing that they're second class citizens. Okay. Well, well, no, makes, well, it's not second class citizen. That, that, how is that a second class citizen? Okay. So I, the, the children of single no, no. mothers, second class. I citizens. think. I think this is an American thing because Americans have have taken separate but equal to the extreme because of what they that meant in their have. history. But like, you can definitely have separate but equal institutions that are actually equal. Mm. Like, you can do that. You can do that. It's not just because yeah, so, the Americans failed it just, at it. It, it, mean see, the rest it just seems at it. so fucking weird that you're like, <laughs> I want to have an institution called garage, which has yeah. literally all the exact same legal rights and all the exact same social thought behind it as marriage, except it can be between a same sex couple. And it's, somehow it's really because that it won't be used. It's going to protect the sanctity of the, the straight marriage. No, I'm not saying that will protect the sanctity of marriage or help. Right. Other things will be Plus, required. Plus, this has to nothing to do with right? why birth rates are declining that's what's so frustrating about this no, no, like listen, we can't I, I want to talk this about is that. not You're the way to deal with that. declining birth <laughs> rates which are a real problem yeah I, t I totally agree right but the but the problem is that when we if if we take positive steps to try and reintroduce some concept of sanctity to marriage then gay marriage will seem like a very strange and wrong thing right i no, and i actually don't, don't want completely us to disagree well, the, well, I don't agree with that. I think okay. you're wrong, right? Well, that's that's okay. why we can, have to, we, so, we can have our different opinions. Disagree. So, 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 sorry, yeah. even in Even from that perspective, um, gay marriages where there are kids involved would still apply, I think. Well, again, like you're trying to cut through horizontally what is a vertical institution, right? Like, again, it's like... Um, there's there's no need to include these things because they're just not the same, right? You you wouldn't um, say, well, look, I could replace the egg in my cake with something else that might do the job because you'd be like, well, why wouldn't I just get an egg, right? And so, like, there's no need for us to, like, try and insert things that are just definitionally not appropriate. Well, the, the need seems to be that if you have reasonable gay people... Who, and who aren't going to abuse their kids? Who want to do this? I mean, there's many yeah, kids that need adopting. So, so much why not? in advance. Okay. Well, mar no marriage thing. also stabilizes society, regardless of whether or not there's a child component. A child sure, component why, does why help, does obviously. Be, why does it have to be called marriage? Look, that's just that's like, because why does people it, don't no, want to no, feel like they're second the, class citizens. That's why. No, but they're not second class citizens. They, you're literally making them out to be second class citizens. You're, it's it's called. Oh, okay, so now, okay, so, okay, so, so transgender well, if, if you were who aren't allowed to use the other bathroom are also second class citizens, are they? No, because it's called. First of all, it's called marriage because it's this it's supposed to be the same fucking thing. Okay, that's but it's why not it's the same. Marriage. No, you, oh, no, wait. It, it is from the it legal is component and from the spiritual component. Exactly yes. It is the not same. functionally the same. Yes, it no, is. it's not. And so it so literally can't still, produce again, children. Having, you still are not explaining <laughs> but what look, the benefit is of giving something different that has a, giving something that's the same but has a different name. Like, how does right. that help? The, the did, did Dave Rubin produce no, children? Listen, it, the, the did Dave is Rubin that, produce children? I don't know what Dave Rubin's situation is. Dave right? Rubin definitely produced children, two of them. I don't yeah. know. So, so Sargon, he he jerked off into a cup, had a he had, they like had a woman surrogate. Yeah, they both had surrogates. They both have biological children that are each their own. Right. That's 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 wonderful. Right. Um, well, just because you're offended by I, it's it's than, just because that offends your no sensibilities, kids, it, it blows your argument away. No, no it doesn't blow anything. It away. does. They right? have a no, marriage and right? children. Adam, you're lit you're right. literally saying that Finding the purpose of the marriage is for children. The rule they doesn't had destroy children. the rule. The exception is defined by the rule, right? Well, but every single gay couple true, could could do the exact same thing. You don't think lesbian won't. couples could go they get won't. knocked up? They won't, right? They I'm won't. I'm sure there are lots of lesbian couples that have kids. Yeah, but they won't, right? They won't. The majority of them don't have kids. The majority of them won't have kids. And this isn't even about the numbers, oh right? It's just, this is it's about weird. maintaining it's something strange. special and privileged for heterosexual people. 
Okay, so look, I said yes. second. You objected to me calling them second class citizens, and now you're saying they have a privileged position. Do you and understand how that comes off? Privileges are as perfectly okay, right? Okay, I'm not a second class citizen because some people are privileged enough to go to a private school. I'm not second class because of that. Okay. No, but you wait. But you have you have the access to that if you can. No, That's I don't have access to that. What do you mean? You can pay to go to a private school or whatever. Sure. Uh, it's way too late, and my parents couldn't afford it. Well, okay, I'm saying I don't have you... access to it. I was literally okay. locked out of that. Right. You, okay. Is there difference between being being, wait, this is just wait, is there between being locked out right. because you can't afford something and saying you're locked out because of I'm some locked out of all of your, women, of all, all female okay. gyms, and there's no such thing as an all male gym. But I'm not a second class <sighs> citizen. Oh my God. Right. There are institutions in society that are for <laughs> certain groups of people and not for other certain groups of people. And that yeah. doesn't mean those people are somehow inferior. But it could right. mean that. Though. No, you know what? That's a but great point. Mean that. You know, because certain groups of people, you know, we have men's bathrooms and women's bathrooms. We're allowed to segregate. So I think that all our institutions should just say, you know what? No more white people. Let's yeah. just let, don't put any white people in our, in our institutions anymore. Don't let them in any fucking colleges anymore. <laughs> Because we segregate according statement. to sex. In other you know, places, a, a, so as a non-white based. Well, that's, that's a very bold statement, Sitch. Yeah. Don't you, watch you out. Short fat. Kick the crackers out. Let's get all the crackers short, out of short our Short fat tacos coming for us. Now. Well, the, the question then is, is it warranted? Right? Is it warranted to do that? And I don't agree that that's warranted. Right? If it was warranted, then I'd agree with it. But it's not. Right, because it's just, not wrong like, to discriminate. Okay, but that's why again, right? when, I just keep the circling reason, around the so here's, that's the issue. not been answered. Here's something that's interesting. Okay, there are places that have not gay marriage, but some sort of civil union for gay people. Right. Yeah. If you went to a place like a jurisdiction that had this and asked the the civil union gay couples there if they if they felt like second class citizens, what do you think they would say? Where, where does it, this exist? Where does this exist somewhere? What, the places that have civil unions but not yeah. gay marriage? They certainly yeah. exist. Okay. Or somewhere, some, not, not in America, certainly somewhere in the world. Yeah, not in America. I'm just, you're saying in some country somewhere. Yeah. Right. Listen, I'm sure, some country I'm sure some I'm sure some gay people will be fine with it and some pe gay people will feel like second class yeah, citizens. Probably so right. I just like... I don't yeah, know. But the point is, they, they, they're not second class citizens, right? It's fine. They're not privileged. Some it's, in other ways, they'll be privileged. Oh, what is it? What are those it's not, other ways? It, again, you, you, it's like you've never listened to Jordan Peterson. It's not a zero sum game, right? But the thing is, I think we actually do it, need it, certain it, it, privileges. This actually is a zero sum game. I if don't you're agree. saying that I don't agree. It is literally a zero sum game. If you're saying you're going to lock them out of the institution of marriage, that is completely yeah, zero sum. What difference? Your your incels are locked out of the institution of marriage. Now what? Your aesthetic for structuring society is trumping their ability to engage in an activity that they would like to engage in. So it's zero yeah. sum. It's either your aesthetic or their ability to get married. Okay, well then mine, not theirs. Right, but that is a zero sum game. Okay, fine. I mean, I don't agree because I think there are other institutions that they can have access to that I won't have access but to. But they want right? access to marriage. That's what they want. Okay, but I don't agree they should have it. Okay. Because right. you're, you're aesthetic. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's, 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 that's everything, though, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's literally not an argument, mate. <laughs> I just think you it's know? an untenable position. It really is. It's I just, the, literally you know, the position that we have on everything. Uh, that's true. Our, yeah. our aesthetics are generally <laughs> in conflict, yes. I do agree with that. Yeah, yeah but, and that's the thing. It's like, what decision should we be making? And I think we should be making a decision that actually benefits and privileges married couples who are going to have children right yeah, but heterosexual look, married couples there's a reason why for that. why okay, I'm back. why what is the reason for that dev have i explained why well i mean is, you haven't specifically reason... come out and said birth rates but i'm waiting for it it's probably birth rates i'm gonna assume i mean yeah. i literally you, you want more kids continuing civilization into the future yes right? okay yes, so it have. is birth rates I, no, no, birth rates is one aspect of I, okay well right? i don't think that your I've heard better arguments for why birth rates are declining than this argument that you're making about gay marriage. I didn't say that birth rates are declining because of gay marriage. He okay, then why are we true. even having this conversation? Because you gay haven't marriage been listening. Is, gay marriage is a symptom of something else that is causing the decline. Which of birth again, rates. I said was a logical fallacy, which we all agree I is don't a logical agree fallacy. It's a, no, no, because you misrepresented my argument. Look, you can't bring up birth rates. If you, if like it's a complete non sequitur between forget, gay wait, marriage wait, 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 and birth wait, 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 rates. Wait, wait. So let's just Look, forget about the gay marriage conversation for a second. What is causing the birth rate decline? There's the source of it. What's no, let's, 
Let's no, not, let's no, not this talk is, no, about No, this that. is the actual problem. This is the actual problem, okay, is that I and I guess Adam are looking for our post-enlightenment, liberal, rational explanation for this, and I don't think you have one. I think you have a traditionalist explanation for it. I've been that saying is, that, that from is... the start, but I think really what it is is you want these two things to be equal, right? No, I want an a- I I've st- still never got an answer, okay, except that somehow it hurts the sanctity of straight marriage, somehow. Okay? Yeah. But we don't know how, and we can't really pin it down exactly. Because marriage, does. historically, traditionally, and even in some places now, I mean, outside of the West, completely everywhere, right? It's a sacred, meaning magical, meaning divine, meaning theological, metaphysical. It is a sacred union that has a particular character for the purpose <laughs> of upholding the cosmic order and producing children that lead civilization onto the great Burkean chain, right? right? So, yeah, again, that doesn't answer my Can question. Can you really say looping Burke has... and looping again and again and again? But that, no, okay. no, but that well, doesn't I, I answer the question. Okay. That, it that's doesn't a direct answer, the answer to the question. It doesn't well, answer the here. question. Well, because my see, question let's... is, how <laughs> does gay marriage fuck that up? And you just say, because of the tradition of it. And I'm like, that's no, not okay, an answer. Because, okay, okay, okay. Because these are definitive things, right? Think of them as like mythology, right? In the, the, in the mythology of what a marriage is, right? You have a man, which is a named thing. It's an identifiable thing, right? You can't just replace a man with a tortoise and get the same consequence, right? It has to be an adult human male, right? And the other half of the mythology, the, the, the Tao, right, is a female, an adult human female. And there is a purpose to this. And once you unify these things, you get children, which is a family. And this brings it on, right? And so if you can't just replace these things with something else. Who, well, no one's talking about replacing anything with anything. You are you are talking no. about replacing the man no. with a woman or a woman uh, no, with a man. No, I'm not, I'm not here saying... That's what listen, a gay marriage is. Wait, I'm not here saying we need to replace straight marriage with gay marriage. Yeah, I've never no suggested that. that. I just said that they should be Jeez. able to access this institution in our country. But what That's the definition replacing. of what the institution is, is important in the mythology, right? It, I don't, you have it, to It provide. is a position of honor to be a married man <laughs> oh my God. to a woman, okay. right? It is a position of honor to be a married woman to a man. Is right? it a position and of the, the dishonor reason there's to be a position in a civil honor, union? Well, I don't know. That's the problem but with this civil is, unions, isn't it? Right. This is again. They don't. The ha- they don't hold a tradition. They don't hold honor within them. Right. And so. So it is, is dishonorable. This, no, I'm. No, I don't. No, it's not dishonorable. Right. Okay. The, to oh, not so- to, like it, that. That's like saying it's <laughs> it's dishonorable to not have won a prize. Right. It's not dishonorable to not have won a sporting competition, but it is a position of honor to have done so. Right. Sure. And, the, yeah, exactly. Sure. Right. So it's not. It's not a serious sum game. Right. Did you but mean the, Edmund Burke when you said Burkean? Yes. Just for clarification. Okay. Yeah, of course. But the but the point I'm making, right, is that if it's a mythological thing that creates this kind of metaphysical organism that exists and joins the chain of civilization, right, you can't just fuck around with that. You can't just change it and expect the same results. It doesn't work because the thing is predicated on belief. First and foremost. You, but you, if you change it, though, and, and society doesn't fall apart, you pretty much find out that you can change it without society. But we have apart. changed it, and society is falling apart. Except you've already said that gay marriage you don't think is the cause. You think it's a symptom of something. And that's yes. why I, again, keep saying it's a logical fallacy to say that the symptom of something, if it would be the cause of something. In an I'm not universe. saying that, Sitch. That what is, is what that's is the literally cause? the fucking argument you just so, said. Well, no. here, can, can I can I hop in? You, just, wait, so. you just said the whole thing <laughs> you're talking about with like the, you can't change the definition, the spiritual definition of marriage, the yin and the yang. Because if you do, it will fall apart. That's what you just said. Look, I I'm saying the only reason that gay marriage is considered is because of the degradation of the institution as a metaphysical organism. I, for the last time, and first of all, for the people in chat, they're like brain damaged. I am not saying that Carl is saying that gay marriage led to anything bad in society. I understand that, you stupid fucks, okay? And for Carl, I understand you're not saying that. What Jesus. I'm saying is Everyone you keep saying, you keep fucking saying again and again, we keep looping yeah. on this. This is what's driving me crazy. You keep saying that 
the sim- a symptom of the degradation of marriage is gay marriage. And then I say, I understand that that's your position. So what is special about marriage and why can't we have gays be able to access it? And then right. you, the answer you give me again and again and again is there's some special quality to marriage that has existed throughout human history and it has to require a man and a woman and children and all the various things involved. And if you start mixing and matching with some of the uh, variables in it, it could all fall apart. And I'm saying it does. we don't what are those know variables? that. We yeah. can't know that. And you're making a fallacy to assume that just because there's been a, a degradation of marriage and that you think that leads to gay marriage, that that would mean that if we lived in an alternate universe where gay marriage came first, that that would be the thing that led to the degradation of marriage in the first place. Yeah, That's what I'm is... trying to say a million, million times. That's why I'm okay. saying that you're not okay. addressing the argument. But we don't live in that universe, right? I understand that. So oh, you're, no. you're not making a, an argument based on something logical. No, but I am making an argument based on something logical, right? Let me, let me, again, like if you can't define marriage as being between a man and a man and between a man and a woman, because men and women are functionally different, right? And so if you were to say, well, they're it, like, again, this is literally like, what is a woman? Women can have penises. It's like, no, definitionally, women can't have penises, right? So like, it's definitionally a wife can't be a man. A husband can't be a woman, right? These are definitions. And so gay marriage doesn't make any sense from this point onwards. Okay. It's, it's, it's not the same argument, though. No, but this okay. is what I'm trying to I say. I have a question, right? actually, if I can jump. Okay, if I can finally jump in here. Okay. So gay marriage is a symptom of something else that is happening. It, it is not the cause of, of the declining birth rates. Okay. So Sargon, if we managed to otherwise solve the declining birth rates without getting rid of gay marriage would it be okay to keep it again it doesn't matter about the birth rates really right what matters is the institution itself right and it's this consequentialism that is really i think again a, a real I'm trying to i'm trying to think for a clear way of explaining what i'm trying to describe right so there is a projection outwards into the future, right? From the position that we're in. And you're saying, if we can just jury rig the consequences, then surely we don't have to worry about the origin point, right? And maybe... I'm not saying that. that well, that, that, that is what you're saying. Well, right? because his gay marriage isn't the origin point. It's just, it's just a, it's a side symptom. He's if, trying to, if he's we, trying to sure. isolate yeah. what the factor is. He's not trying to take a consequentialist approach. Yeah, right. No. But but you but you you know. So if we could do X, then it wouldn't matter, right? And it's like maybe that would be the case, but we still wouldn't have addressed the sickness that began this journey in the first place, right? And I think that the best thing to do would be to address that sickness. Like, what is the problem? Okay. Right. And what the problem, is the problem? That, well, I, I think that, A, the problem is the concept of marriage in the modern age is really quite screwed, right? And I'm not I'm not trying to claim that I'm some sort of paragon of anything or anything like that. I mean, no one's accused me of, like, making claims like that. But, like, I just want to make it clear that I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect or flawless or anything like that, right? Uh, you know, what, whatever, right? But the, the, the issues that we are having, again, it's very much like, oh, I'm depressed. Well, why don't you take medication? It's like, no, why don't you change your lifestyle? that's making you depressed, right? And that's the kind of position that we're in. So you know, when you're like, yeah, but what if we just take this pill? It's like, yeah, but why would we want to take the pill when actually getting healthy is to rediscover what it is that our grandparents had uh, that would that actually made them healthy and their grandparents and their grandparents, you know? Like, we don't have to abandon modernity. Well, we don't, Like, I, your I, good things that we've got, right? We don't have I to mean, abandon any of those the, the pill might be necessary, actually. Like, sometimes you get healthy and you're still depressed, you know? Like, But I, I, get, I get your point, though. Yeah. Yeah, okay, right. But, the, but you know, I'm sure that, the, again, a fringe number of cases where that is the case, but for most of them, it's literally stop cooming, get off Pornhub, get outside, right? Get some sunlight. Um, yeah. So, the you know, the, the, you know, fringe case is fine. We can deal with those, right? But that we, we seem to be suffering from a societal sickness at this point, and we seem to be un- afraid of actually dealing with that. And so if we deal with that, then we will have to admit that, yeah, okay, fair enough, marriage should be, between, because it is this magical thing, and it was the romance of it, the, the magic of it, that really got people invested in it. And what, now we've stripped all that away, we're looking at a sick society, 
and the society is not getting any better. And any amount of prescription medication that we invent to try and alleviate the symptoms isn't changing the core of the problem, which is that we are still sick, right? And it would be better, surely, if we weren't sick, right? Now, like I said earlier, like, I, like about transgender people, I don't want to persecute or to stigmatize, to outcast any people, but I do think we have to be able to be firm on the point that some things aren't for everyone, right? women's bathrooms aren't for men right that's something that we all agree on right that's mm -hmm. something we can surely say yeah no that's fair like you know we can make a, a just a blanket statement that women's bathrooms aren't for men um you know like uh children's play areas aren't for adults right unless of course parents are helping kids around them or something like that right but a group of teenagers shouldn't be in kids play area, play areas right some things are for some people right? A marriage should be one of those things that is for heterosexual people in order to maintain the magic for heterosexual people. Like it's an act of charity on behalf of the gay community or whoever, right? In, and, and it's in their interest as well, to be honest, I think okay. that they should do that. Okay. So, so it, it's, sorry, go on. Well, I was saying, okay. So without relitigating the entire argument, okay. We'll just, I think, yeah. I think we just got to move on with our lives. But, we just have a fundamental- clear, Wait, we have a fundamental disagreement on on this. But the sure. question I want to ask you is, do you think that I don't understand your argument? Because I feel like I do completely understand your argument. I just disagree with it. I feel that you're a materialist, right? And I could be, but I could still understand your argument and just disagree. Well, no, I actually I'm not sure you can. And th that's the thing. Like, I think that materialists do have a blind spot when it comes to transcendental questions, right? I, I mean, first of all, I'm literally the only person here that believes in God, so I don't agree with this framing. <laughs> but secondly, okay. But, okay, I mean, that, that's, that may be true. You know, I, I don't know. I always seem to be an atheist, right? Because of the way that you speak. This comes up every uh, time we have, every time you're on, I say, I believe in God, and you go, really? And you forget. <laughs> okay. So, well, since the Jewish God is real, come on. I don't, you, don't, okay. you don't sound in any way religious, man. Because <laughs> I don't make, I don't think it's useful or persuasive Why? to make arguments from a religious perspective that people don't agree with unless they agree with your religious perspective it doesn't mean anything to them that's but why I, I but like you can start explaining why transcendental concepts are important right and marriage is a good example of one actually you know the kind of mythology and, of the marriage i is but what i, I under, but okay i i understand okay what don't what do you think i don't understand about the transcendental argument that you're making that if it you is because I thought I've repeated it to you like four sure. times now. But right? yeah, yeah, no, no. I it, I'm not saying you can't grasp the logical structure of it, right? Of course you can. Okay. Um, you're a smart guy. You can of course grasp Thank the logical you. structure. But like it, it's <laughs> it's more the implication of what that means, right? It's it's think like if if like you know the Lord of the Rings, the Black Aragon thing, right? That's a good okay. example of it, right? We know that Aragon has a particular look. Right, it was described. It's written in the stars. Right, it's eternally like this, and so to deviate from that is a form of heresy. You know, it's so no, that's not how things should be. Right, things should be a certain way to get. I mean, actually, it's a lot more, a lot, a lot less important in the in the frame of Black Aragon. You know, it doesn't really matter that much. It's just kind of like we know why you're doing it. You know, um, but in in the concept of marriage, it's actually civilizationally important. Right, it, it, the future of our civilization hinges on this thing and it's deeply personal to the millions of heterosexual people who get married right and so to be frivolous with this is a very disrespectful and cheapens the institution itself and and i mean on a on a mythological level okay, okay. Yeah. i guess i'm just i'm just trying to for all the the midwits uh in the chat who <laughs> keep accusing me of not understanding your argument and i feel like i've literally repeated it to you four times you're saying that there's some quality to marriage that has been important to the well-being of society going forward and has existed uh, in humanity for all time and that when you start you know mixing and matching and you start monkeying with the variables that's going to have an effect where it's going to ruin the sort of the mythos the magic that binds yeah. together this institution and that's going to therefore weaken it yeah, uh, going forward, and it's going that thus that's thus that will weaken society going forward, right? Is that yes. not what you've been saying this whole time? Yeah, but it the the problem is the term weaken, right? Because I I feel that you're you're viewing that as in a an economic calculation, 
or a, a calculation of rights. Well, no, I'm, I was saying, I was saying weak in terms of like just weak, like a broadening weakening of society it could be economic, it could be social, it could be cultural, it could be anything. Right, but it, it's social, it's spiritual, right? It's spiritual. it could be a spiritual, right? But yeah. it's usually a spiritual weakening is going to have some kind of physical effect you can witness. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, no, absolutely, I, I agree. Right. It will definitely have physical effects, but right. the physical effects will always be secondary or tertiary effects. The the primary thing will be that in in a and again I don't have a better word than magic right but in in that sort of animating magical force where we you know sent millions of people to die to fight the Nazis there was a magic at work there you know everyone was like yeah no this has to be done you know this the genuine mass animating force whereas like, no, right. this has to be that that's what I mean by magic when I'm saying it like that that animating force around marriage has died. Right. Or is definitely yeah, yeah, on life support. Yeah, when you right. when you talk about this force, you're talking about there's this intangible cultural idea or spiritual idea that can motivate a mass of people and they can all feel the same thing or feel similar things about yeah. something, an idea or concept, and it will motivate their behavior in a specific way. Yes. It's an animating force. It's an animating yeah. force, right? Okay. Yeah. So, yes. and, uh, so to be yeah. clear, I fucking fully understand your argument. I just disagree <laughs> with you. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> But on, this... on what on what angle do you disagree though? Because like we just I, went I through. I'm not. Re I'm not going through. Look, <laughs> just, no, 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 look I'm not it. saying that I'm not the midwit here, right? I'm happy to play the midwit because no, I'm, I don't think like, you, I'm not. You are. We just disagree here. Okay, I'm not calling. Yeah, you midwit. Like I'm, calling the, with, I'm calling the in chat. The way I understand it, I'm calling right? people in the chat <laughs> who keep saying throughout this entire conversation that I don't understand your point are the midwits because yeah, but, I just I do understand your point. I've said what I just said to you four times in the conversation. They just didn't understand or weren't paying attention or maybe they I mean, didn't understand your point. Well, uh, I don't. Maybe I don't understand your point then. Right? I, I'm. I don't. Like, well, no. So my, okay. So my whole point in this thing is that. I'm trying to, and that's what I was saying, and this is where you can bring in the materialism thing, is that in order for me to have the conversation, I want some sort of tangible way to parse the animating force to say, well, how is it that we know that gay marriage, if all other things are the same or equal, how do we know that gay marriage is this is the thing that will destroy the animating force of the institution of marriage as opposed to all the other million things that are happening? Right. right, and that's and why we keep the, going back to birth rates no, no, because we but, want some uh, sort of okay. tangible metric to say, okay, but, but how are you saying marriage has failed? But that that's not not representing accurately what I've said. Right, it's because of the destruction of the animating force of marriage that gay marriage is something we discuss. I understand because that. right. So, but you wanted some tangible evidence that gay marriage would destroy the animating force. Right, because we have to work in the because okay, so because theoretically, we could have a situation where society is able to fix up and shore up the animating force of marriage in every other because we all agree there's like a you know whatever there's like twenty different let's say just there's twenty different factors that lead to the yeah. weakening of the animating force of marriage, okay. Yeah. And if you want to say gay marriage is twenty, right? So if we say okay, well in a hypothetical situation, our society progresses in a hundred years and it shores up and fixes nineteen of those things. <laughs> Right. And so gay marriage is the last one. That's the last one. And that's what I'm saying is how, you know, how do we know what effect that the animate the gay marriage has on the animating force of marriage overall? That's what okay. I keep. So the, okay. So I'm trying to think of a metaphor that isn't offensive, right? Because <laughs> just, just because do the I, offensive one. <laughs> no, because some shithead will clip it I mean, and be like, see, it, he's saying yes. this. Right? So I'm not saying it, it, it seems right. like you're making two arguments and one hang on, the hang first on, argument. Hang on, okay. Hang, hang on. Hang, hang on. Okay. No, no, let me. Right. So All right, go ahead. Um, it's gay marriage is downstream from the problem, right? So it's kind of like turning on a tap and being like the, 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 the bath has overflown and the water on the floor is gay marriage. And that's somehow causing the bath to overflow. It's like, no, it's a consequence of the overflowing of the bath. If we turn off the tap, then the bath will stop overflowing. The water on the floor will evaporate and mm -hmm. the problem will have simply solved itself. Right. right. Because definitionally, there will be no gay marriage. It will be a contradiction in terms, right? Definitionally, if it's a man and a woman, well, a gay marriage, it doesn't exist, right? That's it'd be something else. It'd be its own separate institution, right? And right. I agree, they should have a separate institution. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, but no. using using your metaphor, which I understand is an imprecise metaphor, it'd be like yeah. saying, you know, oh, well, you don't want to keep the the faucet on because if you do, it will flood and you'll get water all over the floor, right? So if you turn off the faucet, you know, you'll prevent water from going to the floor. But then you could say, well, 
there are other ways watering on the floor. It could be a flood. You could just take a cup, throw water on the floor. There's a million ways watering on the floor, but there's a reason for why we don't want water on the floor. It's going to make people slip. It's going to cause mold. It's going to cause damage to the floor. There's a million reasons that someone could give for why you don't want the water on the floor in the first place. Okay. And so that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to really parse out all the little different elements sure, but- of this complicated question. And I feel like I feel like we can't really get to an answer here. We can't segment this enough to get down to the atomic level of what exactly is happening here. Sure, but the, the question is, do we want water on the floor? No, right. right. So, but so what you're so I know, but so what you're saying is, well, if we fix the institutions of marriage, that will automatically prevent gay marriage from existing. And I'm saying I don't necessarily agree with that outcome. I think you can fix some of the. Uh, problems of marriage without gay marriage poofing up into a, a you know smoke okay and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear out what it is that could be done to fix marriage that doesn't mm-hmm. lead as a corollary of that to the end of gay marriage as a concept you know i'm ha- i'm definitely happy to listen to that it's just that i can't really see any other way of it being done right, right. so i mean okay. give me give me some ideas i'm happy to hear them uh I, as i said i think we should mandate marriage for all the gays, but it it would gays and make straight, it, Sitch. But and straight. You're not getting sacred. off that easy. Yeah, and that wouldn't make it more sacred to straight people, right? Oh, we got to do. We got to make it. Sacred it's got to be too. sacred oh, yeah. too. Well, that's a problem. Well, no, that's, that's I don't know. Exactly, I have an answer for you then. <laughs> that, that's exactly the crux of everything I've been saying. Right? right? No, I know. It I'm has joking. to become magical again. I don't know. I don't have an answer for how do we make how do we bring back the the sacredness of our of certain institutions in our society because things have become so kind of cynical and materialistic yeah. to some aspect. I don't have an answer to that question. Well, okay. no, no, neither do I, I, you know. Right. I understand. Yeah. And I and I understand I would agree with you that it definitely seems like gay marriage is an like because we've done these things that allowed gay marriage to happen in the first place. I'm just saying that doesn't mean that gay marriage causes the thing or would cause a thing yeah. in an alternate scenario that we sure, could but, we could fix some of these things that we want to fix without eliminating gay marriage okay but the thing is like it would be the, the we're not taking marriage seriously while we entertain the concept of gay marriage is what the truly religious christians would say right Right, and, and I just they, disagree with them. On yeah, the I don't think that's necessary. I, I think you can take marriage seriously if you have gay marriage. I mean, right, but the, I, but very so, Christian so, people would say that. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm 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 like so just to be clear, like I said, I'm an atheist. I don't I like and I really don't care about gay marriage. Like you know, you've never. <laughs> you <can laughs> be no, 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 I, no, no. It, it's not that. It's I'm, I just want you to understand their argument, right? Because I understand the argument. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, I, so, so, no, no. I do. I hang on, hand. I do think there are nuances here you're not grasping, and okay. it's okay because it took me a long time, right? I had to come out of liberalism to be able to understand what they're saying, right? Um, what I mean is, like, it, it would, like, they view it as an imposter, right? They view it as an imposter, and so, the, the, it, and then you're saying, look, this is just the same as the thing you're doing, right? And that's a disrespectful thing to do. Right, is to say, you know, look at my imposter. He's just as valid as your authentic thing. Right, and it's not. It's not just uh, as valid. I, no, right? I listen. I, I I get. I understand the argument. Hundred percent understand. But the the, what, but the sanctity of the marriage itself is being degraded by means of the comparison. Right. I I I understand that's their position. I understand their position, and I understand the argument that they're making, and I understand the argument that you're making. Okay, but the diff. <laughs> I, the question isn't that I don't understand the argument. The question is I don't find their argument justified or valid. I don't accept their argument as being one that I think matters to me and to, so- and to society as a whole. That doesn't mean I don't understand it. I just don't accept it. Okay. Sure. But why though? You know, like what's, what's the, what's the replacement explanation? For what do you mean? Why? This is the entire conversation we had why, was me giving the why that we've had for like the last three hours. Well, and not topic. only that, and I, I mean, don't want to keep looping I, again and again and again. This totally that. overlaps with the trans stuff too, because they will they will yeah. say time and time again they will de- misgender trans people all the time and say it's not for me to to accept you for your the way that you're interpreting the situation here. What's well, the exact same thing with this? You're sure, you're, ba- I mean, you're I, basically I, saying uh, asking them to accept marriage the way that you're looking at marriage. And and we're saying, yeah, no, we don't want to look at marriage the way that you're looking at marriage. Fuck you. We got our own way of looking at marriage. 
Yeah, okay, but we're the majority. Okay. What's, what, what does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? I know we, we've got to stop being dictated to by one percent of the population that can't okay. even continue on the civilization. Look, like, if you're going to end, if you're right. going to march around and say, you know, I can misgender people, I don't have to play into your delusion. I can look at the situation the way I want to look at the situation. I can walk around and say, I can look at marriage the way I want to look at marriage. And if marriage doesn't have the sacred secret sauce that you think is necessary, well, yeah. I don't care. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, okay, but that we don't Fuck have you. to. Fuck you. Yeah, but you're totally outvoted on this, right? And so we will. No, we, okay. the majority heterosexual population, could legislate against you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, there is right. this thing called the the Bill of Rights in the United States. So, yeah, but you don't I mean, have a right to get gay married. <laughs> okay. Well, we you don't have a right should. to use women's <laughs> bathrooms, right? Well, well actually, that's not the, a right. I thought. Look, well, actually, you, the Supreme Court said it was. So we <laughs> we began well, this. Right. So, yeah, look, but the Supreme Court said you had a right to abortions, right? We began that's this true, conversation. Like you saying so, you don't like, look. We began this conversation. You you These said you don't care about gay marriage. Now you're saying that you have the voting majority to to thrust your will upon us. Yeah, but you've just reduced it to merely, well, we're going to do it anyway. Well, okay, well, we're going to legislate against it anyway, right? Okay. Like if, if it comes down to merely a power calculation, the heterosexual Christians are definitely in the majority over the weird fringe, like, gay okay. people, right? I it's hope not, you run a weird what, fringe. You should run like a weird fringe gay yeah. uh, issue, though. So. It is, though. It's like literally uh, ten. You guys should run on that in 2024. It's a total same-sex marriage is at a 71 percent high acceptability in America. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, okay. That just goes to show how far down the path we are, right? Well, no, the that's fact that, you. Wait, well, that's a completely different argument. Sure, but that, but the fact that gays just aren't taking this up shows that they're not really interested. The revealed preference is just o overwhelming. Look, this, every right? look, their plan on driving people to the polls in mass in 2024 based on the republicans want to take away gay marriage that's going to be a major selling point well, for democrats abortion, yeah. well we'll see we'll see so I, I don't i don't see how you can say people don't care about this like they're li I, the I, democrats I, we'll, are literally we'll raising money know. on this maybe they are we'll see i don't well, know you know <laughs> I just, and I don't you, think when, just because like a minority of people do it has that doesn't really speak to the legitimacy of the argument. Not only that, I mean they're going to well, point to this live stream and they're like they're going to say, "Look, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to take gay marriage away from you." Like yeah, this hurts I, Republicans like, at the polls in 2024. Yeah, it, because that's because Republicans are ridiculously bad at making any kind of argument. Okay, sure. Right? I mean, the, and the, the, look, it's, it's is, obvious the will that you like have, I said, the will like, that you have is to make gay marriage illegal. No, I personally don't give a fuck about gay marriage. It doesn't. Right? It doesn't. And optically, it doesn't that, look that way. Well, no, I'm just making their argument. Right? I'm you representing their that. argument to you. Right. Well, no, where have I made videos about it? Where do I campaign about it? I never bring it up because it. I just don't care, right? But this is the root of the problem. Because, I, like I look, said, I think we, gay we, marriage is look, the symptom of the problem. We have, but we've understood this argument. This argument is not. I mean, this is not a new argument. This argument is the same argument that they made when they did when they had the anti-marriage bills in California. Sure, but yeah. they're very bad at articulating their position. Right? Yeah, because their position sucks. It's it's no, hard it to articulate a position it, that sucks. It, it doesn't suck. That's the point. It's well, right. when it's you have position. to pull out magic, uh, your a, position is not really going to be it's a very position. persuasive for people. It's a position well, that's, that's not, not based true, on the. Though. It's a position right. that's not based on our material logic that we generally yes. use to make arguments in most things in today's world. Most but people are going to laugh at you. Material. That's and that's fine. And that's fine. You can say that. I'm just saying that's why the argument seems to suck. You know, to a lot. Of yeah, people. I know. And to it's, a lot it's of people. Making the framework yes. of, of epistemology that we generally accept by today's standards. Yeah. But that, then that's what I mean when I say like the right is generally terrible about making their arguments. Like it's look, they they are really bad at explaining it, and it's probably because I've I've changed positions, right? It's probably because I've gone across the aisle. I finally understand what they're trying to say, like, and there is legitimacy to it. It's a real issue. And well, when you say like right, I, said, I don't know if you mean like, like, well, being the, but the like, legitimacy to it that you've put forward is that they feel offended. Which I knew all along. No, 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 no. It's it's not. It's that's a really surface level reading. Of what I'm trying yeah, to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. It's not that they're. It, well, whatever. I just. I, I mean, there there will I, be some. Repeat it again, but, you know. but but the the point is, like I was saying, like I don't care about gay marriage because this is just a downstream issue, right? It it, it like we need to well, make what it what is the what is the upstream thing though? Marriage. Sorry. Yeah. Marriage. Oh, is, I agree. Marriage and gay kids. marriage is the is downstream of the problem, right? Yeah. 
And so that's not really an issue because the, the problem is the, you know, the upstream issue, right? So, Let's so say what we... is the problem then? What is the actual problem? The, the problem is the demystification of marriage, right? It's no longer a magical romantic thing that we oh aspire to. <laughs> well, uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, 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 you know, back in the day, if you were a young man, and let's say you kind of sucked, and you couldn't hold down a job, you couldn't attract a woman, your society looked down on you for not being a quality person, right? Yeah. And getting married was not simply having a partner. It was a social signifier of, yes, hey, a look, status I, symbol. I am, I am decent enough that I could attract somebody and now we can have kids. And that says a lot more about the person than just, I got married, right? So it seems to be the case that marriage was more serious because it, it said something about your character. And now that it doesn't, everything else that follows from that has kind of fallen apart. And that's so, your argument, sorry. No. Okay. That is All right. well, that is a corollary of my argument. Okay. And when I say my argument, I mean the rights argument. Right, right. right. So, what, what did I miss? You missed the spiritual foundation of it, right? Okay, yeah. The no, reason... Fair, fair enough, no, fair no, listen. The reason it was considered to be a mark of high character is because of the religious connotations that it carried. Okay. Right. So that I, was That was the base of it. To That's be fair, why, I had that. To be fair, with, I had that in my head. I just didn't say it because I wasn't thinking. With, without those get, religious connotations, point. right? Then there is no particular reason to see it as being a mark of high character, right? Oh. Now, again, I'm saying this as an atheist. I have no doubt, right? The Christians, man, I get the Christians on my case all the time. Come on, have you converted yet? Have you converted? No, I haven't fucking converted yet, right? <laughs> That's, where I'm, I'm just not... That's where this ends. That's where this ends, Carl. Okay, I'm, I, I'm not saying it's Carl not, I'm the not Catholic. Personally religious, right? No, I'm, no, no, I'll never be Catholic. Look, you're going um, to be going to church with Dave Rubin soon, okay? No, I'm English. Carl, I'm listen, English. I will never be a Catholic, now, right? Carl's going to convert, and he's going to say, listen, I don't believe in God. <laughs> I don't believe in Jesus, but the spiritual magic, the institutions of Christianity are just so positive for myself and my family that I'm going to adopt it. <laughs> no, no, you, that, that wouldn't be sincere. That'd be such a no, I, when I'm, I know I'm saying a sarcastic voice, but I think you would right. literally make that argument, and that would be a justifiable <laughs> argument. No, I'm not I wouldn't saying it's do not that. a justifiable argument. That's, that'd be totally cynical. I wouldn't do that. Right. I, I, really? I, I, I don't I think. I, okay. No, I really think that true belief is a real problem that we have as a civilization and we need to mm. think about it. Right. And it, it, I do think this is a consequence of the boomers. Right. And I, I spoke to my parents about this, about mm. the fact that they had to go to church and they hated it because they were for some reason committed atheists. But their parents absolutely were not committed atheists. Right. All of my grandparents were religious, every single one of them. My parents, irreligious, but not anti-religious, just indifferent to it. And then sort of my generation, the sort of new atheist sort of style generation, anti-religious, right? And it, it is in this band of time where marriage began to fall apart. And I do think it is the decoupling. All of my grandparents, lifelong married, died married, right? My parents, still married, obviously, um, but you know, not, and I'm not going to get divorced right? in the sixties. I'm sure they'll, they'll die together as well, but this, this is more a kind of habit of their upbringing because they used to go to church and they didn't like it. And I tell you what, man, but when, when like I've had my kids, all of my kids baptized. Right. And it's such a weird thing. Right. Because like I said, I'm not religious. I wasn't made to go to church. So I'm standing in the church holding a hymn sheet of words. I don't recognize to a tune I can't, I don't know. So I can't sing the hymns, which I would happily sing because it's the right thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know any of them. But my parents are standing next to me. My dad's standing there with his chest out, bellowing this <laughs> hymn. And I'm like, I'm just looking at him. It's like, I'm just like, how the fuck? I didn't say it, but like, I'm just thinking, how the fuck do you know this? And then, and the thing is, my dad's enjoying himself, standing in a church, bellowing these hymns, telling me he's an atheist. Mm -hmm. And it's like, right, okay, what is going on here? And I realized it was nostalgia, right? right. He's remembering his childhood when he does this, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's great. But then I was thinking, well, hang on a second. He's inherited something he didn't pass down to me, right? He has inherited an enjoyment and a, no a nostalgia that I don't have because I wasn't dragged to church. He didn't want to go to church. I'm sure his parents probably didn't want to go to church. But they got something out of it anyway that I didn't get, right? And 
I'm not saying it's good or bad or right or wrong because, of course, people are just the product of their environments and the product of the zeitgeist. It's not their fault. Blah blah blah. blah right. And I, and I love my parents more than anything. You know, I, I'm not. I've never cast aspersions on. Them. But it became very clear to me that there's been a break there. The boomer generation is the is responsible for a break in mm-hmm. the religiosity, and not even necessarily like sincere religi- religi- religiosity, but at least the habitual religiosity. Right. And that's a. I really think that that's where the sort of breakdown of marriage begins. Like in in the like under being habituated into it, the life of it being religious, even if you haven't got a sincere belief, has its own benefits. But also, I think that's probably where sincere belief begins, and I just don't have it, which is mm-hmm. why I'll never be a Christian. Well, and I I'm hate sure to that... defend the boomers. Um, well, I, I think the boomers get a lot of blame, but it's kind of interesting because. But I think this I... is their fault. Well, it, the, it is to some extent, and I agree with that. Obviously, at least in America, I don't know why like globally. I think it's America, very much the case in England as well. In uh, in America, definitely, there was a lot of breakdown with the boomer rejection of widespread yeah. of tradition and institutions, I think generally because of the Vietnam War and things like that. Mm. Um, but it's interesting that we kind of give the boomers all the shit for kind of creating all the, the destruction of society when the previous generation brought us far closer to destroying the world than the boomers ever did with all the shit that was going on in world war ii it's just that sure, that stuff I mean, kind of exploded in a way that happened very quickly or the anything that happened the boomers kind of is like a slow you know slow issues have been kind of creeping up i mean so. in in the defense of the great generation they didn't start the war the germans started the war right like right but i'm saying like just the various ideologies that kind of arose that sure that caused sure. all these problems they, you know these were not the boomer ideologies necessarily sure sure yeah that's true um but but what i'm saying is though like that i think is really that 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 severing of the civilizational connection which is predicated on christianity i think is the beginning of the end for marriage and civil society as we know it and has led us down the path that we're on and is why we're in all of the problems that we're in. Like, I think I, it was, I really think so. Mm-hmm. I Are think you sure? Information. I think yeah, it was I information. Think so. that was I mean, I'm not like sure. That. Like I, I, you know, I'm, I can't. I, come, you know. I, I think it's probably more birth control than than anything you're saying here. This is important, but well, I mean, well, n- I, none I of it would have been able to thing. happen. Well, sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I, I remember you and I had a conversation like four years ago where I said that birth control. I hypothesized that birth control led to people having less kids, which led to helicopter parenting, which then led to. The rise yeah. of basically modern wokeness. As far as something to that. Do you know but, Zahan's uh, argument on why birth rates are now? What is it? That um, back when people were in an agrarian society, kids were free labor. Now that yeah. we live in cities, kids are expensive um, conversation pieces. Yeah, yeah, they went from being a benefit mm. to a liability. And obviously, people respond to incentives. It's just basic economics. People started having right. less kids. Yeah. I, I think that's a bit cynical because like um also like uh a hundred years ago there would be more small business owners than there would be now. Um so even mm-hmm. if okay, you know you don't work on a farm but you own a small shop, well you need someone to clean out the room or you know, sweep up or serve a customer at the till. Your kids would do that. Sure. Right? Yeah. Sure. And maybe yeah. small so it's, business it's not owners just about have... being yeah, agrarian. We'll have free labor. Well, right, right. It's, it's, yeah, but that's still that would still be it's a, went from a benefit to a liability. Even sure, sure. I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but I, I think that's probably a smaller part of it. I, I do agree with Dev that birth control is definitely a major factor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely. birth control makes it possible, obviously. Yeah, exactly. But the motivation: why are people doing it? Why are people not having kids? Well, I, well, I don't know because the question is if birth control is available early. I mean, I think that's. I think you have a lot of different factors coming together. And I think the benefit to liability is definitely a factor. But even with that in back in the day, if people had access to birth control, you know, 100 years ago, there would have been a lot less kids running around because people just like to have sex. It could well be that it's an inevitable consequence of birth control. Yeah. I mean, something similar happened in the Roman Republic, right? They had a plant called Silphium that mm -hmm. grew only at Cyrene, which is in North Africa, and they couldn't domesticate it for some reason. Uh, but what it did is it acted as of, as a form of birth control. And uh, right. apparently this led to uh, widespread promiscuity and a breakdown of social morals. And eventually it was so popular that uh, mm-hmm. they harvested it uh, into extinction. And so now it no longer exists. <laughs> what is this called? Oh. Well, there we go. That's, that's, inter- that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, look it up. Look it up. <laughs> it's, so- on, it, 
it's on coins and stuff like that. It literally had the same kind of social status we give to birth control. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at the birth rates, because I wanted to eventually do a video on it, I watched uh, a documentary that I cannot remember the name of. I cannot remember the name of it. But there was basic, there's basically a, a misconception about birth rates that's floating around that everyone kind of has in their head, right? Everyone says people are having less kids, right? That the 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 replacement rates are going down to one point whatever rather than the two point one they need to be. Yeah. Everyone's having less children, but it turns out that's actually not true. Believe it's it or not. about who how many people actually have children, right? Yes, that's it. Yeah. So if you come from a family where most where where generally people had between two to four kids, and you have kids, you will likely also have two to four kids. If you come from a family where everyone had like five to nine kids and you had kids, you're likely having five to nine kids. What's changed is the massive number of people that have zero kids. Hmm. So when people reproduce, they're still reproducing at the same rates. It's just that our society is currently floating a bunch of zeros. Right. So we need well, to and a small generation. A small generation has a small generation and a large generation has a large generation. Mm -hmm. So, so, one thing, one thing that we've kind of figured out is that there's always been a segment of the population around 10% that never has kids, right? Sure. And the, you know, these are going to be gay people or they're going to be infertile people or people who just aren't like, they just have they're, like, they're weirdos. They're not the personality. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, there's, there's not interested. Um, it's usually around 10% and no matter what, it's always 10%. You know, there was, um, uh, in Romania, they had that extremely pro birth situation. What was it called? Is it was it decree seventy seven or something? Basically, it was like a forced birth situation in Romania under the communists, and uh, execute and they... decree seventy seven. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a Palpatine initiative. It, it does actually. It's not like everyone's just like forced See, to fuck. Whenever I look, I look up Romanian <laughs> Order sixty six in a home, Romanian decree no Don't yeah, worry Romanian about it. It decree seven seven zero yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Romanian Decree 770 was basically... Sorry, darling, we're going to have to do it tonight. Why the government says so. She's like, come on, I'm a libertarian now. The Palpatine Hoggam shows up, have you had your daily sex yet? <laughs> yep, pretty much. The, the government wanted to uh, wanted to um, have a huge baby uh, boom. And in yeah. order to, t to take care of all the kids that people didn't want as a, as a result of the baby boom, they had like a government institution raise them. Oh, God. And so, not, so you had an entire generation of children in Romania that came out of decree 770 that were raised by the state and they were completely dysfunctional because of and course they became they the gypsies. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but, but anyway, even in that situation, they still couldn't get the, uh, the rate of childlessness below 10% because it just seems to be like, like a fixed number in humanity. Mm -hmm. so 10% don't have kids. Yeah. Um, oh. The issue is that we're now like, we're seeing way more than 10% of people not having kids. And this documentary looked into the looked into percentages and realized that you still have the same around the same number of gay people. You still you still have like the same number of gay people. Hold on a second. What's going on? Oh, sorry. Something, something happened to my computer. OK, so you still have the same number of gay people. You still have the same number of, of people who just don't want kids. Right. Same number of people who, who are infertile. What you have, though, is a massive boom of the population of people who can't find partners. They want kids and they can't have them because they can't Incels. find anybody. Yes. So it, it this literally is the incel problem. And it's also fem cells too. You know, it just, yeah, yeah. people are not able to find partners. That seems to be the core of it right mm. now. Must be the missing know, magic. I mean, it could be <laughs> missing magic. So. It could be, it, it could be the fact that like people's you, standards you, you have say increased. Ironically, but you know? I really think it might be. Yeah. Well, I just was it marriage. Well, well, marriage began as an economic affair, and there was no magic. I mean, like was, magic oh, came oh, in oh, late oh, in the oh, game. Don't want to like, 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 no, no. reloop the conversation. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> but I'm just, I, I, okay. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just in, saying. Hold on, re real quick. In an era where there was actually status conferred upon mm. upon getting married, now that that's gone, that that's an incentive that's gone, right? If if you're no longer considered a true adult, if you're if you're if you're not married or whatever, like right, that, yes. that situation's gone. So now there's there's less incentive to get married, right? There's there's because there's no prestige with the position of being a husband or a wife. You now have a have a have no incentive to get well, married. Well, at least less of incentive. Feminism has taken has made it like a cost even to be a wife. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's yes. directly under attack. It's a loss in status. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that seems to be a problem. 
it's probably, it's probably, probably, probably a bunch of things. Probably a bunch of things. I, I hate to bring it up though. Is like the Christians are going to say, look, it's because of the religious foundation of marriage has been broken. And honestly, right. And again, I hate to do it, but I think they have a point here, right? I, I genuinely think they have a point. And I'm I'm just looking at this in a logical way as an atheist and being like, there was something that Christianity did to this institution that made it important for all of the people involved in it. Like, and I, like I said, I'm never going to be a Christian. I'm never going to be religious, but I think they have a point here. I don't know what to say about it. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know well, how it can be fixed. How, how do you look at your own marriage being an atheist? Well, I mean, I, it's, it's, you know, I love my wife and I want right. her to be happy, but the, you know, and I, I don't want to get divorced, but primarily that's bef because of me and the kids, right? It's not because I'm worried in the eyes of God, but that's because I've been raised as irreligious my whole life. It, I don't think that way, you know? And so if I didn't feel that way, I wouldn't feel obliged necessarily to change that, right? Whereas someone who's religious might have those feelings where like, hang on, no, 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 I'm, I'm wrong here, not my feelings, you know, like my feelings aren't right. They're wrong, actually, because there's an objective sacred standard that I believe in and I have a sincere belief in that. And therefore, if I feel this way, I need to think, you know, go. I need to sit down with my husband and talk about it or my wife and talk about it. You know, I need to think about why I'm having these feelings, because actually I would be doing the wrong thing, whereas I wouldn't feel like I was doing the wrong thing in that way. Right. I mean, I, I, for my kids, um, obviously, I would, but like, do you, you know, assume assume they'd grown up or something, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so you wish your parents had uh, basically given you religion. Well, it's, I wish is too strong, right? Because do you resent I, your parents for not? Doing no, no, not okay. at all. It, 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 like, this is a very recent thing that I've been thinking, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's more in a practical way. I can see that this is a consequence of my right. upbringing right yeah, yeah and i'm I'm not saying it would be like better or worse had it not been this way like in an emotional way like i you know i live a very happy life you know i love my kids my wife and kids seem happy you know every, everything seems fine but that's i think just because i'm fairly well adjusted socially and stuff like this so you know okay in my case fair enough that you know good for me right but I can definitely see there are going to be people who don't have like my advantages or my disposition or things like that who would definitely benefit from these things. And right. the, in a general sense, actually, I've, you know, would it be nicer to live in a civilization that took a sense of the magic more seriously? Cause I mean, like, again, I was watching the queen's funeral, man. And I was just like, Oh, this is, this is brilliant. You know, not the fact that she's died, obviously, but the, the animating force Mm -hmm. of this massive thing that happened i was like god i do well, i want to see that more often you know and if it takes us being religious to get that why well, I, I i'm not against that i'm just gonna you know i'll personally be a bit bored in church right right but that wouldn't be a terrible sacrifice to make if collectively as a civilization we're like no no no, no we actually maybe we should have been good christians you know maybe yeah. There was something to all of this, you know, look at what we've, we're sacrificing by not well, being this, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I mean, I don't know if that can be the kernel of the beginning of a sincere, sincere belief for the next generation or something like that, you know, and, and maybe it would be, you know, I don't know, but like, yeah. I, I just, we're, we're, we've definitely lost something that I don't think materialism can bring back. Mm -hmm. Well, replace. I think, um, and I think humans are wired evolutionarily biologically to have that sort of group based animating spirit i mean you see this at you know yeah. funeral you see that at sporting events you see this in all in all these you know in the military you see this in you know a million aspects of life yeah. so obviously we humans derive a lot of uh, value from it um on a many on many levels and it, it's one of those things as, as you said earlier you know everything has its pros and cons and the pros is of course you know, we as a society can find meaning uh, working together and we can find social cohesion working together and we can come together and build great things and we can fight off, you know, great enemies. But of course, you know, the problem is that it's, you know, that animating force also leads to lynch mobs and Nazis and it's, 
it's it's not on its face it's neither good nor bad it's just a force that brings us together and it can be used for good or for ill unfortunately I, and that's kind of I, the, the, I'm gonna, the, the I'm difficulty of, of I, navigating those waters i i don't think it's christianity that leads to lynch mobs no no no, no. i'm saying the i'm saying the the animating force that binds people together in collectives to feel mm. kind of that sense of oneness it, in sure the i i I mean, the, the sort of the racial lynch mobs of the South. Well, I'm not even talking like about racial. Very... I just mean like a lynch mob. Just uh, uh, the possibly. Mob, but... I, I mean, I would be. I mean, yeah, I suppose it's. Yeah, it's, I suppose that is a fact, feature of it. But you got to read Mark Twain's Revenge before Sargon takes off. Uh, Mark Twain's Revenge for $200. Thank you so much, Jesus. Mark Twain. Uh, says our surrogate uncle says my wife is literally going through labor right now with our fourth child well congratulations mark yeah, Twain. that's awesome uh hopefully we'll be bringing forward hopefully we'll be bringing another future enlightened centrist and catholic into this world Sitchin adam keep doing your great work and bring this maple syrup jockey and proto-american back to the glorious center path yeah Wait, is that me am i the maple syrup jockey you yeah are, obviously. you are I, th I thought I was in the center path. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Too much Marvin Yarvin, man. You've been corrupted <laughs> so hold now. On. Am, am, am I a communist or am, am I a neo reactionary? Which one? Am I both? What, what is the difference? You're all. You're all what, is the difference? <laughs> what is the difference? Great question. Adam. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've seen people describe the neo reactionaries as right wing socialists. So Yes, yeah. of course they are. Very much so. Well, mm -hmm. This has been a very spirited discussion. Uh, Carl, you said you had to go. Like yeah, two hours ago. In twenty in know, twenty know, minutes. But, you said you had to go in twenty minutes, I think, <laughs> I like two hours ago. So I know, but we it was a very interesting discussion, right? And I actually feel that we actually got to a point where like uh, it, people in the comments, like tomorrow, are gonna mm. actually be like, Oh right, this was a good point. That was a good point. You know, I, I do think they're gonna find mm, real value out of this discussion. I hope. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. No, on both no, sides. I actually like, do on, think so, too. Yeah, I do think yeah, so. In, in both I mean, ways. Because it's been difficult to articulate, right? A lot of this stuff. Sure. And it's difficult to articulate because, as I said, it's. I think, I think the most useful concept that came forward is that it's difficult to articulate ideas that are not, that don't exist in the current epistemological framework. Yeah, that's, that's accepted. True. That's true. So, yeah. And I think yeah. that is true that the right has a problem because they're often trying to base things not on the current epistemological framework. So. Right. Yeah. And they're they're very the... bad at talking to people. Tell them the liberals, frankly. They're well, bad. the liberals are very bad at telling the conservatives anything either. either. So I don't I yeah, think yeah. it's a, everyone's trying to tell people their position from using their moral foundations and their logic. And that obviously doesn't work. Because hmm. if they had your logic, they'd agree with you. So. Well, let's hope so. But yeah, I am gonna I'm gonna head off because it is really late. I'm gonna really regret this tomorrow. You, you wanna you watch doing? the five minute video? Well, no, no, that'll take twenty eight hours. But thanks for coming on, uh, Carl. Even though <laughs> well, I yelled at you a bunch, I still no, no, well, still love I you with all my you guys heart a bunch soul, as well, so, right? So I, I was gonna say, you know, like but we always do this, right? We That's we go true. through mm -hmm. this kind of period of like yelling at each other and then yes. a long period of actually like discussing very rationally right. and understanding <laughs> each other's position. You know why? It's because we're men. Yeah, yes. because <laughs> <laughs> we're men. That's why we can do that. But it's also because you guys know that I, I, I watch your channel all the time. I like you guys yeah. a lot, and I've of always course. stood up yeah. to you. And we like you. And you know, I know you've always done that for me. And it's again, like, even if we yelled at each other, it doesn't mean we're not friends. That's one. Exactly. Um, of course. But anyway, yeah. Nothing but. Uh, I do have to go. So, guys, thanks a lot for having me on. We'll do this again, like you know, next yeah. month or something. Thanks for coming. You know, sure. See what the fallout from all of this was to see if it was interesting. <laughs> I well, can't wait to read the funny, comments. Before you go, I want to say, last night Dev was worried. He's like, "What are we going to talk about? We had, we haven't had any plans to talk about anything." I'm like, "Listen, well, he's not well, like whenever we talk to Carl, it doesn't we'll find something to yell about. It doesn't matter." I had well, several you, things usually, I wanted usually, to talk about. We didn't talk like, about any of them. You, usually when I come on the show, I come with like notes and I've read the book or I've watched whatever it is. I'm I know watching. you're all prepared. Like, like, no. I'm usually set to go, you know? Yeah. yeah that's that's just kind of how I am. I know. I understand. Over preparation. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Right. Take, take it easy, guys. Take care. Cheerio. See ya. Are you sticking okay, around? So. You're sticking around though, right, Dev? Um, I can if you want. I can also go because I'm currently dying. But uh, Why are you dying? It's I'm in a heat wave right now. It's very warm. I would love to turn on the AC, but I can't because it, it's really loud in the mic. So I'm just I'm just sweltering and waiting. Well, wait, turn on turn on your AC. Let's see if it comes through. 
Uh, okay, it might. Hold on. Just give me a second. Because on Zoom, Zoom usually does a pretty good job. Uh, cutting out background. Cutting yeah, out the. Exactly. I mean, uh, can you hear like the rain in the background? It's uh, no. There? Oh, was, wow. I was like, like super loud thunder and rain and shit going on in the background. You're not hearing that. Your AC will probably be okay. So. How, can you hear anything? I hear nothing. No, sounds no. fine. I, I just sound fine. Yeah. yeah. You, oh, you were okay. putting yourself through torture for no reason. Oh, well, I guess that's how it happens. You know, see, Zoom is, this is why we use Zoom instead of Discord. Zoom is really good at canceling out background noise, in my opinion. Okay. So, yeah, so now job. we can talk about Marvin Yarver for the next 18 hours. Let's go. <laughs> now, now, um, let me catch up on Super Chats because I'm way behind on Super Chats. People in the chat want us to watch the video, too. I feel we'll like watch the video, but let me just read it. the Super Chats yeah. first and then we'll watch the video. Wasn't it like a, a video for Sargon, though? No, it's no. no it's a video I've been wanting, for me, apparently. Yeah. I've been yeah. wanting to watch okay. this video right. and trigger Sitch forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? I, I can probably hang around for, for another hour or so. Just give me a minute. I'll be I'll be RB. Okay. Uh Texas SP twelve for twenty dollars says, I'd like to see the politics of Sandlot. There you go. That's a good one. Of Sandlot? Sandlot. I don't know what that is. You never seen Sandlot? Uh uh. The movie Sandlot? Oh, this oh, says cool. Sand a lot. I don't know if that's the movie Sandlot, and you just spelled it wrong, Texas, or you never Texas seen the movie Peepaw? Yeah, Texas. What's up, Peepaw. Texas? <laughs> What's up, Peepaw? Texas. I always call it Texas SP. Texas P twelve. I don't know why I added an extra S in there. You never uh, seen the movie him, The Sandlot, Adam? I always call him Texas it? Peepaw. Have you never seen Sandlot? I don't know. It's like a classic movie from the nineties. You're killing me, Smalls. The kids that play baseball. I've never seen it. Must okay. have missed that one. All right. Must have been out getting laid that day. There you go. I might have been a little too young in 1993 to get laid. <laughs> right, yeah. That was back in my back in my Coomer day. There you go. Uh, J Mac, our circuit father for $20, says, Carl, can you do a Gene Steeler cult analysis and how it mirrors current day commie infiltration? It's my army of choice, and I feel like Games Workshop nailed it, even if they don't realize. Gene mm -hmm. Stealer cults. What is that? That's I don't know. Forty you... K thing. Oh, it is. Yes. Uh, Ethan Rogers for twenty dollars says Adam. This is in all in all caps. So I have to shout it. Adam Steelman. Their argument. You debate brain. Debate brain ninny. Why well, I, I answered that in the chat because obviously right. you guys were on a roll. Yeah. I you tried to steal man. The argument, and this was back when we were talking about meritocracy, right. and he said, no, that's not correct. And I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I don't know that I could steal Mana's argument. I don't know what argument he was actually making there. I mean, we kept saying that it seemed like he was saying meritocracy. There is a, a meritocratic element in aristocracy that we are somehow ignoring, which, right. you know, I'm... I don't want to ignore it. Sure, if there's any sort of meritocratic element in aristocracy, I think meritocracy should get credit for that because that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I don't really know what the I don't really rem know what the end end message of the meritocracy aristocracy conversation was. Yeah, me I just neither. Felt like we were using different definitions of these words. Of course, obviously. You know, we said, and we said it several times in the conversation that, you know, obviously there's going to be some level of meritocracy that will be passed down to children of people that are successful, whether it be biological, whether it just be cultural. I mean, it'd be foolish to deny that. Um, but usually when we have the conversations about meritocracy versus aristocracy, usually that conversation means should we allow people that are not already part of the existing aristocracy to move up to those levels? That's generally how the, in my opinion, what the conversation is about. We have well, and okay. in the case so, of, of with, uh, affirmative without, like, action, which I brought up, oh, let me finish Dev. Right. And go, in the go, case go of affirmative action, which I brought up, we're saying, look, we're not going to judge people based on uh, merit. We're going to judge people on this other criteria because we feel right. this is more important than merit. Which I don't know that it is, to be honest with you. It depends upon what we're talking about here. So, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So the the TLDR of that was basically that sometimes it's sometimes it's hard to translate Sargon's ideas when he's right there because he kind of goes all over the place sometimes. 
He's he's we, great to talk to, but he doesn't we go can't, somewhere to play sometimes. We can't, yeah. it's not our fault though if I know if I know. This, if the argument is unclear and we're unable to steel man it, it we're not look there can be arguments that are just unclear like that's uh if you're so making the, the argument the, the it's argument, your job to make it clear correct the, well the, the argument was something like an open aristocracy is the same thing as a meritocracy because meritocracy will eventually stack up into a ruling okay, class well, i mean yeah yes that, that's all it was and well, considering like that was all well, considering that that the root of aristocracy is the rule of the best, which is what a meritocracy is, they do end up boiling down to be the same idea. Right. That best is and, doing and, a lot of heavy lifting. There. Well, well, no, it's just well. well the, the issue is that you guys are American, right? And your view of aristocracy is a you know a, a landed government far away that rules based solely on their bloodline, and it's illegitimate. And you guys well, had a successful revolution against them, which is a fair hard. interpretation. That's right? not. But it's not that, but that's, that's not, not the only form of aristocracy. Relevant here, really. that, that, no, it, is, it is relevant. It is relevant. That, that is part of it. But part of it is, at least in America, when you the word aristocracy is front loaded with with a gatekeeping mechanism that's not based on merit. Yep. And so I don't understand what yep. is the the point of sort of defining it in a way that's basically making it a synonym with meritocracy. I'm not sure uh, like, what because is the, the purpose of doing in, that. In other parts of the world, it's not viewed mm -hmm. that way. Well, parts, what, what aristocracy is viewed as basically a type of government where families are and this, they, they are in control and it is it is hereditary but it's also based on merit it's look both. this is this is why i brought up affirmative action me, okay. because okay. look I, I you can promote people into certain positions based on things other than merit correct yeah of course you can you okay because like they're, they're your family or whatever right yeah so we're having a conversation about meritocracy and not meritocracy now if the you want to say aristocracy if you want to say aristocracy is meritocracy knock yourself mm -hmm. out but okay. we're then we're not talking about the difference between meritocracy well, and not meritocracy do you have like a thing like a, a web page or a book something you can point to say this is what I when I say aristocracy, this is what I mean. Just point to this, and I can look at it and say, "Oh, okay." Okay. Give so, me just a so, moment. so, but look, I think a big part of the problem that we're having, and this is why it even came up in the first place. It came up because we were saying why America kicks ass, and we said because America is based on a meritocracy, mm -hmm. not not a meritocracy, a meritocracy. Okay. Here. If you want, if you want to know basically what what Sargon and I were saying, Wikipedia aristocracy, first and second paragraphs. The form of government places strength in the hands of a small privileged ruling class, the aristocrats. It's like the joke. Yeah. Hold on. The term yeah, derived yeah. from the Greek meaning the rule of the best. The time of the world's origins in ancient Greece, the Greeks conceived it as a rule by the best qualified citizens, and often constrained it favorably with monarchy, which was a rule by an individual. The term was first used by such ancient Greeks as Aristotle and Plato, who used it to describe a system where only the best of citizens chosen through a careful process of selection would become rulers, and the hereditary rule would actually would have been forbidden unless the ruler's children performed best and were better endowed with the attributes that made a person fit to rule compared with every other citizen. And that sounds like a meritocracy. That, yeah, that I mean, it's literally yes, meritocracy. yes, but here's the thing. It's been called aristocracy for most of human civilization. <laughs> well, wait, I don't know if, wait, I don't think that's true though. Cause I no, think meritocracy is a relatively new term compared to aristocracy. I understand that. But what I'm saying is I don't think that this, this form of the, the origin point of the term, I don't think that's the way it's been used for most of its existence. So. Yes. So I was gonna. I was I, gonna keep related. I I, I think that might be a product of you guys being American, to be honest. I don't think it is. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me keep reading. Uh, let's see. Belief was the belief was rooting the assumption that the masses can only produce average policy, while the best man could produce the best policy. Fair enough. Concept. The concept evolved in ancient Greece. Okay. Uh, in the book Leviathan, Thomas Hobbes describes an aristocracy as a commonwealth in which the representative of the citizen is an assembly by part only. It's a system in which only a small part of the population represents the government. Modern depictions of aristocracy tend to regard it not as ancient Greek rule of the best, but more of an oligarchy or plutocracy ruled by a few or the wealthy. Yeah, so, so there was a shift. About, right? Yeah, there's a there's sh some so, shift so, so, has occurred. Yes, right. Yeah, scroll back up and go to it says um, 
Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, Xenophon, and the Spartans considered aristocracy, the ideal form of rule by the few, to be inherently better than the ideal form of rule by the many, democracy. Right. But they also considered the corrupted form of aristocracy, oligarchy, to be worse than the corrupted form of democracy, which is mob right. rule. Right. So, so when we're saying aristocracy, you're saying we're really talking about corrupted aristocracy, and you mean pure form of aristocracy, the, the correct form, right? Yes. Okay. But also, it's very easy for aristocracies to be, to be, as like I said, open or closed, right? Well, I kept just trying to take aristocracy out of the equation, but right. it wasn't working. Well, that, I mean, <laughs> well, it's because we got into it because of Evola and the aristocratic spirit that, that he talks about, right? We're like, there's a certain way of behaving that is proper for a, for a good sure, person. But, he, but yeah, but see, here's the problem. Well, and you could be right that as Americans, obviously, we associate in America, when we hear the word aristocrat or aristocracy, yeah. we automatically think, think of it monarchy. as the corrupted form, oligarchy, monarchy, you know, not meritocracy. To us, aristocracy generally is used as an antonym to, to meritocracy. And that is an American mm -hmm. thing. So that could definitely be the case. Um, but my problem with relating it to Vola is Evola is not, he definitely, from my readings of him, and obviously Carl's read more of him than I am, but from my readings of him, he was definitely, Evola is definitely embedding a, some kind of fucked up racist uh, <laughs> uh, element into his ideology. And just because so, he's like equating it to a spirit as opposed to a bio, like a biology to me, it doesn't, it's like, okay. I, I mean, that makes it worse, not better in my eyes, but okay. So, so here, here was the issue is that Evola has a fascist and a post-fascist period and his mm -hmm. ideas radically change between the two. When he oh, was so maybe in Italy, we're maybe we're reading different time periods. <laughs> when he was writing in Italy during the fascist period, he wrote fascist political theory. He just okay. did because you know, that, that's what you do when you're an intellectual sure. in fascist sure. Italy, right? Right. But he also lived for like, I think, 30 years or something after the fall of the fascists. And mm -hmm. so he has a post fascist period where he talks about other things. Okay. And, and that, that's, that's when he wrote um, fascism as viewed from the right, which was his right wing critique of fascism. Interesting. God, you guys so, in your boring, boring books. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You I, don't I, like books? Adam? Well, no, I just, I don't understand. Like, Evola lived in a time where he didn't have access to so much of the world's information now. I don't see why people read this stuff and, and I just, I don't understand well, what they get out of it. It's really funny because I forgot, I forgot that I had this conversation with Carl. I'm pretty sure I turned Carl on to Evola accidentally. Mm. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> because I remember reading. I started Actually, reading no, Evola. it was it was academic agent, but. Well, no, because I remember I remember this conversation. I don't remember if it was in, on stream or it was in DMs. I remember having a conversation with him where I re started to read a bunch of Evola in response to the academic agent's tomboy abs video that we made fun of. <laughs> um, and I was reading it. And I'm like, a lot of this sounds like a lot of things Carl said. <laughs> In terms of like <laughs> animating spirit and all the sort of like esoteric things that he sort of relates uh, to and the kind of anti anti enlightenment, uh, anti rational, you know, things that he was kind of relates to in all these conversations. And I told him this. I said, Oh, I think I found out where you're getting a lot of your information from. It's from you're getting it from Evola. And he said, I've never read Evola. And I'm like, Oh, well, he says a lot of the things that you say. He's getting it from <laughs> so, academic agent, and academic agent is getting it from Evola. Right. So, so that's so I just thought that was funny. So maybe it's my fault, everyone. I apologize. That's okay. Um, Look, I, 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 I obviously read all the time i'm totally in favor of reading i'm just i like to read authors that have a modern understanding of the world so i don't <laughs> did avola even know about germ theory i mean when did this guy yeah, write he, he, was, he, he was in the 1930s he, he, he was, yeah, yeah, was. no okay. so well, well there is listen there is validity in reading certain old things in terms of that a lot of the struggles and tr and trials and tribulations and concepts that we humans go through are always the same. Are timeless. Been, yes. And are timeless. And they just, we live in these cycles and we just keep repeating them. I was actually thinking about this before the stream started. I don't remember why. About how, you know, you can go back and you can read ancient Roman or ancient Greek literature. And what is it? It's a bunch of old people complaining about how the youth of the day are yes. degenerate and they had it, <laughs> you know, and they're weak and they're soft. Unlike in their day where real men were men. Like that has been like the most common fucking repeated theme in all of human <laughs> history. Every old generation says that of the younger generation. It just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. So, 
Yes. I don't know. Yeah. It's just funny. It's just funny from that level. But let's watch the video. Ready? Hold so <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't, don't you want to talk about Evola's concept of spiritual racism I and how it's different I from really biological don't. racism? No. Yeah, it's worse. <laughs> and we could talk about how Evola was like waxing on poetically about how amazing it was that, you know, Indian uh, women would jump into the fucking funeral pyre with their husband and die. <laughs> this <laughs> is what okay, this well. is what people in the chat are calling intellectual. Right. <laughs> this doesn't seem or, or, intellectual. Or how, how about how how we live in the final age of of, of the cycle of humanity. We live in the what is Kali it? Yuga. What That's is another thing that, that, that they yeah. all say. Every fucking person thinks they live in the final end of history, age of something. And they're, never, they're always wrong. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Koboxi for 20 euros says, Hakuna Matana is important to rule a kingdom. That's true. That's a good point. I, was, I should have been relating that more to the standard hero's journey. Lion King doesn't really mm -hmm. have a standard hero's journey at all. He doesn't really learn anything in the wilderness. He just kind of fucks off for a bit and comes back. <laughs> that's, that's the well, point. Uh, well the, the point that I was making is that yeah. the reason that it has to be Simba and not just another random lion who would know, have been good is because the he's the descendant, right? Like he's, yeah. it's not just biology. It's not just biology. It's also it, it's partially biology. It's partially like his family. It's partially that, but it's also partially that he's the inheritor of a legacy. No, 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 and that's right. the important part, right. which well, isn't say... just biology. When I say yeah. biology, what, what I mean, what I'm including in that, and maybe I'm not being clear, what I'm including in that is that I understand that, you know, it's kind of like in Game of Thrones, a little finger question, you know, where does power reside? Power resides where men think it resides. So if you grow up in a society, in a culture that views legitimacy to uh, hereditary lineage, that's where power resides in. So it has to be Simba because that's where people view power resides. It couldn't just be some random ass lion coming because they'd be well, like, well, why do we listen to this random fuck? It's partially that, yes, but it's also part. the The inheritor thing is is different from power. So it's, it's like, uh, what, what, man, what was it? Well, it's literally kings. So I, I, I forget. I, I forget if it, I forget if it was Rocky or if it was the Karate Kid, where basically <laughs> yeah. like where basically the hero is trained by by he's trained by, in both in both movies they're trained by somebody. But I, I forget which movie it was. But in one of the movies, the old trainer who can no longer fight. The mm -hmm. hero is like facing off against his nemesis. That was a Karate, Karate Kid. Kid. Yeah, it was yeah. Karate Kid. Yeah. So the reason that it has to be Daniel in the Karate Kid is, is, is isn't because of biology because they're not related. It's because he's the inheritor of the technique that was passed down. By yeah, his but master. that's not really that that makes sense in Karate Kid. That's not really related to Lion King at all. Well, it because it's literally it's just bio, it's just literally that her you know. Uh, getting the biology of his father it's not like he's carrying on the technique of his father or something mm -hmm. yeah. well it's, it's not carrying on the technique. it's it's being the inheritor of a tradition that's what matters and and, I, and that's what evola gets at it's like it's not necessarily about race or about ethnicity or about family but it can be about those things right that, it's yeah. about if being that tradition, the inheritor of a tradition if that tradition has merit the things need to be accomplished in the world right that's sure. the difference yeah. right well again i think karate kid you should use that as an example lion king because it's a Disney movie, doesn't really have a lot of depth so much, except for like the whole circle of life thing. Beyond mm -hmm. the circle of life balance, there isn't really a lot of depth given to the, you know, the ruling character of Simba that he inherits from his father beyond the circle of life concept. Because it's a, you yeah, know, it's a, doesn't really, because that's not the point of the movie. So I just, yeah, Karate movie. Kid yeah. would be yeah. a, a far better example of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or like, I mean, you know, Star Wars is also a good example because Luke, Luke is both. Is he, he, like he is both the son of Darth Vader, but also the inheritor of a tradition. He's the last Jedi. Right. But he, he, he was the last Jedi until Disney ruined it. But you know what I mean? Right. Though. But he it's inherits like, a tradition not from his father, but from uh, Obi-Wan and from Yoda. Yoda almost. Yeah. So, but at the yeah. same time, like he, he is he is the descendant of Yoda in a spiritual sense. And he's the descendant right. of Darth Vader in a. In a biological Physical sense, sense. Yeah. so yeah, so 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 that that's kind of what Evola gets at is that it is sure. it, it's not just about blood, but blood has a part of it. Sure, and even the Jedi a of, had like, a tradition though of training in weaponry and stuff like that that would be good in security things like that. Like if they had a tradition that was training in something completely different that was not useful in security, then they would not fill that role competently. Right, and that and well, sure, yeah, but right, and that of course is a you know we're not even talking about that element of Evola about whether the things he's even advocating for have any sort of yeah, merit, merit utility outside yeah. of just the concept of the spiritual racism. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, <laughs> he he would likely argue that because it's aristocratic, there's probably something there that that relates to combat or to the relate. Like sure, like I, that, but right? the thing is, I don't remember him, and I could be wrong from what I read. I don't remember him sort of 
invoking that anyone can join a spiritual lineage. Because he definitely seemed to be uh, tying the spiritual lineage to people's specific ethnic. It was it was one of those things where like yeah anybody could join it, but almost nobody ever will. So yeah, so it's kind of like oh, it's like oh, listen, we're not killing you because you're a different race. We're killing you because you're a different spiritual lineage. That <laughs> you know, it's like oh, okay, that's great. You know, it's like fantastic. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father for hundred dollars says honestly, you guys are all great. I got to run, but just now that this rich aristocrat is in your corner. <laughs> Much love. Uh, yes. Thank you, Jay. That's Thank true. you, Jay Mac. Yeah, right. I saw I found shoe on head was, was in the for. chat too. Oh, was she? she? Yeah. Okay. She said, "Well, when we were having our knockdown drag out gay marriage debate, she was like, <laughs> this is amazing." The thing is, I, I actually really enjoy uh, shoe on head's boyfriend's videos. They're good videos. What about shoe's videos? videos? Shoe's videos are hilarious. I mean, yeah, they can be good sometimes. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Oh, painful. Okay. I, hold on. Oh my I found God. I, that quote. was an easy setup for you, Dad. I, know. I, I found the quote that I was looking for, okay? Okay. What's so it, it's an Evola quote, all right? I found the quote. So he viewed the Jews as being the carriers of a worldview, a way of being and thinking. Sim simply put, a spirit that corresponds to the worst and most decadent features of modernity. I know, I know, I've read this quote. Egalitarianism and materialism. So, yes. so, so the, the idea is like he, he wasn't racist against the Jews for like, like for in terms of like biology or like, like in, inferior I genetics. Mean, it, yeah, he, he just they have an inferior soul that just happens to be passed along biologically. You know, it's like, well, what the fuck's the difference? <laughs> it's like, it's a on. way of being and thinking that is too yes. modern for him. Yes. <laughs> I know it's fucking ridiculous, but anyway. When did genetics come in? Um, um I don't think Evola cared about genetics that much. He was well, really I don't. Did he even know genetics existed? That's why. That's why I'm saying 1930s. I, I think he did. Well, well, just, didn't didn't he write the book Genealogy of the Spirit? I don't know I when. Think he did. When did Mendel do his pea pods? That was wasn't that the late 1800s? Oh, okay. I when did we discover genetics? Mid nineteenth century. Prior to Mendel, okay. genetics was primarily theoretical. Well, okay. yeah, it was theoretical, but people still believe mid nineteenth century. So that's like eighteen hundreds, right? I mean, because when you when you have eighteen fifty, maybe when you have to start having a theory of genetics when you start talking about evolution. So he yeah. knew eighteen fifties, yeah. Yeah, mid nineteenth century. Okay, yeah, so it was before him. So he. Was, no, the thing is, like, like Evola was very educated. He was just very wrong about a lot of things. And he sure. also he, he was also very interested like after in, in the post fascist period he kind of moved away and into more like eastern mysticism. So for example it, it's funny like you you can find a whole bunch of like hippie girls who walk around wearing sarongs and they have like they have they have like, they have, like just the right amount of tussled hair, big hoop mm -hmm. earrings. They're constantly high and they'll go and like they go to a bookstore and they'll pull out like a book of like a, like a mountain with, with, with like a, a giant mountain picture. And there's like a, like a, a solitary man on the peak of the mountain. And it's called Meditations right. on the Peaks. And it'll be all about like like tantric meditation and Hinduism and all this shit. And this hippie chick will be like, this is the book for me. And it was written by Evola. So that's funny. Like, and it turns out that like the book is, you know, half really weird hippie stuff and half uh, post fascist political right. theory. Well, okay, well, there's two okay. things about Evola, then we can move on from Evola. Probably. Okay, sorry, sorry. The rest of the stream, uh, which is that <laughs> it's really funny because it's super obvious when I was reading him that this is a person who is just completely elephant driven by their right wing moral intuitions and is just kind of filling in the pieces afterwards to sort of justify these right wing, uh, very right wing moral intuitions essentially that are guiding them. And then the second thing, uh, is that the only contention I had with Carl bringing up Evola was just that, like, yes, you know, he's grounding his bigotry not in biology but in this weird spiritual racism. But to me, it's really, a, it's like, it's a distinction, not a difference. Because at the end of the day, as you know, you said, it's like, well, yeah, technically anyone could adopt anyone else's spiritual, you know, core, but they don't. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so and when he's talking about the Jews and all his other shit, I mean, he's obviously, in, you know, talking about, you know, keeping the Jews out. I mean, he made a whole pamphlet about why um, it should be OK for Europe essentially to maintain second class citizenship for Jews everywhere. So anyway, he didn't say like, oh, well, you know, if the Jews, you know, adopt the 
Italian spirit, you know, then you can give them citizenship. That wasn't the argument he made at all in that pamphlet or that book. So anyway. Anyway. Uh, Fondue for $20 says, while we are asking people to watch anime, I re- recommend Legend of Gal- Galactic Heroes and Twelve Kingdoms. Uh, Legend of Galactic Heroes is about a war between oligarchs and democracy. Twelve Kingdoms has a detailed fantasy monarchy with immortal rulers. Well, there you go. That sounds interesting. Maybe I'll check it out. Um... Fondue for another $20 says, my aunt has given birth to two children with her lesbian wife, and that wife has had one. Uh, and the, oh, wait, my aunt has given birth to two children and her lesbian wife, comma, and the wife has had one. Oh, you mean your wife? Checkmate, Sargon. Well, there you go. Checkmate. Yeah. Uh, Joe the Mink for $25 says, marriage as a social contract exists that doesn't negate Religion as a con as a covenant before God when performed in a religious context is a pro-social behavior that should be expanded to everyone who wants it. Marriage is a form of enforced monogamy as a social or religious contract. True. I agree completely. I yep. completely. And uh, I believe I said that at many points in the conversation. Yeah, that was I do think marriage has a, a civilizing force on people regardless of children. I mean children yes. help, obviously, but of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. I agree completely. That's a benefit. Yeah. Well, I mean, and again, I was trying to, the argument I was trying to, to levy and get at, which I don't think we ever did, was that if, if marriage has a pro-social utility to it, as you said, which I agree with, it has a civilizing effect on people, regardless of whether they have children, then you'd have to bring forward an argument that then allowing gay people to get married has a greater negative effect than the civilizing effect of marriage for gay individuals right and what is that negative effect and that is yep. the answer that we don't really have an I, answer to so. i recall seeing a modern conservative politician mm-hmm. i forget who it was who basically said that the conservative argument for gay marriage is that conservatives are all about um are all about uh, connections between people you know, like family and friends these are the most important things and therefore it would be better for gay people to be married than it would be for them to be promiscuous and it's like okay that makes sense. Sure. Know? But that was sort of, um, the, yeah, and that's the, the pro-social argument. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the thing is, is like the, the, the whole they can't have kids argument makes a lot of sense if marriage is for children, right? However, we don't know if it's still for children or not. It doesn't well, seem it hasn't, to be anymore. Yeah, it hasn't. In our society, we don't say you can't get married if you're not going to have children. Obviously, right, that's not the right. criteria for marriage. Right. I, I guess, I guess, I guess the argument would be something like one of the reasons that we're seeing so many problems right now with with the social fabric decaying is that we don't see marriage as for children anymore. Yeah, but that, see, to me, that'd be that's not re, that's not the art. Like to me, all these things that people point to are symptoms of other problems, mm-hmm. right? Like so, you know, people. I, I don't think I don't think together, I actually. Heard- you know, having less children. These are all symptoms of other things. They're not the cause of the thing. Right? I would say most right. of those things are economic too. I think that's a huge part of it. But so, what what is the cause? I don't think I heard your opinion on this. What is the cause then? What is the root cause that it's that, that everything else is blooming out of? I think kids it's are just. Expensive. I think it's number one. I think it's kids are expensive. Uh, number two, I think people are becoming more and more atomized in their lives. Uh, <clears throat> I think we're becoming. I think we've become a little bit too, what's the, like, we, we've become a little bit too um, just fuck off and do whatever you want, as opposed to saying, like, here, if you want to succeed in life, here's, like, a track you can go on. Like, mm-hmm. you know, society and culture, like, force people specifically down a track of saying, you know, uh, go to school, get an education, get married, have kids. And obviously, when that goes away, when those guardrails go away, you kind of just open it up, and there you lose that direction. Less people are going to go down that pathway. Obviously. Yeah, authenticity. Yep. Um, now, the, the question is, can we get to that a point where we can sort of still incentivize and sort of promote people doing that and living that lifestyle without it basically being like, if you don't do it, we're going to fucking you know beat you, you know, with sticks, yeah. right? So Spanish Inquisition style stuff where like the religion is enforced because even though it's good for you, they well, not even ju- but just like more like 1950s, like, you know, if you don't do this, you're a fucking outcast. Like, like try to find the happy middle ground where we're still promoting it without like, if you don't do it, you know, you're a fucking deviant. 
right. Which that right. seems to be the difficulty is the finite sweet spot. Yeah. So, so, so that is the religious argument, right? Is that, yeah. well, at least religion did this. And now that religion's gone and we've lost those benefits, what right. do we do? How do we get it back without religion? And a religious right. person would say, you can't, you have to bring religion right. back. Um, which yeah, I don't know the answer, but it, 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 it bodes uh, not well for atheists. That's for sure. If you have to bring if you have to like bring back and enforce religion to do this. Um, mm -hmm. And funny enough, Evola had something to say about this, too. Well, okay. <laughs> here, one Evola. sentence. He, he wrote oh, okay. his final book was called Ride the Tiger. Yeah. And it was basically about how does a right wing person survive living in in modernity? And, and, and the, the decadence and the decay and the materialism of the modern yeah. world, how does a right wing person uh, survive it? And he basically said, uh, everyone's fucked and you have to just learn to ride the tiger, which is you have, you have to like be you have, you have to basically be an atomized right wing individual and wait for society to collapse so that you can come back. Right. Which is <laughs> so that, yeah, he, that's his solution yeah. is that everything's fucked and it's just going to keep getting worse until the right wing reasserts itself. Right. Which is essentially the CRT argument, but it's just kind of funny about all this shit. Um, but it was, and part of the, and I've said this whenever, you know, we've talked to Carl about this exact issue, is I always say it's kind of, in my mind, it's foolish for us to sort of get so worked up about how do we fix this sort of, these sort of problems that we're dealing with right now, because in 20 years, society is going to, society's changing so rapidly that any issue that we're having now is going to look so different in 20 years. You know, when we have, AI everywhere, when we have fucking robots everywhere, I don't know what the fuck anything's going to look like. And obviously, you know, we're going to have problems that we're going to have like massive problems we never had before. And some of the problems, some of the problems we have now are going to not exist. We're going to have to deal with some completely new fucking issue. And we're just going to have to deal with it as it comes. So, and we can't just continually, they don't, we can't take Carl's solution of breaking all the robots <laughs> and breaking all the technology. <laughs> You can't ever go backwards. We can't be Luddites. So <laughs> actually, I, I think I think I've actually seen Shion Head say that too. Like like he smash the robot. If if you see like robot deliveries like going by, you should push them over or something. Yeah, that's yeah. not yeah, that's not the solution. That's not well, it's not I've, a solution because even if we did it in America, the rest of the world isn't gonna do it and then we'll get taken over by them at the end of the yeah. day. So uh, I've been thinking about this too. I have like one kernel of a possible solution that is forming in my head that I don't quite know if it'll actually work or not. So, and I, I haven't fully thought it through, so I have no idea. Maybe if if I think and read for another year or two, I'll be able to give you an answer. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll wait. We'll wait for a year. <laughs> wait, uh, wait for that one to cook. Uh, hit wax, sir, for 20. What? Well, the whole idea of society just being in shambles doesn't isn't that really just based on an aesthetic i mean i, well, I realize mean, crime is bad. up because of the pandemic and stuff like that right. but it's like historically down even though it's yeah, up. yeah that's true now right that's true and if we're, like true. we're arguing over this bite karen story for weeks and weeks and weeks it's not like someone <laughs> got fucking murdered <laughs> like yeah yeah and i think the, this, this is one of those things where it's like the george Floyd solved, thing so seemed like a total manufactured controversy i don't think police is that are out of control you know killing black people in the streets or any of that kind of stuff yeah so, this right. isn't like the, you know, when the we're talking about the 80s or anything look when we're talking about society falling apart i feel like it's people looking at social media and going aesthetically i feel like shit right well the the problem is that um and i think that's a good, good way of phrasing it you know obviously we do have problems there's a lot of homeless problems that are cropping up which didn't exist 10 20 years ago for various reasons there's a lot of crime problems with like you know the sort of you know the mass uh, shoplifting and things of that nature but then there's also the counterpoint which is yeah these are all problems but it's you know, we're still at a better spot than we were, as Dev said, than the crime wave that existed in the late 70s and early 80s, where yeah. everyone seemed yeah. like everything was fucking insane. Uh, you know, it, it sometimes feels like, like, you know, you, you have feminists who have won more rights than ever before, and now they're screaming even louder. They're, they're screaming louder than, than they were when right. they were actually oppressed, right? Same with yes. trans people, right? Same yes. with black people. So it seems to be the case that like we've we've run out of problems to solve almost, and now we're and now we're hyper overreacting to the few tiny problems that still exist. Well, because at yeah. the very least, the problems gave us a path forward that we could actually follow, and so we had something to do, and now we don't have anything to do. I think that happens um, because for a couple of reasons. I think outrage always. Uh, 
gets more engagement. And so outrage over problems is what's going to get engagement. And also humans, we seem to be a lot really wired to point out, to, to fixate on negative problems as opposed to benefits, right? And this is why you'll read the comments, you'll have 100 positive comments, and there'll be one asshole comment, and you'll just fixate on that. It just seems, unfortunate. it's sort of like the way where we're just wired to kind of fixate on like the negative. Um, and obviously that would be because it's, you know, it'd be uh, because it's our, like, if, from an evolutionary perspective, it'd be more beneficial to worry about the threat and the thing that could kill you than it could be all the good things that you don't need to pay attention to and can just kind of ignore in the background. So mm-hmm. yeah, people that, unfortunately that, that, kind of, part of it. yeah, yeah, people can kind of unfortunately fall into that mindset to say like, oh my God, our society's like on the brink of collapse. And it's like, well, you're just fixating on the negative. So yeah. And actually yeah. things things are actually kind of like pretty well put together all things considered you know (laughs) like except things were better if you were a peasant apparently in the (laughs) it's it's something like like uh fuck was it i think it was kierkegaard he said something like at some point human society will get so good that we're just going to break everything just so we can just there's something new will happen something to do yeah yeah that's it's funny because that's literally what star trek is you know you have all those it's like Earth is perfect. You have a bunch of fucking colonists that just fuck off to some like you know uncharted wilderness because that's just what they have nothing else to do. They want to just create a completely new society. And let me, then they let me get dig something up real quick. When, and they get pissy when when they have to move for some reason. Uh, Hitch Waxer for twenty dollars says marriage was built over count- countless generations by religious cultures. The real issue is that the institution is being co opted by other cultures. That don't get it and won't engage with it in a way that will sustain it. I don't agree for reasons that we talked about. I think the breakdown of marriage has to do with something completely different than that, than whatever this other culture is that's kind of uh, taking it and not sustaining it. Uh, William Stanley for $20 says marriage used to be a crucible. Now it's just a temporary tattoo. Well, that is true to some extent. I don't disagree with that. Um, wait, shit. I scrolled up. A filthy casual for $20 says Carl has lost me. Gays getting hitched has no effect on what I get out of my marriage. Also, I'm officially coming out of something I've just divided on for, for the years. I'm officially coming out of something I've been divided on for years. S class is the best class. Wow. Well, thank you, Filthy Casual. You won over fifth, Filthy Casual finally. There you go. Nice. Nice win. You, you were doing great. I mean, thank you. The debate was uh, very, very spirited and interesting. It was. Uh, Doomer Media for two dollars says, "Don't have Dev on until he stops TikTok videos." Are you doing you TikTok go. videos, Dev? Please tell me you're not. Nice call. Val Van Gogh for twenty dollars says, "Adam, past societies were smaller, more isolated, and contained less variables to account for. This might make it easier to discern political truths compared to today. To today, history contain history contains our only real political science experiments." I totally agree with that. Yeah, That's there's uh, so many more variables at play now. Right. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to say. I just I kept I kept thinking what when you say you know marriage is rotten. What are you saying? Right. Are you saying not enough people are getting married? Are you saying not enough kids are being produced by marriage? Are you saying? I mean, what are you saying? Yeah. I don't know. I, well, they're usually saying um, not enough kids are, are being produced. The divorce rate is very high, generally, is kind of like what people right. point to. So they don't last. Um, right. But the problem is, again, it's just, there's so many causation correlation things. Because it's like, well, you know, or people's loss of meaning in life because they're getting divorced or they have a loss of meaning that's leading them to get divorced or, you know, it's like a million of these things. And I, this is, I was also thinking about this when I was thinking about the there's no new issues. It kind of annoys me because there is a general sense that I think is wrong. There's a general sense that like, oh, people today have, you know, they don't have meaning in their life. They're all lost. You know, my, the my grandparents, crisis. yeah, you know, that my grandparents didn't have a meaning crisis. You know, they all, you know, firmly understood their place in the universe and blah, 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 blah. The thing is, that's not really true at all. You know, if you yeah. look back in those days, there was massive psychological problems in the the in our grandparents and great grandparents generation like the entire reason that the field of psychology even took off in america was a reaction to everyone coming back from world war one with ptsd right <laughs> first yeah. they called it shell shock back in those days um and there was massive crises meaning crises in in and especially in men and back in those days 
the entire genre of film noir was a is a was a meaning crisis for men especially for men coming back from war and not not knowing where their place was in society and how to kind of get back into society uh going from you know military service to you know not military service that was right. a huge part of of the themes of being film a noir. Paid killer to being a dad yeah exactly exactly and trying to figure out your place there. That's often why women were the villains in a lot of film noir, because it was like, you're going from being in this brotherhood with only guys to suddenly you have to interact with women again. You're like, oh my God, like it's completely different. And then obviously we have all the, and we talked about this in the, the Illuminati video with how another main theme of noir was this just rampant corruption that had gone through all of our institutions. And this is in like the 1920s or the 1940s. So the idea that there was this kind of grass or greener period where everyone was like psychologically healthy and had meaning in their lives. I don't think that has ever existed. And it's just easier for us to point to some experience that you never experienced and think things used to be better, you know, in that respect. Um, yeah. Couldn't agree more. I don't, uh, I'm, I hear people talk about the meaning crisis. <laughs> and I just. Says, my, my grandfather solved that problem by drinking and smoking a lot. Yeah, that is, and that's the thing. That's the way a lot of people solve those problems back in those days. They just drank and smoked a lot. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, is that, like, and I think this is, you know, I think it's another issue. Like, nowadays, there is, everyone talks about their problems because we've been told that we should talk about our problems. Where back in those days, people were told that you should never talk about your problems, you should bottle them up and keep them inside. Right. Right. And so there, there is something to that, though. There is no, there, there, because... right, there's an element to that, like the more and I think this is true to some extent where like the more you talk about something, the more it will manifest to an extent. So so I think that that's not exactly the healthiest thing to do. But the other hand, just bottling up all your problems and not talking about that is also unhealthy. The other unhealthy extreme. But it does create the illusion in people that, well, back then people must not have had problems. They didn't talk about it. It's like, well, no, they just didn't talk about it because you weren't supposed to talk about it. Well, there's also there's also the fact that if you can do something about a problem but instead of doing that you talk about it you still get the same like emotional release if you talk about it but the problem hasn't been solved mm -hmm. so it's better to devote energy to fixing things than it is to talking about it said no woman ever <laughs> it's correct though <laughs> okay um regarding what you were just saying though sitch yeah so because uh this might come as a surprise to you and to anyone listening but i've I've researched fascism before. You're coming out as gay. Oh. Okay, yeah. I grabbed this gay fascist from <laughs> from like a fascist political page. And when you look at this, it's like I'll just post it in the in the Zoom chat if you want to pull it up. When you look at this, it's like well, first off, you see mucho texto, so very clearly fascists are actually oh my leftists, God. right? But 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 secondly, you realize that one, they have a very good point here. You can't just like say, oh, this comes from a fascist page, so therefore you're a Nazi if you, if you actually buy into this. There's, there's, a, there's a point here. It's a good point. But like fascists today, they are overwhelmingly preoccupied with the meaning question. They think, it's, right, they my, think right. it, it is the source of every single problem that we, that we face. Right. It's, probably, it's probably an important problem. But, but that, was the, that was the fucking in 19 this is the problem because this meme that you basically, for, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but basically it's a meme. It's the are you winning son as a kid. And he's in his room on the internet. And he's got Amazon boxes and garbage everywhere. And it's basically like, I have all science and technology at my fingertips. And I still feel like my life has no meaning. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay, yeah, all, we all know the at, at the end, he says, he, at the end he says, we have won. And that's why we've lost so much at the end. Right. So right. This, this like yeah. feeds into like the whole idea of like a fallen society. It's right. We've all, and like, we've all yeah. heard these arguments, right? The problem yeah. with this argument is that this was the argument the fascists were making in 1940 and then 1920. Mm -hmm. It was the same argument. Yeah. And so that's the issue is like, well, that they can't just be like, oh, all of our modern technology is making us feel that way. They felt that way 80 years ago. And that was my point. People have always felt this way since the dawn of time. It's always been this fucking meaning crisis in our and people have had in their lives. And so that's kind of the issue is I think it is a fallacy to think that this is some sort of new problem that is the you know fault of our technology or something. I don't think it's is just he, the dawn is this time. kid from a father was home. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I think this isn't from the dawn of time. It's from like the dawn of, let's say, like the industrial revolution, right? I, because well, that's not true. What do you mean? We, we're, no, I was just talking about how I think it's know, true. you look back at the ancient Greeks and they had the same fucking issues that we're talking about right now. 
all these, you know, we had this mean, all the kids have these meaning crisis. You know, what's the point of all this? Why are we doing this shit? It all seems futile and pointless. We're all going to die. You know, what, what is the meaning in my life? This has been something that humans have grappled with since the beginning. How well, is this seems not like, just another like side of people. victimhood culture too? Like this is like, I'm well, such a is. victim. It is. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. Well, there's, when I was looking into it, there was a shift in the language mm -hmm. and it happened around the industrial revolution. And when we say revolution, you know, what, what do we usually mean? From the industrial revolution? You just mean like, no, 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 just in general, like a political revolution. Oh, it's like that when been a widespread, overthrow you know, of the tr a traditions change of social yep. norms yeah. and right. all kinds yeah, it's of like, things. So, so like a government was overthrown, a new government's been instituted, we're now in a new era, right? right. Revolution right. means new era. Right. But, you know, if you look at like, like what, what is, what is a, you know, a revolution of a sphere? It's when it turns around once, right? So okay. it moves and then comes back into the same position. All right. So there was a change somewhere. And I think it was around the, basically around the time of Marx, mm -hmm. that revolution, the word revolution switched from meaning uh, a movement that rotates and then returns to the same position through a cycle. And then it changed to uh, a continuous march of progress. Mm -hmm. So that's so you have a revolution to overthrow an old regime, right? So there was actually a change in language. And this change in language actually coincided with a change of how the average person views time. So for example, like medieval peasants, they viewed uh, time as a, as a cyclical thing. And it, it was it was largely a product of their ignorance, right? Because I mean, right. they, they didn't know that much. They saw uh, well, seasons, changes. In, you know. Yeah, they saw, they saw seasons, they saw days. You know, they saw that time was cyclical, you know, so and like, you know, birth and death, it was it was all and basically your life was a revolution because you would return to the beginning. And so when things are moving cyclically, there's probably and, and that's your conception of what of how the universe is ordered. That probably acts as a bulwark against a loss of meaning because you know that like things kind of tend to repeat and you're always kind of go, you're going back to where you were before. So there's, there's no real instance of what should I do now because it's all, all kind of laid out right but if you have a conception of time as being a march of progress and not a revolution of of continuously moving forward into a new era if you don't know what that new era is it probably leads to a lot of distress and I think this 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 change in how we viewed the world probably contributes to this problem I don't think it's that I think it's more the okay. lack I think it's the loss of religion Oh, okay, sure. Because I think I think religion essentially gives pe a lot of people, and, and and Carl was right when he said that you know in a lot of older societies religion was imbued into every aspect of life, and religion solves a lot of the the terrifying uh, existential questions of human existence. And when you solve the question, you don't have to think about it, right? Well, and that's so what's interesting kind of, is that. The, the grand the, the grand question of life but there right. were still people that that and this is always and you can see this you know essentially in any sort of society that had you know thinkers and philosophizers and all that garbage writing questions there was always this the youth the older generation looks at the younger generation as degenerating away from what is true and good and the youthful generation is always questioning what is the meaning and purpose of their life? Should they just be following the older uh, thing or should they be fought, like finding something new? That that seems to be the cycle that kind of just humans just keep going through again and again and again. Well, I, I think there's some connection here. I actually think there's some connection here because if you look at a lot of the, the rituals and practices and language of Catholicism, mm -hmm. it's actually more, more centered in, in a cyclical idea of time. But if you look at the rituals and practices of Protestantism, it's much more linear in terms of how they treat time. Right. So I think there's something more. I just, I just don't know what it is yet. I got to think about it some more. Right. I got to read do more. I got to read more terrible, boring books. Right. Have you no, heard? I mean, you... Have you heard about the difference between external locus of control and internal locus of control? Do you um, think that's I'm, part I... of the equation? And 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 these people like from the meme, the people who are like, oh my god, I have all all these things at my fingertips, but I'm still just depressed and I hate my life. Do you think those people are an internal locus of control or an external locus of control? Internal, I think. Not that external. Hold on, external. Wait. Hold on. Do, do I have the concepts incorrectly here? Tell me what you're talking about here. 
So an internal locus of control is someone who believes they are in control of their lives and take responsibility for their own actions. An exter mm -hmm. Someone who has an exter external locus of control blames exterior forces for their own circumstances. So they are, okay, they are okay. a product of their environment. They, they see themselves as. Right. They generally don't so, take responsibility for themselves. So the, the issue is... The guy in the meme, is he internal or external? I think he's internal, but in a different way than you think. So for internal? example, yes, yes, I can explain it too. So you have, um, you have like people who are, who people who are external, you know, maybe, maybe they're oppressed by the state. Maybe they're oppressed by, by, uh, some institution. Maybe they're just oppressed by their biology or by nature, something outside of their control. Right. And they're just like, well, this sucks, but you know, say la vie, my life, this is just how it is. And they kind of just cope. Right. And then you have people who have an internal locus of control and they, they know that it's them. And then they can like take power and they can change their life, right? But there's a new class of people. I don't know how new they are. They seem relatively new, but they're probably not. Of people who know that they are in control of their life, and yet they self-destruct anyway. And and they know that it's, it's not somebody who's oppressing them. It's not the outside world. It's not an institution. It's not God. It's not it's not the government. But that they're doing this to themselves, and they know that they're doing this to themselves. Right. Right. And, and that seems to be the problem of modernity is that they have all of the control. And yet, for some reason, they're choosing to self-destruct. Well, no. So, right. So, 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 do you think the person in the meme is external or internal? External. But I understand what Deb's okay. talking about. Um, I understand exactly what he's talking about because I felt that way at points in my life, uh, especially. Which is that, yeah, so essentially, because we live now in this, in this world where we have a concept like internal and external locus of control. So, we now, like once you name the concept, it's easier for people to kind of wrap their brain around and so enough of us understand that enough of us, not enough of us understand that like we're getting in the way of our own lives. So we understand that concept, but that doesn't necessarily just understanding it doesn't mean that's going to give you the magic strength to do it. Right. Just because you understand that it is more beneficial for you to have a bootstrap mentality. Does not mean that you will have a bootstrap mentality or you will Great feel point. a bootstrap mentality in your daily life? So you're still, so that person, and including myself at that time period of my life, you're still at the focus of external control. You're just not, you just don't have the animating energy to sort of motivate yourself to do that. Now, well, well, what, what external force has the control over you though? Well, I was about to say, the thing is oh. the, the, the external force has a control over you is that unfortunately, because a lot of the way of our society has, you know, basically been set up, you know, video games and pornography and a lot of other things act as biological hacking tools that essentially sap human motivation uh, to be productive and pro-social. And so I think that's why a lot of people fall into these sort of rut runts and ruts, I should say, uh, like in the picture and things of that nature, is because it's just it's very easy nowadays for people to kind of fall down that pathway, where before it was kind of like you didn't work, you didn't eat, you kind of had to force yourself to, to work, and also you didn't have the million distractions that were going on everywhere. So I think the one, the one valid criticism that people have, even people in the far right, is just that I do think that the modern era has produced a wealth of distractions that just cause, make it just a lot more difficult for people to be productive in society and to be uh, sociable in society. So mm -hmm. I mean, you think about like, you know, in the 1950s, right? I mean, you know, the, the big distraction was, you know, you go get drunk at the bar <laughs> with your friends, right? That was that was the big anti-social distraction. You know, if you want to have a pro-social distraction, it was like you go work, you know, the, the white, like, like, this is a big problem for women, too. So, like, you'd have, you know, uh, Carl was talking about, like, the women that would clean the steps, right? You have the picture of all the women cleaning the steps. If it was, like, 1940, 1950, and the woman, you know, didn't have ch kids, right, and the husband was out to work, the woman's at home. And what was her big distraction that was preventing her from housework? Well, it was a, a TV that played garbage because it had two channels and it was shit. And it was books. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. Or it was talking, or it was talking to your neighbors. But if your neighbors were doing, you know, cleaning and doing the things they were supposed to be doing, you wouldn't be talking to them, right? Or playing games with them or whatever. So it's just you had so much because there was so many less like things to distract you, you was so much easier for you to work. Where nowadays, if you're, you know, your significant other is working, right? You can just fucking play video games all day. You can be on your phone all there's like an just, you can just there's an option for you to just not work. And you and still be uh, not bored essentially. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you another meme. You can you can pull this one up. 
It's 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 easier to read. I'm sure you've seen it. It's the it's the coom machine. Right. Look, right. We only like educational memes on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pull it up. <laughs> well, yeah, with with the guy who just he, he's strapped to the auto masturbator and the heroin. Right, and that's and, that's the world that that Carl is afraid we're heading towards. Um, and we I'm probably not, are, to be honest. We probably. I'm are. sure. I'm not sure that we're not heading towards him. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll see. We'll find. Well, the thing is, and I say this, I think the technology that that we're also afraid of will also save us. Because, again, the problem, the thing that, that makes us feel this way is because all of these games, all the social media, all of this you know, stuff that distracts us. The reason it distracts us is because essentially it's hacking our, our brain. It's making us, you know, it's giving us rewards. Feel like we're doing accomplishing things. things. Yeah. Right. It's tricking us mm-hmm. into thinking we're accomplishing things. And when I said that, people got very upset when I categorized video games as something that tricks us into thinking we're accomplishing something. Um, but the, what I mean is the technology will save us is because when the technology gets to the point of the Harry Potter jack-off machine that you have in the, mach- that you have in the meme. <laughs> you you got to um, show it, Adam. You got to show you know, it. <laughs> when, when, we, you know, when we all have like the virtual reality goggles on our eyes and the jack-off machine on our dick, right? We just kind of stuck to the chair and putting heroin directly in our veins. We're also going to have the technology that allows us to basically control our brain states. Completely. Maybe. Maybe. And when you're, oh, definitely. That level of technology, it's not going to be that difficult. And when we're at that level of technology, people are going to want to not just fucking sit around, you know, masturbate all day. They're going to be like, I feel like, you know, they're going to look at all like the track. Like, here's the difference. People, if they're living in their shit, like in, in like a, like their shitty apartment or whatever, and they look around and it's like a mess and there's trash everywhere. They look at it and they go, oh, this is gross. I don't want to live like this. But it's too much work to feel like they want to fix it, right? Or it's easier to just kind of sit at the, the video game machine and zone out. But if you could pull yeah. out your phone and you press that button, and you know that feeling that you feel when you're like hyper motivated? Yeah. You're like, oh shit, Flow. I'm gonna get shit done. Everyone mm-hmm. fucking loves that feeling. Even Hell though you're yeah. working, even though you're like cleaning up shit, organizing, you love that sensation. It's amazing. And if you could pull out your phone and press a button and feel that whenever you wanted and be hyper productive, of course people are gonna fucking do that. It's like 10,000 orgasms yeah, all but at you, once. You, you might have a situation where you just sit there and pull out your phone and press the button and feel it and then do nothing and then just press the button over and over. Well, no, because the feeling, <laughs> the feeling motivates the behavior. Like you don't like when you, you feel that way, you don't just feel that way and sit in a chair. You feel that way and it makes you want to do something. Right. Yeah. The guy in the like meeting his... crisis is in a dirty room for a reason. <laughs> right. Cause he can't, that's the problem is that the video games, give they give you the sense of accomplishment without having to actually accomplish something so when you try to do a physical thing in the real world which is always more difficult than doing in a video game it's not hitting that same chemical reaction in your brain the same way yeah mm-hmm. it's not as exciting so, to clean the room right so anyway that's why i'm not super worried about that doom or future because i think we will solve the problem with technology I, I mean i really hope so i'm there's definitely an optimist side of me that thinks that we will but but I mean, the fact that we see so many people falling into this trap now sure. already right. is is definitely a mark against that point of view. That we, I well, think it's more victim of culture than anything. About, I think people gain social status from being victims, and I think this... Well, that's true, too. Like, right. your meme thing is another way that people can go on the internet and say, I'm a victim, oh my God. <laughs> if only <laughs> I had lived too much. Fi- 100 years ago and I had meaning in my life. <laughs> I wouldn't be a victim like I am now. Please, well, yeah, someone dude, like, there, have sympathy on me. I'm a victim. There are so many people who are saying things like, "Like, man, if I could just return to monkey, or like, you know, go back to the Roman age, where I could be like a centurion, or like, I could like go be a pirate, you know." And yeah, it, things were worse materially, but there was like there was meaning in the work, and I, I was like adventuring, and I was doing you know crazy things, and like there's something. Right. There's something noble to that. It probably is something noble to that, to be honest. I, I, not not, I not just to be a, just to be a, a you know right. living in the pod and eating the bugs, right? I understand people having that feeling. I've had that feeling in my life, at certain mm-hmm. points in my life. Um, but they can do that. It's very simple. It's called joining the military. Okay. <laughs> you you want to have some external force direct meaning onto your life. And put you in some sort of highly organized. Well, no, place it's not about external force. It's, it's about like going on an adventure, right? 
It's about like, the like military. Con- like a like conquering, a- conquering some enemies and like destroying them. This is some you Jordan know? Peterson Join the shit military. right here. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're Canadian military. I don't know how much you blow shit up. Then maybe you don't do it enough. But in America, join the military. We start wars all over the place. It's okay. <laughs> you do. You, everyone sure. does need an adventure, and I do think sure. a lot of the meaning crisis comes from people not, you know, choosing an adventure for their lives. Right. And I do. But think I, before I, we, well, well, I agree with Sitch. The reason why they don't do that is because they've got enough meaning from video games and porn, which is part of the yeah. problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I do think before we get to the pull out your your phone and push a button that controls your brain state, um, I think before we do get to that, because obviously that's somewhat far up, um, we I do think there's going to be a massive cultural push to sort of an, an anti-victimhood cultural push that is brewing and has been brewing because it will just become so psychologically unhealthy that it, that will be the big push in psychology widespread and will be by society to kind of throw victimhood status into the trash can. And I think that'll be part of the anti-woke, you know, pendulum swing back against that. So and I do think that will help. Do you think it's better for people to have an internal locus of control? Of course, or an obviously. External? It's okay. obviously, everyone knows it's better. Everyone so knows it's better. Just a goal of society should be to to kind of push people into having an internal locus of control. Yes. Yeah. Society would be better if everybody had that. I, right. I and this agree is why, wholeheartedly. Of course. And this is when we talk to people about CRT and why we always say CRT is bad because the entire point of CRT and wokeness is to center everything on the external locus of control. It's not your fault. This is, this is kind of the irony. This is how you can kind of figure out if you've been uh, accidentally fallen into the right-wing NPC brain as opposed to the left-wing one. When we talk to left-wingers and we say, hey, you got to be careful about CRT and woke shit because all it does is it makes you the victim. It says every your whole life, it's not your fault. It's all, you know, racism and white people and blah, 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 blah. And all that stuff is, you know, unhealthy. And the way to actually be productive and healthy in life is to center your power, take back your power, center your power on yourself and think that you can succeed in life and have this internal locus of control, right? And yep. then you nod along and say, oh, yeah, that's really correct. But then if you fall into the right-wing version of that, which is the meme that you were talking about, uh, Dev, which is kind of like the far right meme, I should say, not even the right wing meme, but the far right meme of like, oh, it's not my fault. You know, I have all these video games and modernity and liberalism. You know, I need fascism essentially or whatever the fuck, you know, we're advocating for neo reactionaryism to kind of like give meaning in my life. Like that's just, that's just the right wing version of CRT. It's just the right wing version of everything is the external locus control. It's all someone else's fault. So. Let's watch this video. Mm-hmm. Let's get a real victim here. That's what I want. Okay. <laughs> Sisters speak out uh, speak out on transgender student in soror- sorority. Yeah, when I as soon as I saw this, I was like, "Oh my god. Sitch is going to love this." Okay. Okay, let's Look, go. So, but you are you're you're uh, we've argued many times on the show about women only spaces sex segregated spaces and, and i always you, say again it's like i don't really give a shit you don't give a issue. shit i know i know but the i don't whole give a shit purpose, about women i think they the should whole have, purpose I think, of the, I think listen i have a new stance <laughs> i have a new stance on this i think that every time uh-huh. a woman enters a, a, a female bathroom uh-huh. or a locker uh-huh. Uh-huh. Room, there should be a, a giant picture of a penis that right they have there. to look yes. at that's like right in front of the wall and they open the door it's just a big picture of a penis they have to stare at it as they walk in there should be one in every down. stall yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. on the back then, door that they sit exactly. down this eye level right in their face that's a, yes <laughs> yeah, they sit down on the toilet there's just a big picture of a penis right. yes well here's a better idea here's here's what we should do when you get married or have a boyfriend mm-hmm you, your smartphone can project the image of their penis on the wall. So you can see their penis instead of a stranger's penis. This way it will incentivize women to get married. Don't you think a stranger's penis would be more caustic to them, though? That's why I'm saying this will incentivize them to get married. So they look, don't have the to whole, look at a strange penis. They can look at their, their significant other's penis. The whole goal of this video is trying to get Sitch to care. I'm like, I'm <laughs> curious if this is my social experiment here. Okay. Can Sitch watch this video and continue not to care okay that's Let's the open it. question here okay ready Let's do it. when college students join sororities many of them do it for the sisterhood for a place to belong for lifelong friendships 
they don't do it in hopes that a man will invade their personal space, <laughs> staring at them silently, creeping them out. But that's exactly what happened at the Kappa Kappa Gamma House at the University of Wyoming, according to a new lawsuit. But she's already like really poisoned the well here. She's like, she didn't say a trans woman. She said a man, a man has entered their space. Just like some predatory man is just staring at these women like, yeah, fuck you women. Is I it? You. I'm, look, I don't. Look, let this let the women tell their side of the story. Okay? No, I, maybe I'm just saying that Laura Ingram is like really, really like straw manning the situation <laughs> right off the bat. So, I mean, my answer to this is the same one as it was three hours ago, right? Like, yeah. if you pass, you're allowed in. If you don't, you don't. I Simple agree with that. You know? Yeah. Well, the, the, yeah. let's see if they pass. Okay. That's a good. Oh, good question. Good question. <laughs> yeah, no, let's I see agree. if they <laughs> pass. I, I, you know, I forget who was we were watching. Who were we watching that was saying it couldn't be passed? I don't know if it was like a Destiny conversation or a Counterpoints conversation. I don't know. Someone's saying it can't be that. And I'm like, no, that's literally what it is. It's literally whether you pass or not. I think that is the criteria. It's weird because you so. can't talk about it. You got to pretend like, oh, passing. It does, doesn't matter, you know. But yeah, well, okay, I guess if we want to slay. Like, sure. Right. I understand. Like, like a lot of people on the left can't talk about that. But right. that is that is the actual criteria. Yeah. That's the real criteria. Of course. Well, thankfully, we're not on the left, right? So we can talk true. about it. That is true. Six sorority sisters say they were forced by the national chapter to allow a man, Artemis Langford, into oh. their women only. Lady, someone was Oof. talking about passing. Let's go. Uh, what say you? Um, uh, I wonder if they great. lost weight. Would they pass? Yeah, maybe lost weight. I have to see. If Hold on, that's that sounds like a no. <laughs> um, yeah, not, a current not, no. not great. Not great. It's passing. a current no. Yeah organization because Langford says he's transgender. Now, what comes with being inducted into the sorority is unfettered access to the house where about, you know, 40 college girls live. Now, a house where men, even fathers and boyfriends, are banned from being on the second or third floors because that's where... You know, if she did pass, this would be an excellent setup for a porn. I'd like 100% be. You're, ma you're totally making it worse. You're making it 10 <laughs> times worse. De Dev is like, De Dev is like, is a proud chaser. <laughs> Let's go. But the bedrooms and the communal bathrooms are. But Langford had access to all of it. According to the lawsuit, several times Langford had chosen to sit for hours on the couch in the second floor common area. Langford stares at women walking past. One sorority member walked down the hall to take a shower wearing only a towel. She felt an unsettling presence, turned, and saw Langford watching her silently. The suit also alleges that he has watched members enter the house and sometimes had an erection visible through his leggings. Other times he had a pillow in his lap. Joining me now exclusively Hilarious. for an interview. Is that, is that, pa is that passing? No. Right. No. Okay. Well, and, but here, 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 okay. So let's, here's the, the, the thing. And this is what I think I said with the, the whole, um, with the, any of these like bathroom situations. The problem is, I don't know if you can create a universal idea here. I think there is going to be a lot of case by case basis, a lot of the passing stuff. Um, cause obviously this person is fucking being a creeper, right? That, I mean, I at least, guess. If, assuming I mean, all these things are true, right? Obviously, this is a one-sided well, She just wants to hang out with the other ladies, okay? Assuming all these things are true, this person's <laughs> obviously a creeper. Now, you get into the problem where someone might say as a counterpoint, they say, well, wait a minute, Sitch. Um, it doesn't matter if they're a creeper because you're not banning lesbians, right, uh, from joining the sorority. Um, and my response would be, well, that's true, but women generally don't fear a sexual assault from lesbians. Right, they're really, not they're not uncomfortable around lesbians. Right, right, because that's really the, like, the real issue here is, you know, women are af afraid of sexual assault or something like that. Yes. Know? Some sort of sexual... You, you've given me an idea for the second porn now. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Lesbians. <laughs> right. right, so that, I mean, that, I think that's the, the main concern here, and I think, it, I think it can be a valid concern, and I think passing definitely has a big part of that, and also I think behavior is a big part of that, so... So yeah, I mean, if they want to kick this person out, they don't kick them out. That's fine. Well, they can't. It's against the law. Well, I think that's stupid. That's why they're going having a lawsuit here. Well, it's not against the law. It's against the chapter or the the no, national. No, I think it's against the law. I thought they said it was because it's the discrimination. 
They said it was. She said in the beginning it was the national sorority wouldn't let them kick him out or something. Well, let's Not that continue. The law would... I'm sure. You are three of the sorority sisters suing Hannah and Jalen, who are both juniors, and Allie, who just graduated, along with their attorney Cassie Craven from Longhorn Law. Hannah, let's start with. Okay, wait a minute. There's an attorney here. Mm -hmm. Why do yeah. three of the women all look the same? <laughs> Is the attorney the one that doesn't look the same? Yeah, I know which one's the attorney. <laughs> like, she yeah, you, like I'm a... sure. <laughs> anyone who's been to college has, has had this experience where you see like some sorority house, you're like, "Oh, these fucking white bitches look the same." <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god! <laughs> They're all yep. You're so racist. Are. You're so <laughs> racist. Look, this three of these women are like the same fucking person. I know I can't. They're all sisters. I can't tell. <laughs> yes, what the fuck? The woman on the left is like the only one that's even remotely different. They're all. And it's only because her hair is different. Her face looks the same as all the other ones. They're all wearing the, <laughs> the same uh, like business suits. <laughs> <as well. Yes. laughs> they're they're all sisters. That's poor number three. Am oh. I? Yeah, there you go. Am I racist <laughs> against white people? Because I look at all these white people. They all look the same to me. This is horrible. With you, how did? All how did all of this... Laura Ingram doesn't even know. She's like, ah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who had three identical twins in this fucking studio? Initially hit you when you were told that a man was to be a member okay. of your sorority. Yeah, we were all shocked. I can speak for myself saying, never thought this would happen to me. Um, especially in a sorority, in a space for women, we were never told it was a unisex space. We joined under the impression that it was a single sex. What the fuck is going on with her eyes? What is that makeup <laughs> she has? That Look, is that's a, that's a fad now, Sitch. You need to update your operating to put like, system. Put, to put like fucking glow in the dark dots on like the corners of your eyes. That is like the I most think ironically that thing might on the be. Planet. I think ironically that might be like an anime thing. You haven't seen that where they put the light, the lighting outside of the eye. I have seen it. I'm just saying it's a bad choice. I think too, it's like an, gonna be on TV. I think that's so anime terrible. influence. Is it? So, okay. I, I, I guess the question makeup, is, yeah. yeah, women like this. Mm -hmm. If she actually passed, do you think they would have accepted her? Or is this like, a, like, are they? Do these if, do these these women come as like right wing or like ideologues or something? Or do they like? I, what do you think? I think if she passed and was not a creeper. They wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's most situation. people. Yeah. 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 Right. I don't know. Which, who knows? You don't think so? Mm. Well, if if they, it would be more interesting if they passed really well and were yeah. still a creeper. Well, yeah, that'd be interesting. Right? <laughs> I mean, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. Th this is a much more clear cut case, right? Because this person looks like a guy and, you know, is, is waving his dick around. Supposedly, right. Well, right. Yeah. yeah, but so but, yeah. yeah, you're right. What if they look like fucking a woman? So like you would not, yes. you would have never known, except that you see them walk around with a boner. All the time. They're <laughs> right. You're like, what the fuck is that? Why would I, I think they that would probably watch the them out too, because that's not a you know, no one wants to. Girls don't want to see guys walking around boners all the time in their uh, yes, in their sorority, sorority and they're running off yeah. to the shower. Right. <laughs> they're worried is that boner going to come in here and sexually assault me? Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah organization well Jalen I, I read the accounts of what made the sisters uh, of the sorority uncomfortable about Artemis what did he <laughs> say to you or to any of you that you know that made you uncomfortable there were a lot of uncomfortable moments in the sorority house, and it just goes to show the importance of women's spaces, ultimately. And that's why we're here Wait, today, is we're fighting the for the on. importance of women's Wait, spaces. She, she, so the, the interviewer here asked, what did this guy do? And, and then this person is like, oh, he did a lot. And that's why we need to talk about the importance of women's space. It's like, hold on, you didn't even answer the fucking question. Listen, Dev. Yeah. This is an airhead in a sorority. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's they a future a politician. What are you talking about? This is like... That's true. <laughs> they have an official uh, line that they prepared for this interview, and that's what they're going to say. Yeah, okay? of course. You know how No, I get works. it. I get it. Her brain cavity is filled up with semen. I understand. Wow. Let's go. wow. I didn't say that. I was thinking it, but I didn't say that. Wow. 
spaces and what it truly means to be a woman. We were promised from the beginning that we would have a sisterhood, meaning only females, and our national sorority has rehearsed. failed us. They have blatantly ignored us and ignored our values and valued so what, what, what is what, why is laura ingram making a fuck me face what is happening you guys are the worst look at her what is she like... doing adam what is she doing what was this wait go back Just, she's starting at... to get a boner such as yeah going look on. at laura ingram's face she's like i want to fuck this girl look, look at her face. means to be a woman we were promised from the beginning that we would have a sisterhood meaning only females <laughs> and our national sorority has failed us they have blatantly ignored us oh, and yeah. ignored our values and valued someone <laughs> else look at that you can't tell me okay. she don't but that's that's also so wrong, Sid. That's not what's going on here at all. She's, <laughs> She's shaking like, her yeah. head in disgust at this, at but this also, horrifying story. Yeah, sure, sure. This, this, this woman, she's giving a very clearly pre-rehearsed speech. She knew of what course. she was going to say. She memorized and, this line, and she, definitely. And she's like, she, well, I think she's looking at a teleprompter. She's smiling about it. Like, because she knows that this is like a performance. I, I, mean, I felt like, it very upset and violated with my big smile on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Like I'm not. I'm not saying that that this zero this empathy. Individual is this isn't working. <laughs> this Hold isn't on. working, I, guys. I, I, I'm not saying that that, that, that the person they're talking about is innocent of like not you know, of walking around with a boner. Probably is guilty. But like right. these people know that this is like their 15 minutes of fame. They're gonna right. play up a story. They know it's the narrative right now. They're okay. on the news. Sure. You know, okay. Sure. No, but we we don't listen. We've already agreed that we think they should be able to kick Artemis out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. Of course. Yes. So we've already agreed. We just want to make fun of the people anyway. Okay. Yeah. So you do you you think it's bad for this to, stuff to be going on then? Good. Yeah. What did you think I was gonna like say? No, they can't kick them out. No, I thought. Yeah, you don't care. Look, I thought you'd take the trans person side. Uh, well, I said it's depending what? on the, if they pass and if they're a creeper. And this person okay. does not pass, yeah. and they, I mean, assuming the stories are true, <laughs> they're a creeper, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Like, like the the passing part is really. I know. I know. Trans people hate it. It's the entire argument. It's the whole. Think argument. about poor it's Artemis's like, like, feelings, though. It's well, like ninety nine percent of the argument. Here's the here's the thing part. too. It's like um, if there was a woman in there that was lesbian and was like a fucking creeper. They could why they kick her out too. Just get the fuck. We don't want creepers. Just get out. Creeper no. Right. Yeah, creeper no creeping. Right. You could just kick someone out of a story for being a fucking creeper. Or at least let's see if like, let's see if they can't because of the law. Okay. Well, it's over us okay, sure. in these comfort in this uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Well, Cassie, we reached out to the KKG national that smile chapter. That uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, and they told us that while we cannot comment in detail on this pending litigation, it contains numerous false allegations. KKG values diversity and does not discriminate based on classes protected what? by state, local, or federal law. Mm -hmm. Well, Cassie, I, I, guess, See, I guess they're relying a, on, on federal Jesus Christ, sorry, law sorry. here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we got, what what was false about the allegations? Why don't we don't know? We'd have to. Yeah, it sounds it, it can, sounds like they have federal and state laws in place, though. That yeah, but it also sounds like the allegations are true. I mean, well, we'll, we'll, so, so we'll, the allegation is the, the allegation is there's a male in the sorority and he's waving his dick around. Right. All right. And they're like, there's this, this is a false allegation. It's like, what? There wasn't a male in there? Well, well, they, they well we that, don't we don't know that these incidents that, took place. Let me just back yeah. it real quick. So, yeah, they, like, look, look at it. Look at it. It contains false allegations. But then also Kappa Kappa Gamma values diversity and does not discriminate based on class affected by state, local, federal law. So here's the thing in not discriminating on let's say the transgender class that uh -huh. means that at least one of the allegations is true okay when well, yeah but the, okay obviously they're not negating they're not saying that the person is a trans woman or is biologically male that's not one of the false allegations i'm assuming they're referring to the walking around with a boner and shit well There's hold like on the there could be they're trying to talk about there could be tons of allegations in the complaint that they filed that are not mentioned in the news story here. that's true we don't too. necessarily yeah. know we don't know that's we true read yeah. it, yes. and we don't know whether they're true or not either so mm -hmm. i'm just saying assuming yeah. that they are true for the sake of the argument i think they should be able to kick them out that says they do not discriminate based on a class protected by state local federal law i mean there could be there are some states that do have this uh that do protect I think trans people, but I don't think there's a federal law that does that, to my knowledge. Am right. I wrong? I don't know the situation because it's a. Uh, I don't know the laws and bylaws of these sororities and fraternities because you know some of them are state-funded schools and whatnot. What so. state did it say this was? 
I don't remember. I can look it up. KGC sorority trans Kappa gender. Kappa Gamma. <laughs> seven. It's in Wyoming. Seven sorority sisters at the university are because they're they're not suing the state. They're suing they're suing. the sorority. They're sorority, suing the sorority because yeah. the sorority is the one that said they had to to take this member. Right, because but that's what I'm saying to me. I'm Let's just finish the that, story and we can. Well, dig let me into just finish what I was saying. I'm saying to me that would assume that it's not a state law because if it was state law, then they couldn't. The story would just say, "Well, it's not our fault; it's the law." So. Let's get all the information out of the story because I think okay. they bring this up. And does not discriminate based on classes protected by state, local, or federal law. Well, Cassie, I, I guess they're relying on federal law here. I don't think Wyoming. Um, has state protections in this regard, but nevertheless, it looks like they're going to lean on the feds to win this case for them. Laura, I just don't see a way <laughs> out pause. for them. They want everyone to believe that being a woman is nothing. A little disturbing that the attorney, she must, this attorney must have been a, a KKG person. She looks like the other two women. <laughs> like she looks like is this the attorney? person. Is this the attorney finally speaking? Okay, good. Yeah, this is the Cassie, Cassie Craven. Cassie Craven. Mm. That's not a real name. That's like the name of that like a, a comic book character. <laughs> Cassie Craven. Yeah, no. That's it a sounds good like name. a porn name, to be honest. Nothing more yeah. than wearing. <laughs> you are the guy in the meme, aren't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> what, the <Dev>. boomer? <laughs> it goes back to porn. <laughs> Dev. Dev, you need a ex you need to adopt an internal locus of control, okay? Yes. We need to save you from yourself. Listen, it's Lipstick. not my fault. It's the blonde bitches, okay? <laughs> all right. And the pronouns that you use. And we all know that it amounts to womanhood. It amounts to a lifetime of experiences, and that's what they seek to deprive these young women of, and that's what we intend to fight for. Now, Cassie, I guess Artemis doesn't live in the house, uh, and according to the lawsuit was given a waiver. Oh, sorry, I had to stop this for a second. I looked up the lady's website. Mm -hmm. uh, Cassie Craven. Did Cassie you Craven. did you subscribe to her OnlyFans now? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I mean, she's she's pretty hot. But um, so her I don't. I'm assuming it's not just her. So she's part of a law firm called Longhorn Law. And when oh. you click on it, there's a big picture of like a steer on an open prairie, and it says, okay. "Facing a legal situation." We serve clients all across Wyoming. And then underneath it, there's a quote. It's the first thing you see me click on the website. It says, don't pick a fight. But if you find yourself in one, I suggest you make damn sure you win. John Wayne, True Grit. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. And then, you, and then you scroll down and she's like wearing a cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, quoting Johnny Cash. Look, I, 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 think... don't know, I just think it's so funny how like <laughs> like like the performance on this website of just like I'm just good old Wyoming individual. Look, we so. might be able to get Cassie Craven on the show. Okay, so don't, okay. <laughs> don't beat up on her too hard. Are you yeah. gonna try? Are you gonna try Cassie to do Craven? It? Why not? Trying to help people. She grew up in rural Nebraska. There's a picture of her. This is there's a picture of her in a field that's literally got like an old fashioned like wagon from the Oregon Trail. And like a like a steer <laughs> like like I don't like you just have, I'll show it to you. This is so I think I'm looking at the same pictures that you are. Yeah, like I found them. All right, let's continue so with the good. story here. So he didn't have to live there. Now why why is this? Laura, we've seen extreme preferential treatment given to the individual involved, and it's it's very disheartening that oh when you're God, that six foot. Photo. Do, do you see the picture? <laughs> That's find why I was that, gonna pause it. Yeah. Find uh -huh. that picture. Bring that picture up. See, well, see, but what the fuck? But see that picture on screen here. <laughs> Does he have the boner what? now? I'm just like, curious. The, oh, okay. well, it's weird because it's cut off. Because it's. I was gonna say, why are they all wearing the same outfit except for Artemis here? Um, yeah, some people you, wanted to be cut out of this picture here. You can see there's a there's a mm -hmm. person on the far right that looks like they're wearing the orange shirt too. Right. So I don't know yeah. what's going on there. Because that, but yeah, I mean that, especially in that picture, that literally just looks like a guy. Like they they're not even trying. <laughs> you know? yeah. like, so, oh my god. Yeah, take him out. It's fine. <laughs> Talk Two, about two hundred. Look, they, <laughs> they in case you couldn't figure it out, right? In case you couldn't figure it out. Yeah, they yes. had to do the red circle. <laughs> I think we got it, okay? This one. 
Yeah. 60 pound man, you're treated as the victim in today's society. But the bylaws are very clear. This is an all woman's organization. Kappa was formed under over 100 years ago to be that support system for women so that they could compete in the classroom against men. And now we just cease to exist. We're nothing more than an idea of self identification. Well, Allie, here's Artemis being interviewed by the school newspaper back in October. Uh -huh. This was last year talking about being admitted to your sorority, saying, I feel so glad to be in a place that I think not only shares my values, but to be in a sisterhood of awesome women that want to make history. Uh, they want to break the glass ceiling, trailblazing, you know, and I certainly feel that that as their first trans member. Allie, did you all sign up for trailblazing to have a man live in your sorority? No, we certainly did not. When I joined back in the fall of 2019, um, I was promised a sisterhood, which obviously would, you would assume would be women. And so for that to automatically change my senior year, it, it caught us all off guard for sure. Hey, Sean Hannity here. She had the same white eye makeup. You don't, I can't <laughs> believe such. They are not doing that in thing. Florida. They're doing that thing. all over Los Angeles. She has That's it, like, but not anywhere near as bad as the first girl. Uh, I think it's a lighting thing with the stage lights. It's not. The lighting, no. Ex, no, the lighting will accentuate it, but but there is something there to catch the light in the first yeah. place. They have like no. some light iridescent makeup that they do on the between the eye and the bridge of the nose. I've seen I see I've, so many girls okay. with that makeup. I've seen so. people like that here, but not like not everywhere so, like you're saying out in LA. So oh, okay. So so here's the thing. Here's here's the why it has to be passing, and that can be the only standard, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's a, because so if you who's going to go judge bit, that? How can that be a legal the standard? People that are in the in the the sorority. That I can't guess, be yeah. like the reasonable so, person standard for passing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like if you if you just take pure self ID, you get situations like this where it's obviously right. ridiculous, right? But if you go based purely on biological sex, you're going to have an instance where someone who passes very well and is very attractive, like a Blair White, for example, is put into the um, Men's is room. put into in, into the male dorm instead of the female dorm. Right. And like yes. the and, and the first time there's a drunken rager in that fucking dorm, she's she's done. All right. So you you have to base it on what you actually fit in as per the judgment of people around you. It cannot just be one or the other. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. All right. Any final thoughts, Sitch? Does this, does this change your outlook? No, do you care not, more now about women in really. these spaces? <laughs> I don't care more now. I don't care more. Wait, um, do you care less? Why was, same position, wait, but... why was this supposed to be a three on one versus Stitch? Like, what, what, were your, what was your intention here? <laughs> First of all, thank you, Stitch. Second, second. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, no, because I, I, I don't thought Listen, I was. Listen, Taco. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's true. Adam thought I was going to defend Artemis here, I think. I don't know why, but... I did. I actually thought Sitch, I actually <laughs> thought Sitch was going to defend Artemis. Look, Sitch has uh, been, you know, kind of screw women's spaces, women-only spaces for a while now. So my, my my position has been the same as Dad's position. I think, it, I think it, and I've said this in streams, I said I think it is related to passing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've also said, I don't give a shit about women complaining about feeling uncomfortable. So I think that's why I had. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, look, at, look at the way around. Yeah. Like, would you put Buck Angel in this sorority? No, that would make them feel more uncomfortable, right? Yeah. All of this has to do with women feeling uncomfortable, though. I think that's, you, you've hit on it, Sitch, because before right. you were saying, I don't care about their comfort, that's not a standard. But now you seem to be more empathetic towards that. No, you're well. I'm trying to find a solution here, right? Because I, I'm when yeah. I say I don't give a shit about women's comfort, I'm being, you know, obviously I'm being hyperbolically, uh, right? Facetious. Well, so it's to, like to it's extent. like it's like solving a policy problem versus what do you actually care about personally, right? Like I don't give a shit right. personally, right? But I understand that the policy is literally based around the people involved's comfort level. That mm -hmm. is the policy. So I, of course. I understand mm -hmm. that that's what's dictating the thing here. Um, yeah. But I do think it has to be based on passing as opposed to just anything else so listen, listen right. guys the reason is because Sitch just genuinely doesn't care about women all right he i mean that he, is the reason he, you know? he beats them he abuses them he pimps them out what i mean listen this is why that i know this is why i know sargon's, this is why i know sargon's <laughs> wrong okay about the whole gay situation 
I care yeah. so little about women that if I could make myself gay to care about them less, I would, but I can't. <laughs> In fact, okay, Sitch runs a brothel literally called Sitch's Bitches. Okay. So <laughs> this is. Ooh, that was is... good. There you go. Sitch's Bitches. I like that. Sitch's, that's got to be the new lore. All right. Forget about the dollar meat store. It's Sitch's Bitches. All right. We the should, get, we should do t-shirts that say Sitch's Bitches for our female fans. I don't fans. think that anyone will want that. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're, we're, we're going to close down the dollar meat store, and then we're going to give the property to Sitch for his brothel. Right. Right. Ladies, would you wear a Sitch's Bitches t-shirt? <laughs> Sitch's Bitches. Wait, don't I answer see, that. Don't, I see Sammy in the chat. Would Sammy wear it? I hope not. <laughs> Sammy has a lot of self-respect. Okay. Hey, Rags, oh, look at Rags. Hey, what's hey, up, Rags. man? What's up? Uh, you missed uh, some interesting debate. Hold on. Hold on. The first <laughs> you missed some great said, content. The, the first person who said yes to that was Tidge, and Tidge is a male. There you go. <laughs> Sammy's taking notes. Watch out. I knew when I said the thing about I would be gay to stop caring about women less if I could. I knew Sammy was going to write something oh, yeah. about that. That's probably what the note is for. Yes. I was hoping it was going to be like a Sitch's Bitches shirt. Oh, it could be Sitch's <laughs> Bitches. True. Okay. Anyway, well, enough of this. Go. I guess we're moving on to Super Chats. I guess we're done. We're moving on to Super Chats. Yes. Are we? And it, Dev, it, you are, on, you're you like free you want, yeah. to escape if you need to right. go to bed Rags or is... soy out or whatever you do there right. in Canada. Rags is, uh, is in the chat. Mm -hmm. Rags, have you played, have you played Gollum? The Gollum game, because it's fucking terrible. Gollum? Yeah. A, a, a new game came out. Uh, yeah, a new, a new game came out, and it, it's, it's just Lord of the Rings, Gollum, and it's fucking awful. It's fucking awful. It looks real weird. I, I, I was I talking know. with Mahler about it in private um, mm -hmm. yesterday, and it's just like a... It's a fucking... You know what it looks like? It looks like they didn't finish it. It looks like they need like another year's development time to finish yeah, it up. Yeah, that's what people are saying. Yeah. Um, these are drawings I mean, yeah, it's, of uh, clocks that Sitch has done. <laughs> Sitch is these up as an That's how bad my artistic ability is. I thought the first one was the best one, and then I looked at it. And I'm like, wait, you, twelve was yeah. on there twice. <laughs> you noticed the numbers kept going. <laughs> it goes up to fifteen. <laughs> they're like, oh, at least they're in the right spot. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I was like, nine o'clock at the bottom. Yeah, you're like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. They 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 called the game the Lord of Ring Gollum. Even the, oh. like, it's officially licensed, and they call it the Lord of Ring. It was in a press statement. It didn't doesn't it doesn't say Lord of Ring on the box. It's though, it? it's still a giant fuck up. <laughs> right, right. But I'm saying the box is Lord of the Rings, right? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah, it is time for me to skedaddle. Though I'll see you guys okay. next time. You know what? I saw the poll. It came out two thirds in my favor. It, it did. did. I tried. I didn't. I wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> I think we actually yeah. got up to like 70 percent, but yeah. I didn't stop the yes. poll in time. Over 2000 votes, I think. So uh, yeah. the crowd so, has yeah. spoken. We will do yeah. another. Uh, oh, God. Marvin Yarvin. Oh, Marvin Yarvin. oh, my another God. <laughs> you guys have any free time coming up or Marvin Yarvin? I don't know. Oh. Adam is a scheduler. He doesn't want to do it. So you'll have to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to. Can you send it you know to my Hotmail email account? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The next, the next free day you guys have, I will make the time, okay? Okay. Because I really want to do it. You never got to talk about I, black listen, listen, hair anymore, I, I just, I just, I just like how ridiculous the arguments are. I, I, I like, I like that there's like there's some actual decent stuff in there to consider, but also there's just so much nonsense. Okay. It's, it's really fun. Okay. Fun. That's what they call it. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because like the people that don't want it like fucking hate it yeah. but the majority has spoken and we believe yeah. in democracy and adam since you're voting take you also have to believe in democracy so i yep. know i, do. I actually I, I recall unfortunately um, yes. whenever i would stream and i would see people in my chat that also are in your chat so the crossover they would yeah. all say yes they would all say yes more curtis yarvin more of it right right because they just like, like a signal boosting scream. the monarch perspective. No. Look, <laughs> nobody so. talks about this shit. Oh, so there was something, and I, I left a note on our last stream. Oh, you can go, by the way, Dev, if you want. I don't. Oh, I don't Jesus. Know, like, okay, Joel. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the city bike situation. But thanks for coming, uh, uh, okay. Dev. We always yes. talking. Yes. 
Very appreciated. Yeah, I'll see you guys you next time. You know, we'll, we'll just do it tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? okay. <laughs> see you there, history. wink, wink. Just wait for us at 4 hey. o'clock Eastern time, yeah. Hey, hey, you know, oh God, that's actually a good name. Okay, so you know how uh, you guys turned the Tuesday show from like a, a super chat catch up into like an actual show? Yes. You know what we'll kind do? of. We will, just, we will just have a weekly show called Starvin' for the Yarvin. <laughs> and we'll just oh do another God. another piece of Mencius Moldbug's ideas Starvin every week. For the yard. <laughs> how does how does Adam Minecraft himself? Well, yeah. here's how. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my. Okay. Well, I'm tempted right, to do it just to annoy Adam, but take care. <laughs> right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Later. Thanks for having me on. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um. Bye bye. Oh, regarding the city bike situation, so someone said I on know. stream on Sunday <laughs> they they had suggested that there was a scam yes. where um in order to avoid uh the charge essentially somebody super chatted us this because I saw it in the our comments and th for that was the first time it really sunk into me and I started yes. do doing some digging. I was like holy shit <laughs> is this someone had yeah someone had super chatted us essentially that said mm -hmm. um it said, there's a scam where essentially in order for people to avoid getting upcharged for a e-bike, uh, they, they basically sit on an e-bike. So when people come, they see that the e-bike is taken and they'll take the normal bike. And the way to avoid the upcharge for the e-bike is that if, okay, I'm telling the story horribly. Let me start over again. You want me to, I mean, I, no, let me, okay, you're let me almost start there. Again. Let me, let me start over. There was an element of the story that I was unaware of, that most people were unaware of, which is that even if you have an annual membership, like, quote, Michael, I think was the name they gave him. Hassan. Let's just or call Hassan. him by his real name. <laughs> was, that, was that him? I didn't know who they were talking about. when they were Hassan, 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 Hassan. Okay. Michael or Hassan, whatever the fuck the kid's name is um, in the video. Um, even if you have an annual membership, it still is supposed to cost you like to five or six e cents a minute to use an e-bike. Correct. And, yes. And people pointed out, as this as this one guy on Twitter pointed out, who has an e bike member has a city bike membership and done all this stuff, he on his receipts was charged zero for everything. Right. And never Which had means... that never had that cost. And the question is, well, how does that how does that occur? Well, supposedly, in the way this works, is that if you go to a city bike bike rack and there is only e bikes available, there are no normal pedal bikes, they will not charge you this extra fee for using the e-bike. You get the e-bike for the cost of the pedal bike, which is free for the first 45 minutes. Right, if you have a membership. Right. And so, right. And so I didn't know that this existed, and a lot of other people didn't know it existed, because the reason that we don't know about this is if you go on their website, it doesn't say this. This is kind right. of like a, like a secret thing. It's the um, hidden hack. It's like a hidden hack, right. They don't advertise this. Though I did, was able to find confirmation because there was a tweet of someone specifically asking um, the official City Bike uh, Twitter account if this is true, and they said yes. And also, uh, one of our based fans, who I don't have at the moment, so I can't give them credit, actually called the, their, their phone number and asked them this. And it's funny, because I was literally about to do that thing, and I saw this person tweet, and they did it. And they said, I called them and asked them, and they said that that is real. This is a real thing. So in order to avoid an upcharge for the e-bike, if it's the only bike available, they waive the charge. Right. So what that means is that Michael slash Hassan slash whatever his name was, was doing a thing where they would intentionally sit around on the e-bike or, or try to hold the e-bike in order to force other people to come and take the normal bikes so that then he could then ride the e-bike without getting charged the additional charge. Right. Yes. And that, and that would be an explanation, another explanation of why he sat around for the 40 minutes. Because there um, was one pedal bike yes. supposedly in the video. So there's a pedal bike in the video and two e-bikes. Yeah. And Michael's not giving up his e-bike. And his friend ends up giving up his e-bike, right? Right. To, to right. the woman. The woman takes right. the other e-bike. But there's still a pedal bike there. So someone right. has to come and take that pedal bike before... Hassan can pedal home for free. Yes, yes. And so 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 I said if this is if so since that seems to be the case, right? 
that would completely 100% destroy any fucking argument whatsoever to defend Hassan slash Michael. Right. Because that means that they're not just sitting around on the bikes like, oh, I plan to take this out. No, they're intentionally sitting there, not using the bike, waiting for other people to come and use the other bikes just so they can get that bike for free. Yeah. Well, and, and we have the receipt that he pedaled there for free. So we know he yes. pulled that bike out of a rack that only had e-bikes in it to begin with. Yeah, at some point. Right? So the guy, the guy who was talking about this on Twitter, he said, he said he thought there were two things happening. And he was kind of trying to explain it. He sent me a DM about it, but it was kind of too confusing for me to really care about. Because, um, you know, there was the whole City Bike Angel thing. Part yes. of the City Bike Angel reward program is you can earn points to using a bike. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how like some of the receipts, it would say like you saved X amount of money and some of the receipts just said zero. So he was speculating that, I think I think that's what he was saying. He was speculating that the receipts that said, the receipts that went to shorter distances um, that were so zero, it was Michael slash Hassan using his saved up miles from the city bike thing to avoid getting charged. But then the big distances where he would ride for like the 44, 44 45 minutes over, that was just because they would sit around and wait to make sure it was the last bike in the rack before they pulled it out. Right. Because so. they got a full 45 minutes. Right. Because I think even on his receipt where he pulls it out, like when he scans it when she's there and, you know, he like redocks her bike and then scans it, he still charged zero for that. And so he must have been using his city bike uh, points, essentially, to right. not get charged in that for that five or ten minute period, I think, that it was. Mm -hmm. So... But what's but so that anyways, make you think when the sister goes, there were other bikes there? <laughs> like, what right. a bitch. And so, right. And so so the sister is 100% extra full of shit because it's like, she's like, there are other bikes there. It's like, that's the point. He's waiting for there to not be other bikes there. That's literally what their intention is in the situation. So this completely I, annihilates Michael slash Hassan's defense, even yes. more so. But I've heard nobody report this yet either. So, yeah, I just seen the guy, well, the guy who put on Twitter, he put it on Twitter like days ago and someone super chatted us and I kind of, I dismissed it because I couldn't find information for it on the website. Um, but then I found, and the website is kind of written in a way, so it's not really apparent unless you like mm -hmm. really look into it, that the, it looks at first like the annual membership does uh, cover the cost of the e-bike and only to like really dig into it, you're like, oh, it doesn't cover the cost of the e-bike. It just covers the initial charge of the e-bike. You still get cost. You still have to pay additionally per minute. Right. You know? And so that's probably why no one, that's why, why, why when you other get, people have been talking about it, they haven't been bringing this point up because it's not you, super apparent. But. You get it as a, at a discounted rate, but you don't get it for free. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so interesting. Uh, I don't, it seems like everyone is totally tired of this story. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone's <laughs> going to make another video. Every time I see another video on this. Right. The, the creator is basically saying, I know you guys are sick of this story. Mm -hmm. And I, I think even we had people saying, please never cover this story again. So, well, we've, yeah, I think, I don't, I mean, I'm assuming there's not going to be more information on it beyond this. Except, I guess the only thing is, I don't remember if I said this on stream because I put it on Twitter. I did say on stream, right? Yeah, because this is how I, found, I figured out, I found out about this on stream was that the sister is on TikTok calling for the removal of Sarah Jane Comrie's. Uh, go fund me and call yeah, her to be fired, which, which is, I think is horrific and despicable. Yeah, yeah. Hor horrific and despicable. Um, Very much so. Here's what the guy sent me. He's on Twitter. He's known as Adam New York. Um, he's saying there are two rides that he paid for. The first ride of the evening, which was short because they made beeline for the nearest empty station, and the ride where he took the bike back from Sarah. You can tell because they are the only receipts that show non-member price and how much he sh he saved. He likely paid with minute credits from Bike Angels, which wouldn't take too long to earn them. I'm going to earn them with pedal bikes or else you use more than you earn. City Bike calculates non-member pricing for comparison in most scenarios. Some scenarios, they probably don't have a template yet. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, so it seems to be the case that they were hanging around the bikes to try to force other people to take the pedal bikes, which some people have who ride City Bikes say that this is a common thing that happens. So that's the case. This kid is 100%. Sorry, he's 1,000% in the wrong. Completely unjustifiable, 100%, you know, 1,000%. So we'll see yeah. if anyone else.
else talks about it. If there'd be any movement on the story, I guess the only movement on the story would be if the sister does file police report slash tries to get Sarah in trouble and they release some kind of CCTV footage or regarding whether Sarah gets fired or not. That's never going to happen. The cops are just laughing about this. Yeah, <laughs> they're I don't, like I don't think laughing they're, their ass off. I don't think they're going to bother with this, and I'm assuming Sarah's not going to get fired. So hopefully we won't have to talk about the story anymore. I do, I do think the sister knows that this is the scam her brother was doing. You think her brother told her about the scam? Somehow I don't think that's the case. Um, it's Yeah, it's possible she has no clue. I don't She's know. totally in the dark. Yeah. Right. Well, oh, the other thing was, I forgot the other thing was, people dug up tweets from the sister. Oh, yeah. Private account, uh, which were very uh, offensive and anti-white. One of them was something like, um, you know, I wish... I wish like the white DNA never diverged or something like never came into existence. Oh my. Nice. And, uh, nice lady. Yeah. yeah. And she had this interview with this person where it's like, basically they just ratchet. Like it's really gross because essentially the worldview that they have is they buy into all the, the CRT shit. They buy into all like the external locus of control. You know, white people are trying to, to keep you down a bullshit because essentially when you listen to this interview, the sister has with this guy, the whole position is, oh, this ser- this scenario with Sarah is just indicative of every scenario where a white person tries to take something from a black person. This is just that situation all over again. And we got to stand up and we got to fight and we got to protect ourselves. So they're like taking this little dispute where a brother was just trying to kind of bogart a bike and save money on it in kind of a way he wasn't supposed to becomes this whole like, this is a fucking symbol of like the racial divisions and fights in our country for the last 200 years, which is obviously bullshit, but yeah, there you go. They so. do that. Cause it's self-serving. So you realize that, right? Oh no. Well, I think it is self-serving. That's why they do it. But I think they also convince themselves that it's true. I think they do believe it. I think they honestly believe this is true. So it's easier to believe it's true since you're saying it all the time. <laughs> yes, for sure. It's very easy to believe something that you tell yourself again and again and again. And also, right. if you tell yourself a fiction that absolves you of responsibility and blame, you know, that's very delicious to most people. It is, yeah. Right. Mm. So. The most delicious of moral treats. Right. Yeah, the, the second most delicious of moral treats is, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's because <laughs> I live in a society. So It is. So there you go. So how do you feel uh, about... Is talking to slash debating V radio. Uh, I don't have any desire to do that. Oh, okay. Why? Well, we might be doing it anyway. So I'm just what curious. Are you, no, why? No, stop. Oh, no, I mean, please. Oh. No, I'm not doing that. I'm, I have no desire to talk about the Iraq really? war. I have no desire to talk about the Iraq war at all. Oh, okay. I refuse. Okay. I fucking oh, refuse. Look. I'll tell him Sis doesn't want to do no, it. I don't no care. Problem. I don't care about the Iraq war. I don't, I, it's not a war I support. I don't care. This is so stupid. Yeah, you're right. right. That was, that's, what the, that's what the debate's going to be over? Yeah. I mean, my only interest was to get him to make the connection that all of his arguments completely are irrelevant. That's not going to happen. <laughs> you don't think that's so? That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, and just him fucking like fucking being such a whiny bitch on twitter i was just like holy <laughs> shit like i we can disagree is, we we're just yelling at sargon he's yelling at us i know away. he'll be on we'll, again in like a month we'll yell with him we'll each other in a month we walk away still friends okay some people just they, they can't and me and you that. we fucking scream at each other sometimes about shit of course some people just they get like they have one fucking disagreement and they just fucking have a meltdown look i've they never handle it Look, we've screamed at one another. I've never lost a, a, a wink of sleep over it. Yes. I never yes, think exactly. about it after the stream. It's just all fun and so, games to me. I don't know, like, what the fuck, you know, V Radio's problem is. I'm sorry we disagree about the fucking Iraq war. I'm sorry you got, like, so fucking panties and twists on Twitter. And he, like, and what he was saying, like, it, it, he came up with this whole fucking like persecuted external locus of control theory about the situation, which is like fucking insane. Oh, that's about how true. like, like 
oh, you know, we were upset that Jimmy Dore ran away like a bitch. Like I would like we were upset that Jimmy Dore looked like a cuck bitch in our conversation. And that's why we were mean to him later. I was like, what the fuck are you? Ta- that's like it's that's literally insane. What well, I'm fuck? nice. I mean, I'm nice to to Jimmy. I'm not. I'm well, on I'm good terms nice with Jimmy. But uh, no, no. But his no. His point was, we were mad that Jimmy looked like a bitch in our conversation, and so we displaced our anger from Jimmy onto at him. The yeah, radio. I know. Yeah, I know. Which the, I was yeah. like, what the fuck is that? Like, that's bizarre. Like, did we talk to? Was that like the stream after? Did we talk to V Radio even like was that the stream after the Jimmy Door stream where he ran away? Yeah. I like I don't even remember the like I don't know. It's a weird fucking thing to say. So especially Why because the, the conversation oh. we have at V Radio, we didn't have a problem until we got this one issue that he felt very strongly about. So obviously that wasn't like we like came in there to beat up V Radio. Like it's just a ridiculous fucking worldview. But anyway. Yeah. Yes. I'm assuming this only came up because I don't know why Joe for some reason. A uh, friend of the show, Joe, you know, covered the drama, I think, between us and V Radio, which I didn't watch. I have no desire to watch. Well, I didn't so. I didn't watch it either, but the um That's because I said we could do a debate is because V Radio ended up in the mentions again. Like a bunch of our fans said, Oh, V Radio is responding to mm-hmm. tweets from like three months ago now. I think he wants to he debate really? you still, yeah. What? And look, I, don't I just have a blocked. I get, yeah, I get. You haven't blocked? Oh, I, of I, I haven't blocked him. I unblocked him, and I was like, if he wants, because he wanted, uh, he wanted a moderator. He wanted Joe to be a moderator. No, I refuse. I okay. fucking, okay. I don't, it, I don't care about the Iraq War. Why? Why well, I don't, ca- I don't care either. Like I said, the Stop. only interesting thing for me is, we keep saying. Like, our position just is not getting through to him at all. Like, he does not understand our position at all. And his position seems to be that because the Bush administration lied about so many things, that nothing they said could possibly be true. And I don't know about you, but that's not really a good argument. Well, and that's not even... Yeah, that isn't a good argument, but also that would not even address with my argument, which was I know, which was just that I think different people in the Bush administration had different reasons for getting competing into goals. The war. Yes, and I think a lot of them thought, and it was a stupid thought, and obviously there's a level of self solution there. A lot of them thought that they really, honestly believed that they could turn Iraq into some sort of magical Shangri La, some sort of magical Camelot. That would be, you know, a shining beacon in the Middle East. And obviously yes, that didn't totally, happen. Yes, totally, totally, okay? yes. And the fact that me saying that some people in the Bush administration honestly thought that they could create something, you know, good there, and it wasn't just some evil, like, let's go in there and steal the oil. <laughs> like, to, the, the fact that that spawned this conflict is, like, insane to me. Yes, you know? me too, me too. Me so, too. But he's, he doesn't seem to understand. So I, every time I'm trying to, like, get this through to him, he keeps giving me evidence that they lied about this. And I keep going, dude, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ. I know. It's like, so it funny. doesn't matter. They could li- look, they could tell a thousand lies. And then one thing they could say is true. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and also it, you can, people can have, people have motivations for things. It doesn't mean that they're going to be truthful about like trying to get everyone on board with what they're doing. Of course, of course. You know? I've said that too. Like their their motivation could have been to form the Shangri-La like you describe it. And they lied through their teeth to make that happen. Right. Well, and also, and obviously this would be, this is obviously true. And which what we just talked about. It's very easy for people to delude themselves in a way which happens to align with something else they want, Right. So mm-hmm. if there, so obviously, if there is a financial motivation for the Bush administration, whether it be, you know, uh, uh, Dick Cheney with Hal Burton or whatever, you know, or George W. Bush with trying to get oil contract money, it would be easier then for them to sort of put themselves in the cognitive dissonance mindset where they say, "Oh, we're going to make a bunch of money, but also it's going to be the moral, ethical, correct thing to do because we're going to create this, you know, better place in the Middle East." Right? Of course, much yeah, better that's... rationalization, justification. Right. right. But I don't know. So to me, it's just it's such a boring fucking conversation. It's a stupid conversation. I don't know why he's so fucking pansies and twists about it. 
Uh, I blocked him because he was just starting to get when he when he started going down the bizarre <laughs> conspiracy theory. We're displacing our anger toward Jimmy Dore on him. That's when I was like, okay, this is like fucking stupid. I block him, and then he starts trying to follow me with alt accounts. I know, I saw <laughs> this. Like, okay, well, I'll just get the fuck out of here. This is like insane. So, anyway. I do feel like he's kind of harmless. So he is. He's just annoying. It's just like this is like a yeah. waste of my life. This is draining my life force for nothing. Well, I mean, it could be good content. <laughs> he, he's, it's not. It's not. He, he's become. Okay, sure. V, v Radio is like, you know, so the people just, they get this fucking, there's a couple people out there who are like, oh, they're friends or they're fans or whatever. And then some disagreement happens and it's like, they just, they can never let it go. And it becomes the thing that they fixate, you know, yeah. totally. If they just yeah. completely fixate on it forever. Totally. I had to literally block cheese balling because it's like, he never got over the oh, fact that I fucking yelled ball. at him. I like because I yelled at him on stream. He's like he has to like fucking start randomly responding to all sorts of tweets that have nothing to do with anything and, and just try to like bring it up. And I'm like, okay. Jeez, You're geez. obviously oh. like this is like an obsession with you. You have to bring it up to a bunch of like random fucking situations. And there was someone else that I had to do this with in the past, which is Every fucking time they'd constantly bring up fucking net neutrality, regardless of like, it's like it's 2023. We don't have to talk about net neutrality anymore. Like, stop it. Like, Jesus, people just need to let shit go. Che just let che go. Cheese balling. Just look, Sitch yells at me every week. No one gives yes. a fuck. Okay. It doesn't God, matter. Just it doesn't let it matter. go. It doesn't let it matter. Let it go. And I'm getting to the point with like, with fucking dishonesty always. Who I'm calling dishonesty always again. <laughs> Because it's just like every fucking I saw what every he, other I didn't day. Read his tweets. What every were those other tweets? day he fucking tags me in some tweet. And it's just like the dumbest fucking shit ever. And he has this is I this, saw since this is just like Sitch complaining about day, like random people like, hour. Okay. I know like some of you are probably like, don't give a shit about this, but oh, this will be the end of this action. This is every single dishonesty always argument. He has literally one argument and he just makes it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. He says, Sitch. You're not being intellectually consistent, or you're being a hypocrite, uh, because you said argument A, you know, two months ago, and then I say, listen, uh, Lowe's R one slash dishonesty always. <laughs> I say, listen, you're you've removed the context. What I really said was, I said argument one is A plus B plus C equals argument one, okay, and then I said argument two is D plus E plus F equals argument two. And so you're saying I'm being uh, hypocritical because you're removing variable A from argument one and you're holding it in a vacuum and saying, why am I not applying variable A to argument two? Okay, you didn't when even I'm understand the argument. <laughs> when I'm saying it's not even variable A, it's variable A plus B plus C. Okay, you're just removing it from the context. You can't just take one piece of an, you can't take one element of someone's argument and say, well, why you're being a hypocrite because you're not applying it to this. And I'm like, and then I say, and I address this. And I say, no, 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 no. I'm applying this specific argument in this specific way with a specific context, right? Yeah, it doesn't and apply doesn't, in the other context. It doesn't apply to the other argument. Remove the context. And then he, instead of him, and this is what he always does, instead of him addressing what I'm saying, he doesn't say like, oh, well, Sitch, I think it does because X, Y, Z. He doesn't even address what I said. He just stares at what I like the tweet. That's what I imagine is what happens. He stares at the tweet. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. The way like a mule stares at a fucking brick wall. Be he just nice. stares at the Come tweet. The nice. information just bounces off his skull. And then he just re just fucking says the same thing he said in the first tweet and just keeps reiterating himself and just loops forever. And I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I wasting my time talking to this person? Yeah. There's yeah. no point. He's not even addressing what I'm saying. Just fucking loops. Or, or moves the goalpost, just constantly shifting the goalpost, constantly shifting the goalpost to some other fucking argument. And I'm just like, fuck, stop. Yeah, yeah, no. Taking in what someone else is saying is often difficult to do. Or just, or just, just list, like address whatever the fuck they're saying. That's why I was getting triggered when people were like, sit, you're not addressing like what Carl saying. Oh, like, I know, I saw. What the fuck I are you saw, talking about? I I'd saw. Like, we spent like, I reiterated, he said four times, and even Carl himself, Said I understood his argument. I just disagreed with it. I can't. So it's like I, fuck. So many people, man. They think if you disagree with their argument that you don't understand it. It's yes, so right. maddening. I know. It's like no, I no. I understand. I just disagree. I just don't agree. Well, it's and I think the reason for that is well, part of it is the reason for that is because again everyone assumes that everyone 
views the world through the same lens and information as them they yes right they think um, if you had if you understood then you would agree right that's number one and then number two is in most conversations people generally don't understand the other person's argument yes totally. so so yeah so that does that definitely happens most of the time right but anyways okay it was still a fun discussion that's all no it was yeah. a, it was a good conversation that we had wow okay People Sketch. were getting very triggered because we have look, we have a lot of overlap with with Carl's audience. Right. Yeah. I don't even know how we got off on the fucking gay marriage shit. I know we've had a conversation about that, but briefer, but it was the same conversation in the past. So And um, it's the same conversation from 10, 15 years ago. I just Yeah. Oh my God. It's the same conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um but um. Anyways, sketch All for right. five dollars says the leftist flowchart is the philosophical equivalent of button mashing in a fighting game. I like that. That's funny. Uh, Edgar's like friendly that. civics teacher for ten pounds says, "Could I trouble you, lads? Mind a wee shout out to Meetard, as she has completed her finals. She's given it her all, and I couldn't be prouder of her. Love the show. C team is greater than A team, which is greater than S class." CT team. There you go. Yes. Look well, at that. A CT rats, fan. Rats Matard. Uh, yeah. Matard has made some cool art for us, I believe, in the past. So congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Shout out to shout Matard. Out. You, got, you got off on it because of the Ted Cruz Uganda tweet. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that was the thing. I made the mistake because the Uganda tweet was just about being gay. And I think I probably said something about gay marriage. And that sort of led us down the pathway. So, Sargon uh, doesn't care about gay marriage, though. <laughs> I know it doesn't care about it, but um, no. But I mean, the Uganda thing. What the, the Tech Cruise Uganda thing is fucking weird. That there was mm. so many, like, not so many. I should take that back. There was some right wingers who were like upset at Ted Cruz, and even and even Carl. He had to give the kind of the kind of you know NPC response. I love you, Carl, but he kind of gave the NPC response. Which was why is Ted Cruz commenting on something like why do we care what happens in Uganda? Like that, come on, we know that's not a real it's not that's not a real response. To something happening. Right. There are issues that are talked about in the world and people give their opinion on them, and that's fine. Okay. You can you can give your opinion. When someone says, Why do we why do you care what's happening in another country? That seems to me this is this is what I'm gonna say. Whenever someone says that about any issue, right? Mm -hmm. If someone has an opinion on something happening in another country. And they're not talking about like, we should like send money or troops or something in that country. Like someone just says, I either like or dislike a country doing X. And the response to that is, why do you care or why are you concentrating on what's happening in another country? I only read that response, whether it's coming from the left or the right, as a cope. That's the only way I perceive that response. It's just a cope. It's a cope for saying, <laughs> you don't like that person's opinion but for some reason, you don't want to just say it directly because, you know, usually there's something, some element of it. You don't want to necessarily have the bad right. optics of coming out against something like that. Being anti-gay so. marriage in this case. Or not even being anti-gay marriage, being anti-gay because the law was you couldn't, you couldn't engage in a homosexual act. It wasn't anything about marriage. Wow. Woof. Yeah. It was prison time for, for engaging in a homosexual act. A lot so. of people are anti-gay. I know they are because of the dis because they're disgusted by it. So the disgust yes. foundation is is driving their moral intuitions, right? Well, yeah. and also you know Carl doesn't believe it's biological. He thinks you know that you know gays are pushing more gayness on the kids through sexual abuse or grooming or something, which I don't think is right. the case. Uh, you know, we our our biological evidence suggests. Otherwise, so. Well, not all anyway. heterosexuals are pedos, so I just, I don't see why it would be any different with gay people. Right, but that wouldn't preclude whether, like, if it was true. Um, right, okay, I understand. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Loser Beer for eight months says, Sunday, Sunday show helped take my mind off things this Memorial Day weekend. Just want to say thanks. S class. It's best class. Well, thank you, loser, for being a member for eight months. Yeah, thanks. Could have been you, a uh, team. 
Can you take the? <laughs> oh, did you get rid of it? Okay. I t can I take what down? The I, I on my screen I just kept seeing the looping. That's my bike. <laughs> I took it down after the okay. story. I need to run okay. to the bathroom real quick. I'll be. You right go run to the bathroom. Uh, do you think there's such thing as degeneracy? I mean, I think things degenerate. Uh, yeah, I think things are. De I think there's such thing as degeneracy. Sure. I mean, like, you know, we've called pedo shit degeneracy, right? That's a good example. That's a very easy example. Of degeneracy. Uh, Gorosero for five dollars says, "Hey, another Tuesday, another crazy lefty." <laughs> but we have an out of touch right toy to even it out. Question. How does everyone feel about immigration? Look at Goro. Look at Goro over here trying to start a fight. But ha ha ha, Goro, you didn't know. We didn't need you. We didn't need you to start a fight, Goro. We started a fight all on our own. There you go. The group mine for four months says, I am a free will parasite. I will steal free will from the more deserving so that I may use it frivolously myself. Based based that's what you got to do that's what you should do oh i gotta so i'm so tired from yelling i don't know if i want to do the debt ceiling thing let me let me put a note here i'll think about it what do we do a debt ceiling thing there are materialist arguments for sacralizing certain cultural institutions of course there are i, I don't know why you wouldn't want to make like why your argument wouldn't be stronger if you made both. I understand that the religious right, right. is more prone to the religious arguments, but there well, are people who are mm -hmm. more prone to the secular arguments. Why wouldn't you want to convince both of them? Right. Well, I can, let me give you the true, but makes them look bad argument first. And then I'll say the true, but makes them Gives them charity argument second. Okay. <laughs> oh shit. I can give them both. Okay. So so the first argument would be, uh, the answer to the question is because they can't ground the argument in a materialist argument. Because they, they don't know the how. To. Right. Okay. They don't know how or that. You're right. That either, does make them look bad. <laughs> they either don't know how or they can't because it's actually a bad argument. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, now, and I'm coming from the position, it's funny because this literally comes up every time I have a conversation with Carl. I'm literally the only person to call who believes in God. And yet, you know, he's the one making sort of these uh, religious arguments. And the reason is I still, I don't believe that God is like a separate force from material nature. Um, and so I think that you, I think all arguments can be made in a grounded and made in a material uh, position. Right. All arguments. Um, I think, you know, even when we're talking about this animating spirit, the animating spirit the animating spirit exists in a material way. There's some chemicals in your brain that are motivating people to exist in some way. This is why I talk about it from an evolutionary perspective. I think the evolutionary perspective does ground a lot of these arguments in a material fashion. Well, even so, culturally, I mean, various characters in our narratives and whatnot become the animating spirit. Right. Yes. Yes. And there are material reasons why ideas catch on and don't catch on. Of course. Um, yeah. So that's, so that's the argument that makes them look bad. The argument that makes them look good ish or better ish which is also true and i've we've talked about this before is it's the same reason machine learning is so powerful okay mm -hmm. so machine learning works because we sit around all day and we're trying to figure out like if, if you sat around and tried to figure out how to program chat gpt to do what chat gpt does we couldn't figure it out no nope. we're just sitting around all day trying to do this but right. if you create a process where a bunch of computers kind of do a bunch of random shit and randomly, whichever ones figure out the best way to do something, you know, by just having them, you know, do this again and again and again and keep iterating on top of it through random chance, it creates the thing we finally want. That's finally yeah. productive and, and useful for us. Okay. Emergent so it's like property. A, right. It's kind of like this mystery black box of like, what the fuck's happening to some extent. I'm sure someone who knows a lot about this is saying I'm, butchering or whatever but you understand kind of the general plan well chat gpt only is trying to predict the next most probable word which is just i mean that's fucking weird right that's what i'm saying but we right but the way that the machine you know it's kind of like you know the cgp cray video the way the machine learning works is it's like you, you have the you try to program the bot to know figure out what is like the number three and you just kind of like randomly keep getting these bots that kind of until they eventually start to figure out 
you know, whichever ones are a little bit better at figuring out the number three versus a bunch of random pictures, you keep those bots and you iterate yeah. on them and you kind of destroy the other bots. You don't necessarily know why that bot is better at figuring out the number three than any other bot. Yeah. Um, and so an evolution, biological evolution, literally works almost exactly the same way. <laughs> Only the selection mechanism, instead of it being humans, is reproduction and survival, essentially. Um, it's just kind of this like, you know, these smashing a bunch of animals into uh, an environment and, you know, random chance something is going to kind of, you know, prop forward that that seems to work. Right. And so, so the argument against rationality or against grounding something in a material framework that Carl can make or someone can make from the more esoteric perspective is machine learning and evolution shows us that those processes produce very powerful results. Yeah. And we humans and our culture is basically the same thing. It's you have a bunch of cultures, a bunch of humans going around doing a bunch of shit. And even if we don't necessarily understand why exactly what we're doing is working, and this is kind of what Carl meant when he was saying like, you know, the, the ancient people didn't sit, didn't necessarily, you know, maybe they didn't necessarily sit around and say, we're going to have marriage because of property rights, even though that's essentially what was going on. They kind of happened into it because of this sort of machine learning, black box, cultural evolution kind of working the same way, where it's just kind of this black box of cultures and humans kind of doing shit. And eventually whatever seems to succeed ends up becoming reproduced and going down and down the line. So then when we're here in 2023, if we go into the black box that is our culture and we start monkeying with the variables, we don't necessarily know what's going to trigger what, right? Of it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like if we were to open oh. up the guts of chat GPT and then we start picking at all the programming, maybe we don't necessarily know what's doing what in the program because because it we didn't create it line by line. It kind of created itself through machine learning processes. So There can be some black box elements to it, but... I do feel like we can examine it to some extent and no, we I, have I, examined it to some extent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Obviously I agree with you. And I think that's why we can't change things, but I'm saying that would be the, that would be the, the counter argument is this is the argument that Jordan Peterson kind of lays out, which I think is true to an extent, which is you can change things, but you have to be careful because it's not, it's not always obvious. Uh, of what, course. Yeah. Yeah. Single know, factor what, analysis, multiple right. factors. It's not always obvious what everything in tradition does for society until you know it. Right. So. But I don't right. think people are getting divorced because of gay marriage. And I just I wanted like a clear logical argument that the birth rates are important to us, the birth rates are down, and they're down because gay marriage became a thing. Right. And so then it's so, something we can argue against. We can sink our teeth into. Right. But so this is where we were kind of getting the cyclical problem because you would ask that question and I'd ask that question. Then he would say, well, I'm not saying that gay marriage is the fault of that. I'm saying gay marriage is a result of the degradation of marriage from other factors. And so I then think, we would say, and then I we think, would try to say, well, well, like, well, if you could hypothetically fix all the other factors and still have gay marriage, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't that be fine? And I think that's where the argument breaks down because I don't think we ever got like a solid answer for that question. This is where, and I know that you're, you've kind of got a bad view of populism, mm -hmm. but I do think a lot of these problems are economic in nature. And I do think, you know, Zahan has a good point when he says, you know, as soon as children became, went from being, inexpensive sources of labor to expensive conversation pieces, that is what affected the birth rates. It, that's an economic problem. If you change that economically, you'll change the birth rates. I mean, I, I definitely think it's a factor. I agree it's a factor. I just don't think that's the whole thing. It's just a factor. Right. Because look at it from this perspective. Mm-hmm. If if you were a Vulcan, okay, okay, you have no you have no emotion. That so is being. A, I'm, I am logic. kind of Vulcan, so I'm. This is easy for go. me. Yeah. It's so much harder to motivate yourself to have a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it's like, if if you think about it from an unemotional perspective, you're like, why the fuck should I have a child? It's this it's this creature, 
that's going to be annoying and going to cost a lot of energy for me. It costs a lot of money for me. I'm going to basically have to spend like so much time devoted to raising this thing that's not me. Mm -hmm. Okay, why would I ever do any of that? Well, right. all, everything that you're saying is an economic problem. So no, no, would no, it's you, not economic. I'm talking about you... time. I'm talking about time and energy. Why would you devote time and energy on on this thing, right, from a very cold, unemotional perspective? Like, it doesn't logically make sense, right? But there was a time when guys would have, like, six or seven kids, and, like, they would never, the wife would raise the kids. The kids would well, raise exactly. each other. They'd be like, <laughs> I'm off... I'm off at war. <laughs> the kids are being raised by sure, but we don't live completely in completely different anymore. people. Right. Yeah, but that's that world. that's my point. It's that's an economic problem. If you could have no. a kid and you you have you know nannies or whatever at your disposal, would you have kids? Let's say no, no, no. You know, the, but what's the, the incentive? The, the what's effort, the incentive the to have the that kid? You had... Even if you have, even if okay, even if you have a nanny. I can take okay. care of all your fucking kids for you. Why would you, if you're not going to spend any time with your kid, why the fuck is the incentive of having a kid in the first place? To carry on your lineage. Your... Why? From a cold, logical perspective, you don't give a shit about carrying on your biological lineage. That's an emotion. Okay. We're that's still what I'm trying to get at. We're still in the Vulcan framework. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. You, that's what I'm saying. In the Vulcan framework, it's very, di in the Vulcan well, framework, but the, in the, the, the logical argument, wait, let me finish. Let me just lay out my whole argument because I'm sure okay. people, some people in chat are triggered because they think I'm saying something that I'm not saying because I, I only made half the argument. From the Vulcan logical perspective, mm -hmm. the only argument really in favor of having children, well, this can be two arguments. One is someone mm -hmm. to take care of you when you get fucking old, right? That's one argument. But that's hard for people to kind of think that far ahead. Uh, the second argument is, as Sarin was saying, it's you need to have kids because society collapses if you don't. Right. Which is Birth true. Rates. Right. Which is true. But... That's not a powerful argument for a lot of individuals because they'll think someone else can do that. I don't have to do that. That's someone else's responsibility. And so a lot of having kids in the past was two things. It was, well, it was a couple of things. It was the fact that you basically had people want to fucking have sex and kids are an offshoot of that very often at times, um, even if they don't want the kids. Uh, number two, there was a massive cultural push for people to have children because it was embedded in sort of like religion and that's gone away, right? So that goes away and then the birth control enters into the equation. So we lose society, societal pressure pushing people to have children and then we lose and, and then we lose the force element of biology because now birth control. So the only real incentive, the only strong incentive is just the biological urge to procreate, which a lot of guys don't have. Some guys do, but a lot of guys don't have Women have it a lot stronger than, than guys do. And very often it can come into the light a little, a little too late. So this is why the birth rates are going down. It's mm -hmm. because of this. Because the, the emotional aspects that sort of pushed humans into having children have been picked and torn away through various things in our society, for good or for ill. Right. And I think that's why a lot of people are not having kids anymore. Well, all the arguments that you're making, though, kind of boil down to it's a hassle, which I don't. Yes. That's not yes. a logical argument. That's a emotional argument, too, right? No, it's not. What do you mean? You say, I don't want to spend my time and energy on doing X because it's a hassle. Right. So, what do you, yeah. so, but if you could make it hassle free, having kids hassle free, don't you think more people would have kids? How many, how many people. How many people want to have kids and don't have kids because they can't afford them? I feel like that's I don't know the answer. a large know the number answer of kids. I feel like that's I a large number of people. I really I don't think it is. I don't know the answer to that, um, but I would be surprised if that's the case. Lots of people have kids. I mean, usually it's people that can't afford kids that have kids. So. So. Right. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's, that definitely does happen, yeah. No, I, I again. I think Zahan is correct. I definitely think the financial going from a financial benefit to a liability isn't a massive factor here. I, I do think that's a factor. I'm just saying that's not 100. percent That's all I'm saying. It's just right. a big factor. It's not 100 percent of the equation. Right. I think the fact that people have sort of removed a lot of the emotional components that would force people to have children in our modern society is the other big factor here because. 
people look at it from a much more cold Vulcan logical perspective, which from that perspective, I think tells people not to have children. And I think that's the problem. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying that's a thing that's happened. Which is a bigger factor? Economics, people can't afford to have kids. People want to have kids and can't afford it. Or people are upset with the definition of marriage, including gay people. And well, obviously, abstaining <laughs> from having children because right. of that. Obviously, the which you think factor. is the big really the economic factor, yes. But to but again, to be fair, that was not Sargon's argument. So <laughs> I I agree. Straw man, him. <laughs> what? So. No, look, <laughs> I, I wasn't saying that was Sargon's okay, argument. Okay, I'm just good. saying. I'm. I look, know. I'm. I'm trying. Look, if you're saying, you know, gay marriage is, you know, marriage is for having kids. And we're right. not having kids, and therefore, uh, you know, that's a bad thing. And you're yeah. trying to make some sort of correlation to gay marriage in this argument. I'm just trying to find some kind of sort of logical through line there, right? Mm -hmm. No, I, I understand. We're looking for the logical through line that, and Carl wasn't giving us one. And that was the that was where the conversation kept breaking down and looping because he wasn't giving us the logical through line. He was. He would go from uh, gay marriage is a symptom of the problem, which is why I would keep saying, well, wait a minute, we're asking you how that symptom would then create the problem. And it's a logical fallacy to say just because something is a symptom of a problem that that's, that, that symptom would then cause the problem in an isolated situation, right? Or in a different yeah, situation. It's not bad for me to look for the logical through line. No, well, that's, what we're, that's, why, that's what I meant when I said... He's trying to explain, the, I think part of the problem of the conversation is he's, when you try to look for the logical through line, this is kind of what I meant, I think he meant, by the concept of us trying to look at the, th the logical through line is essentially looking at something through a post-enlightenment, rational, materialist lens. Right. Just to have that even thought that that's how we should interpret this information in the Dave, first place. Dave Rubin has done more for the birth rates than you and I. That is true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> so, I mean. Good on him. Right. But I think when you live in this, we live in this, you know, we live in a society based on liberal values and we, I think we do have to base our society based on an imperial, you know, empirical evidence and rationality. Imperial. And things, I like it. <laughs> yes. And things of, uh, I'm sorry, you have empiricism and things of that uh, nature. I do think you have to make arguments within that framework and we can't kind of make these you know, more vague, uh, magic, esoteric arguments. I just, I don't think you can make those arguments in today's world. Um, and I don't think, I don't find satisfactory Carl's argument that, well, there's more of us because that's at least in America, that's not true. At least that's not true anymore. So, and obviously in America, we don't believe that, you know, the majority should have tyranny over the minority. Anyway. Well, I guess that is true. Now, so. I think like, 45% of kids are gay. So, I mean, they're... There you go. There do you go. do hedros even have the majority anymore? I don't know. Well, I said, you know, recent polling, you know, puts it at 71% in favor of gay marriage. So, oh, okay. you know, obviously it goes up and up and up every year. And part of the art, part of the reason I'm sure that it goes up is because people feel compelled to some extent to accept it because um, they know you're not allowed to be against gay marriage. It's so. to the point, though, where if... You know, SDL comes on and says, yeah. right wingers want to get rid of gay marriage. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I can say, no, they don't. I really like don't. Some of them do. <laughs> some of them I yeah. really don't feel I can say that just categorically. Right. Yeah. I we, don't know. We couldn't say it categorically. Yeah. 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 Is it 50% of them want to get rid of gay marriage? Is it 60%? At least, Is it? At least I don't 50%, know. Yeah. You think so? 50% well, of right wingers want to get... 71% of the poll, so 30% is all... I'm assuming 30% 30, 30 that are anti-it anti are majority Republicans, right? Right. And that 30%, you know, that's going to be around 50% of the Republicans. Oh, you're right. Party. Yeah. So, yeah. So at least 50%, yeah. But, of course, there's going to be, you know, people that are on the right to have a mask on about gay marriage anyway, too. And so it's kind of, you know, you don't know exactly what the true number is, right? Mm-hmm. But I... I, it would be interesting because if you had DeSantis or Trump or someone come out anti-gay marriage, I don't think that would help them in the Republican primary. Do you? 
I don't know. I don't think it would help them. Yeah. It'd be interesting, yeah. but I don't think it would help them. So. But if they can, but, if they can do like a pretend, they're gonna do that. It's well, it's so not, I mean, weird. Well, it'll be interesting. We might see this question because you know, I don't know, but you would, I would suspect that during a debate, some moderator will ask the question because there is the thing. Do you, know, you is support gay Court. marriage? Yeah. Right. Because the Supreme Court, you know, people are worried the Supreme Court is going to overturn gay marriage, which would be really disastrous for the Republicans if they did that. Um, Cause it's not something they want to vote on. <laughs> okay. It's really not something they want to vote on. Um, and it, that question will be asked during a debate. And it'll be very interesting to see, you know, oh, how God, people no. will respond. So the you like remember in the, <laughs> the remember politicians the Democrat? don't want to vote on that at all. I know they don't. It's, it's like, remember the Democrat primary? They were like, you know, do you think, what was it? Do you think illegal immigrants should, should get free health care? Yeah. They all raise their hands. Yeah. yeah. They'll raise their hands. Yeah. So it's going to be like, you know, that, like, do you, I mean, that's going to be the, that's going to be the question. They're going to have all the Republicans on stage and say, do you support gay marriage? Right. Or do you think that gay marriage should be, you know, illegal or whatever? Raise yeah. your hand. They're all going to raise their hands. Well, I think Trump is going to support gay marriage very easily. I think he's going to just very easily raise his hand. But I'm not sure some of the other people. It'll be very interesting to see what the other people do. So. But we'll see. Shall we explain the debt ceiling? <laughs> you, If you want to, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me think. How, to explain how long do we have? Yeah, right. I think of an easy way to explain the debt ceiling. Okay. Actually, you read some super chats. I need to get some water because I'm like dying over here. All right, I'll do that. We're at um. As I just filled my mouth. No, I'm yeah, following along. I don't know where we're, we're at. Tidge, eleven months. Tidge, eleven okay. months. Maybe I don't know where we are. Hmm. Well, I'm still here, just eating some almonds. Did we do Christian Baller yet? Oh, yeah, we did. Here, let me look here. I got to do a search. Tidge. How do I spell Tidge? I know, I'll search 11 months. This will be perfect. Found it. Tidge. Free will seeker, 11 months. Sargon, were you aware of just how many reaction videos have recently appeared on your British crusade against slavery video? Oh. British crusade against slavery. I don't know that I've seen that video. But that would be a good video to see. I was wondering if Lotus Eaters has done a video on gay marriage because I've seen some Lotus Eater videos that Sargon is not in that seem a lot more right wing than I ever remember Sargon being so Christian Baller for $10 says I would rather be anally, <laughs> anally prolapsed by Shaq then another Curtis Yarvin stream. Please cut cover literally anything else. What well, uh, what is anally prolapsed by Shaq? Does that mean? Does that mean uh, your butt collapses? Is that Shaq the basketball player, Christian? Why did you make me read that super chat? I guess Sitch was supposed to read that super chat. So Tyler for two dollars says. If Mizzy got justly shot in the U.S., there'd be riots. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's a, yeah. Hmm. That's quite the conundrum, huh? So we're all, everyone's bragging about how Mizzy couldn't do that in the United States because he'd get shot. But then the backlash, it would be George Floyd 2.0. Would it be for Mizzy? If Mizzy got shot? Yeah, they would make Mizzy out to be like, I'm not sure. A saint, a I mean, hero. Some people would try to. I just, I don't think, especially with what he's doing, it wouldn't, <laughs> I don't think it would catch on. I mean, people would try to, but I don't think it would catch on very well. Like, it would be talked about like a week, 
you know, people talk about it for a week and then it would go away. Cause it's like, he's just, you, you can't just walk into people's houses. You can't just fucking walk into people's houses. Get Christian America. Baller is dead set against another Curtis Jarvin. Oh, I'm so. very aware. I'm okay. very aware. Yes. I, he says, I would rather be anally prolapsed by Shaq. Yeah. I, I saw what that. does that mean? I don't know what prolapse means. No. Is that bad? Why don't you look it up? No, I'm just, look, I'm just, I'm gonna, look, I th have a guesstimation in my head that I think. Do not look enough. up anal prolapse. It's a disgusting thing. It's very gross. Yeah. It's a horrific, it's a horrifically horrific gross thing. Yeah. Don't look it up. Andrew Clark for $2 says, CT clip this as the reactionary side quest. There you go. Is that a good name for that? I don't know. Yeah. Boss Apprentice for $5 <laughs> says, Message retracted. Yeah, he sent me a DM, which I didn't get to read, because obviously we argued with Shagan the whole time, um, about what he sent. See, oh, it's on Discord. Uh, it said, uh, Sargon, I think you're going down a dark path. I've been watching you for almost a decade, and I feel you've lost your liberal ideals. You've built an echo chamber and become tribal. I miss the old you. I get a lot of messages like that. But, yeah, I mean... I Look, what can we do about it? Well, I know, and I, I know Thoth wanted me, I'm assuming Thoth wanted me that, to read that to, to Carl. I didn't want to read it, like, right before he goes, because I'd be like, right before you go, let me attack you. <laughs> you know, right? So, well, like a situation. But anyway. People do get more conservative as they get older. Obviously, Carl has two children now. I think he right. just had another baby, which, congratulations, right? He's got a little toddler in the house. Right. So. Well, yeah, great. Okay, let's so he, uh, let's look. As soon yeah. as you have kids, the first thing you learn is that it's okay to take away people's liberty. There you go. <laughs> True, as long as you can protect your child, right? Which is why it's funny because that's what I said to him, um, and he said, "Well, he didn't think it was fair to compare." But then that was actually his argument was, you know, they're grooming the kids, so and that's why the trans issue gets everyone so activated because anything that's you know attacking your attacking them kids. Well, this anyway. is why, you know, when I got accused of the homophobia. Right. I, I was just th I, like, I just want to diffuse the situation here. I feel right. like you got a lot of lefties that are pushing awful hard and they don't sure. realize what's behind the door there. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. Christian nationalism. Yes, totally. I don't want to live under Christian yeah. nationalism. Right. Since. I know. Me neither. Okay, so let me. Here's some, here's how I'm trying to think. Okay, how to do the this. dead uh, ceiling. It's not going to be like a super long side quest before like everyone leaves for all the people that don't care. Um, I'm going to give you an analogy, quick analogy. Then I'm going to give you what happens if we don't raise the dead ceiling, and then I'll give you the actual explanation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think, do they know I think the that, outcome of the dead ceiling thing? Because the outcome is like pretty interesting. So the out the outcome if we don't raise the debt ceiling? No, the outcome has already been we've already reached an outcome for the debt ceiling stuff. Uh well we've reached a deal, but we haven't right. reached an outcome. Oh, but you think the look, the House and Senators are gonna pass this. This is like all Well, Matt Gates, the last second, could decide that he's it's gonna be gonna fucking, happen. you know, idiot or something. That's I don't know. That's not gonna happen. Well, a deal we'll a deal see. has been reached. We, the interesting thing about the reached. the interesting thing is the deal is not they were talking about raising the debt ceiling four trillion last time they'd raised it two trillion so right. it would be double what they did before which I think everyone would run around like especially the Republicans with their hair on fire oh my god ah, spending ah, four trillion dollars right. ah, you know with a card with a bunch of zeros on it right mm -hmm. they've decided to suspend the debt ceiling for two years. <laughs> so it's yeah, like they, they did the same thing with Trump. I don't think they ever raised it. They just suspended it, you know, every time. So, so it could go up. It could. We could go up ten trillion. By the time it's you have suspended. to raise it, it's going to have to be raised by a lot because it's never been raised. It just keeps getting suspended. So yeah, it's suspended. Like, how's that figure into like this? Is it just such a giant deal? Not right. only is it so important that we stay under thirty-two trillion, we're just going to forget about it for two years. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. That just totally it's, highlights the ridiculousness of it. 
You know, that's a great point. The fact that they're willing to suspend it as opposed to raise it highlights the bullshit political nature of it as opposed to it being like a real thing. It does. Yeah. Yeah. True. So here's an article. Now it is from NPR, which as we talked about is not necessarily the most trustworthy source, but it's from uh, a couple hours ago or an hour ago. Mm-hmm. It says far right members threaten a reckoning over McCarthy debt limit deal. <laughs> Anger... <laughs> Anger over House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's deal with President Biden to raise a debt ceiling, or I should say suspend the debt ceiling, good job, NPR, is bubbling <laughs> over with some conservative members threatening to oust McCarthy as Speaker. Quote, this deal fails, fails completely, and that's why these members and others will absolutely be opposed to the deal. We will do everything in our power to stop it, said House Freedom Caucus Chairman Scott Perry of Pennsylvania. Wow. So, Maybe you're I'm right. Saying, Maybe I'm it's just not saying, a we done deal. Know. Yeah, we don't know. Now they might now I hope well I hope they I hope that the deal passes, even though I think I think that the whole debt ceiling should just be the deal should be that the debt ceiling is just removed forever because it's the dumbest fucking concept to exist, but okay. Why is it dumb? So, well, it's dumb because and maybe this is how we'll start. Before I get to the analogy, it's dumb because if the US doesn't raise the debt ceiling, our economy gets destroyed okay the right. reason that the united states dollar is so powerful all across the world the reason everyone wants u.s dollars is because there's the view that the u.s dollar is the most stable currency in the world right so if a foreign country buys a u.s treasury bond or has u.s dollars they feel comfortable knowing that tomorrow morning they're going to wake up and that U.S. dollar will still be worth what it was the day before. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, inflation is is an issue. I would say, like, yeah, the but inflation utility affects of, everyone. To of course, extent, of course, it does. But I would inflation. say, like, the dollar has the most utility from why does foreign, it have the most utility? Because uh, a lot of products and services are sold in US dollars. So if I have myself a bunch of, I don't know, fucking French francs, I don't know. What, what yeah, but fr- why, are, why is so much international, the reason so much international trade is done in dollars isn't just because the US is, first of all, US is buying a bunch of shit, but the US is not buying the majority of shit in the world, right? There's a lot more Chinese people buying more shit than there is, you know, for, US for the For shit. the exact reason that you already laid out, you, uh, right. uh, stability. Yes. The uh, stability. A dollar, a dollar is going to be worth uh, relatively the same value, you know, six months from now. And if you're in a business cycle, you can't be in a situation where you, know, you buy raw materials at one price, and then by the time you get to market with whatever goods and services you're creating, the prices are have completely changed. Right. You need some yeah. sort of price stability in order to work in any kind of business cycle. Right. Stability, 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 stability is the question, or the answer. Yes. And yes. even if there's a problem with like inflation or something where the dollar you know loses value. The global perception is if there's some problem with the dollar, it's going to be a global problem that's going to affect everyone else anyway. Right. Yes. So, so. it's going to affect other currencies worse than the dollar. So the yes. dollar is okay. the least bad option. Right. Okay. So much of U.S.'s financial power and dominance in the world is wrapped up in this idea about the U.S. dollar and the stability of it and the value of it. And also this is tied into the petrodollar and all this other shit. It's all comes, it all stems from this power base, okay, of, of people wanting the U.S. dollar. If mm-hmm. we decide, hey, we're not going to pay our debts anymore, guess what happens? People don't want to use the dollar. Yeah. Yeah, that stability goes away. If the U.S. government for on its own decides internally not externally can do cannot you know decides for basically no reason to say hey we're not going to pay off our debts anymore right which is that's what raising the debt ceiling does it's it's the us saying we're not going to pay off our debts that's why i said the other day it's essentially the meme of the uh of colin farrell holding the gun to his head and then professor moody holding the gun to his to his head to Colin Farrell's head. Okay. You know the meme I'm talking about? Yes. It, that's So that's the Republicans holding the debt ceiling gun to the head of the American economy because it's basically mm. a self-destruct mechanism. If the, if, if the U.S. defaults on its debt, it's going to have some sort of horrible fucking repercussions or potentially horrible 
because obviously they'll find some way to try to mitigate this. It's going to have some potentially horrible, you know, destructive, you know, it's going to be the most weakening, most powerfully weakening effect to the U.S. as a country in modern times. It'd be the most destructive thing to our country in the last hundred years would be for us to default on our debt. Do you know technically what happens? Like they stop paying social security they stop making interest payments on treasury bills like that's the right. nuts and bolts of what's going to happen right but but us not paying interest pay interest payment on treasury bills means other countries are going to not see them as stable sources of course of yes. investment anymore yeah and that's going to have such dramatic economic effects and seniors this, so, not getting their social security checks means right. they're not going to be spending money at the grocery store like it's right. going to be an economic downturn and so like so essentially the republican argument is we're afraid that debt's growing out of control and will have some problem in the future. So in order to prevent a future problem, we're going to threaten to kill ourselves right now. Right. That's literally the argument. We will threaten to murder, to kill ourselves to get rid of some problem down the road, which is interesting because it's essentially they're making the same argument that the environmentalists make. The environmentalists are oh, so afraid right. of a future problem down the road that they basically want to kill themselves and fuck everything up right now. Yes. Destroy the economy whatever. today. That's the Green New Deal. Right. Yes, we have to destroy the economy today to prevent some perceived disaster down the road, which, by the way, no one is even sure will ever come to pass. Right. Of course, yeah. Okay. So that's why the debt, that's the problem if you don't raise the debt ceiling. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, basically you're completely going to destroy the American economy in a, and it's going to be, it's going to be harmed in a way that's not like the 2008 housing crash where the economy is harmed and then it comes back up and everything, you know, stabilizes again. If we default on our debts, it's not clear if we would ever retain our, would go back to our status. You know, people, it's so funny because so many people on the right, they talk about, oh, you know, there's this fear that like the dollar is not going to be the, the global currency anymore. It's going to be, you know, the Chinese, you know, yuan or whatever the fuck it's called or some other currency. Right. It's like, bricks. W- yeah, yeah. Bricks, you know, they always bring up bricks or whatever. It's going to be some other, uh, some other country is going to steal, you know, America's power. Well, the quickest way to have that happen would be to not raise the debt ceiling and to default on our debt. That'd be the quickest way to have that come to pass. Right. Bricks. So that's the problem. BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Right. I can't wait to get my Russian bank account. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Come on. It's your A account. Russia China bank account. That's really I feel my money is safe just thinking about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have to check your you have to check your social not even your social credit score for America. Your to, your social credit score for the Chinese government to right. withdraw money from your BRICS account. Yeah. The China's the Chinese the Chinese culture. If you can cheat, cheat. That's right. where I want my money stored. Exactly. <laughs> right. So anyway, so that's the threat of what happens if the U.S. defaults on its loans and why it's such a such a literally a catastrophic thing uh, to do. So you mm-hmm. say, okay, well, so how, what's the point of it? What's the point of it? And what is it exactly? Well, this is where the analogy. I'll give the analogy first. So it's essentially like if me and Adam go to Cheesecake Factory. Okay. And we open up the menu and we order, you know, the $30, you know, shrimp pasta. We both order $30 shrimp pasta and we both order $30 of cheesecake afterwards. Mm. We eat all this food and we see mm. on the menu, it says how much it costs, right? It says how much it costs. We Ooh. look at the menu with our eyeballs and we say, that's how much it costs. We order that. They bring us out the food. We eat the food. And then the waiter comes with the check. And he hands us the check, and then Adam picks it up and looks at me and says, you know, Sitch, I'm not going to pay this check because we need to cut back on spending. Yeah, we do. And I'm like, Let's not what pay the it. fuck, Adam? You should have said that before we ate all that fucking food. You can't say it now when the bill comes. What are you doing? It's too late, Sitch. I made up my mind. <laughs> We're not raising the debt ceiling. And I say, Adam... You have a credit card in your pocket, and we agree that we're going to split this check 50-50. You need to pull out your credit card and pull on the table, and we're going to split it. And and We're, we're broke. Gonna, <laughs> and you're going to get a fucking job after you yeah. take out your money on your credit card. You're going to get a fucking job, and you're going to pay for this cheesecake factory. Okay? That's what we're going to do. And Adam says, no! We need to cut back on spending, since." 
Oh. And then if we don't Do pay we? this bill at I the mean, Cheesecake I, Factory. I feel like I could eat some more cheesecake to be yeah, honest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then if we don't pay this bill at the Cheesecake Factory, Cheesecake uh -huh. Factory comes and they repossess our house. <laughs> okay. So that's sort of the analogy. It's you've already, the government, you've already spent the money. And now that the bills come due, you're saying we're not going to pay for it and we need to cut back on spending. And that's why the argument is absurd because it's like, no, when you talk about we need to cut back on spending, you have to say that when you're deciding what to order. You don't say that once the bill comes. You say that when, one, when you decide what to order. Okay. Government spending so, is the only way to grow the money supply. Right. But that's okay. We're not even going to get to like economic theory. <laughs> Okay. Because that triggers people. We're not even going to get to that because it's okay. not super important in this conversation. Um, okay, so that's the analogy. So here, what are the actual mechanics? The actual mechanics are every year, the United States supposedly is supposed to pass a budget where they, yes. so the Congress says, hey, government, you have to spend this amount of money doing this amount of things legally right. by law. The executive branch has to go and actually execute this shit um, through or whatever way, whatever, whatever the budget says. Okay, they have to do it by law. And so, but here's the problem. Congress also determines how much money to, for the government to raise via taxation, right? So if the government decides through its tax policy that it's only going to raise, let's say, $3 trillion in tax revenue, but it's going to spend $5 trillion, it's the same Congress Okay, the same people, the same people are going to say, we're going to raise three trillion in taxes. And then the same people turn around and say, and we're going to spend five trillion dollars. The same fucking people do this. Okay, the mm -hmm. same governmental body makes this determination. That means that there's going to be two trillion dollars of debt, debt, right? There's a two yeah, trillion deficit. dollar hole missing, a deficit, right? Deficit, there's be two yeah. trillion dollar hole there that needs to be filled. Spend and five, now, take tax three, right. two left over. Oh, Right. You got two left over. So you say, well, how does that two trillion dollar get, you know, how does it how does it come into being? Right. How is it how do we fill that gap? And the way that we fill that gap is that um, the Fed or the Treasury, or whoever, because I always get the mix up. One of them makes a money order essentially to the government to say, we want you to to basically print two trillion dollars out of fucking thin air to cover this hole that has to be filled. Right. Just print the fucking money. But according to how we print money in America, we don't just print money. We create money by creating this thing called a treasury bond. Yeah. Okay? The way the treasury bond works is essentially the treasury bond is what the treasury creates, which is just a, it's a piece of paper that you buy that says, hey, we're the government. Give us $1,000 in, in a year or five years or 20 years. We'll give you a thousand dollars plus point zero one percent interest. Well, I think okay. interest rates are close to five percent. Now they're high, right? But normally it's like very low. Yeah. So, so this is interest rates right. matter. I know interest rates do matter because right now it is very high. Because right now it's in the four percent or five percent range. I think it's the four percent for treasury bonds. Fed funds rate. Let's take a look. And I know because I bought five some and a bonds. quarter. Nice. So I should buy some more. <laughs> Yeah, buy some um, treasury bonds. Right. Or you could buy some Tesla stock and really You make could some buy money. either or, right? You so, see Tesla? Oh my god. There you go. I'm just mad I didn't buy any Nvidia stock. I told Sitch to buy Tesla when it was $100 a share. It's mm -hmm. like how long ago was that, Sitch? I don't know. Did I you mean, really tell me to buy Tesla stock? Yeah, it's in our DMs. I said, yeah, okay. I, "Listen, I'm I want I want this on record." <laughs> Like, now's the time to buy. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Let's, let's try see to what... trap. Let's try to, before I feel horrible about losing money that I never... Tesla, spend. $201. To there you up go. I could have $8 my money. today. Oh, okay. my God. Could have doubled Sitch. my wealth. If I just put all of my money in Tesla, I would be double the amount of wealth that I started right. from. Yeah. Instead of your piddly 5% treasury bill. Right. Tried to tell you, but you didn't listen. Anyways... Let's try to get back on track. Okay. So the okay. government creates this thing called a treasury bond, which is basically, it's just like you loaning the government money to some extent. Now, this is a very bad analogy because it's not because there's another element here, but just, just, bear, just stick with me. It's basically you saying, 
I will give the government a thousand dollars, right? I'm going to buy a treasury bond for a thousand dollars. And in a year from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, the government's going to give me a thousand dollars plus interest, whether it's 1%, 5%, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the reason that they do this, and we talked about this before is because if the government prints $2 trillion and then they take in $2 trillion out of the market through a treasury bond, they're essentially um, lessening the effect of, inf they're spreading out the effect of inflation over that period of time, right? Yes. Okay. They're, so, they're taking purchasing power out of the right. money supply. Right. So the thing they're to know- locking it up in a savings vehicle. Right. So to recap, Congress says, you need to spend $5 trillion. We only raised $3 trillion. That means that there's a $2 trillion hole that needs to be filled. So then the treasury creates the $2 trillion in treasury bonds, essentially, and prints $2 trillion. And people then buy the treasuries. And by buying the treasuries, they're able to acquire some sort of interest rate from the United States government. Now, even though these treasury bonds generally have very low interest rates, some of the lowest um, of any investment vehicle, they're viewed as the most stable investment, which is why people and countries buy them. Because normally, like right now, 4%, 5% is high. Usually, it's very low. So usually, instead of like individual people buying treasury bonds for 1% or less, it's usually massive financial institutions or other countries spending millions of dollars on, you know, a one like a treasury bond that's going to have like a 1%, you know, uh, basically investment or 1% 1, 1 interest rate just because it's a safe thing. You're not afraid of losing that money. Okay. So what is a debt ceiling? Well, and this is the question I kept asking the, the economists we'd have on and none of them knew the answer to this question. So the debt ceiling is essentially an artificial limitation where Congress says, hey, Treasury Department, you can't uh, create treasury bonds that exceed you can't have the total number of treasury bonds exceed, say, thirty trillion dollars that exist in the world. It's it's like thir it's just under thirty two trillion right now. Okay, so say it's thirty two trillion. So this so Congress says to the Treasury, "Hey, Treasury, you can't create any more treasury bonds if the total number of treasury bonds out in the entire world is at thirty two trillion. You can't create any more treasury bonds." Right. right. That's what the debt ceiling is. Right. So it creates this weird situation, and this is why the debt ceiling is so fucking stupid. So Congress passes a budget that costs $5 trillion. They make the decision to pass the budget that costs $5 trillion themselves. Right. That's like them ordering the food. They order the food, right? Yeah. They make the decision to only raise taxes $3 trillion themselves, okay, of their own fucking volition. So they know that they're coming into this situation with a $2 trillion hole. They know... Mm -hmm. At the time that they pass the budget and at the time that they pass tax legislation, they know that they're creating a $2 trillion hole that needs to be filled. And the only way it's going to be filled is by the sale of treasury bonds. They know this. But then they turn around in the treasury, they tell the treasury, hey, even though we knew that you'd have to create $2 trillion in, in bonds, you're not allowed to. <laughs> it's so and, they, and the treasury says... Why aren't we allowed to do this? And then the Congress says, because there's a debt ceiling that we <laughs> control. And you say, well, wait a minute. Why the fuck does this even exist in the first place? If Congress is the one that creates the budget, and if Congress is the one that creates tax policy, why the fuck is there even a debt ceiling in the first place? It doesn't even make sense. There didn't used to be, right? There didn't used to be, no. It came about in the early 1900s. It? Yeah, that's why, why I kept. That's I don't know. That's why I kept asking, the whenever we'd have economics uh, professors on our show, and I'd say, "What the fuck was ever the point of the debt ceiling? Did it have something to do with the gold standard? Because it passed something in the gold standard. Maybe there was some rationale under the gold standard that it made sense." And they'd all say, "I don't know." And I try to look up this answer, and I can never find a fucking answer to this question. So it seems like no one knows that I've been able to find, or it seemed to be a completely political thing. Never been a good. I've never heard a good answer for why the debt ceilings ever existed in the first place. Was it they want to cut spending? They're like, we shouldn't have a two trillion dollar hole. That's well, the Republicans' what? argument. That and th but that's why this is so stupid. So then the Republicans say, when it's only a Democrat in power, right? Because when Trump's in power or when Bush's in power, this doesn't come up. It's only when there's a Democrat in power because mm -hmm. they want to make it a political issue. And this is again how you know it's bullshit. 
Um, when there's a Democrat power, they say, we need the debt is too high. We need to stop the debt. And then I say, well, that's fine. If you want to stop the debt, fucking raise taxes or slash the budget. That's how you stop the debt. The way, you, the way to not stop the debt is to say, hey, guess what? I just took our house and I poured gasoline all over it. Unless you do exactly what I said, I'm going to burn our fucking house down with ourselves inside of it and kill us all. Okay, That's not the way to solve the debt problem. And that's what the debt ceiling is. It's this weird fucking bomb that for no reason has been constructed on our economy that we keep allowing the Republicans to push only when Democrats are in power. Most that's all it is. Most of the budgets are deficit spending budgets. Like they have a certain amount of taxation in the budget, they have a certain amount of spending in the budget. So right. it's like a two trillion dollar deficit each fiscal year. Yeah. So but a lot of times when they pass the budgets, like if they can't come to some sort of budget resolution, it's just whatever it was last year. They're like, just right. do whatever it was last year. So right. it's that two trillion just keeps adding on every year because it's like two trillion right. this year, two trillion next but he, year. But here's trillion. the problem, right? But here's the problem. Even when the Republicans had control over the entire government under Trump, mm -hmm. it's not like they did some massive budget reduction thing, right? Mm -hmm. They just they cut taxes, but it's not like they cut spending by that much. No, of course they didn't. They cut taxes and they raised spending. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, but, but how so, are, but that's how why, are you supposed to fuck over the Democrats if you don't do that? Exactly. But that's why this to me is so triggering because it's such, if you're like really paying attention, Look, they if have you to understand what wall. it is, if, if, you, if you're paying attention, understand what it is, it's a very obvious, naked, 100% political partisan hack job. Okay? Of course it is. It's all it is. There's no nothing legitimate here whatsoever. Even if you yeah. legitimately care about the debt, you can solve that by f by cutting spending when you when you create the budget in the first place. Okay, you don't do it here when you're threatening to destroy our entire fucking economy. And this is why I get so triggered because essentially it's the Republicans saying we're threatening to destroy the entire economy. We're threatening to destroy America's global power over to win political points in the public because people don't understand what the debt ceiling is. Well, they, they've kind of lost this game in the past, so, so now like, I, they're going to pass something. I have no doubt that the debt ceiling deal is going to go through because... Well, they, they shut down the government with Clinton and supposedly suffered a huge electoral loss after that one. They also got yeah, that us wasn't down. Yeah, that wasn't from the debt ceiling, though. So. Right. The, the government shutdown was, was from a different issue. But, but yeah. So, but they did get us downgraded. That was directly from the debt ceiling debacle last time. Yes, but flying we never... Flying too close to the sun. Right, right. But it was, that was from flying cl too close to the sun. That's mm -hmm. right. Our credit, America's credit got downgraded. But we never have actually, to my understanding, reached beyond the point. Of course, we yeah. Close to the but the downgrade, I think, hurt them politically. No, I agree. Which, well, but here's the problem. You know, they've been did... slapped. Their hands have been slapped enough. They know, okay, look, we can bluster about this, but we have to do something. Well, I used to think that was true because mm -hmm. here's the problem. The last, the, the, big, the last big debt ceiling fight was in 2013. Right. And this is what made me you know, lose any respect for ever having for Ted Cruz, even though I did gain respect for him doing this fucking Uganda thing, which seems like it should be such a fucking bare minimum, but apparently it wasn't. Because um, he was the one that was really pushing the charge in 2013. And to me, the idea that you're going to threaten to destroy our entire economy just to, for a political stunt, just so that he could then turn around and run for president, you know, yeah, it's uh, in 2016, Look, it's is heinous. insane to me. Right? It's heinous. It, it, is, it is heinous, yeah, and it's yeah. evil. Right. So... They actually so, believe this shit, though. They're they. No, he they does not understand. No. Every every single Republican in power understands that the debt ceiling is bullshit. Yeah, I think they know it. It's yeah, they know I it. I think that's they, probably right. These yeah. people in political power know that it's just a lot of it is just smoke and mirrors. Right, right, it, and this has nothing to do with when. And when I say it's bullshit, through what I've explained, has this literally has nothing to do with MMT or any political or any economic theory or whatever. Everyone knows 
That's why even when we were talking to the, to I forget the, the guy's name that we're talking to who is a right wing, believes more in the right wing economic theory and doesn't like MMT. Even well, he's like, yeah, name? the debt ceiling's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. What is his okay. name? Yeah, the, the, the debt ceiling is 100% Andrew. bullshit. Andrew. Everyone knows it's bullshit that, that knows about economics, except apparently for Sky Adams, which is hilarious. But anyway, you know, this is green economics. So, so this is the, this, so this is the problem. So again, if you want to cut the debt, that's fine. You got to do it during the budgeting. You don't do it once the bill comes. You don't do it, you know, once we have to pay. And if we don't pay, we destroy our entire country. And to me, there's no argument because the argument is essentially because I'm afraid that debt will balloon out of control 20, 30, 40 years down the road, I'm going to shoot myself in the face right now. I'm going to commit suicide right now. And to me, that's an insane position to have. It doesn't make any logical sense because it's not a logical position because it's all done for political theater. Now, Anthony Davies. Anthony Davies. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And so, um, so I, oh, you were saying that, you know, the Republicans, and so in 2013, when there were, when the Republicans did this, and then they shut down the government, which was related, but it was a different issue. Um, Republicans did get a lot of blame for doing that. And so it seemed like the Republicans had learned their lesson to not fuck with the debt ceiling and not fuck with these government shutdown shit. But that was 10 years ago. And it seemed people have very short memories. And this is another thing that triggered me. I thought we all learned that the debt ceiling was bullshit and weren't going to fuck and just going to get rid of it. But apparently, you know, it's been 10 years and everyone forgot, right? Or they never learned the first time or whatever. And so here we are again. And I hear the same completely fabricated arguments about the debt ceiling that I was hearing 10 years ago. So right. we'll see. Um, it's weird because th- from when I looked at what the deal was, it was a massive W for the Republicans. It was a massive W for the Republicans. Um, so it'd be really fucking stupid if the Republicans don't take the deal, if they sabotage the deal. Because honestly, I think the only the only win that Joe Biden and the Democrats could gain, f- that could take from doing this, from doing the debt ceiling uh, stuff, would be if Joe Biden could convince, and I don't know if they will accept this, if Joe Biden could convince uh, Janet Yelling, the head of the Treasury, and one of the guys named the head of the Fed, to basically just say, I'm going to direct you to print $2 trillion in Treasury bonds. I don't give a shit if it's against the law. Just fucking do it. And if the Republicans you know, sue us and bring us to court, they'll bring us to court. But by the time it goes to the Supreme Court, those Treasury bonds will already be sold, and they'll have to fucking suck a, you know, an egg until the next debt ceiling fight comes up a year from now. Right. That would be the only win, I think, politically, the Democrats could score from this, aside from the Republicans just giving up entirely, which obviously they're not going to do because that would be a big L for them. So, And the Democrats don't seem to want to do that, maybe because it's not a feasible option. So I think the deal seems to be doing nothing but giving Republicans things that they want. So the deal seems to be a big W for them. So I agree with you. It would be smart for the Republicans to take the deal and say, yeah, we, you know, we stuck it to the Dems. We got, you know, we got stuff from them that we want. So we'll see if they actually accept the deal or not. I don't. I mean, I sent you the deal. The deal didn't look too bad to me. Well, what is uh, when you consider a lot of the stuff that they're arguing over is just bullshit, I right? Mean, but I'm saying it's, it's all things Republicans would want, it's, right? It was like uh, it was uh, I'm cut the spending. It I sent it was. Sent it. I DM'd it to you, but I don't right. it was like a cut to spending. It was, you know, something that would affect student loan debt in some negative way, which the Republicans are fine with, you know. So suspend debt ceiling for two years, increase de- defense spending, veterans funding. Okay, so increase spending. <laughs> right. right. Keeps 2024. Non defense spending roughly flat, 1% increase in 2025. Increase age of retirement. Oh, increase age requirement for food stamps and work requirements. And work requirements, right. So there you go. So, Republicans, we have increased defense spending. We have uh, keep defense spending, no, increased defense spending and veterans spending. We have increased the age and work requirements for food stamps. Then we have cuts twenty billion dollars from the IRS, which is fucking. That's great. Really stupid, but okay. Why? There you go. 
Because that's how you're supposed to, because when you cut funding from the, you know, it's funny. People complain about how like the IRS doesn't go after the rich, the rich people who, who rig the system. They only go after poor people. Right. The reason they, the reason that exists is because they cut funding, they cut funding to the IRS. So it becomes too expensive and not feasible for the IRS to actually go after rich people. And so getting this weird, you get in this weird uh, self-feeding negative loop where Republicans like, we need to cut funding from the IRS so that they'll stop attacking random people. It's like, that's what makes them attack random people instead of rich people is because you keep cutting their fucking funding so they can't spend the money to go after the actual rich people. I feel like the IRS, I feel like the AI revolution is really going to make it impossible to cheat on your taxes. Well, maybe like, that's, that's a, yeah, it's only possible. I feel like AI is going to catch people like mad Maybe that'd be cheating interesting. Cheating on their taxes. Claw yeah. back thirty billion in unspent COVID funds. Yeah, so there well, you go. I, look, I don't I don't disagree with anything on here. Right. Well, and then there was also there was something about pausing there's something about student debt. Um student debt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still fighting That's, over student yeah. debt. There was something about that. that this is uh, a big oh, one. Debt for the ceiling would reinstate student loan payments. Okay. So I guess there was a pause. Was there a pause because of COVID on on student loan payments or something? This is really bugging the shit out of me too. When I yeah. watch conservative videos, they all doing these noble gold ads, and in every noble gold ad, they say America is in recession. We have not had a recession in 2023. They keep talking about the recession. Maybe the recession is going to come. Every time they print the fucking numbers. There's growth. There's been no recession. They in... have to sell gold, Adam. <laughs> I don't they care. They have to sell gold. They're literally lying. I know. They're I know. fucking lying. We are not in recession. The economy's booming. A lot of it has to do with raising interest rates because right. that's government spending. Spend, spend, spend. Right. Pay money to people who have money. <laughs> right. So, okay. It's but anyway, hilarious. just to finish the debt ceiling conversation. We'll oh, okay. Um, we weren't yeah, finished? So, <laughs> no, we have a bunch of super chats that we didn't got to. Um, okay. And so it was to, yeah. So it says since the pandemic, they paused student loan uh, debt payment and this would unpause it, right? So again, it seems to be nothing but W's for the Republicans. So it would be smart for them to accept the deal. But who knows? You know, there's some idiots out there in the Republican Party, obviously. So I don't know if they'll sabotage it at the last second or what. But I guess we'll find. But such how is Matt Gates supposed to get his name in the newspaper? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why that's but see that's what annoys me because that's literally what it is. It's just you know people that want to make a name for themselves politically. You know, this is a, this is an easy way to do it to stake their name on you know something like the dead ceiling. So. Oh my God, Sitch. I found my attorney. What? This cute little cowgirl from Wyoming. Oh, you fi did you finally see the picture I sent you? I did, yeah. Yes. You this is the best attorney fun. ever. Look, That's... I'm going to get myself into legal trouble just so I can call her. Adam has, Adam has fallen in love. He saw the picture of this, uh, this cowgirl on the range with her... <laughs> With her old-fashioned wagon from 1850, for some reason, it's been out there so long the cow's skin has uh, decomposed and it's just a skull. Amazing. There you go. Amazing. There you go. Do you, you like that? handle estate? <laughs> do you handle wills? Or I estate only planning? handle. Do you, I only handle legislation that existed from 1850? Nothing beyond 1850. That's hilarious. So, yeah, I just, that was a very funny kind of ridiculous. And it's funny because that skull looks very fake. I don't know if it is, but it looks fake in the picture. And obviously, be, the wagon looks fake, too. So. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's like a background or something. But I don't know. Well, the it's background, like the, the like the background looks real, like she's sitting in real grass. Hmm. But it looks it looks to me like she went to one of those, you know, like those. uh You know, like those recreations of like yeah, the uh, studio Pilgrim towns. Places. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what I mean. I, I meant like you know the recreations of like Gettysburg or something. You know, yeah. it's like, like we went to a recreation of an old mining town in the Wild West. Like it looks like that's where she went and took this picture. That's a longhorn steer. Yeah, exactly. So, 
I love me some Longhorn steers. Well, they're the Longhorn lawyers. So. Anyway. Did you get okay. your debt ceiling rant off now? Do you feel better? No, you feel I don't. Because I know Why? that it doesn't matter. But Nobody cares. Care. Except for Scott Adams. Well, no, I just know that it doesn't. I know that most people, that all people that are like still whining about the debt ceiling, it's not going to sink in. Sitch, we're spending way too much money. Too much money is being taken out of my paycheck. Okay. Well, then complain to them when they do the budget. Okay? You don't complain to them when they have to pay the bill and d potentially destroy our entire fucking economy. You know what they look, the government is one of the largest employers in the United States. You know that, right? I do they pay that, all yeah. these people and they take taxes out, right? Yeah. I have a I have a solution. How about this? All okay. government employees pay zero tax. Instead of taking the taxes out after you pay them, just pay them less money. <laughs> right? I mean, we're literally paying them. So Wouldn't that have them, the same effect? Instead of paying them 20 them Instead of paying them twenty dollars an hour right. and taxing them five dollars, yeah, just, just pay, pay them fifteen dollars an hour. Gonna, yeah, but how is that going to help? And tax anything? them zero. That's going to have the same. It's going to be the same at the end of the day. Same amount of money. Yeah, but you can tell them. Listen, you don't pay any fucking taxes. Oh, I see. Shut the I fuck see. up. Okay. Well, not only that, don't you think? Oh, I guess inflation would just be the same because it had the same exact spending power. Yeah, it would be exactly the same. If you want to fight inflation, just lowering everybody's, just saying to all government employees, we're going to lower your wages by 20%, that would fight inflation very effectively. Andrew Clark for $2 says, Adam, invite me to the next liberalism debate, please. Sure. What? I don't know if we, if we didn't expect this to be a liberalism debate on top of that. But. It I tried to steer that in that direction a couple of times, but. I thought it was so funny that because Dev was like concerned because he didn't think we were going to have anything to talk about. And I was like, it'll be fine. <laughs> was he? I know. Carl's come on so many times just on a Sunday stream. and Yeah. But I don't think, I don't know if we've ever had Dev and Carl on the same time, have we? No, which was, it was great. That was a lot of fun. So, right. I don't, so, how do these panels look? I barely got a word in because everyone's yelling at each other. I know. How do these panels go to, like five, seven six, seven. Yeah, What's the point? Well, it's, it's just everyone has their like little sound bite, I guess. It's harder to get to like the dig super deep into the issue. Yeah, but or we it's like basically, digging deep in. Yeah, right. Or essentially, usually what happens in the panels is a couple people sort of dominate, dominate the conversation. Yeah. yeah. So. And the other people are just there to, you know, so chime in. Yeah. You know. Look, I have a channel. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. You don't know uh, anything Texas, about me, but I'm on the street with Destiny. Right. Texas P for ten for Texas Texas Peepaw. Peepaw. <laughs> Texas P twelve for ten dollars says, What jobs? I'm a welder. Do I need to go to college to learn about metallurgy? Well, I guess no, obviously you don't if you're a welder. Sure. You don't. Um but it's weird, and I was gonna bring this up, but then it like we kinda like moved off the topic. It was just a weird thing for a call to bring up because if you look at any statistical information, I know we're very anti statistics and facts in the conversation to some extent um it will show you that very clearly the higher your college degree the more likely you will make uh the average salary increases obviously going forward in the future so that is the concept of why they wanted as many people to be in college as possible and even with people going to college far more greater numbers than they did back in the day that number still holds true now maybe going forward in the future that won't be the case because of college debt and a lot of people getting useless, useless college degrees, but so far that still holds true. So, yeah, they're saying but, now but, that the white collar jobs are going to be automated before the blue collar jobs, which is kind of funny. Kind of funny, right? Yeah. But you know, again, if, it doesn't mean everyone has to go to college. You don't, you know, if you can uh, do a trade of some sort, you can make lots of money doing it. Good for you. And not, not gay Ben is bad. Debt, good for you. We were okay, worried not about gay. you, not gay Ben. Thought he might have finally got gay. We didn't see you in the comments. People were asking. People felt oh. jilted. I They're see. Like, wow, he's got I a bunch would... of Latin here. Jesus. They were worried. I have to go... Oh, I'm going to have to open up the Google Translate for this. <laughs> I see in the middle it says I'm not gay, but... <laughs> <laughs> really I mean, funny. 
You can see that one, right? I did. I, I mean, I didn't see it till you said that. <laughs> Jumps right out at you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me uh, let me throw this through the Google Translate auto detect the language here. Hmm. Uh, so it says, um, "Lorem ipsum dolor sit amet consecutor ad pisci elite sed du smod tempor." I'm not gay. <laughs> Incident unt unt labor et dolore magna el qua ut enimen ad minimum. Mm -hmm. What translates to it is very important to have a patient to following the training program. <laughs> but I do not like this time. I'm not gay. Incidents that work in some great pain for at least. Well, there you go. I don't know if uh, I don't know if that's what you meant to say, but uh, that's what Google Translate tells me. So there it is. I think that's like the generated text. In many, let me ask Chat. Wait, let me ask Chat GPT. Sometimes I can give a better uh, translation. Let's see, Chat. Oh, you're using uh, Chat oh. GPT now, huh? I use occasionally. I did account. actually ask about someone talked about the Amy Cooper situation. I did ask Chat GPT. I was able to get a little bit better answer than they did, but it still couldn't get an exact answer. Ask Chat what? GPT if Hassan was doing the bike scam. You translate this. ChatGPT doesn't have uh, recent information, so I can't answer that question. Oh. I think they stopped them. I think the, the, the data set's from like 2021 or something. Can you translate this into English? Wait, I thought ChatGPT updated to be able to use the internet now. I think that they fixed that. It did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think it did, but let's see. Okay, let's see. Can you translate this into English? Sure. It didn't ask, do it. Ask where it comes from. Oh, it just said sure. <laughs> it told you it says sure, and then it just repeats the thing in Latin again. I swear that is when you do blogging and whatnot, that's like the text that comes up as a sample text for blogging. Or for no. Yeah, well it says it says lorum ipsum is a placeholder text commonly used in the design and hype typesetting industry. It does not have a specific meaning or translation. Oh, okay, there you go. No, you didn't you didn't translate. You didn't translate it into English. Well, translate doesn't have, it. It doesn't have a translation. All of that text is just go gobbledygook. Yeah, here? it's for typesetting. I oh. recognized it from typesetting. It told you that. No, it only told me the first two let the two first two words, lorum ipsum is. That whole thing is the whole thing is just what is a lorem ipsum text and what does it mean? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Look it up. Well, it didn't, it's, it's not telling me that specifically, which, if that's the case, it should tell me that. Lorem ipsum is a graphical and textual context, refers to filler text that is placed in a document or visual presentation. I see. I don't think it has well, a translation. Go. I didn't know that. Well, now I'm learning things. Oh, you're right. And it's the same thing. It's the same sentence. Right? To a degree, Laura Ipsum is gibberish, but it is rooted in a real language, Latin. The text uh, origins are based on a passage from a piece of classical Latin literature dating back to 45 BC. Right. Okay. So, but what should, what chat GPT should say is it should say that entire paragraph is mm -hmm. known as Laura Ipsum and that entire paragraph is placeholder text commonly used in design. It doesn't mean that. Because the way it phrases it, it just seems like they're talking about just the first two words of Laura. Right. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. Well, I'm learning things. There you go. I've seen it a bunch of times, obviously, because I've done graphic design. Right. And it just looks like regular English to me, but, you know, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> uh, Sammy G... Uh, made a wonderful picture for us oh nice i can't wait to see it i'm sure it's wholesome here i'll look let me open up the twitters the tweeters yeah let me see pretty, see pretty incredible going on, on the tweeter yeah read some super chats what's going on we're gonna be here all night long i gotta I call this attorney later before my wife gets home wow look at all that talk to, i'm all waiting for that the reaction to the picture 
All that talk of gay marriage is making me think my marriage doesn't matter. There you go. I just, I just want to hear your reaction to the picture when you open Twitter. I did open Twitter, but it's not oh, okay. coming up. Maybe I didn't no. get tagged or something. No, I, I sent you a DM. Oh, you did? Here, let me look yeah. at the DM here. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's hilarious. All is. right, guys, we have one customer. <laughs> we have... <laughs> We have one. We, there it is. We have one whole customer for the Sitches Bitches shirts. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Sitches best bitch. <laughs> Sitches bottom bitch. Here you go. There you go. All right. Well, if you're only listening, uh, Sammy G drew a picture of Doomer. Right. Wearing a shirt that says "Sitches bitches." Yes. <laughs> Give me the middle finger. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Classic that's Doomer family. expression. Yes. Very disgruntled. Very angry. Yes. yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Doomer's still. A, I gotta send out the Doomer. Well, so I think that. this. I think this. We might have something here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, send us the Doomer. There you go. Send it to Doomer. Stitches, bitches. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. Thank you, Salmon. Yeah. Well done. Fun stuff. Okay. Uh, Stug for $10 says, uh, I disagree there, Sitch. Decades ago, people pushed for more people to go to university because of how good the job opportunities were. They increased universities' numbers and consequentially, and consequentially the jobs would require it. That is true. Yeah, that definitely happens. But we still know that the higher your degree is, the more likely you're going to make more money in the going forward in the future. So that is true, but also it's still also true that you're still more likely to make more money the higher your degree is. Uh, theoretically. But that doesn't, theoretically, statistically. But that doesn't mean that there isn't problems with college costing way too much for various reasons. Paul De Dehlinger for 11 months. Thank you, Paul. Says in the United States, more people going to college has just made it so people on the internet can make incredibly stupid, stupid arguments in more sophisticated ways. Well, that's not untrue. That is very true. One hundred percent accurate. That is not untrue. Uh, Jedi Ghost Bear for five dollars says Jefferson divided quote natural aristocracy with what we call meritocracy from quote pseudo aristocracy. What America is good at is cycling through aristocrats. Very true. Oh, did he say that? That's brilliant. I'll look it up, yeah. I like that. Oh, here we go. We should have looked at this in the conversation. It would have saved us time. Thank you, Jedi Ghost Bear. The natural aristocracy is a concept developed by Thomas Jefferson in 1830, where he describes a hypothetical political elite that derives its power from the talent and virtue or merit. He distinguishes this from traditional aristocracies, which he refers to as the artificial aristocracy, a ruling elite that derives its power solely from inherited status or wealth and birth. Yep, right. that's so what we're talking about. Right, so obviously we uh, in America here are operating under the Jeffersonian idea of we were criticizing the natural. traditional, well, no, we're criticizing the traditional aristocracy. The natural aristocracy is the one based on merit. So Natural aristocracy is our jam. Yes. So I am into aristocracy as long there as it's you go. all natural. And it's funny because even on the article it says the natural aristocracy has been interpreted as being related to the concept of meritocracy. There you go. Big and natural aristocracy. That's what I love. This concept originated in 1813 during a correspondence between Jefferson and Adams, um, who were friends and, and political rivals. Jefferson, yeah, okay, and all this stuff. Um, the two men were having a debate regarding the nature of aristocracy. Both despised the hereditary nobility founded in traditional European monarchies, Carl. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, but, uh -oh. <laughs> but, <also, laughs> but they also agreed that there exists a naturally superior elite of people, well, look at that, who are the most worthy to rule society. Adams believed the best rulers have great wealth, birth, genius, virtue, and beauty. He justifies this claim by arguing that people throughout history have always preferred these traits. Jefferson, however, argues with Adams that only the best people should rule society, but he makes a distinction between rulers who belong to the natural aristocracy and rulers who belong to the artificial aristocracy. According to Jefferson, members of the natural aristocracy possess virtues and talents, while members of the artificial aristocracy only possess wealth and birth. 
He considers members of the natural aristocracy to be the most ideal rulers and believes that talents of the natural aristocracy can improve over time. This is brilliant. There you go. So I guess I'm Jeffersonian then all the way. Yeah, usually I don't side with a lot of Jefferson arguments uh, on things, but that's a pretty solid argument from Jefferson. This is, yeah. He understands the purpose of meritocracy all the way. Right. So yeah. Ace Jefferson, there you go. Yeah. Good job. What the people who do develop wealth and power generally try to do in this day and age, and capitalism kind of makes it possible, is they can invest that wealth in people that are coming up with new technology, products, services, that kind of thing, through the stock market. Right. Which hopefully they can hang on to that wealth longer, right? Right. When the old-fashioned way was you've got to you've got to develop your own product or service and try to make your money into more. That's much more yes, difficult. That right? is true. Yeah. That is true. It's easier to invest in. Some, well, you know, you can be a bad investor, but this is, this is what venture capitalists do. Well, thank you, Jedi Ghost Bear, for bringing that up. Yes. Yeah, great super chat. Very informative. Is someone having a party there? What's happening? Hell Yeah. We're oh, raging okay. over here. I'm there. I'm missing out. Well, Look. thanks, Adam, for sticking with us. It's okay. Look, I love you guys. Uh, Stuck for five hours says, Dev, you're now assuming that 30% for some reason never loses their wealth over time. No, they are just the ones that last more than three generations. Yes. Yeah, I brought that up at some point in the conversation saying it's not, you're assuming that the 30, which then became the 10%. It's not like it's the same 10% that just retains it forever. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I, what happens when you stretch out to like 10 years? Does it become 1%? Does it become 0%? Well, you mean 10 generations, not 10 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. it's generations. Right. Three generations. Yeah, right. 10 generations. Yeah. You stretch out to four generations, five generations. Yeah, exactly. When does it become um, 0%? That's what right. we want to know. Right. And the problem is that, yeah, when is it? Well, it's probably never zero. There's always going to be some probably wealthy people that some tiny you know percentage some single, well, digit, single the amount digit, of you know, wealth 1%. has got to be a, an important factor here, right? Of course it is, because yeah. again, it's easier to make money when you have more money. Um, but there's also it's interesting because the right the right generally talks about the whole weak soft problem. You know, uh, strong man or sorry, the strong weak problem. Strong men create uh, soft times for soft men, and then soft men create harsh times for you. Messed men. it up, but it's okay. We know. You all know mean. what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Strong men, you know, create peaceful times, which create weak men, which then weak men create conflict-ridden times, which creates hard men, and then the cycle continues, right? Right, um, which creates internet porn. Right. It's ironic because the far right likes to point that out a lot, but then that completely contradicts the entire concept of elite control. Right. That the far right also likes, because literally the rich elite create soft times for their children. Yep. <laughs> right which makes them weak. And that's why you see like the generational wealth kind of die out is because that, you know, the qualities of motivate, the motivational qualities and some of the psycho psychological qualities in some of the parents or grandparents doesn't necessarily translate down to their children and grandchildren. So what's up, Wicked Supreme? Wicked hey, Supreme says, just stop trying. Uh, Strong men create good times. Good right. times create weak men. Weak men. Whatever. Weak men create excellent Whatever. times. There you go. <laughs> Blatantly Satan for two dollars says aristocracy brought us Hassan. Mic drop. True. That yeah. is true. <laughs> yes. Christian Baller for ten dollars says is the claim that is the claim that there's never been an incompetent political leader. That sounds insane. That yeah, I don't know. That's obviously not the claim because that is insane. But yes. Randall Vavat for $10 says, Putin's not in charge because he's the best man for the job. He's in charge because he'll disappear you in the night if you don't do what he wants. Come on, Carl. True. Right? Yeah. True. And you can make the argument that, that, that Putin was able to climb the ranks by being very intelligent, but that doesn't mean he's obviously not the best person in charge to run the country because even before the whole Ukraine situation, Russia has not been in a good place economically, socially for many, many, many years. So obviously he's not you know, succeeding on his merits. Well, no, it is a meritocracy, but it's a meritocracy and ruthlessness, which is not, you know, true useful in other areas of right. endeavor. Right. 
that's a good point. It's not it's not a meritocracy in terms of creating a strong, healthy country that people like to live in. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a meritocracy in how to keep and maintain power. Right. Uh, Solo for five dollars says kids are dragging kids attending drag events. Yes or no? Every time I argue with people about this in real life, they what about is in the Catholic Church and Boy Scouts. Um, no, I don't think kids should be anywhere near drag. It's always been my position on the situation. I think drag is inherently sexual. So, yeah, I agree. Um, and I think it's super weird that drag has become like the face of LGBT stuff. I think it's literally just leftist debate brain against Republicans and people on the right because people on the right don't like it um, because drag is not, you know, it's somehow become associated like drag is trans when it's not. And, you know, drag is not even like, it's not like every gay person, every trans person was like a fucking into drag. Like drag is a very specific niche thing in, you know, gay communities specifically. And the, why this has become the face of the movement, other than the fact that it triggers people on the right, I don't, I don't know. And I don't think, I think that is the only reason it's become the face of the movement. So. One of the strongest leftist epistemologies now is opposite right wing. It's yes. like whatever the right wing does, I believe is wrong. Right. <laughs> so therefore, yeah. the way I come to my truth is whatever they like or don't like, I pick the opposite. Yeah. Right. I agree. And I mean, drag is an aesthetic. And if you like that aesthetic, that's fine. Um, but I don't see why that has to be forced upon children. So. And there wasn't any drag in the Mario movie. Sorry, Lance. Well, there was, but it wasn't, it was drag making fun of the concept of a man wearing a dress. It wasn't positive drag. It wasn't self-empowering drag or whatever the fuck drag is supposed to be in, you know, nowadays. So. Right. Mitch, uh, for two Aussie dollars, Carl, if not liberalism, then What? So uh, in response to uh, me sending Doomer this picture, such mm -hmm. a bitch's picture, he went on chat GPT and he said, chat GPT, write a cease and desist in a snarky, aggressive tone for a disgusting monster <laughs> who is slandering a kind, intelligent, and beautiful person who's done nothing wrong. And then he posted, I'm not going to read, he posted like this fucking like five paragraph cease no and desist way. letter Hilarious. from chat GPT. So maybe I will read it. It is kind of funny. This is from chat GPT. Dear Monster's Name, so Dear Sitch. Well, actually, it says Dear Sammy G, because he drew the picture. I hope this letter finds you well, although I highly doubt it considering you're an abhorrent behavior. <laughs> it has come to my attention that you've been engaging in an exercise of utter ignorance, slandering and defaming an individual who is the epitome of kindness, intelligence, and beauty, while you have done absolutely nothing to deserve such treatment. Allow me to remind you that living under a bridge or lurking in the dark corners does not grant you a license to spew vile falsehoods about someone with clearly outshines your existence in every possible way. It appears that your pitiful attempts at tarnishing their reputation are nothing more than the desperate cries of an insignificant creature craving attention. Let me make one thing abundantly clear. Your baseless lies and unfounded accusations will not be tolerated any longer. Your pathetic attempts to belittle this extraordinary person have not gone unnoticed. We are ready to take swift and decisive action to protect their good name and unblemished character. Cease and desist from further slandering, defaming, or uttering any derogatory remarks against person's name. Failure to comply with this demand will result in the full force of legal action brought against you, exposing you for the repugnant creature that you truly are. Holy shit. Wow. You are really hitting Sammy hard here. And let's be honest, your reputation could possibly, couldn't possibly sink any lower. We advise you to spend your time reflecting on your own inadequacies instead of fabricating malicious stories. Perhaps it's time for you to crawl back into the dark abyss from whence you came and leave the virtuous souls untouched by your despicable presence. Consider this your final warning, monster's name. Discontinue your slanderous activities immediately or face the consequences of your repulsive actions. The choice is yours, but be prepared to face the wrath of justice should you opt for the latter. Yours sincerely, your name. Wow. Oh, there you go. Isn't chat GPT one? That sounds potentially defamatory there. I keep saying chat, chat GPT. It yeah, is a, an amazing little toy, isn't it? How dare you slander our good friend Sammy G in this way? Tumor. Okay. Terrible. I think I think that means that Sammy just needs to draw even worse pictures of Doomer. Yeah. Going forward in the future. So. Anyways. Fondue for five dollars. 
So no so mole, no bug, mole bug, Monday. bug Monday. I've bamboozled by the thumbnail. Did you put mole bug on the thumbnail? No, I looked at the thumbnail. I used oh, an okay. old thumbnail. I need to put I need to put Carl in the thumbnail too, but I was running late today, so. Oh, okay. Here I'll, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send you the picture, Sammy, if you really want to like if you really want to see the level of hatred Doomer has for you. She wants to frame the chat GPT. That's right. I mean, listen, I'd be proud if I got that letter from chat GPT. That's, that's powerful. Mm. Oh, we should bring up the, so Blup made a meme, a stitch meme. Oh, okay. Bring that up. Oh, signs that you're a sitch? Yes. <laughs> Signs, signs that you're a stitch. Hey, counterpoints, what's up? What happened there? Uh, Stug for five dollars. What, what did you walk into? You walked into Doomer being very mad that uh, he is my love, mm -hmm. and that he loves me so much. He's suandre. He's suandere. Suan like suandre. Suandere. So. Stug for five dollars says, "Go ahead." Ten generations, like thirty minutes ago, we were talking about how the aristocrats of the early U.S. Are not the ones we have now. Yes, exactly. True. Good point. Was in Dev's Wall specifically for five dollars says, quote, you inherited it, you didn't earn it. Cornwall surrender of Yorktown says otherwise. <laughs> nice. Right. Uh this is a picture that says signs that you're a sitch. Uh you eat everything. You're super dramatic. You love to sleep. So I feel like only one of these is true. You eat everything. You can, oh, don't you fast on stream? I'm the one that's eating everything. Yeah, I feel like everything. you can only hit me with a super dramatic on stream. Then. You're, You're super small dramatic. in stature. Wow. Hurtful. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my and, goodness. And there's that's, that's Blep's icon. So she's saying she's taller than me. I don't know how tall she is. How tall is Blep? I don't know. Uh, hmm. You argue over everything. And there's me and CT arguing. Uh, and everything makes you angry. Well, that last one, the last two were definitely true. Those right. last two are definitely true. So that is accurate. So Arguing is fun. Arguing is fun. Well, it can be fun. It gets to a point where it's just... Oh, you were reaching the breaking point today. It was great. <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you and the chat appreciated it. The sitch was like... Ah! Ah! Um... <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I know. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Stug for five dollars says, Sargon, you've done almost nothing to show that meritocracy is not anyway functioning except, quote, look how big Elon's stocks are. True. Getch for five dollars says, higher base on the quality of a man's Twitter bio. <laughs> True. That's how we should hire people. Uh, Bubble Pack for two hours says aristocracy equals technocracy, then question mark. Uh, I don't know. Ink Punk for five Canadian says, I like Carl, but I feel like you could literally repeat his own words back to him verbatim and he would say, Well, not necessarily. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes I sense that's <laughs> happening too. Yes. Yes. Uh Butters for five dollars says Carl thinks turning in your cousin for breaking the law is high trust. Plus a oh, hundred he... social credit comrades. He got in big trouble for that. He did. People yeah, did not did. like that. No. Not in America. <laughs> not in America. Uh, Soldos for five dollars says Sargon always does the dumb gaslighting. We in America are so rich that poor people drive their cars to the food hangout handout places much better than medieval times. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. That are I, I can't even that argument is an argument that's so bad I don't even want to address it and I just have to like beat my head on the wall the whole like medieval peasants actually had it better than you you know than people today it's like oh no they didn't please stop let's bring up academic agents the slaves had it better than we do yes oh my Video. god I know I'm just like fucking I'm done I'm just so done uh, Jack H for two dollars says Submissive British aristocracy fans versus dominant American mit, uh, meritocracy enjoyers. See, I win because you are the Wojak and myself the Chad. True. True. Wow. Uh, nice. Jordan B. Peterson for $2 says, Did somebody say chaos? There you go. Chaos. Chaos. 
Um, let's see. Those must be stream yards. I don't know. If, I think I read. Yeah, I think I missed this one. Not Alfarius for two twenty dollars says Sargon should be on more often. Always leads to entertaining tangents. LOL. That's true. Though this whole yeah. stream was just a tangent because we had nothing to talk about. So. Uh, 3x3 Nihilo for $10 says, the machine god will settle all this nonsense once and for all. That is true. If reason and merit are the measures of worth, you will need to look no further. Where will you center be when a god has material providence? <laughs> wow, that's good. Like that. That's a great line. Did you could you just create that yourself or is that from something? That's like a great, that's like a great line for a movie or something. Isn't that Lord of the Nerds? I believe it is. Is it? Well, that was a good line, Lord of the Nerds. I might. We should steal that for some. Oh, it is a great line. Where will your center be when God has material providence? Like the big yeah. robots coming at you. Um, yeah. sketch for five dollars says Sargon. Might I recommend quote the politics of Vinland Saga? The anime is right up your alley. <laughs> Pretty sure Sargon like just doesn't like anime. I don't know why. I don't know how we got on that that sidetrack, but. I guess because that was like, you should read Sargon, doesn't So weird. I would love to sit there. This is what we should do. Sargon shouldn't watch Fully Cooly and then do a video on it. We should pay Sargon money to force him to stream to watch Fully Cooly with an audience. We We want the live Carl reaction to fucking, you know, the giant phallus busting out of the main character's head. And being an obvious, you know, euphemism for masturbation slash sex. I think the disgust face memes of Carl will be just epic. Yeah, and we want a camera that that's just his face. We could see his facial reaction to what yeah. he's saying as he's singing in real time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A lot of goffing. <laughs> Ugh. Right. Or what's uh, what's what's the what's the girl's name from Fully Cooley? I don't the, remember. Uh, the the villain. Um, I, I don't remember. It's talk ta- it's Takun. Haruko. Oh, oh Haruko. Haruko Haruhara, yeah. That was her name. Takun no, Takun his real name's Nauta. Takun is what Mamimi calls him because she's projecting his brother onto him in this really creepy way. Oh, okay. Remember? She like she was she was dating his brother. His brother leaves to America. And gets a girlfriend in America, and now she's like projecting her weird fucking sexuality onto him from her mm-hmm. or from his brother. Right. Luke is so good and weird and fucked up. That's why I, I didn't understand. Like Dev saying it's left wing. Like I, I mean, it could be left wing in terms of that it's like a lot of like weird sexual degeneracy happening, but like the themes are not at all like even remotely woke. I mean, all the all the women are not portrayed positively. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all kind of portrayed pretty negatively. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see, where was I? Michelle Line for $10 says, Carl and Sitch, my theory on why leftists and libertarians often go down the kid Tindler path. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These philosophies are built on utopian ideas of adults living how they want, so kids must be adults. Hmm. I mean, that could be part of it. I think um, I think part of it is that now, obviously, not all libertarians go down that pathway, but like, you know, some extreme libertarians or some extreme anarchists can go down that pathway because their argument is essentially that everyone should be able to do anything that they want as long as they're not harming another person. So that would include child being able to do that. And I guess the, the question that libertarians that don't believe in that and many people that don't believe that say they think there's a cutoff point where children shouldn't have the shouldn't have the ability to control their life in certain ways. They don't have the you know the correct uh, their brain isn't developed enough, right? Is how we say it in, in modern modern tongue. Um, I I would say that most people are disgusted at the idea of having of going down the kitty diddler path well yeah obviously from an emotional perspective but from a from a purely philosophical ideological perspective the question was how do why do some libertarians get sucked down that path and that's well, the no, answer 
because they're not looking at it from an emotional disgust mechanism. They're looking at it from a purely philosophical perspective. And if their philosophy is people should be able to do whatever they want, um, as long as they don't harm anyone, and they believe that that children that applies to children as well, and that necessarily leads you down the bizarre kid killing path. Look, I, I would say that most people are disgusted by going down that path. The people who are not disgusted by it, who are actually turned on by it, start looking for some philosophy to rationalize why that is somehow acceptable. So therefore, they turn to libertarianism mm -hmm. to justify right. their views. I think that, no, that definitely happens. But it's, I would say there's a Venn diagram. There's a Venn diagram of uh, pedos looking to justify their pedophilia. Right. And there's also some non pedos that just are so into this ideology. Right. They're just, they're they'll... disgusted by it. But at the same time, philosophically, they can't really argue against it. Right. Or yeah. they're not disgusted. Maybe they're neutral on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe, they, maybe they're not disgusted by it one way or the other. So, right. I don't know. So that's from the libertarian. From the leftist, the leftist perspective, it's a little different. Um, though I have heard leftists sort of make libertarian arguments about that but from the leftist perspective when i was reading like some of the queer theory shit that was about this it seemed to be more rooted in the idea of thinking that i think it comes i think it comes from two things i think part of it is like the weird leftist ideas about blank slates and people and like purity and people and, and children um so like they so i think there's some weird element that like well a child will have like a better sense of self because they haven't been corrupted by society so if they want to make that decision that they're coming from like a like a real place quote unquote a real place or i think a lot of it is just the i think a lot of it is sort of a uh a cynical subversion of liberal society i think a lot of it's just like well our current liberal society is very anti-fucking children so if we're the radical revolutionaries and we want to tear everything down that includes that as well Right, tearing down, you know, ideas about not fucking children and stuff like that. Oh so, God! I so I, I do think the leftists and the and the and the the libertarians that are in favor of that, I think they come at it from different angles and for different reasons. So, but at the end of the day, they should all be put in the wood chipper. So who cares? Yeah, mix them all together. Let God sort go. them out. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mick Scruffles for five dollars says, "I think Sitch and Adam are arguing from a lot of incorrect assumptions about aristocracy and peasants." Um, well, I don't think so. I mean, I think there was an issue that we were using the term aristocracy to mean different things, so which an issue. Um, Look, and I, oh, I did not mean to shit on aristocracy. I meant to, to well, no, you, talk about how based meritocracy is. There you go. Yeah, like meritocracy or not meritocracy. For me, right. meritocracy is a giant innovation in the room. Right. And if you want to go back and say, oh, aristocracy was just fucking fantastic, you knock yourself out. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but just the, the idea, and this is to me where it is like not even worth debating, and it's kind of laughable, the idea that, you know, in our modern times, we don't, and under liberal democracy even before modern times, just in liberal democracy and under capitalism, um, the social mobility has not increased exponentially from the days of like medieval times is obviously ludicrous. Right? And that's, meritocracy that's a is a, a giant. Fact. Look, meritocracy is a giant part of that. We aren't, of course, people are not so are not upperly mobile because they're lazy pieces of shit that sit around all day and do nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. That's why I, I didn't really understand what the point of the conversation was. So, the point of the conversation was to say aristocracy is amazing and we need to go back to a time when we, Well, I the you know academic agent Quackers. Yeah. has this whole kind of idea about how he's trying to develop a community of tens that are like the aristocracy of intellectual thought. <laughs> he he call he calls them like tens. They're like the tens, the 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 you know, one out of ten. They're, these are the tens. Yeah, I, I I got it. I figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well uh yeah we, we can you. all take a 
a good chuckle, a good sensible chuckle, the idea that Quackers is going to be the one leading the uh, the, the, the least tens the of our society. Well, it's, just, it's so weird to me. Like, look, it's so, it's basically so far from our mission on YouTube. Like, we're here on YouTube to have some fun, have some right. laughs, yeah, argue just, about you know, crazy interesting shit. ideas, and you know, yeah, like, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, right. exactly. Not be too um, narcissistic our own about asses. ourselves becoming the elite aristocracy of the world, you know, on YouTube. But okay, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. That reminds me, there was something about Evola that I should brought up because I, I thought it was the funniest shit ever. So, you know, it's so funny. Like every philosopher, you, when you read their works, they all think that philosophers are like the best people in society. I right? totally. Yeah, totally it's so funny they're all like oh philosophers are like obviously the the tip top of society you know i'm not just saying that because that's literally what i am but you know <laughs> it's like okay I'm, I'm sure you know that's great you know you're you're not the one out there like you know building the building or ruling the kingdom you're just the guy who's sitting there you know thinking thoughts which you know it's fun and that's literally what we're doing here now but let's keep some perspective right about yeah. what's going on and it's funny because avola had this whole thing about how you know, um, the the true he's saying that like a like a true man, the highest man has two paths in life. Okay, that is to be the warrior, right? Mm -hmm. The warrior who the warrior who gets to like fuck a lot of women and be like the, the alpha chat. Oh wow, sounds right? fun. Or, or the philosopher. <laughs> I remember this. This the, is ridiculous. The, the celibate philosopher who's like, I don't have time for bitches. I'm thinking thoughts. I remember this because we brought yes. the picture up and, and yes. Quackers got super pissed because the picture yes. we brought up was him being the obvious, like, total Beta. dweeb. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 And I'm like, oh, what a co how coincidental is it that Avola, who's a big fucking nerd, is like, yeah, the two paths for like righteousness for men is to be yes. the ultra ultra Chad or to be a big fucking philosophy nerd. OK. Yeah. And uh, and Quackers was like, he was in the war. He fought <laughs> in the war. Yeah. Okay. He was a killer. <laughs> yeah. That's he right. wrestled he boys in that. high school. You don't understand. <laughs> Right, right. Like, okay. You picked a bad right. picture. That was okay. him after he got the leukemia. Well, it's funny because there's a whole thing about how, like, because um, he thought his magic would protect him. Oh, um, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, he walked around during a bombing raid and, like, looked like a bomb blew up on him or something, and he got all fucked <laughs> up. Uh, but then he said, he claimed, I don't know, again, it's, I don't know if it's true, he claimed that, well, if he had stayed where he was, the bomb would have destroyed the building he was in. So he actually saved his life or something. But, you know. Who, I don't oh, know, yeah. Right. Oh, who knows? yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So. Exactly. Evola was a hilarious character. But he got his pecker blown off, but it could have been a lot worse. That's true. That's true. Uh, but listen. There's two paths for you guys to be. There's two paths for, for males to take in our society, everyone. Okay. That will lead you to the to become like the ultimate male. The first mm -hmm. is to be the alpha Chad who yes. just bangs a different woman every night and, you know, works out every day and has, you know, a seven digit bank account. Right. Oh, yeah. Or being a YouTuber. <laughs> That's the tip top of society, everyone, being a YouTuber. And I'm not just saying that because I am a YouTuber. I'm just philosophically, morally, through ar arguments of logic and reason. I just What a coincidence. It just turned out that being a YouTuber is also the thing that makes you the ultimate male. Yeah. Right? What a, what a happy coincidence for me and you, Adam. I know. It's great. Look, we should okay. be working on cultivating our society of tens. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, lives in Dev's Walls specifically for two dollars. Says, when is the mini painting streaming with you? When is the mini painting streaming with you for? Well, does any does? I mean, I don't play Warcraft. I don't know if Dev plays Warcraft, and Adam doesn't play Warcraft. So War, it might just be Warhammer. I mean, Warhammer. Sorry, Warhammer. 
You um, do so play Warcraft. Just, I do. I well, I did. Yes, I did play Warcraft. So it might just be a uh, Sargon painting <laughs> as many as by himself. So. There you go. Ragamuffin is, is weighing in on the whole uh, what it's, what it means to be a male situation. <laughs> that was a good one. Right. I got it pretty loud that time. <laughs> Isaac Lemon for five dollars says, "I'd recommend the Machiavellians by James Burham to hear Carl and Dev's arguments fully explained." Didn't you read that? And you I said did, it was just yeah. like some other book that was better, and not as dumb or something. Uh, well, I mean, they lay out a bunch of Machiavellian thinkers, right. so it's similar to Dictator's Handbook, which obviously Dictator's Handbook starts in the beginning, right? Talking about Mach Machiavelli and how Machiavelli got. As as the great political philosophers of old, Machiavelli was the one that got closest to the truth. Mm -hmm. So, right. But mm -hmm. I don't. It was. I mean, it's an okay book. Sure. All right. The thing. The thing is, they're they're basically looking at other philosophers that have Machiavellian like ideas, but they're not grounding it in. The thing that you and I like, science, right? Right. A materialist right. perspective. A dreaded materialist perspective. Yes. Yeah. So it's just really just talking about ideas that I think, oh, yeah, these sure. are true, but. Yeah. Uh, Mason Jordan for five dollars has been listening to all. Oh, I read that one. I oh, know I didn't read this one. I've been listening to all four of you all for years. I got a friend to start listening to Sitch and Adam recently. Well, thank you, Mason. Yeah. Uh, give thanks. him a fook. Ah, you. <laughs> Spency boy, fuck are you, Spency boy? To walk in him. Well, there you go. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck me. Uh, Moon dog for five dollars says, "I just want to say Sargon hired good-looking men for the Lotus Eaters. It helps to watch. That's all." <laughs> oh, there you wow. Go. There you go. I like it. Wow. Oh wow. Someone's oh. watching the Lotus Eaters and having impure thoughts, Carl. Did you hear that? Well, we don't know if Moondoggy is a lady. Could be a lady. Oh, okay. Having Could not be. impure thoughts that will destroy the sanctity of marriage. But oh, okay. You're right. Could be. Uh, lives in Deswell, specifically for $5, says, Uncle Ted and Karl Marx both had valid critiques of the Industrial Revolution that should be considered. Uncle Ted was easily less destructive. Isn't that hilarious? That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Ironic. Uh, El Caliso for eight months says, Carl should totally watch a Finland saga. It deals with Christian ideology and British history, also brutal as fuck and not degenerate. Well, I'll let him know, but he's not going to watch it. But I'll let him know. That's a uh, manga, right? Anime something? The It's a Viking comic, I think. Or anime. Sweet. So. Uh, WT1 a, WTF 1A1A 1A for $5 says, Dev, every day we don't get the trucker videos a day your girlfriend can peg you and post it to an adult site for us to watch and enjoy the displeasure you cause us, LOL. What is the wow. trucker video that Dev is supposed to make? Probably about the trucker convoy. And that was like months in, ago. Years ago, even. That was like years ago. You're yeah. right. That was years ago during COVID. Pandemic times. Yeah. Is that what you're talking? I'm assuming it's not what they're talking about. Why would you, why would you want a trucker video from years ago? Who knows? Who Vinland knows Saga why they the want only... what they want? Mm -hmm. Vinland Saga is the want only it. anime I like. Oh. I'll watch it. Okay, I'll watch it at some point. Um, what does Sargon? Oh, Stug for five dollars. What does Sargon mean by rationalism as opposed to traditionalism? Why are those? Oppositional in nature. Yeah. So, okay, so I think I think we he eventually did explain what he meant by that. Rationalism was based on I think essentially what he means. Rationalism is based on, um, you know, there has to be a rational a rational logic that underpins the idea in the first place. That you're that's the genesis of your idea or your thought. Where traditionalism is tradition uh, underpins the idea. These so something that's you know just because someone did it before. And to accept the wisdom of tradition, which is kind of why I made the whole chat GBT argument. Um, so, which rationalism in Western philosophy, buy, but... the view that regards reason as the chief source and test of knowledge. Right. I'm an empiricist. I think empirical study. Right. 
is the best source of knowledge. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Uh, Stock for $2 says, not suggesting traditions necessarily rational, by the way. Or not, not suggesting traditions necessarily rational or, or, or irrational. Sure. I think we can have a, again, I mean, I'm in favor of rationalism, but I think, I th and I'm, I'm, as we know, I'm against just changing things to change things. Because as I think George Pearson brings up a good point, you don't necessarily know why these traditions uh, exist in the first place. But I think you do have to frame things in a rational framework because there are too many traditional things that are just dog shit ideas. And we can't just say, well, we can't change them for tradition's sake. So, sorry. Not, well, a, not, not a good argument, changes. not a persuasive argument. So. The environment can change. Right. I, can, I brought that up a couple of times. Of course. Of course. Uh, Nicholas Van Neal for five. Aussie Buck says, say what you will about my fake country, but at least our leftist leader has just said a woman is an adult human female. Oh, really? That's awesome. Well, good for you, Australia. Co Fawn for five dollars says for Sargon, Attack on Titan season one and two is mainly introducing the world of the mystery. Season three and four are the ones about politics with a racial guilt element. There you go. Wow. He's not gonna watch it, guys. And for Rob Jupiter for two dollars says, I'm just gonna recommend Goblin Slayer. There you go. Sounds good. Uh, Arithmesia for ten dollars says, Mary Man living in Oklahoma here. I've never received any benefits until I had kids, and that's what the best way. And also, what's the best way to contact Sargon these days? Well, you so you do get benefits for being married. Now, a lot of those benefits, you know, come in the forms of uh, taxation and the way that your uh, wealth can be handled with each other and things of that nature. So, uh, lives right. I'm not making that up. I'm not married. I'm not married, but uh, I'm not making that up. I mean, I don't know if Sargon's DMs are open on on twitter you might tweet at him you might um message him on discord mm -hmm. right i mean if people want to if people want to argue for yeah, you get tax let's see tax breaks social security benefits obtaining credit insurance savings benefits access to other benefits individual retirement account contributions yeah there's a bunch of financial shit that comes into getting married um or at least financial ones so uh, but yeah, if, listen, if, if I'm not against people advocating to increase incentives for people to get married, they're going to have to do it financially, and they should, if, if that's what we want, right? There should be incentives for people to get married. Uh, to me... I think married the, couples should pay zero taxes. Well, there you go. To me, the concept which Sargon kind of brought up um, and we kind of moved away from um, is... And I, it's funny because I heard this from like the red pill guys the other day, which he was shitting all over. The, like the idea that we that you could get rid of no fault divorce to me is like insane. <laughs> so, to me, that's completely insane. Uh, a very, very anti freedom. Which I mean, he agrees it's anti freedom. He just doesn't thinks it's still worth it. So, but I haven't really heard a good argument in favor of getting rid of it. So. I mean, if, even if you got rid of no fault divorce, people would just create, you know, create fault. So it's very rare that two people decide to get a divorce and they just say like, you know, we're both happy with each other. We're totally fine. But uh, we just want to get a divorce just because we're not feeling the magic. Right. That doesn't that that happens, but doesn't happen that often. That's not generally what happens in these divorce situations. So. Um. And also, if you got rid of no-fault divorce, basically, you'd have more situations of people, you know, creating a lot of reasons for divorce that, you know, maybe aren't true or maybe are exaggerated. Because I'm sure a lot of the reason that people accept no-fault divorce is because they don't want to incur some kind of, you know, specific financial penalty necessarily, you know, getting divorced. So, anyways. Um... Listen, Devs Wall specifically for $2 says magic was the only thing Sargon was correct about. There you go. Uh, what does Mick that Wild. Mean? I, see, I guess Liz and Death Wall didn't agree with his positions except for the magic position. Uh, Mick Wild 11 for 50 because Arkazark says at sit XH. I don't know what that is. Is that someone in the chat? 
if it is true 100% of the time, it's not, it's not true any of the time, question mark? I don't know what that's in relation to. If it's true 100% of the time, it's not true any of the time, question mark? There you go. Uh, Makes no sense. Her, it probably made sense at the time. Arith Messia for five dollars says Justin Bonitz is the vocalist of Tala. I've interviewed him many times here on YouTube. He is gay and claims he chooses to be. You should talk to him. Okay, well that's interesting. I mean, if you can find like the one person who who does it right, just I mean, it's just it's so dumb. I'm sorry, it's so dumb, it's so dumb, it's so fucking dumb. Being gay and being did you choose to be straight? I mean, and that's really the thing you should throw at Carl, right? Did did Carl I choose did. to be straight? You know, it's a fucking dumb hard. argument. I didn't choose to be straight. I just am straight. I who concentrated very hard. I was like, right. girls, oh, yes. Who who here? I mean, listen, who, all the straight people here. Who's here like, yeah, I chose to be straight. You know, I just, oh, man, I really, just really tempted for the, the dick, right? But I chose the vagina, and then I, I loved know. it. <laughs> and then I loved it. Right. The only people who quote choose to be straight are people that are repressing their gayness. Right. Who are what? <laughs> the only people choosing the only people choosing to be straight are people that are repressing their homosexuality. So Oh yeah. You know, so if people don't choose it, it just it's just a feeling you say, Oh, this is what I like, you know. So I don't know. It's just it's a it's a fucking dumb I'm sorry, it's a dumb fuck argument. It's a dumb, dumb, dumb fuck argument. And also all the science, you know, points again in the other direction that being gay uh, is biological. So sorry. We got brain scans, you got uh, hereditary data. So uh, David Cade for Diamond says, does Carl believe monarch monarchy is the way? Uh, well, he likes, I know he likes, I mean, we've talked about this before. He believes in sort of this, you know, very limited, you know, constitutional monarchy or whatever. So, I mean, he obviously likes, the figurehead monarchy has in Britbong land. I don't know if he's in favor of the monarch having more additional power than that. Uh, Joe the Make for $14 says, this makes little sense. Expending marriage to gays is to invite and incentivize a group of people into pro-social behavior full stop. True. Yeah, that's True. what we kept saying. Yeah. But if they can't have kids, you don't get the pro-social behavior. <clears throat> yeah, you do. And they do have kids. They're having kids. Uh, Mick Wild 11 for 50. Kazarkazark says, Sitch quote, stop disagreeing with me. You're attacking me. I don't even, what? It's, it's so weird because that was literally, that was literally the thing that people in the chat were saying to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we're saying I didn't understand something. I literally never said that in the conversation at all. I didn't say anything remotely like that. I don't even understand what that, I don't even understand what I could have said that you could have twisted in your mind to mean that. So, people were throwing okay. a lot of insults at us in the chat. I noticed there was a lot of Listen, insults. Listen, if you guys just don't like there. fucking gay people, just don't like gay people, right? Just just don't give me like, like a shitty argument about Just don't like gay people. Okay. Yeah, that should so, be your argument. Don't give me argument. some bullshit argument, right? That should just be your argument. Just be your argument. I don't like gay people. Okay, go for it. Yeah. You uh, want Fondue to discriminate against people that you don't right. like, that you personally yeah. don't like. If that's your uh, argument. Yeah. Or the, you know, the slippery slope argument. You know, oh, the gay marriage, it brought everything else bad in our society. Which, by the way, that wasn't even the argument Carl was making, you know, which other people, that's, that's, that's generally like the kind of right-wing NPC Thought. Of course. They're like, we have is... dragon schools now yes. because of gay marriage. Yes. Gay marriage brought everything bad. It's a slippery slope. Uh, fondue for $2 says mandatory monogamy is based. True. Yeah, I agree. True. Thank you, Fondue. I hope Fondue's married. If not, we gotta <laughs> beat him up. Uh, the most dope for five dollars says, "Stop making me use my money to point out such obvious counters in gay marriage, artificial insemination, adoption are still things." Yeah, yeah. they're not I mean, sterile. Yeah, that was all brought up, but you know, it's it's, it's not. So the argument that Carl, because because this happened really early in the conversation, maybe people missed it, was uh, you know we brought up artificial insemination, we brought up you know sterile people, and so he's kind of making so Carl made the argument about how um, you know well, 
it's not about what people have. It's like what the designed, you know, what is designed for, right? So, which I, I kind of understand what he's trying to say, but marriage is an institution that creates stability for raising children, and those children don't have to be your children. Right, but it also yeah, it just creates stability, period. Yeah, right? societally. It, cre- it creates stability for raising children. Yeah. And gay people can raise children, right? Now, now, Carl is sort of alluding to some gay grooming situation, which he would have to provide evidence for it, because <laughs> I haven't seen evidence that, that supports that. That sounds to me to be a really suspect <laughs> position, but okay. Um so that's number one. So gay couples can raise children. But then number two, it, it is a pro-social benefit, even if you don't raise children, to the people involved and also the broader society as a whole. And this yeah. is why we kept coming back to, me and you both kept coming back to, what is the specific harm that it creates? And we yes. could never get an answer to that Because we've got a benefit here, a giant yeah. benefit that we can point right. to and pull out studies for and lots right. of evidence to back up. Right. Yeah. What's the harm? So we can weigh right. the... You know, put one on one side of the scale and the other on the other and see where yeah, we're at. Exactly. We have to have a cost-benefit uh, analysis here. We're saying, okay, the benefit of gay marriage is pro-social for everyone involved. The people involved feel better, you know, about the relationships and they don't feel about second-class citizens, right? That's yep. the benefits. Yeah. And it makes they society... harder. Right. makes society and, stronger. Yeah, it makes people more monogamous, you know, blue, 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 right? That's all the benefits, right? What is the cost? We didn't get an answer. There was never an answer provided. Well, there was sort of um, the people well, no, who the... are married, who are Christian, feel that their marriage is not as sacred. Well, the cost was it hurts the sanctity of marriage, but then but then we'd say, well, how? And then that would be like, well, that's not the cost because that, it's not that gay marriage hurts the sanctity of marriage. It's that gay marriage existing is a repercussion of the sanctity of marriage being destroyed. It's like, okay, but we're just looping because then we go back to, well, what exactly is the specific cost for gay marriage? And that we can never get an answer to that question, right? Because then it would come back. That's why he gave the bathtub example where he's like, well, gay marriage is the water that's on the floor that spills once you turn the faucet on. And we're like, that's fine. You can make that argument, but but going forward in the future, if you're asking to eliminate something, you need to give the specific cost, right? Some people are against gay couples raising children right because they think they're going to make them gay or abuse them or whatever right but you have to provide some evidence for that claim other than your fifis so right uh chaotic intention for five hours says why are we blaming gay marriage for lack of meaning in marriage we should when we should blame king henry the eighth there you go yeah because didn't he wasn't he the guy that kept killing his wives and shit yeah he was a bastard Well, he couldn't get, like, a, what, a male error or whatever? Or something? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know my Brit Long history. No reason to be a dick. True. Black Aragon for $2. Black Aragorn for $2 says, The evil scientist Sauron created the first white Numenorians, Numenorians, beginning with Air Farazon. R. Farazan, he tricked them into attempting to conquer Valinor for immortality. Eru then destroyed Numenor, but we, Dunedains, were once Kangs. There you go. Nice. Thank you, Black Aragorn. I like it. Yeah, we never talked about Black Aragorn. We didn't. Do you oh, know well. the Magic the Gathering? The lore? No, Magic the Gathering, the card game. Black. Yeah, Magic the Gathering, the card game, yes, they have a Lord of the Rings crossover set, which first of all is contentious anyway, the fact that Magic the Gathering has a crossover set with another existing property. Right. I don't like in the first place, which I understand. Ouch. I'm not really a fan of that either. But, you know, whatever. They, I haven't played Magic in this many like years. This is like Laverne and Shirley ended yes. up on Happy Days. There you go. Um, which I understand people being upset about that, that are Magic fans. I... I Used to play a lot of Magic. I don't play it anymore, so I don't really care if they got to do what they got to do to increase their sales. I guess you know, fine, whatever, as long as it's still good. Um, but then, of course, they had to be woke and they had to make Aragorn black on mm. the on the art, which is was he a ginger originally? He's the one non-ginger okay. white face swapped person. So that's a I good was going to say, 
Wow. That's a good point, yeah. At least we didn't lose another ginger, guys. Right, right. Yeah, I don't remember how he's described. I'm assuming he has brown hair like uh, v, uh, Vigo Davis, Vigo Morrison, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. in the movie. I don't remember how he's described in the book, but but yeah. So, And there was right. a guy, David Leavitt, who was saying that if you're not in, if you're not in favor of Black Aragorn, you're racist. So, I believe Adam is going to try to contact him so we can have him on the show to debate that that point. Hell I'll be yeah! Interested in talking to him about it, but I don't know if he'll come on. But it'd be interesting. We'll see. Because I think that's a dumb fuck position. <laughs> uh, Dodoms for two dollars says, "I wonder if answers to the clock test will gradually." will gradually or change over time as new generations concept of a clock is closer to a smartphone home screen tablet or monitor than an analog clock face. Oh, that's a good. That's a good point. How are they going to do the clock test for uh, Alzheimer's patients, you know, 40 years from now when no one has an analog clock anymore? Clock? <laughs> What's that? I'll have to do something different. Well, I'm, you know, it's kind of like, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll have to do it with a how if people will draw like a digital clock or a smartphone or something. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe maybe analog clocks will still exist in the cultural consciousness and, and zeitgeist. Or maybe they'll just still exist. I think I think analog clocks will still exist. I don't think they'll ever go away because the utility of the analog clock is it you look at it and it gives you a visual representation of like chunks of time and how much chunks of time you have right yeah that's why people like analog clocks so i still think i don't think analog clocks will ever go away i still think you'll see them around basically forever so did you see that Neuralink has fda approval for any human clinical studies i did see that yeah i did see that what's that make you think didn't you tell me it's like forever away i never said that Okay. I said that the, the the program that you push the button that makes you feel things that could be a long way away. That's so crazy to me. But they're already putting these chips into human brains. But Wowzers. yeah, but so they how do they do they know how to make it do something? Like, or is it just to put it in your brain? Like, what does it do? I don't know. Because that's the question. Like, I, I don't know exactly. I don't know enough about Neuralink. I don't know what exactly it's supposed to do. Uh, Gabriel St. Clair for $10 says, this question is for Dev, big fan of the reading arc, was wondering if you're open to discussing your radical centrist lens NRX theories, the concept of managerialism and the therapeutic state on Discord sometimes. Well, I'll send him a picture of this. I'll tell you, he's totally down to talk about that. That sounds... That sounds like something he would be down to talk about. Incredibly up his alley. Yeah, so I'll send that. I just sent him that message. Okay. Joe the Mig for five dollars says marriage is a form of enforced monogamy as a social or religious contract. That is also true. Yeah. Casey Anderson for five dollars says if the children part is so essential to marriage, why don't the ceremonies or vows even mention children? It's about the union of two people. That's a good point. In sickness and in health. And kids or no kids. Right. I I assume the response would be, well, maybe because this because the vows have been degenerated by our terrible liberal society. I mean, do you disagree that historically, like the whole getting married for love was very late in the game and is kind of like a modern convention? Of course. I feel like that's yeah. I feel like that's yeah. pretty much not controversial. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. No. We're getting, before we're getting it was arranged for love marriages. is a recent invention. Yeah. You weren't getting... Yeah. Look, if a marriage is arranged, status. you're not getting ready for love. You're not getting married for love. Right. You're getting married for status and for stuff. Right. Yes. And for political reasons. Right. Well, and so... Right. And so it's, it is... I mean, we should have brought that up in the conversation, too. This whole... Like, I well, did. marriage was, you know... I did. I guess, People but, were, like, laughing at me. I'm like, right. okay, that's controversial yeah i mean you know it's it's the argument you can't just make an argument and say this is the kind of the problem with the traditionalist logic yeah there are things that exist in tradition that are useful and should be maintained but you can't just say because something exists in tradition means it should be maintained that's not an argument right 
But all that sacred bond and stuff like that, don't you think? Isn't that like the magic? Aren't what? Aren't we talking mm-hmm. about love in that scenario? Yeah, of course. Well, no, that's not what he's talking about. But mm. anyway. Okay. Um, Joey make for five hours says, "For fuck's sakes, this marriage discussion is the worst side quest in the history of side quests." Take my money, you greedy fecks. <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. At least you got your uh, rant Joe- on. True. Uh, CT for two Canadians says, "Let Danimal debate Sargon on this shit." Oh, if he would like to, I don't know if he wants to, but look, Sargon uh, Joe... doesn't even care about gay marriage. Doesn't care about gay marriage, right? Has he hasn't made any videos on it? <laughs> he just comes True. on our show to talk about it for four hours, right? I'm pretty sure that's the second time we've talked about it. Is it? I think I'm pretty sure we talked about it, not to the extent, but to a similar similar ends. Look, I see a lot of really anti-gay stuff online. That yeah. is just it's not gonna it's not gonna end well politically. Right, all the all the yeah. the overreach of the trans stuff, you know, it's gonna trigger the trigger a big backlash. So Well I just I const oh yeah, of course, but I constantly hear, you know, the Voshes of the world making the argument. This is what right wingers want to do. They want to take away gay marriage, and nothing right. is going to increase turnout on the left more than the idea that they're going to lose gay marriage. Sure, and it's the more that becomes like a, a credible possible reality that they see, the higher turnout is going to be on the left. All the wokies yep. are going to just flock to the polls. Right, they're going to do ten to twelve mail in ballots apiece. Right. And then we get the slippery slope. They want to get rid of gay marriage because they want to put prayer back in school. They want to put prayer back in school because they want to live under a theocracy, right? It's just, it's the same yeah. slippery slope argument in the other direction, yeah. Well, but um, I the hold on, the Christian I don't think they can make the credible argument with Christian theocracy. I mean, they'll point to Michael Knowles and stuff like that. There's lots of people that literally want that. I mean Yeah. Well, that's okay. What, that's that's what James Lindsay is criticizing right now on Twitter the whole Christian nationalism movement. So well I guess, you know, maybe maybe Bosch is right. Well no, my point is that there are some people that want this is why the slippery slope slippery slope argument is stupid. There's always people that want that thing down the road, but doesn't mean that everyone wants that that's advocating for the lesser thing. Nor does it mean you shouldn't have the lesser thing just because there's something worse like you shouldn't say I don't want something that's good or that's justified now because I'm worried that some extremist down the road is going to push for something extreme that I don't want. It's a bad way of like conceptualizing the world. No, I, it's actually, I completely... it's actually an ultra cucked way of doing it. Cause essentially you're saying, even if there's this thing I want, we have to cuck ourselves because there's some bad guy who, you know, will want something more extreme down the road and I'm afraid of stopping them. Right. It's, a, it's an right. ultra cuck position. So, and that's because I think usually when people make the slippery slope argument, usually it's not a real argument. That's not their real position. Their real position is they just don't like whatever the thing is. And they're trying to convince someone who does like whatever the thing is that they shouldn't because of the slippery slope down the road. Right. Yes. Well, when Vosh says that the Republicans want to make gay marriage illegal, right? there's a couple different responses you can do to that. One of them is, no, they don't. They're fine with gay marriage. But when you have people online constantly who are obviously not fine with gay marriage and are making arguments right. against gay marriage, you can't make that argument anymore. Of course. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, Sulla, f- oh, Joe the Make for Five Hours says, this discussion makes me want to sabotage the YouTube servers to make it stop. There you go. Uh, Sulla for $2 says, marriage is based. Civil unions are PC speak. That is true. Yeah. Uh, Mick Wild 11 for, for 40 because Arcus Arc says Yankees.exe stopped working again. Please reinstall. So uh, Mick Wild is kind of, well, first of all, thank you for the money, Mick Wild. I don't recognize your name in terms of getting us money, um, but you're obviously delusional. But thank you for the money. Uh, Fondue for $2 says animating force of marriage is waifus. True. True. 
What was what's the what's the big deal about the Yankee EXE thing? Um, because he didn't understand the conversation. Oh, okay. So he was like, "Oh, you guys are NPCs." It's really funny because, like, the people that were accusing us of not understanding the conversation clearly didn't understand the conversation. Yeah, no, at all that's, a, that's because what I reiterated Carl's point to him like five times and then at the end when I said this is your point he agreed with it and didn't say I was strawmanning him so I clearly understood the argument throughout the whole the whole situation so, so many people say that when they don't understand the argument yes or they don't yeah. understand my well that's the problem this was a problem it wasn't that I didn't understand Carl's point he didn't understand my point yeah was the problem he didn't understand that my was the point. frustrating part and he didn't understand what I was asking, even though I'd keep asking again and again and again. And the people that were saying, you don't understand his point. I'm like, no, I do understand his point. You don't understand my point. Okay. So, and I guess that's what I should do in the future. And I, that's the problem. This is what I should do in the future. I mean, the situation is say, this is your point. Okay. Now you tell me what my point is. Right. Yeah. Because I don't think you understand my point. That's all I'm so, really interested in is right. getting people to, like, it's a interesting conundrum to see if people can actually understand what you're saying. <laughs> like, yes, yes. Sometimes that's a tough, tough thing to do. Right. Right. Uh, Nick Wild Eleven for two, for twenty because Argus says back to birth rates, please. Marriage DLC is required. There you go. Uh, Gray Poupettes for five dollars. Hey, Gray says, hey, fellas, I have a debate Friday and need a re will refill to vanquish. The vile Vincent Martin, who delusionally believes that science fiction is superior to fantasy. Wow. What? Listen, we believe that. I was going to say, listen, Gray, we love you, but I think we have to agree yeah. with the science fiction being superior to fantasy. Why would you take that debate? You're there just you going to lose. There you go. Oh, man. Never I mean, take I like a them debate both. like that. I like them both, but... Well, actually, you know, I realized something the other day. In American media... I think science fiction, I like science fiction more than fantasy. But in anime, I like fantasy more than I like science fiction anime. So really? Go figure. Yeah. So oh, go figure. Go figure. Uh, Peter Cosgrove for 10 pounds says So Sargon's view is like, what if Dark Souls has an easy mode? Would the satisfaction of completing the game be the same? Yeah. There you go. I assume he'd say satisfaction of completing the game would be the same for the individual person, but it would maybe create a net negative social effect. I'm assuming he'd say something like that. Uh, AKA Botosai for t for $2. Thank you. It says, how is this different from mixed race marriages? Well, it's funny because that was the argument against mixed race marriages. Like you can make a traditional natural order traditionalist argument against mixed race marriages that are very, very similar to the ones that Carl was making, even though he's obviously in favor of mixed race marriages. So, um, But that's why he was also embedding his on specifically child rearing, because that obviously you can have children when you're mixed race. So that wouldn't apply. And that argument he was making specifically wouldn't apply to mixed race marriages. But the overall, the epistemological lens of throwing away rationalism for traditionalism would if that makes sense mc wild 11 for 20 because Zark says mandatory gay marriage for all is the final solution true true is it good to know uh solo for two dollars says lindsey graham's federal abortion ban is only for 15 weeks i don't know how that was really the conversation <laughs> but okay <laughs> Um, live in Dev's wall specifically for five dollars says gay marriage ties into an open, closed aristocracy. Even if 10% take advantage, the institution must be open. Gay marriage can be magical, sacred bond. True, very true. Soupy Cappy for two SGD says, What's up, bros? Happy TikTok Tuesday, Dev. Low. I'm assuming this is some Dev meme that I'm not, not aware of. Uh, McWild11 for another 20 Kasarkas Arcs. Thank you, McWild, for all the money. It says, Viral Vids, Yetus Defeatus, Magic is Missing, Frying Face. There you go. Do you know uh, how much 20 Kasarkas Arcs is? I don't know. Well, it's like $2 because it's the same color as a $2 chip. It's 90 cents. Oh. Well, there you go. It's even less. <laughs> well, thank you for the 90 cents. 
Uh, Nilo for five dollars says magic risks what people call these things they don't understand. Everyone believes in magic until they know how the trick is performed. Magic is for rubes. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. That's why I don't like hearkening to magic as an explanation for something. You know, I, I understand the concept that it can be difficult to put into words specific things. So here, here's kind of, I think, the problem. And I think it's kind of the, the problem that Carl has in that conversation. Um, so when you talk to leftists, they do the sort of the deconstruction game, right? You know, this is very common in the what is a woman conversation, right? Like mm -hmm. we all intuitively know what a woman is. But since we all intuitively know it, we've never had to sit down and explain it to someone, right? Right. Because we just, yeah. something that you intuitively know. Um, so then you can get into a situation where some, some leftists can say like, well, you need to define a woman. And then they kind of trick you by creating a, a framework that's dishonest, which is the define a woman in a way that, ex that defines all women everywhere and doesn't define anyone that's not a woman framework, which is dishonest because that's not how we define anything. You can't, you can do that same framework with a door and they can't give you an answer. Um, and so because that trick exists, uh, some people get into a situation where they think, well, like, so the answer is there is a real answer, right? There's a real answer that you could give to define a woman. It's just a very complicated answer or it's a very complicated concept. And just because we intuitively understand it doesn't mean there isn't a, a non-magical answer to the question, right? That we could explain. You just don't know the answer because we never had to even bother thinking about it. It's all been intuitive. And so I think that leads some people down the pathway of saying, well, because they're sick of like <coughs> leftist deconstructive tricks and these arguments, they want to throw their hands up in the air and just say, we just need to start appealing to magic again. <laughs> so I think that's what's happening to some extent. Because yes, everything can be explained. Magic is such a great way just to explain things. Right. Uh, Neil for Joe says, magic is, I'm drunk, shut up. Oh, instead of magic risk, I meant magic is what people got you. Uh, Neil for no $2 says, I want Dev and Doomer to step up on a scale on stream. Yep. That's mean. Don't be mean. Okay. Uh, Neil for no $2 says, are YouTube personalities aristocrats? Pull it. Or, or is, are YouTube personalities in an aristocracy? Well, it is according to, to Quack. <laughs> There you go. Personal aristocracy. Yes, yes. Uh, fondue for Judar says the American view is sick, semper tyrannis or tyrants. That's right. Death to tyrants. Yes. Take them out. Take them out. That's the state slogan for Virginia, right? It is. Yeah. Yes. Right. Death to tyrants. Now, is that actually what Brutus supposedly said to Caesar, or is that just from, like, Shakespeare? I have no idea. Okay. Um, Nilo for $2 says, etymology is greater than Wikipedia. Nerds get wrecked. There you go. And Nilo for $2 says, chat is greater... Oops, I lost it. Chat is greater than YouTube aristocracy. <laughs> Boy. Boy. Lord of the Nerds is Lord of the Beers tonight. I know. Anilo for five dollars says thank you, Lord of the, the Beers. Lord of the Nerds says, is it better to be racist or culturally imperialistic in confronting groups that have close to one one cultural slash ethnic makeup? Is cultural imperialist imperialistic superior and why? Morally superior. An interesting question. Better to be racist or culturally imperialistic in confronting groups that have a close to one one cultural ethnic makeup. Um, well, what well, do you mean by that, culturally imperialistic? Well, I'm assuming he's talking about us being culturally imperialistic with a multi ethnic society or a multi racial mm -hmm. society. I guess we have one ethnicity, American. I mean, I would argue it's better to be <laughs> culturally imperialistic. I don't know. I don't know what that means. It means our culture Cultur rules. I mean, that's kind Cultural, of what we're doing anyway, right? I guess. We were trying to. We're trying to promote first world democracies in the world because we feel like that makes the world safer. That's 
cultural imper, imper, uh, imperialism, right? I, I don't know. You just oh, mean yeah, like whatever? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, fondue for five dollars says. So all we, so all we needed. Need to do to save us from socialism was to let Marx do acid. I think that would have made him more socialist, not less. <laughs> yeah. If he would have done ecstasy, sure it'd helped. be over. Right. So, so for two for two dollars says you can't escape the SIA, the Sami Intelligence Agency. <laughs> True. Always watching. Always watching. No, so always um, listening. I guess yeah, we should bring it up. Sammy made a picture thanks to Soldoge because Soldoge is a fucking rat bastard. A new picture? Oh no. It was on uh, Twitter. Soldoge is a rat bastard. Soldoge ratted me out to Sammy. Mm -hmm. you know, I can't I can't joke with Soldoge anymore because I know he'll rat me out. He's a rat. He's a dirty, see. dirty rat. Oh, I remember this. Yes. I should have so this. Soldoge had tweeted just randomly not at me i just saw it because i follow him maybe i shouldn't follow him <laughs> there was a video that was called the future of mobile phones you probably saw this on twitter and it's like it's got a couple of things it's got the see-through phone oh yeah i did which see is that. which i agree is fucking stupid i'm assuming no it's, not real. it's badass it looks cool but it's stupid it's like the dumbest thing you, you would not want a see-through phone and Soldos correctly says, why would I want a phone that's harder to find? Which I agree with. But there was another thing, which was like, they had these foldable uh, smartphones, which you could like roll up essentially. Yeah, to make I saw that too. Now, and I'm like, now that. So I said, as a joke, I, see, I said, the see-through one is dumb, LOL, but the foldy ones would be good if there was some way to make it stiff while using it. Make it stay stiff while using it, other than continually stroking it. <laughs> well, there's your little sex joke, obviously. Oh, yeah. Right. But no, that's true. If you could somehow create the little foldy ones that would like maintain the non-foldy status when you want it and fold up when you didn't want it, that'd be great design. Look, if you're if you have the clear phone and you're on the subway looking yeah. at porn on your phone, do people see? No, it's I'm assuming it's one way. Phone? I'm assuming it's one direction, right? Oh, okay. What do they see? I don't know. What do they see? At the back of the phone. I don't know. It doesn't show. Well, it's not real. That's not a real thing. Oh, I'm assuming it, it, that it thing in the video is fake. I'm assuming. I don't think it's real. Oh. They don't have that. Damn. They don't have a real see-through phone. Pretty right? Amazing, right, chat? Man. Search on the chat now. So anyway, yes. Soldo's ratted me out. It's Tammy. And he said, um, so there's the quote that I just read. Uh, would be good if there was some way to make it stay safe while using it other than continually stroking it. And there's me stroking up and down the phone. What are you stroking? Yes. My phone, I see. Obviously. Thank you for reporting this to me, Solidoge. <laughs> yeah, there's Solidoge reporting me to fucking Sammy. Saying, As you can see, Sammy, he's up to no good on Twitter. I was initially sharing a post about cool technology and the degenerate ruins it with a sick comment. Think of the children. And there's a little angry Solidoge Kirby. Sitch is a menace. And then Sammy says, I see. Thank you for pointing this to me, Soldoge. Yep. <laughs> She's writing it. And I responded, This is why we can't have nice things. Don't add this to the dojin. And I point to the bendy screens. Uh, hey, I was just talking about a bendable phone. Use context. And there's Sammy and Soldoge. X to doubt. Do, 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 do. Look, they got there the do, go. do, 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 do face on. Yes. Just... They have the do not believe face. So there you go. So there's it's fucking Solidos ratting me out through the popo. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Terrible. Anyways. Uh, Nilo for $2 says Sammy sexually identifies as reproducing as a plant. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but okay. Asexual. Plants aren't asexual. Oh, you're right. Even they plants the, are sexual. They have the yeah. That's what. That's why pollination exists. Yeah. Yeah. Even plants are getting it on. That's true. They're getting a little help though from bugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Stug for two dollars says, "Quote: I need fascism." Sitch clipped. <laughs> There There's a lot of things you could eclipse in that stream out of context. Uh, Fondue for two dollars says Ingram is working on her Tucker face. Oh, was she? I guess she was. <laughs> Plant says. I, I don't know how you thought that was her getting turned on. She made a. She made a. I want to fuck you face for like a one frame. No, nah, wasn't even close to that. Because it. You know why? It's because it looked like. It looked like she was biting her lip. That's why. She wasn't, but it looked like she was biting her lip. You don't really? think so? Look, no, listen, it didn't. I'll send you the picture. She wasn't, but it looks like it. And this frame, when you glance at it, it looks like she's biting her lip. If you don't blow it up, you kind of shrink it down to the size of the watch together room. So, anyways. Uh, fondue for five hours says, I bet Adam picked this video. He didn't expect to get triggered by Dev. <laughs> True. Dev was making all kinds of naughty jokes and stuff. Oh my. That's right. My word. I like, yeah, you thought, you thought I was going to get beat up on that video. Nope. You were the one getting beat up. <laughs> I was. Right. Not fair. Uh, Stock for two hours says, Dev, it's, the quote Lord of the Ring Golem, yeah. Golem, yeah. Uh Blaine's Escape Quarter for five hours says, Adam, I am available any free day you have to talk about anime. Anything to avoid <laughs> Marvin Yarvin. Definitely. There you go. Uh, Spencer Harmon for 13 months. Thank you so much, Spencer. Says Carl for the win. I don't understand why you guys can't understand what he's saying. Well, there you go. I did understand. Fuck you, Carl. Fuck you, Spence. <laughs> and Carl. Fuck you. I know you're just trolling, but thank you. Thank you, Spence. Uh, Blaine's Escape Quarter for $2 says, I can explain Neil's theory. I learned it. Don't, I learned it. Don't agree. I don't get, I don't understand the reference here. Yeah, I don't either. Um, who is Neil? Neil is V Radio. Oh, okay, I do get it. I learned it. Don't agree. Gotcha. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? He's like, I learned I learned it, so I don't agree. Right. Oh, okay. Right. That's what he's saying. Tommy for June for ten dollars says, I super chatted Tim like four times now, and he's never read one, so this one is for you. <laughs> well, thank you, Tommy. <laughs> if you guys think Mill Strat is degenerate, you should look into some of the cheating in the Dragon Ball Super TCG. Oh, jeez. I, you know, like a million, million yonks ago, when Sitch was a wee lad in middle school, I used to play the Dragon Ball Z card game, the TC, the Dragon Ball Z card game. That was a lot of fun. I have no clue what the fuck it's like now with the Dragon Ball Super card game is, but milling is degenerate. Milling why is do, degenerate. Why do people super chat, Tim, when, I mean, I guess it's like a lottery if you even read them, so... I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's a lottery and also people just to support, I guess, overall. Okay. I guess people yeah. do see it in the chat, right? Yeah, they want other people in the chat to see their opinion stuff. So. Thanks for the super chat, Tommy. Yeah, thank you. The extra readers. Stoney for $5 says, does this mean you'll debate me now? I'm not going Stoney, okay, so Stoney <laughs> keeps memeing. He wants to debate me. He wants to debate that the last season of Game of Thrones is actually good. That's not worth I it. I mean, debate. that's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridi That's like if someone wanted to come on and debate me that the sky is really purple and green and not blue. Yeah. Like, no. Sorry. It's just a waste of time, Stoning. You're just wrong. You're just wrong and everyone knows it. Okay? Everyone just knows you're wrong. He's going to point to... There's like a few interesting aspects to it, but... No, there isn't. They don't add up to something you could call good. Why the fuck does the Dragon Ball Super card game have Super Saiyan 4 Goku as a card when that's Super Sa That's just not even canon anymore. That's not even part of Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Super replaced GT. GT's not even canon. Why the fuck is Super Saiyan 4 Goku in this fucking shit? What the fuck is happening? Did he like it when they made the cripple that came? <laughs> I'm 
It's I so laughable. Did you like that, Stoney? Did you like when the cripple became the king? That guy's going to be king for 24 hours tops. Did you like that? He's going to uh... get murdered so quick. Yeah, but he can see the future in his little wheelchair, Adam. Littlefinger is going to be like, oh, <laughs> this is easy. Well, Littlefinger's dead, so. Littlefinger's son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to avenge my father's death. There you go. Look, maybe the... he maybe maybe he liked when the uh, the Ice King died in the dumbest way possible after a single episode. The foot washer boy is going to be king, right? <laughs> He's going to be out here to wash your feet. Stat- well, I'm king now. Maybe he liked when Daenerys just becomes like insane for like literally no reason. I really like that. I kind of like that part. Though. Yeah, okay, of course you did. <laughs> well, I like it for its for its nihilism, but it's just but it's like it's just it's like not good storytelling. It's not yeah, it's not even like she just becomes like more evil or wicked. She's like, I'm just gonna become Hitler. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I know. Can we calm down? To my, please. It's horrible. For, yes. It's horrible storytelling, but I do admire her tenacity. <laughs> She's there like, I'm go. gonna take out this whole fucking city. Right. It's like, oh, I'm so concerned about the common folk. Now I'm Hitler. It's like, wait, what? Can we, wait, what? Can we stop I know. this? It's so, old. it's so over the top, too. It's, it's so completely stupid. against character for the entire yes. eight seasons. Yes. And, like, it wasn't like they could have made her become more, like, ruthless, right? As as she realizes that in order to main, maintain power, she has to become more and more ruthless. Right. Because totally. people are ruthless in order to compete against them. She has to be ruthless, right? That doesn't mean you become fucking Genghis Khan at the last second and just kill a bunch of innocent people for literally no fucking reason whatsoever. Like yeah. literally no reason. There was literally no reason for her to just murder all those people. It did nothing. It did she was absolutely mad. nothing. She was angry. <laughs> but but for no reason. She was like, I'm angry because yesterday you killed my friend. So let me just kill a bunch of random ass fucking people for no reason because I'm mad because something happened yesterday, even though I already won. Yeah. And did you watch the behind the scenes? Like, oh my god, I love the fucking the D and D behind the scenes when they they explain what's happening. It's like the dumbest fucking shit you've ever heard. I didn't she watch the those... behind the scenes. Oh my god, you gotta watch it. It's so fucking stupid. They're like, they're oh. rationalizing their horrible decision. It's yes, it's so great because because David Benioff and the other D name who I forget they like talk about their the show with such like air of importance. oh I know fucking up their own asses yes and it's always like they always say like the dumbest thing they're like in that moment you know she hears the bells ring and she's like it's not enough I need more I need more vengeance you're like okay thank you idiot so she's just fucking evil okay is a psychopath like people generally people can become darker and more like malicious over time people don't just become sociopaths that's not how yeah, it works. you don't just become yeah. a sociopath one day so yeah there's steps uh, yeah well no like even then I mean, people generally don't falling in love there's steps to right people don't generally become sociopaths right they can become more evil over time and just become you, you don't generally become a sociopath so right yeah anyway and it, again it wasn't even set it was set up so lazily because they could have set up some scenario where like i don't know it, here's here's the here's the real answer here's the real answer to the question they are shit writers that don't care about story um, so as long as they could use the books as a basis they could basically uh cheat i said not cheat but they were, they were able to be okay because they have some material to work with it became very clear in the last couple seasons that D and D's main uh, process for for creating t- television was just the visual language of the scene, and so exactly translating uh, the written word into cool visuals on on screen. Right, and that's that can be fine if they're working off of a book where an author wrote those things that they can then use. Right. But when they're not, but they're, when they're not, when they don't have an author's work to use, and they have to actually write the words themselves, it all falls apart, which is what happened with Game of Thrones. And 
the real reason the destruction of King's Landing occurred in Game of Thrones was just because they thought it would look very cool visually to have the scene where everyone gets burned to death and everyone dies. And it did. It looked great, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it did. It looked really good. It was a very good looking scene. And so that was the that's the real answer. They didn't do it for any story reason. They did it because they had a, they said, wouldn't it be cool if visually we had this shot? Now let's try to fucking shoehorn this into our our finale in let's the just worst way possible. Totally throw away eight seasons of character development. Right. right. To get this really cool looking shot. Yes. What a joke. Now, it's possible in the book, which will probably never ever get finished, that um, there'll be a scene where, like, Daenerys shoots dragon fire at something that accidentally causes King's Landing to explode because there's supposedly a bunch of dragon fire hidden underneath it, right? That could be... See, that would have been more realistic, but then you couldn't have the scene of Daenerys just, like, fucking melting the city. So, anyway... We're done with Game of Thrones. Forever. I'm not debating They're, you, Stoney. What do you this mean? is fucking stupid. <laughs> Stag for five dollars. Next season. We're not done with Game of Thrones. But next season. There's no next season. Yeah, there is. We've got a Talk. whole other season coming. You mean not of Game of Thrones, of Dance of Dragons, House of yeah, Dragons. Yeah, House of the Dragon. Same okay. thing. Whatever. Game of Thrones prequels. I never really liked anyway. That that's gonna. And I think it's gonna just get even worse and worse. Because um, I hope not. You know, well, people liked the king character, and he's gone now. So it's just gonna be a bunch of assholes doing asshole things to each other. <laughs> so I'm not sure how the show's gonna how to continue. But gonna I mean, be it was an pretty, asshole it was, on off. But it was better than She Hulk. Okay, well, that's a very low <laughs> bar. <laughs> It's like it's better She Hulk and it was better than Lord of the Rings. It's like, okay, well, we have some of the two worst shows oh my ever God. created, you know. It's like, yeah, I guess it's better. That's true. Lord of the Rings. Oh God. Lord of the Rings was that made She Hulk look shows. good. Yeah, it actually did, which is Lord funny. of the Rings was just yeah. fucking you couldn't even hate watch Lord of the Rings. It's so boring. Yeah, exactly. So boring, yeah. At least she Hulk was laugh. bad because I hated it, but it wasn't it didn't bore me the way Lord of the Rings bored me. So, oh, God, that was tragic. <laughs> that was one of the worst. That was, Lord of the Rings is one of the worst written television shows I've ever watched. It's, it's bafflingly, awfully written. Like on like a level of bad writing you don't generally see from professional professional television anymore. And then all all the wokesters out there trying to gaslight everyone into how great it was. Oh my God! Please. Stop. When I saw, remember Xander Hall. When I, I saw that eagle kill that dragon, I just came it's in not my even, pants. It's, it's like not even relevant in the story. <laughs> it's like literally like a one frame, a CG eagle like attacks a dragon. He's like, I'm so happy. I saw an eagle attack a dragon in a computer screen. <laughs> it's All right. So ridiculous. But there were so many people on Twitter and whatnot trying to gaslight everyone. Oh, it's so amazing. Oh, it was so good. Go oh, good. Well, it's because it became political because um, it became this weird political narrative of, you know, uh, Mary Sue character, right? Which a is a, which is a bizarre. black elf gobble gobble gobble. Yeah, and also a black elf. Yeah, I forgot black elf. Right. Um, but I was right. I should have rubbed that in in rags his face and everyone's face. I turned out to be right. Because remember what I said? I said they're setting Galadriel up to be wrong. Oh yeah, and and to be the one that ends up fucking everyone over, and that's exactly what happened. Because if she had just stayed on that fucking boat and gone back to wherever the fuck that boat went to, then Sauron would have fucking died in the ocean, <laughs> and God, none of that, that shit would have so happened. Dumb. So that is fucking insane. That I, I don't know. I can't wrap my mind around how fucking dumb all that was. Yeah. But okay. Anyways. Okay. Oh, look, we're almost done. Doug for five dollars says, I'm going to yell at you on Twitter about local realism until you block me. What do you think about that? Well, there you go. Don't do it, Stug. Come on. Yes. That's right. 
Stug or someone was supposed to come on and explain local realism at some point. That never happened. So, whatever. Uh, become the knight. That. Thanks so much, Become the Knight, for two months. So CT, the CT team are supreme queens who can cream jeans. There you go. Sweet. Thank you, Become the Knight. Uh, Stug for five dollars says, so Sitch, the debt ceiling is the money we are willing to pledge, but we pledged beyond the debt ceiling before the next year and then raise it. Um, I mean, that you can look at it that way, sure. The budget is, is like the pledge. pledge. But we pledged beyond the debt ceiling. Yeah, sure. I guess you can say it that way. But we pledged beyond the debt ceiling before the next year and then raise it. Yeah, I guess that's sort of accurate-ish, sure. Uh, Paul Dellinger for five dollars says the debt ceiling came up as a way to make it easier. Excuse me, this ceiling came up as a way to make it easier for the Treasury to pay bills. Beforehand, Congress had to approve every issuance of new bonds. Yes, yes, I know that. But the question is, why even have? If Congress is the one that creates the budget in the first place, and Congress knows that the the Treasury is going to have to issue bonds to cover whatever the deficit is. Why Why should the Treasury then have to ask Congress for permission in the first place? Why not it should just skip be an that automatic step process. entirely? Yeah. yeah, it should be an automatic process, yeah. When you talk about, like, when you talk about, like, needless red tape government regulation, that seems to be entirely needless. And so that was my question is, why have anything like that whatsoever? So, now but it I might do have, remember so again, that, Paul. Yeah, and so, because it might have made sense back in gold standard days that there was some rationale to do this, but... A long story short for two hours says Dem Democrats held up the debt ceiling over budgeted border wall. Oh, is, is that true? I kind of vaguely remember that. Did they do that? Oh, they I thought got they, you. I thought they crumbled on that kind of quickly, though. Am I they got remember? you. Trump signs budget deal and suspends. Let's see. Trump. Trump debt ceiling border wall. Oh, listen, I hope I hope the Democrats have done bullshit on the debt ceiling because then maybe the people on the right will wake up to how fucking stupid it is so uh let's see trump signs budget deal suspends debt ceiling that's all i see using pentagon money to funding of the border wall i don't know i'll have to look at this more on non stream because i can't find the answer quickly but i hope you're oh, right. yes i hope you're right i want to spread as much blame about debt ceiling as many people as possible uh, Ethereum GG for five dollars says, "Read the book Marriage: A History. Marriage has evolved from land, dowry, kingship, etc. Marriage for love is relatively new over the past hundred years." Great yep. point. That is true. That's what yeah, I kept that's why this, saying. Yeah, and that's and why people that in the of, chat were laughing at me. They're like, "Oh, Adam." Blah, ha, ha. Right, but they don't know. You don't know anything. Listen to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what anyone says. It just because they agree with them, they don't actually know either. They yes, because they in, their intuitive elephant wants that gray. So. Carl is destroying these midwits. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, lives in Dev's Wall specifically for two dollars. Says I want in on your ten society. Where do I apply? <laughs> there you go. Listen, if we have a ten society, Dev lives in Dev's Walls. We'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're uh, in, <laughs> Lieutenant Havoc. 62 for $20 says several hours behind but because I was playing uh, MTG with MLD and EDH there's a lot of ac acronyms there mm -hmm. is better than you control JMAC but not bad but I want to say before the end that Sargon is the best guest with Dev a close second awesome streams dude well I'm glad you enjoyed it yeah you? thanks thanks for the super chat nice yeah I feel say. like there's a lot of people that love when we talk to Carl a lot of people that hate when we talk to Carl like it's very like polarizing it is so. well it's nice to have them on a tuesday stream when people can you know stick around or a lot of people sure. don't like it when he comes into the sunday sunday stream and, and we get on and hand. changes yeah, the topic right then that but, might be why some people are very upset by something but sure. when he comes in here we can just do any topic right so win-win there you go uh blaine's escape and obviously we like to talk to him which is why we keep having him on yeah. Uh, Blaine's Escape Quarter for $5 says most married tax benefits are just two times the singles when married are filing jointly, so you don't really get a benefit. It's just two people. Well, I mean, I kind of rattled off the things you get a benefit from, but whatever. If you want to advocate for having benefits for married people, I'm all on 
forward with that. Do we don't get a tax break filing? I guess you you've done the I guess you've done the filing separately versus filing jointly and compared the two if you know that. Because I don't I mean I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Well, I haven't done that because I've never been married, so I can't. Well, I yeah, but I mean, as a so, married person, I we could do my wife and I could file separately right. if we wanted to. It's just easier to file together. So, uh, just Abby for five. Aussie Buck says the monarch of Britbong land. My Republican instincts are triggered. Get the monarchy out of Australia. True. Bruges for five for five hundred yen says I'm like five hundred. I'm like five hours behind, but please tell me someone has pushed back against Carl's ridiculous romance and marriage bullshit. Hello, arranged marriages. Yeah, we, sh we should have brought that up, but we didn't. we didn't. I literally did, and I couldn't believe the clapback I got in the chat. I was like, really? Well, when he, I think the confusion, and maybe this is where the clapback was coming when he said magic and marriage, he didn't mean like romance magic. Well, what do you mean then? He was meant like, you know, the, the esoteric magic that, that the animating force magic that produces results in society. Look, I. When he was, but he was talking about like the sacred bond, your sacred I, word. What, what are you talking about? Okay. I agree. I understand what, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe he did mean it that way. Do you I'm think when sure. they had arranged marriages, it was like the sacred bond you are joining together? Well, they're kind of what, like you sort of were, but it's more like the sacred bond of, the, state. the houses, yeah, right of, of the rod, right. It wasn't like the sacred bond of like relationships and love and anything. So, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I just I had no clue we were going to talk about gay marriage today. Uh, WTF one A one A for five dollars says it's around a hundred k to have a test tube baby. Most LGBT people can't afford that to start. Well, that's true. That is definitely true. But that will get cheaper over time. That's for gay men. That's the situation. But for gay women, I mean, I think they just do it the old fashioned way. You know? Um, yeah, right. You're saying get a sperm donor. Sure. Or they just have one night get stand someone or ask a friend. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, we I don't, don't know. have a I, kid. Well, I don't we know. want you to be our sperm donor. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I don't know the answer. Like, I don't know. So for lesbian couples who have a lot more kids, I believe, than, than gay male couples, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'd be curious. Okay. Ones that, ones that have kids that are not adopted, do they do they opt for the, uh, the, the put the sperm in me via the doctor or do they have someone fucked up? I don't know what the numbers are. <laughs> okay, Sitch. I, I found the question. Yeah. Well, we, we were talking earlier about having kids being you know a hassle a huge yeah. headache why would anyone right. do this having kids thing? so i found well, from a, a way purely to... cold logical you know vulcan right. perspective yeah. from a vulcan perspective okay right yes. let's include that too well that's the point i I'm found not, a way having children look i found a way to lower the hassle level level to near zero for you okay what is your it? hot lesbian couple friends <laughs> they say but sitch we want to <laughs> have kids right and they want you to impregnate both of them so uh -huh. that they can raise, you know, two kids, a, a beautiful yeah. two kids. Right. So you're going to be the father of the lesbian couple's right. kids. Do, I, do you still say no? Do you be like, ah, oh, no, having kids is too much stress. <laughs> Look, they're going to oh, no, do listen. The, they're doing I'm, everything. Listen, if, 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 if the hot lesbian couple says, uh, hey, Sitch, can you fuck both of us? In a crazy th night of threesome sex, until and, and you have to keep doing this until we get pregnant. <laughs> I'm gonna say, "Woe is me! Oh, the work, the work required to do this. Oh, woe is me! I don't now, know if I can come on, don't get emotional. Do keep the Vulcan, keep uh, the Vulcan on. No, oh no, the logic of the situation compels me just to to not want to do this. Oh no." <laughs> Fuck yes, I'm gonna do that. Okay, of course that's what I'm I, gonna fucking do that. That's what, what I thought. About? That's of what course. I thought. Right, but I'm not raising the kids. They're raising the kids. I'm just providing the the, the seed. Okay. Will you I'm ever... just providing the meat? I'm not the one raising the kids. <laughs> Will you? Uh, 
I mean, will you be interested? Would you want to? Would you be interested to check in on the kids from time to time, or would you be like? Uh, I mean, I, I know, like personally myself, I, I, it probably would, yeah, I probably would, but I wouldn't, because here's the thing, and I would assume that they, I would assume it would be like an interesting situation, because unless you're like really good friends with them, like I don't know, maybe they'd be like, oh, you're like the Godfather, right? But they would probably be like some literal contract that they'd want you to sign beforehand that says that you you would not your, take the kids yeah you yeah you course. have to give away your parental rights in the first place because yes. you'd be worried that maybe they'd be like oh watch well, i want to raise my fucking child you know because it is technically because it is my child right i want my kid <laughs> right so what if they're what if what if you go to visit them okay yeah kids 10th birthday mm -hmm. and you notice they're, they're trans teaching the, the child crt Oh my god! I'm gonna be like, <laughs> they okay. Have, I'm gonna they pull have... out. I'm gonna pull out the contract. I'm gonna pull out the insemination contract. I'm like, did you see in in clause seventeen bylaw oh, thirty five? Smart! You snuck Boom. the CRT clause in. The CRT that says no CRT, no queer theory. Bam! Look and at I slap that. it on the table and I say, get that CRT out of here. You lost your parental rights. No critical theory right here you should have read that contract when i was banging you i had a lawyer <laughs> i had a lot while i was hammering you i had a lawyer hammer out a contract that had like there's like 20 pages of nice like, of things to do this yes we think ahead there you go listen if you want the primo sitch baby okay <laughs> you gotta sign on the dotted line yes <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good question. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the topic, but okay. <laughs> what do you mean it did? No, it did. It, it kind of did. <laughs> Stuck for $2 says Magic the Gathering. There you go. <laughs> there you That's go. pretty funny. Right. Okay. Uh, Drew the Diamond for $2 says the harm turning a mental disorder into an identity that is a harm yes that's true yes i think he's talking uh, about gayness though oh i don't think he's talking about gayness but if you are i disagree because gayness is obviously not a mental disorder by any of our standard definitions of mental disorder uh forking around for five hours says just admit it gay marriage is the mild morales of spider-man <laughs> Interesting analogy. I like that. Interesting, yeah. Uh, I have no for problem with Miles Morales, so it works for me. Well, it's funny because the Into the Spider Verse is easily the best Spider-Man movie ever made, and probably one of the best, if not the best, comic book movies ever made, in my opinion. Yeah, I um, agree. But I really but liked. Such. I really liked. I think Dan Slott was the writer. I really liked Dan Slott's Ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker Spider-Man. And when they killed him off in the dumbest fucking way possible and replaced him with Miles, I was not happy. And Miles was really shitty in the comic. And nowhere near anywhere as good as in the, the in cartoon the movie? movie. Oh, yeah. okay. So, the animation of that movie is just incredible. It is. It is. Uh, Fondue for Fight R says, hey, the Magic, uh, the Gathering 40K crossover decks were really good and flavorful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I don't have a problem with crossover, but I understand some people do. So, there, wasn't there also? I don't know if they ever did it or they just talked about doing it. Wasn't there also a Magic: The Gathering Doctor Who crossover? That everyone got triggered about Magic: The Gathering know. Doctor Who. Uh, Magic: The Gathering Doctor. I don't know if it's Who. out. Wow. I don't know if it's out yet. The Magic Gathering Doctor Who is confirmed release on October 13th of this year. Okay, so not out yet. Yeah, that seems real weird. Because Magic Gathering is fantasy based. So that's very strange to go to Doctor Who, science fiction. Yeah, that's but... totally wrong. Yeah. Right. How's that going to work? That's bullshit. Stony for five dollars says, <laughs> it's a good reference. Sitch, you're dodging. You dodging me would make Piccolo proud. <laughs> well, I give you mad points for the uh, DBZA reference. Who's Piccolo? Uh, he's a character from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, okay. So, he dodges. Dragon Ball Z abridged reference, yes. Always trying to teach Gohan how to dodge. 
Stuck for $2 says, the sky is actually purple, though, not a meme. That's why I said that, and I said, oh, they're going to talk about one of the sunsets. So I sky is black. There you go. 50% of the actually. time. Stuck for $5 says, a small channel called Tolkien Lore started off uh, Ring of Power episode one saying, there's a lot to like, though he went in skeptical. Each episode had sadder thumbnails. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for the real big you know, Tolkien nerds, because I'm sure they were very excited. They weren't, didn't really care about the politics of it, and they just were like, oh, this is just dog shit. <laughs> That's horrible. Yep. Uh, Lives and Dev's Wall specifically for $2 says, Adam, thanks for the assist with Dev about cat. Yeah, we'll get we'll get you that cat. Matthew Newman for five New Zealand dollars. Thank you. Says the debt ceiling used to be Debt ceiling, period. Used to be negotiated debt per policy, period. Changed during World War One for expediency, period. Watch your lotus eaters, period. Better analogy, drive through not paying ATRS. Oh, 18 million supreme. Nice. Uh, better analogy, drive through not paying? Um, oh. Um, I see, because you're saying... Because the drive-thru, you order, but you don't get the food. Well, they hand you the food. I have the drive-thru generally before they pay, right? Um, I don't think about that. Maybe. No way. Yeah. You pay, and then you get the food. They'll give you oh, you're food, right. yeah, what am I saying? you pay. <laughs> well, it probably depends where you live. I've had both, right? No, you're right. You're right. What the fuck am I talking about? You always pay first. Yeah, what, what are you about? talking about? I'm high. About? Listen, it's been it's two in the morning, and it's been a long time since I eat fast food. You always pay at the first window, and you get your food at the second window. You're 100 percent right. I don't know what the fuck I'm oh, talking about. Oh, two fancy windows. Look at this. Yes. Someone lives in yes. the big city. Oh, yeah, it's true. Do you There's not usually have two windows at the fast food places you go to? There's a town in California. Wait, <laughs> Do you not usually have two windows? I mean, I mean, I've been yeah, like, look, I'm in Los like, Angeles. We have the two window thing here too, but they're in small towns. Gonna say. A lot of times you don't have two. Well, windows. no, it's weird. Like whenever I've been to a checkers, it's one window. Um, but whenever I've been to a Burger King or McDonald's or a Wendy's, it's always, almost always two windows. Sure. So. There's a small town in Northern California where they've outlawed right. the drive through. There's absolutely no drive through. What was the point the of doing it? Town. Well, I think they did it because they thought it would cause pollution with a bunch of cars idling in drive throughs It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, it's, it's just weird being in a town that has no absolutely no drive throughs That's so stupid. You always have to get out of the car. To get to out of the car, yeah. Yeah. That's so dumb. San Diego planned to ban new... Oh, no, that's not it. Or, I typed in Calif small town California outlaw drive through I can't find... But I don't know. That sounds really fucking stupid. That sounds horrible. Look, stupid. Drew, I was right about Drew. I knew it. Oh, you're talking about gay Drew, being mental illness? Drew, Drew don't be stupid. Drew is one of those anti-gay people. Come on, Drew. Come on. Drew, what did the gay people do to you? I know. They touched his tra-la-la. <laughs> well, look, if they did that, then... Remember that song? You have every right. You have every right to not like them. If they touch your wee wee without your permission. <laughs> Do you remember that song? No. You touch my tra la la? No, I don't remember that song. You, you know that song. It sounds about. awful though. It's like this like it's like this Euro trash song. Like I would say, Ooh, you touched my tra la la. Ooh, my ding ding <laughs> dong. Have you never heard this fucking song? <laughs> oh my god. How did you never fucking hear this? That song? sounds. It sounds like. It sounds like your your guy. Adam doesn't know about the "Touch My Tralala" song. God. It sounds See, like yeah, weird. Micro it Omega. sounds like weird Al Yankovic. Micro Mega, yes, Gunther. No, it's a real fucking song. It's a, a real, real song. A real Yankovic style song. It was not a Yankovic. It was a. Re it was like a Euro trash song. One of those like weird Euro beat songs. Disgusting. Disgusting. Anyway. Well, I'll send you a link afterwards. Okay? No, I'm not going to listen to it. I didn't like it when you sang it. It's a funny song. 
Drew the dog. It's got man. sexy. It's got sexy women in the video, Adam. I mean, okay. It's well, like, I'll, I'll watch the video then. Well, I'll, it's like it's like two. <laughs> it's like two forty p. So you're watching like blurry sexy women. It's <laughs> not <all> socks. Oh <laughs> you, know, you can interpret. Hilarious. Can, I don't know. Is if it it's recorded anything, from Friday night videos. It might as well be. I might as well be. I think I might have saw it on Friday night videos. Gunther, the Ding Dong song. That's what it's called. The Ding Dong song. Oh, you touch I can't my Can't wait to check it out. God, I can't believe you don't know about the touch my troll. I thought that was like a common song everyone knew about. <laughs> Jeez, that well, I know it's weird. It's like I thought everyone knew about the Rasputin song, but I guess not. I think I've heard it before. To be honest with you, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll hear the song and you'd be like, "Oh, that song." <laughs> Road rotisserie okay, anyway. protocol for five dollars says my birthday was Sunday. Adam, listen to touch my tala after stream, please. There you go. Well, I'll do it just for your birthday, just for a happy right. birthday for you. Uh, Drew Dogman for five for two dollars says gay was pulled from the DSM because feels not science. That's not that's that's not true though. And I I feel like I I know I don't feel like I know I've gone over this on uh, stream Sunday. Being gay does not match the definition of mental illness in the DSM now, and it didn't when they removed it. So it was not based off feels. It was based on science. So that is inaccurate. That's something I've said a million times. The only problem people have, the only psychological problems people have from being gay is external societal pressure, uh, period. That is the only problem. And that is not how mental illnesses are not defined by such things. So, and that external that alone, pressure anyway. is the pressure that you, Drew, are trying to put on people, right? Right. Uh, lives in Deswall specifically for $2, says, y'all need to know about Turquoise Jeep Records. I don't know what that is. What is that? I'm checking it out right now. What is that? What is it? I mean, I'm not learning a lot, but. Okay. Uh, let me refresh the Streamlabs here. Quick. Who is this guy? Uh, the most dope for two dollars says Las Vegas fast food marriage divorces are all doing. Las Las Vegas fast food marriages like drive the marriages slash divorces are doing all the spiritual damage to the concept of marriage, Inf infinitely more so than gay marriage. Very true. It can be taken seriously with gay marriage, not with Las Vegas weddings slash divorces. Very true. Yeah, and it's weird because you'd think you'd want to attack the drive-through. You, you think you'd want to attack all those things first, right? Like gay marriage, like that should be the last thing you want. Like that should be the last element you attack. And the fact that it's often the first and the only element that people attack brings suspect to the entire concept, in my opinion. Yeah, it right. makes you think they're really just assisted by gay people and they right. can't take it. They're like, oh my God. I know Flint Flossy from... From Ethan Van Skyver listens to Flint Flossie all the time. So that's Turquoise J Records. Right. Flint Flossie's kind of a like crazy rapper. I don't know if he's just on YouTube or what, but he's pretty fun got some pretty funny shit. Cool. The most dope for two dollars says Sargon taking the Lauren Witsky midwit position. Well like that's the, not I, I've never mean. liked the I've never liked the insult midwit. <laughs> I don't like that it's like come back at the par and like par whatever the word is. It's come back at the, the usage all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, midwit position of the her one percent of the population to which Corlin said isn't just them. It's all the straight people who agree with slash support them. Tag me the next time I'll destroy Sargon. Well, there you go. We'll do that. We'll bring you in next time. Yeah, I just I fun I fundamentally. The problem for me is, like Sitch said, I didn't choose to be heterosexual. I don't think you choose to be homosexual. And I just, I don't think it's fair to, like, dictate how other people live their lives. Yep. I mean, to a certain extent, yeah, don't let them run around being serial killers and shit like that. But in a place where you're literally doing no harm to anyone. Right. Let him go. Well, you're you're harming the, the magic of marriage. Oh, please, Sitch. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. 
The old Oge for $2 says, just so we're all clear, the Taliban finally win after 20 years of war, only to realize that we killed basically all their people who could do the whole governing thing. So now, they, now they've now they said, F, government, go to war with Iran, question mark. I mean, that could happen, which is scary. But... Yeah. I haven't been following that. I saw the whole meme thing about there was some Taliban people that were, like, upset now that they actually had the government. <laughs> I didn't really, like, track that story, so that is pretty funny. Governing is hard. Yeah, governing can be a lot harder than fighting a war. Uh, dialogue always for two dollars oh. says, "You're such." A, this is a real dialogue always, by the way. So of like course. Sure. You're such a hypocrite, sitch. You said that gay marriage doesn't erode the institution of marriage because they can adopt and be religious too, but you don't think that whiteness can be separated from white people, <laughs> ha? I mean, that's essentially. He's the level got of, you. He's totally got, got you. Got me there. That's, that's essentially the level of a, of a DA argument very often. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Soul Doge for two dollars says, "Glad to see Sitch getting into a shouting with Sargon and walking away from it." Back when I made a sarcastic comment, Sitch freaked, yelled about having the bank seizing my house. How he would answer the JQ for me? Real persecution stuff. What? That's true. That did happen. Yeah. That didn't happen. No, there's a slash sarcasm at the end of this. Oh, okay, good. Right, that is true. Uh, CT for two says, I'm arguing with a man who thinks he can't beat up a dragon, which is the best sandwich. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is the best sandwich at McDonald's? And why am I correct that it's the saucin, sausage McMuffin? Uh, you are incorrect. Ooh, yeah. You are incorrect. If we're going breakfast, I like the egg McMuffin, not the sausage McMuffin. Who can You're eat that sausage? Oh my god. The the sausage is not bad. Hey, you said the egg? You... Wait, the, the sausage McMuffin has an egg on it, doesn't it? Or is it the sausage and egg McMuffin? It's a, I believe it's a sausage McMuffin with egg or just a sausage McMuffin with no egg. Oh, I see. Well, if but I had to choose between that, I, I always get the egg with... Ham. I get... Oh, yeah. I, I think I would usually get the ham one. You're right. Yeah, so egg McMuffin has ham on it. But I mean, I don't know. Big Macs are pretty good. Right. That's okay. It. Well, when it when it comes to breakfast, you're all wrong because obviously McGriddles are way better than any of the shit. Oh yeah, the McGriddle. About. Yes, the McGriddle is okay. better. But right, do they right. even have McGriddle anymore? I'm not sure they do. I don't know. It's been forever since I've been to McDonald's. But yeah, I have no. Now clue. I want to go to McDonald's. What time do they start serving breakfast? I used to do a thing back when I would go to McDonald's where I would like stay up. Because I'd stay up really late, especially at college. I'd stay up to four in the morning, just so like so, just because they'd start serving breakfast near me at four in the morning again, just so I could get a McGriddle. Hell yeah, we've done that before. <laughs> just to get the McGriddle again. Oh yeah. Okay, best non-breakfast sandwich at uh, McDonald's is obviously the spicy chicken crisp, the, Mc, the spicy McChicken sandwich. Really? Yes. I'm just gonna go with Big Mac, traditional Big Mac. So, I like Big Macs, but every time I eat one, I feel like I want to die. No, I know. It's the weirdest thing. It's like, oh, this it's is so delicious. The and so then an hour you. later, you're like, oh my God, why did I eat that? Yes, all that bread. I know. All it's that got, sauce. It has like, extra, like, kills literally has extra bread in the middle. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Yes, yes. It's like so, as, if a, if, as if a bun isn't enough bread. Here, have an extra <laughs> bun in the middle. I think it was the combination of the extra bread. I think it's the sauce, too, because I remember, so when I first started eating Big Macs, um, I was like, I really like the sauce, but I feel like I want to die every time I eat this. Maybe if I get just like, because I just start ordering like normal burgers with the sauce. I just, right, can I get some yeah. Big Mac sauce? Um, it's Thousand Island I'd, dressing, isn't it? I think it it's, is. Yeah, yeah, well, it's that and something. It's, it's not exactly that, but that's like the base of it, so... And I would feel better. I wouldn't feel like I wanted to die the way I'd feel like when I eat a Big Mac. I Have you done that? Great. Have you got like a quarter pounder with Big Mac sauce? I would always do that, yeah. You can I do would, that? I, I'm going to try Yes. That. You can, because after, because I'd eat the Big Macs, I'm like, I want to die. So I'm like, fuck it. Because what I used to do when I was in college, I would get, um, you get a hamburger, which is, mm -hmm. or a McDouble, with no, well, I get with no cheese because I'm like, so it's not I get, I always order, I try to get off the dollar menu. So I get like a hamburger or a McDouble and I get a chicken crisp sandwich or the spicy chicken crisp sandwich for like a dollar. And I get, uh, I'd ask for the Big Mac sauce and they'd just give me Big Mac sauce on it. You ask, you oh. say, can I get a, you know, a hamburger with Big Mac sauce or McDouble with Big Mac sauce? 
Oh, okay. we'll give it to you. They're I'm not going to gonna be like, no, you can only get the Big Mac sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay, so sometimes you can be a little no, bitches, okay. man. How dare you? can even you? get Big Mac sauce on a fucking chicken crisp sandwich if you want. <laughs> Look, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for the chicken McNuggets with Big Mac sauce. Now, I don't know if they can do that because I think, I don't know Look, if they have like a, a thing. Don't, don't you can try ruin it. it for me. Because whenever I've asked for it, I've always asked for it on something. I, I don't know if they have like a packet that they can I give you. I want the you chicken the McNuggets sauce. with the Big Mac sauce. You can, you can try. Maybe there is a packet that they can give you or, or something. I don't know. Just squirt it in the thing. <laughs> squirt it in the thing. It's just. You could try that. I never tried that. Let's just... Smather it all over my McNuggets. <laughs> I used to... I never tried that. I should have tried that. I never tried that. I should have tried that. That sounds good. Because um, whenever I get... We'll see. I would always get two sauces. I'd always get the sweet and sour sauce. Mm -hmm. and sweet and sour is good. Yep. I forget. Oh, barbecue. the barbecue. Yep. The barbecue and sweet and sour. That's what I'd always get, yeah. And there's the sauces. there's honey mustard and there's spicy mustard. I don't like mustard, so yeah, I'm not a big mustard fan. Old school for four ninety nine says Wendy's is better than McD's. Sitch, you know Wendy's that... has amazing buns. They really do. Um, so you are correct. Yeah, you are correct. I'll, I'll say okay. I don't like Wendy's fries. I've never liked Wendy's fries. McDonald's they fries the when they're fresh. Yeah, the frosts are good, obviously, right? But the McDonald's have McFlurry, which is also good. Um, but I can't eat any of that shit because it's all milk. The the McDonald's fries when they're fresh are really good. Yes, yeah. The Wendy's fries I've always thought were shitty. It ever I've never ever liked the Wendy's fries. Wendy's has much better burgers. That's yeah, their their buns. I mean, that's some gourmet bun shit. I don't know if they make them fresh or what. Yeah, the bread tastes better. The meat tastes better. Their burgers are definitely better than Burger King. I mean, than uh, McDonald's and Burger King's. I think Wendy's out of the three definitely has the best burgers. I agree with that. Um, the nuggets depends how I feel that day. <laughs> I've never the had very Wendy's too. nuggets. Never. Really? Yeah. Shocking. Okay, they're very different, but they're good. They're just they're different. So it depends how I feel. Do I want the the McDonald's nuggets or do I want the Wendy's nuggets? Or do I want the BK nuggets? The BK nuggets used to be really good, and then they changed the recipe at some point, and they became kind of shitty. So hmm. I don't know what happened there. But I don't think I've ever tried BK nuggets either. It was around the time they switched the BK nuggets from being the chicken nugget poop shaped to the stars and dinosaur shapes permanently. Oh. They never were very good after that. So excellent. Um, this just made me want to eat fast food. I, I know. Had fast me food too. So long. I'm so hungry right now. God. I should go out there, get some... What's, like, the worst fucking thing I could... I could go eat some checkers. Taco Bell. No, the worst thing would be McGriddle, probably, or a Taco Bell. So yeah. If I was going to waste my having eaten fast food in, like, literally, I don't know, probably, like, five years, I think I'd probably waste You haven't eaten fast McGriddle. food in five years? Really? Yeah, I haven't eaten fast food in a long time. I don't eat fast food a lot, but, I mean, I eat it probably once a month. Huh. Just because it's, kind of, like it's the, kind of a treat. I've eaten like like Subway and mm -hmm. things like you know the things that are like kind of in between fast food. Right. I've eaten that stuff, you know, but I don't I haven't really I haven't been to like McDonald's or Taco Bell or Burger King or Checkers or actually that's not true. I have eaten fast food. I'm I'm not including Arby's. I, I eat Arby's occasionally. I'm not including mm -hmm. Arby's. I do eat Arby's occasionally. Yeah, that's outside of food. Arby's yeah, Arby's is fast food. Outside of Arby's, though, I usually get the roast beef sandwich, so I think that's why I don't consider it fast food in my mind. I haven't eaten at McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, or Checkers, or Taco Bell, or KFC in, like, at least five years, I think. Or four or five years. So. Wow. I had McDonald's probably, like, three nights ago. Well, there you go. You had yeah. a Big Mac? No, I had a uh, cheeseburger. Okay, we'll ask them for the Big Mac sauce. I know, I should have done that. I didn't know it was even an option, but I'll know next time. Go. I'm going to try the Quarter Pounder, because it's like yeah. a regular, more like a regular hamburger yeah, Big yeah, Mac right. sauce. Yeah. A Lay Royale with cheese with Big Mac yes. sauce. A Lay Royale with Big Mac sauce. Yes, there you go. 
Uh, CT for another two dollars says Das Das has bad allergies. When the plants have their kinky sex orgies, it ruins his life for like a whole month. Poor Das being bullied by chickens and horny plants. Oh yeah, that's true. Those hay fever people. Isn't that weird? We're kind of like inhaling a bunch of plant jizz all the time. Oh totally. That never bothers me, man. People who talk about allergies I always just I'm mm-hmm. like victimhood complex well, look at, <laughs> Adam's like listen because I've never experienced this thing that you experienced it must not be a big deal <laughs> what's wrong with that right that's I mean, how it is I never, that's truth yes. oh god it is it is fortunately I've never had plant allergies or anything seasonal allergies or something like that so I've been spared that shittiness yeah good for you uh, but I, I make up for it for all my fucking food allergies. So, uh, Dotums for two dollars says a bit behind to add to Sitch's point that the wan is pegged to the USD to become the reserve. It would need to depeg and remove up capital controls. Also, the U.S. Demonet- the U.S. denominated debt is it is a big part of the USD's demand. It's locked in for years. That is a good point. All the people that buy the Treasury bonds like that. That's true. Look, every time they open up China to being able to buy dollars, the Chinese people are like, they buy dollars like crazy. They want their savings to be in dollar-denominated accounts. So the Chinese government shuts that shit down. They force them to use the yuan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuck for two says, uh, Rayleigh scattering is what colors the sky. Shorter wavelength scatters more, such as blue. But... While purple scatters, while purple scatters even more, our eyes don't see purple as well, so the sky appears blue to us. Well, there you go, there you go. That but not sounds green. like magic. That sounds like magic. CT in all caps says, "Your McGriddle looks exactly like what I said. I, you agree with me? They are the same thing under different names. I am right. No, they are not the same thing." CT. First of all, how, CT, you never had a McGriddle? Did not have McGriddles in Canada? Oh my God. Canada should be invaded on just that alone. So the difference is, and I, you can't really see it from a picture, a sausage McMuffin is just the the sausage bread with the egg, the sausage, and the cheese, right? A yep. McGriddle is the same thing. It's the sausage, egg, and the cheese, but the bun is a different bun that's infused with maple syrup, and it's actually a pancake instead of bread. Yeah, how can they not have that in the maple land? Yes. I don't know. Do they not have those in Canada? Or have you just never had one? McGriddles in Canada. Let's see. Yeah, it's like maple syrup pancake bun. Uh, on their website, it says that they do. So you maybe you just never try. Yeah, you have to try it next time. So it's a, yeah, it's it's a, a make, it's a egg McMuffin sandwich, but with a pancake infused with maple syrup instead of a bun. So Yeah, they're delicious. They're very good. They're very good. Very good. They're very delicious. Very good. Very delicious. Sitch is going to um, eat fast food tonight. I can feel it, guys. <laughs> he's no. Already, I'm not going. To. I have food He's already ready. plotting. I might I might in the in the future. In the near um, future. Tomorrow well, here's for the lunch. Thing. It's very good because like, I'm like, if I didn't have food already right now, I probably would go out and buy fast food. But since I already have food available, I'm like, eh, I'm gonna be too lazy. I'm eat the fa- I'm eat the food I have now, mm-hmm. and then I'm not gonna want to eat fast food in the future anyway. So, DT says, I don't know. I don't even like McDonald's. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, let's see. Rotisserie protocol for five dollars says every American has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, even if that happiness lies in being gay, married. Bilbo, <laughs> Bell Goldry. <laughs> well, there you go. I agree. Yeah, totally. I just look, it's totally authoritarian, and that just that bugs me. That darn kid that says, Go to bed, I need to work. God damn it. Oh, god, are you gonna fucking break down this debate, kid? Oh, no, I feel bad for you. <laughs> Jeez, rotisserie protocol for Twitter says, Sorry, not gay. Ben actually said that. Well, there you go. Thank Did you, we ben. tell Sarah next time Midwood is anti? Aristotelian? Is that... Did we read that one? Matthew Newman? Oh, no, I missed one. You're right. Uh, Matthew New- Matthew Newman for two New Zealand says, tell Saga next time that Midwit is anti-Aristotelian. 
Thank you. I know what anti Aristotelian is, but I don't I know how midwit is that, but okay. Um I'm not a big Arist- fan of the midwit. I feel like the ninety nine percent of the time the people who, the person who's calling me a midwit is the midwit. <laughs> like that's normally That's how a I weird feel. like like okay, or like the nineteen twenties are calling them with their insults back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just it sound like I know it's not old fashioned, but it sounds very old fashioned. So something about it. But. You're a midwit. <laughs> yes. I mean it's it's like Jesus Christ. Please. Um But anyway, there you uh-huh. go. It's anti Aristotelian. We'll let him know. Uh Old school Old for five dollars says Wendy's yeah. is better than Mickey D's hitch. Yeah, I agree with that. Old school for another five dollars says I'll pass on the griddle. Very sweet foods in the morning makes me sick. Yeah, that's fair. I you know I agree. That's true. That's a f- the fair thing. I don't usually eat because that's the thing. I would always eat the McGriddles at night. <laughs> I wouldn't eat them in the morning. The four a.m. McGriddle is <laughs> the, the perfect. The four a.m. McGriddle sweet yeah. spot. Right, because I agree. I don't like to have super sweet stuff in the morning either. So. Yeah, donuts. Those are terrible in the morning. It's been so long. I know, like years ago, the McDonald's near me had breakfast all day. And I was so mad. Because it was breakfast all day, except for the McDonald's. No way. And I was like, what that's the like, fuck? Why? That's crazy. It was, I was like, can't fuck do that you. Shit. Fuck they you. They can't heat up a fucking pancake? I don't know what the fuck. So, I, yeah, I don't know what the fuck the deal is with this shit. Remember that used to be like such a big thing. You got to get to McDonald's right at ten o'clock, otherwise you'll lose the breakfast menu. Ten thirty. Oh, the ten thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone always thinks it's eleven. No, it's ten thirty. I know. I knew it wasn't eleven. I thought it was ten, but it's ten thirty. It feels like it should be eleven, though. Ten thirty is a sweet spot. It really is. It should be eleven. Because you usually wake up out of your. You're like it's ten. Do we still have time to get McDonald's breakfast? I mean, I don't want to go to McDonald's at 1045 and eat fucking lunch. <laughs> okay. Totally. It should be 11 at least. It should no. be 11 o'clock. Actually, it'd be funny if it did go to 1045. It should just be, it should just be all day. 1050. Fuck nope. It should you're be all getting day. Lunch. I don't know. I don't they know the tried logistics. That. I don't and know the logistics. They lo- ended those. up losing money on it. Like not enough people ordered breakfast to make it viable. They actually tried That's it. That's true. Oh, okay. Well, that's because most of your breakfast sucks. Yeah. You know what actually is the one of the best breakfasts, or it used to be back in the day? Burger King French Toast Sticks. Oh, those are delicious. So good. Those things so, are so good. Oh, my God. Delicious. Yeah. Fucking them BK French Toast Sticks. Oh, my God. You can get those at the supermarket. But they're not the, the same. Like Burger King brand. Well, no, not the Burger King brand, but you can they're get French, French toast, toast sticks like in the freezer yeah. aisle. But yeah. the Burger King, I they're super crispy on the outside, and I don't just how they do that is kind of magical. I don't know if it's they must deep fry them. Well, because they deep, be yeah, they, they do. Well, that's a, that's a, they deep fry them there, like in front, right. like right when they're doing it. So if you get the frozen one, it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah, because you're kind of microwaving it, or right. Doing it in the skillet. It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, of course. God, those of things course. are or the so oven delicious. or whatever. Sopping with just oil fresh from the fryer. That's true. And the, the, the BK chicken fries are pretty tasty too. That is true. Fresh from the deep fryer. Chicken fry. Super crispy, super like chewy mm-hmm. on the inside, crispy on the outside. Yeah. yeah it's weird because. It's weird Very that like delicious. you're like the first person I've ever talked to who's ever shared my love of the BK French toast sticks. Oh which really? Because they're so fucking good, and it's like I don't understand how anyone could not like. Didn't them. they give you like a little tap of powdered sugar too? Uh, yes. you could ask for one. Yeah, you feels could ask for like they sugar. gave you some powdered sugar on there. They too. would, yeah. You'd be like, mm. Burger King has decent poutine. <laughs> What's that yeah. mean? Poutine, it's the, the Canadian, <laughs> that dirty, dirty Canadian you. thing. Yes. They put like, what was it? Like, it was like cheese and something on the fry, cheese and gravy on the fries or something. Disgusting. 
Oh man, I'm gonna get cheese curds and gravy. Oh, I haven't been to Burger King in I don't know years. Yeah, I'm glad you're getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten since the stream started. Okay. Oh, I've eaten. I've eaten ten hours. I'm on a ten hour fast, baby. I had a banana. I ate a bunch of almonds. Yeah. I ate uh, a bunch of beef jerky. (laughs) Not me. So you know, I very rarely eat during the streams. But I'm gonna eat again. I'm actually feeling really good. Like that's good. I'm glad you got over your sickness. Yeah. Yesterday I spent all day in bed, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Monday is kind of my rest day. But then I have the, like, I'm determined to get 40 hours in in four days for the okay. comic. So, which I'm feeling good. I feel like working tomorrow this should be great. You know what? I'm going to go. You are. Burger King. <laughs> You're going to. French come. toast it. I was like, the McGriddle, I'm like, it's good, but it's not good enough for me to, like, give a shit enough. But then I was like, but the French toast sticks, that's a different story. Yeah. I, I had to go see when to. What is the what is the breakfast menu There's, looking like? What's the breakfast times at Burger King near me look like? Because I don't know. They jack you on the portions though, because the portions are relatively small for those. You got to be like, yeah, I'll true. take eight French toast. It's true. That is so, true. I think there's like three or something. What? No, there's. I I thought there was like I think there's like there's either six or eight. At some really? Point. I feel say. like there's only three. No, what the, that's insane. I feel There's like no. an order of French toast sticks is like three. Okay, French maybe toast in LA or everything's fucking crazy where I live. That was I would never order it and get three. That's like totally fucking insane. Jeez, like okay, let's see. Burger Do they have like here. a website or something? Where's the fuck is the menu? Just give me the hours. Burger isn't open twenty four hours. What the fuck? I'm that's telling wacky. you, that's wacky. It's like three. The, the oh, you were one... gonna go now. I was just curious. No, it's weird because I know the McDonald's near me, at least it used to be, it used to be open 24 7. So I'm surprised that the Burger King isn't. So, Burger King menu. Why can't your website Burger is garbage, King, Burger King? French Why can't I toast find the menu? Right here. Does Burger King still have French toast sticks? Well, obviously they still have them. They're still on the menu. Fast okay, forward Burger to King's 2022. Website is literally garbage. This Burger King is done. They can't even have a website that works properly. Okay. How many Burger French King toast King. sticks are in an order at Burger King? Right here it is. Google Not knows three. what's up. Okay. Breakfast. Here we go. It's five. Oh, it's five. Oh, Look, it's not six. six to five. It's not six or eight. I told they you. dropped it to five. Yeah, that's rough. Five is rough. Well, five is rough. Wait they a minute. Could, I typed they in They couldn't even give you a half dozen. They Do they not have five. anymore? I just typed in breakfast and it didn't even show up. You get some French toast sticks with your girlfriend, and you like you're fighting you over the last things. one. You're not you're not sharing you're not sharing the French toast. Oh sticks. my god! Do Stand. they not have them anymore? That would be insane. They didn't have them anymore. They don't. I don't know. Does Burger King have French toast sticks? Okay, it says they do. I don't know why I can't find Burger King's normal website. A normal menu on the website. It keeps, it keeps trying Does to. Does Burger wait. King sell French toast sticks at night? No. Burger no, I don't. King that. only serves breakfast only in the morning. Sure. Which obviously I don't want to wake up early after streaming for ten hours to go get some fucking, you know, oh my God. <laughs> fucking French toast sticks for Burger King. Oh my God. Yeah. These look so good. There you go. <laughs> anyway, let's. How do they make hungry. them so crispy on the outside? They deep fry them. What do you mean? <laughs> I swear they're like so crispy on the outside. Cause they're deep fried. It's not. It's not like you're like. How do they do this? It's very simple how they do it. Oh my god, these things are delicious. Okay. <laughs> Look, they. Here is a. Here is a, a picture. Of the every single picture only has three fucking French toast sticks. Mm-hmm. Supposedly there's five in an order. There's not, there's not three. That's like fucking wild that there was only. Okay, like here's three. five. Oh my god. These things look so good. I got to bring a picture up. <laughs> Finally, here. Listen, we really need to get a sponsorship from <laughs> look at this. for all the free fucking, you know, look at this. Look advertisement at this. we're doing for this. I think we have still have 500 people listening. 
I predict. To our fucking ad for <laughs> Burger King French Toast. Thing. I predict. <laughs> Yeah. At least 200 of you will have one of these delicious. <laughs> we'll have one of these. Oh my God. And you'll tell them <laughs> such an upset. One of these delicious Burger King French toast sticks in your mouth within yes. the next 24 hours. How can you resist? Look at that crunchy exterior and that, that chewy, delicious interior. Look, they have powdered sugar. Look, I, is that powdered sugar or granule sugar? Oh, my God. I don't think they give powdered sugar anymore. Mm -hmm. They used to way back in the day. I think nowadays they just give you a little, little sauce. Uh, though, be aware. Be aware. You can't get a bad batch of these. I've gotten bad batches of French toast sticks and been very disappointed. What? Yep, it happens. it happens. How do you get a bad batch? What's it, it just what? doesn't taste as good. You're like, oh, it just tastes kind of like chewy and... Like it doesn't taste like have that crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Oh, okay. You know, good flavor. So it's possible. Hmm. Like they sat yeah. out of the the fryer for too long. Yeah, like they're like the old. So they've been sitting around for. A while. I don't see how you could have these in your presence and not eat one. If somebody said, "Hey, you want one of these?" and you go, "Nah, I'm cool. I don't want one." <laughs> that person's obviously an alien wearing a human mask. So. Yeah, that yeah. would actually be a good way to tell if someone was human or not. There you go. Like you go up to the Clintons and you're like, look, Hillary, I have some French toast sticks here from Burger King. Would you like one? It says Wendy's. I don't know if they still do. It said Wendy's last year had French toast sticks. Oh, yeah. Everyone's been copying these. These are everywhere now. I, I, Burger McDonald's King probably copied. has them. It, well, they're from Burger King, so that would make sense. <laughs> I mean, McDonald's probably have. They don't them. have it. I'm I'm actually shocked that they haven't done that. That McDonald's hasn't done that. McDonald's doesn't have these, really? No, they don't have anything like Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. I know, isn't it? It's do you do you dip yours in the? Because I just yeah. I oh I don't I just go plain. Well, I okay. I they're I try, so I dip delicious. Like a, yeah, I dip a little bit because that 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 maple sauce like a little tiny bit of it goes a long way. Yeah. Right? No, no, it says, well, according to the website, Wendy's has French toast sticks, too. So, maybe I'm curious what they taste like, how they how they stack up. Yeah. Look, you should go tomorrow and do a side-by-side -side comparison. You should get yourself Well, no, some... I don't want to have to wake up early enough to get French toast sticks from McDonald's. Or, or I mean, from no, you Wendy's. Get them, or you get them from Burger King and from Wendy's. I'll have to do that on uh, a Thursday, Friday. <laughs> okay. okay. Back up the door. So. You got to do side by side though. You can't do it like one day. True. That's that's like true. you get we'll the Burger side King, side. and you let them sit for one day, and then you get the next day. <laughs> that's not really a fair comparison. Right. You're right. I'll do a side by side. Look at this fondue. I think he's going to be one of those participants. <laughs> uh, Adam is on to for something. <laughs> I live specifically in Dev's walls for two hours. It says, eat an apple and go to bed, lest ye become dead. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my goodness. Throwing Dev under the bus. I'm glad Sammy G's obviously gone to bed, which is probably a good thing. Yes. Sammy G would not like this conversation. No, you're right. All the fucking health, <laughs> you know, all the food. Like, those are like the worst thing ever. There's Do no carbs in study. Look, there's no carbs in these, right, Sitch? <laughs> There's nothing but carbs in there. That's all it is. It's just carbs. It's just these literally like, carbs. What? Nothing but carbs in them. I can eat these on my keto diet, right? No. <laughs> no, Carl. You can't eat those on your keto. <laughs> Vinny's freaking out. Apparently, Vinny is very anti-fast food. Literally. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Look, every go. once in a while. Uh, old school for five dollars. <laughs> old school for five dollars says I would say I will say that French toast sticks with Cinnabon's cream cheese icing would make a great dessert. Oh yeah. I've I've never had Cinnabon's cream cheese icing. That sounds interesting. I've yeah, never sounds, been a huge delicious. I've never really been a Cinnabon's fan ever in my entire life because I don't really like cinnamon flavored things. Hmm. So I mean I've I've eaten. <laughs> Cinnamon rolls, you know, if I'm in a position, you're at a party, there's cinnamon rolls, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll eat it. <laughs> but it's not something I ever seek out. What about um, cinnamon ice cream? 
No, I've never had that and probably never will. I've had caramel cinnamon ice cream from Marianne. Oh, disgusting. Oh, it's so good. That sounds cool. I don't like cinnamon, so why would I like that? Mm. Okay. Mm. No, the best, my favorite dessert of all time will always be uh, beignets. Oh, beignets. I used to live in oh. New Orleans. I know you did. We <laughs> you would said, go you know for, exactly what I'm talking we about. We would go, here. yeah, totally. What are you kidding? As soon as yes. three in the morning comes around, what's Have the time for? Beignets. beignets. <laughs> We're beignets going to the French like, Quarter. Let's get some beignets. Yes. yes. Beignets are God's oh, gifts. Right. And if you I don't remember. live in uh, some fancy place like uh, New Orleans, You'll you'll know beignets, which they're not as good as beignets, but they're very similar. You'll know beignets by their other name, funnel cake. Yeah. Their other name, elfin ear, which are essentially lesser beignet. But I remember the first time I went into a beignet's place, mm -hmm. I was just totally bewildered by it. I was like, this whole fucking restaurant, all they serve is donuts. <laughs> one type of donuts one, not just type not one donut one specific type of i know donut. i was like i'm looking at the menu and i'm like well, where's the other stuff yeah like the fuck is, this stuff the fuck fuck is this? <laughs> i can only order three donuts that's it and yes. some nutella <laughs> <laughs> it's a powder sugar what the fuck yeah but as soon as you settle in and you're like oh now i see Cause there's like a line out the door and shit. <laughs> yes, you're like, why? Course. Why are all yes. these people waiting in line when you can only yep. order one thing? Yep. And yeah. Then you have it, and you go, and then, oh. and, yeah. And then you get it. You're like, ah, now I understand. The world it makes, all sense, makes sense, now. sense. It all makes sense. Yes. Yeah, it's not I, fair to call beignets a donut because they're not. It's like a just besmirching of a beignet. It's true. Yeah, it is. Much. Right. much it's better yeah it's like it i mean it is fried dough but it's not doesn't take like donuts are a lot more cakey and thick yeah and very different but beignets are best blaine's escape court for two dollars says i love beignets funnel and elephant are different yeah they're different they are different but it's like the closest um thing i mean you i mean i don't know in my experience in most places they don't i've never seen beignets being sold in like you know like in most places in america Right, I never encountered them until New Orleans. I, like I don't know where I could get them in in L.A. I think I've Maybe seen them in California. Place. I'm trying to remember. They're probably uh, obviously. I mean, I've been place. to the, the New Orleans and I've had them there. I know I've had them in uh, non-New Orleans places. I thought I had them in San Francisco or something. But it's um, just part of the culture in New Orleans. It's like the they love their French. fucking. They love their fucking beignets. Yeah, beignets and pulp. I mean. Beignets and po' boys, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. The po' boys. Yep. And yeah, my fried shrimp po' boys so good. I was like, what's a po' boy? It's just a fucking Subway sandwich. <laughs> just a Subway sandwich with, like, fried shrimp in it. And some, like, really tasty sauce. Yeah, well, you can get them with all kinds of different... I like the andouille. Sure. Andouille is my favorite. The andouille yeah, sausage po' boy. Yeah, sure. That, yeah, that would, that'd, be, that'd be tasty. Yep. With caramelized onions. And, Ooh, nice. And... Very delicious. Uh, and bell pepper, sauteed right. onion and bell pepper. Ooh, that sounds very tasty. Oh man, very tasty. So good. God, I'm hungry. <laughs> but yeah, no, fun, yeah, funnel funnel cake and elephant ears are different than beignets, but it's like the closest substitution that you can generally find across America. Not as good, but still tasty. So, but yeah, beignets are still the best. Can someone I spell would... the word they're trying to say? Beignet. A oh, blind skip course said it. It's B E I G N E T S. And the answer is no. I cannot spell that word. <laughs> I know. You try to Google, you're like, how the fuck do I look this up? I would get it's a French word. We would saddle up. They have the powdered sugar shakers in the thing. We mm -hmm. get like a whole one, and I just like put a mountain of powdered sugar on my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Gotta calm down with powdered sugar, baby. Oh, man. Go on. I'd have powdered sugar all around my mouth. Actually, let me see if there's any beignets near me. I've never even thought to sugar. look in my entire life. Oh, it looks like there might be. It's only uh -oh. a New Orleans thing? 
No, I said they look like there might be. Los Angeles beignets. I'm gonna say, like, is there a? Well, maybe we'll be replacing snow cones with beignets. <laughs> it's like the new, <laughs> the new thing that people can order me. Let's see here. Ten sweet spots to find fluffy, delicious beignets. Look at that. I know, I, I see that article, and then I click it for me, and it's like a lie. It doesn't actually tell me this. A bunch of Little bullshit. Jewel of New Orleans. What is this? They have po' boys, too. I f might know where I'm going for lunch tomorrow here. Well, there you go. Oh, there's one, but it's far away. Shit. That's too far away, away for me to care. What is this? I hope it's not in the hood. You know it's gonna be. No, it's from <laughs> the beignet place. Like... <laughs> the beignet place is in the hood. Probably not. I'm getting shot at. Oh, but these beignets are so worth it. <laughs> True. Oh, they lied to me. There's no beignets here. Liar! How dare they? Oh, I might be able to look. I might be able to look, everybody. How sad is this? Hmm. No beignets for Sitch. I did find a good noodle place. In there. That made me... This beignet oh, place is wow. by Dodger Stadium. Alas, no beignets for Sitch. Anyways. It's right down there in Little Tokyo. Our Tony beignet... for $5 says, you guys are making it hard to stick to my diet. <laughs> That's oh, what Tony Ash is for, yeah, I guess. It's right next to Skid Row. <laughs> I don't want to like DoorDash from a place that's like an hour away for beignets. Like that seems insane. I, I feel I feel so that that feel like the height of being a bourgeoisie fuck, wouldn't it? I'm gonna make some like DoorDash guy drive like an hour and a half to give me <laughs> to beignets. bring you three beignets. Yeah, like what the fuck? I'm like, come on. He's that's gonna hate your wrong. guts. That's wrong on every level. Holy shit! Like you gotta do what you gotta do. Those things are delicious. <laughs> It is he what it is. He's like, he's like, don't worry, I understand. <laughs> he gets it. He's like, yeah, I drive out there too. <laughs> oh my god, this place that's the, the closest. It's not even like a place. It's one of these food trucks. I have to find where this fucking food truck even exists. They, you know, it's one of those food trucks that drives around. So, well, look this. The Benier place here is nowhere close to anywhere that I go. So. Right, it's like, I think I had I could swear I think I had beignets in like San Francisco, so it's so obviously not in L.A. But anyways, whatever. What the heck? Okay, <laughs> this time it's for real. This time it's for real. Anyways, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Uh, thank you, food, for existing, so we could talk <laughs> about you for delicious, like literally forty food. minutes. Yes, we can literally talk about food Thank for you, 40 Burger minutes. Thank you, Burger King. I love yes. you. <laughs> Thank you, Burger King, for inventing <laughs> your amazing Burger King French toast sticks. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Carl and Dev, for coming on and talking to us about gay marriage and, arist and aristocracies and all that good stuff. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the people who have made it to the end of the stream, you are the true heroes. You are the true free will seekers. You are the true enlightened individuals. You are the true tens, the masters of the universe, <laughs> the true elites that will one day rule this world with an iron fist, and all the other midwits will bow before you and lick your toes in a non foot fetishy way. And we'll see you all next time. Sunday. No homo. Bye-bye! <laughs>